Now, as I said before, Saddam Hussein is the first guy to wear a yellow suit and a mustache since I think it was the Steve Harvey Showtime special in 93. <laughs> um, that's not the point. Who cares about that? Should we be going to Iraq? Yes or no? Let's hear some answers. Yes. yes. We Why? Should, why? We should be in Iraq. We should be in Iran. We should be in Saudi Arabia. Every country where you can make a million dollars being a bikini waxer. All right. Yeah. How about you, fella? I you said yes, we, too. Yes, absolutely. We should be in there, man. Okay. Revenge. Yes. Payback. So Payback. Al that's it. Do so you think 9-11, you think there's some Al-Qaeda connection there? Of course. I don't know. I mean, a hundred billion dollars on a war when all you need is two dollars to put a bullet in Saddam Hussein's bean and spend the rest on the after party, baby. <laughs> sure, but look, have you noticed? They should kill him. They should kill him themselves. Don't you think a Republican guard should just say, look, Saddam, there's nothing personal, but this is getting yeah, serious and blast them. You try to do it. Well, you have to force Like what did the gun? Who's going to have yeah. people kill their own people? You just Why can't not? do that, man. It you happens all the time. Well, that's coming from him, a black yeah, guy. But exactly. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you can't. So your project will have 10 but Leaders, the no leaders. I'm not talking about the. Well, they're killing each other. The Lord, the, you know what I mean. Yeah. The, the, that's what I was trying to make a joke at. I, I not only knew you mean. I said it first, but go ahead. Well, you can't. You can't. I, you know, if I didn't like Al Sharpton, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have him killed because he's black. So they can't kill Saddam because they're, they're Saddam. Uh, them. Well, who, we, we know when you let. <laughs> we knew that. We knew oh, that so when you right. let OJ off. Can I, can no, I, listen, yeah, this is why OJ wasn't guilty, ah, right? It's the same thing. Get him, thing. Jim. Who's yeah. sticking to him? Who, but who's going to have the balls if you're in a room with Saddam to make the first move? You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. Are you going to do that? And nobody backs you up? And I'm what sure you people do? thought like, shit, that they should have killed Thank Hitler. Thank you. The director right. yeah. got that. They tried right. to kill Hitler. I mean, they own people, but it's, just, it's hard for you to kill your own people. It's ridiculous. The whole we country hates keep, the guy. We should keep war where it belongs. He's Compton. <laughs> it's right because people, people understand this, man. I, I you really, know what, though? But th they've been they've been framing the debate so that if you disagree with this, then you're un-American. You know, oh, like, that's yeah, not true. It's the truth, oh, Jimmy. No, but some I I criticized George Bush in my show, and somebody after the show said I was a commie liberal pinko faggot who deserved to die. Yeah, that was your and manager. I thought I don't deserve to die. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think when you look at don't you, when you listen to him? Don't you think? Like, yes. <laughs> oh, shut up, job of a comic. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What are you? Table for eight? Look at you. <laughs> Go up, Paul Lynn. And sit in the square. <laughs> All right, let me ask you something serious. <laughs> a lot of people say if we attack Iraq, we're going to increase terrorism. Do you think it's an increase or decrease it? It's not going to either. I mean, terrorism's always going to be there. It's not like if we don't go in there, Al Qaeda is going to downsize. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, How many terrorists of... do you think there is, man? What do you think? There's a whole country. There's only a couple of dudes, man. It's a gang. They caught the dude that looked like Joey Buttafuoco, and they said the the whole that whole thing is finished. And and, and Saddam's, I mean, the other dudes around the corner, the Bin Laden dude. The, yeah. but, so I mean, whatever, man. The, the, we got the, we got to destroy something. Right? Remember, <laughs> listen, listen, man. Yeah. Remember, okay, World War II. Wait a minute there, sweetness. <laughs> Say he's what all, you he's want. All itchy. Say what he's you all want. excited Don't to get out of his, to get out his ad lib written jokes. Now, look, here's what I'm saying. In World War II, right, we bombed, we bombed the Jap, we bombed the, the, the Asians. Right? The Japs. The, the Japanese people. We didn't hit the other. Like, listen, will you listen to me? No. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Let me finish. They bombed the Japanese, right? And you think you're Cornell West. Well, now listen to me. Another nice uh, Negro. That was listen a good one, wasn't it? But, he, but we, we've, been, we've been gangsters for the last 50 years after that. Gangsters or gangsters? Who are you talking about right now? Well, I'm on a white show, so it's an ER. So look, um, we oh, bombed them, quiet. and we've been um, gangsters for the last 50 years. Yeah. So we got to do something atrocious. To let people know. To, so we can be running stuff for the next 50 years. So we cannot let them get away with them. When I say them, whoever did it, right. after they flew the planes in the building, people were watching. Are you you gotta, you gotta, do, you gotta smack them down, this, and then we can relax for the next 50 years. That's this, all I'm saying. That's this, a is good like, this is like getting a history lesson from Belushi in an Animal House. <laughs> 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 we killed some Asians. Oh, the truth of the matter is, though, look. Nice to be on your show, by the way. Thanks. Right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man. It was right, a very long Shut up. for a short Listen. turn. Well, you, you cut me off. Go ahead. Who? I am? Not you, oh, sir. <laughs> you know, guys, I really feel that, uh, what about Saddam Hussein? Let's talk, what happens if we don't go? What's going to happen? We bomb France. Well, should we bomb France or should they just mind their business? <laughs> well, he wants but, to bomb somebody. He wants to go in Sebastian. But it's not, no, it. no, it's not Bush, it's just war loss. That's ridiculous. That's too simple, you know what I mean? But I'm saying, do you think, for example, we have to get a bunch of these countries on our side, like there's a lot of countries left over. 
that we do have to get on our side. Do you think we should just go in and quit protecting? They got their own interests. Look, I mean, the well, I mean, look, at, look at the coalition they've got. They've got Britain, they've got <laughs> Spain, they've got Bulgaria. That's not a coalition, that's a circle jerk. <laughs> you know, at the same time, you know, this isn't the first time that Europe has been passive while a... a, a uh -huh. Yeah. A Jew-hating tyrant with a weird-looking mustache, uh, you know, who 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 kills his people by giving them gas. Obviously, I'm talking about Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Never again. I knew it. Never I couldn't again. do my history lesson. Blaming it on my people. Now yeah, listen. Oh, you. What, what happened to her? Yeah. Who do we have to get on our side? What countries? What Cameroon. Country? Who? Cameroon. Oh, geez. Guinea. Oh, yeah. Don't piss them off. Yeah. <laughs> You can speak to Guinea for us, don't you think? Absolutely. I don't know if that anyway, meant to you. I need permission. I don't know. We don't, that's the whole thing. Is all country is so weak now. It was like, ha-ha, the public's not into it. Yeah, the old days, they go, look, we're going, uh, Roosevelt would say, look, we, a war started two days ago. You might have heard those bombs. That was us. You people can help by minding your own business and shutting your traps. Right. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't know, though. I mean, the whole our way or the highway, it just... What's wrong with that? It just bothers me. I mean, Why it's like we... Bother? Because there's the whole world, or, you know what I mean? There's yeah, the whole world Yeah, but they, obviously consider. they have their own interests, just like we do. I, I mean, look at the themselves. UN, I mean, well, I mean, some people say the UN is like a battered wife. The bitch just don't listen. You know what I mean? So, I mean, are we going to have to pay attention to it, or what are we going to do? I mean, do we just... Are we totally alone? All right, let me tell you something. Who First said, of all... Who said that? Ike Turner? <laughs> Oh, the, uh, let me tell you one thing. I don't want this to turn into some anti-Arab versus America thing, okay? That's why we say evildoers, because we want to keep it vague. That's the politically correct way to say evildoers, just people that do evil. And, but I don't like people burning American flags over there. You want to start that with us? All right, listen. Next time I see an American flag burn on TV, I got a picture of Casey Kasem. I'll burn it right here. Casey, yeah, he's Middle Eastern, that's right. And I, it's not nice to throw scurrilous remarks around, but this son of a bitch is in it up to his ears. And I have proof, documented proof in my office. I'm going to bring it down. No, Casey, listen. Oh, he's an Arab. <laughs> now listen, Casey. <laughs> if you're listening, I'd like you to come down to 26 Federal Plaza. No one's going to do anything to you. We just want to re-register you. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we're going to talk about a subject that we really don't know that much about, sex education. Ha <laughs> ha! That was a good one, but... Is it good? In school, sex education, is it good, bad, or a waste of time? Now, people have asked themselves the same thing about this show, but I don't want to talk about that right now. Be that as it may, let's talk about it. Is sexual education the responsibility of the parents? Should the schools interfere? No, you should learn it in the streets, like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> in the alleyways and the gutters and the cars of life, baby. Well said by a black man. Now yes. look. <laughs> the streets really have a bad rap. We saw. Yeah. No, no, okay. That's... <laughs> no, I was just adding to you. Point it to them. Yes. All right, let me wait, ask wait, you this. Can I ask you, what do you mean by interfere? If you mean teach them absence, that's one thing. But if it's like your physics teacher taking you to the Capri Motel at four in the afternoon, <laughs> and you're sitting on your face until Jeopardy comes on, that's, you know, <laughs> maybe they should mind their business. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, I think abstinence is good. You should, you should, they should cover all that stuff. But, like, you should definitely not preach abstinence. There's, there's, you know, that should be taught as an option. But if you really preach it, preach it, preach it, that's when the kids go crazy with sex. Have you ever heard of Catholic girls? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, you should teach. You should teach uh, contraception and disease prevention and where to get good lube. <laughs> Again, going in, now we're talking about Catholic boys. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but I don't think I don't think parents really. I mean, like I said to my mommy, I said, "What does it mean when you know two you people do it?" Yeah, yeah, mommy. When I was that big, I said, "What does it mean when two people do it?" And she said, "It means the macaroni and cheese is almost ready." I mean, they, they don't know what to say, you know. I think that's a pretty good metaphor, actually. There you go. Um, what about this? Hmm. Okay. In England, this is a good statistic, and you're an English expert. Yes. Over 100,000 kids under the age of 16 are in a program encouraging them to experiment with oral sex instead of intercourse. Should we try that here? The only thing, that, it's England you're talking about? Yeah. The only thing oral they should be encouraging is hygiene. <laughs> I mean, you, you ever see a chick's yeah. teeth from Liverpool? Look, <laughs> looks like a, the, you know, the rough at Augusta National. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah, trying to get the joke out with eight people. He knows my girlfriend's from Liverpool. Right? I know, he knows your girlfriend's from Liverpool. Well, that's, that's a direct attack, right? From Liverpool. If they're going to teach oral sex, they ought to teach yeah. technique. What, you, what you know, because every one of us technique? has had a, yes, we've all had a bad hummer. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Amen. This girl. 
<laughs> I forgot. Let me tell you, if parents, when you say learn it in the streets, I'll tell you a true story. Maybe this will spark something. When I was like 10, this is the greatest thing of all time. My friend's father used to, and he had only, he only went with the hottest girls. He would have them strip them naked and have me and my friends fool around with them, like make out with them and feel them up and everything, you know? I swear to God. And, uh, I kept coming back like that night. My friends were like, hey, let's go watch what I'm just saying nuts, you know, we get like, hey, you're crazy. So I started, kept coming back and bothering them all night. And the next day, my father had to come pick me up. And he goes, your son's really interested in sex. And then it was like dead silence for me and my father for like the whole walk home. Nothing. So, I mean, now do That's you think very that was... moving. Thank I'm you. I'm crying inside. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Maybe you can get me one of those Lucille Lortel downtown theaters of yours. <laughs> do a quick one man show it. Barrow Street, you son of a bitch. Now look. Uh, <laughs> but don't you think that that was actually healthy? Not the part with, where I was ashamed of it, but the part where we're actually doing it. Don't you think a guy like that is just... So you're saying your best friend's file is helping you get laid at like 12? That's not healthy? laid at 10. He was letting us fool around this... I'm saying, I, I'm telling you a story with the greatest man who ever lived. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> How did you guys learn about sex? Anybody have a little uh, anecdote? I was lucky. You were lucky? What happened? I, uh, well, I, was, I had three older sisters, so, you know, I was lucky because they were whores. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was taught that, I mean, uh, you know, my mom said that it had something to do with the man planting the seed, so sex for me was always associated with yard work. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like I see a lawnmower and I, I go, oh my God. That's right. <laughs> How about you, fella? I just had regular sex, man. I mean, nothing special. No thumbs in the butt and... and, 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 and... I didn't ask. If anybody has sex with you, they have to find your genitalia first. Ooh. Ooh. It'd be, really? it'd be Ooh. easier to find a Lindbergh baby. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Wait, she, it's like way to keep it contemporary. Yeah, great. <laughs> Lindbergh, baby. I'm the only one who gets that. Go ahead. The only little... advice I got about sex from my dad, he said, you know, Nick, sex is like pizza. Even when it's bad, you still got to pay for it. <laughs> well put. I guess that's the end of the round. <laughs> the center square today, Mr. Jim David. Yes. And we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Whoa! Hey, you guys should have seen us off panel. Haha, <laughs> we were really funny. Look, <laughs> it's not easy to talk to kids about sex, but can we really teach them today? Cable TV, the internet, by the time they're 12, they already seen things that Larry Flint wouldn't allow in his garage. <laughs> so here's your task. Take your experience and give the kid a sex talk. How about Patrice first? Well, my, thank you, sir. My sex talk would be with my little girl, Sweetie. You know, I know it's not fair. If some little boy plays the piano at six, he's Beethoven. If some 10-year-old retarded boy learns how to count matchsticks that fell on the ground, he's Rain Man. But when a 15-year-old girl likes to have sex, they call her a slut. And that's not what she should be called. Call what she really should be called, a prodigy. Keep, <laughs> <laughs> keep striving, sweetie. <laughs> okay, that was very inspirational, S Sarah. <laughs> Sometimes a bird meets a bee, and the bird will put his penis inside the bee's vagina. At first the bee is scared and uncomfortable, and the whole experience borders on devastation, but then eventually, despite that first encounter, or maybe because of it, the bee cannot get enough bird cock. Good night, sweetie. Oh. Bird fuck. Nick DiPaolo. Speaking of bird fuck, Nick, Nick DiPaolo. DiPaolo. Hey. Uh, we found the pulse of the audience. Uh, Lisa. Ooh. Lisa, my little girl, I'd like to talk to you about the birds and the bees. You see, the birds and the bees are different today than when I was your age. When I was a kid, birds used to stay in one nest, but today they jump from nest to nest. And that's how you get the West Nile virus, and that stuff will kill you. And well, as far as the bees go, uh, there used to be only one kind of bee, but now there's something they call African bees. And if you bring one of them home, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Do we understand each other, sweetie? Sleep tight. Uh, Jim, David. Uh, Jim, would you like to finish us off? Yeah. And I don't mean that as a euphemism. Yeah, there you go. All right. I would say to my kid about the birds and the bees, or as my daddy called it, the sheep and the sharecroppers. 
Eventually, you'll learn for yourself that sex with commitment is the best, but sex without commitment is usually worth the cab fare. But I really don't know what to say to a kid about sex, except this is our little secret. <laughs> I'm not going to follow that. Folks, guess what? That's the show. I'm smarter to follow that. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, stay tuned for, uh, I don't know what's on next. This doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Tough Crowd. A lot going on, folks. Well, not that much, but I just thought I'd get you excited. <laughs> and I can see it worked. Now look, um... <laughs> well, well, well. Mm. Well, well, well. <laughs> Last election, the important voting block was the soccer moms. That, now there's a new one called NASCAR Dads. Now, do you think there is such a thing as a voting block, or is this just uh, more racial profiling by the media, Patrice? Got nothing? What do I mean? What is, I mean, here's my thing. What, what are white people trying to find a new name for the KKK? What is the Grand Wizard? <laughs> <laughs> the Grand Wizard of Monster Trucking? It, it, it's, will white guys stop it? Will you just stop trying to be victims and trying to find a new way to be white? No one cares about NASCAR. No one cares about... The, who, who, the Mexicans probably love this. <laughs> They love stuff like that. Yeah, it just stinks. Well, they got to have something to do in between picking lettuce. So, you know, <laughs> let now them let do what they got to do. You're wearing a Giants jersey. Today I heard, you know, he's a Philadelphia or Italian. Well, Skinny like Joe Molino. Did you hear about this mob guy in Philly? His wife was sleeping with one of the Giants. Joe Molino's wife? What, is he a friend of yours? I thought he was like a mob guy. Like, hey, Joey's wife. Joey's wife? Yeah. She stood the giant? It was a big scandal today. It was in the paper. She's done. She's in the river, that bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Yeah. Well, he's a, a Bhutan. Greg, what about you? Do you think anyone likes NASCAR? Why do people like well, NASCAR? Well, tons of people like You know, yeah. blue-collar white guys just want to have something that's theirs. You know, I think that's why yeah. all these like Monster Garage shows and all those shows are, are so popular now. Because you know, let's face it, you know, there's not a lot of white athletes. There's not a lot of white people on TV to look up to right. doing anything cool. And that's some, one thing they do. They do well. Yeah. Although it's really, it's really are you only. Serious? There's no yeah. white people to look up to on TV. No, like yeah. sports athletes are heroes. You know, it's. No, it's, he's it's, saying like a no sport. white hero. Not out for a second. There's Go no ahead. whites. You know, you know, most of the athletes. You know, it's just. There's hardly any whites left. And even this is is gonna be pretty. <laughs> Yeah, George even Bush, even, what are y'all talking about? But even NASCAR is going to eventually, the, let's face it, black people tend to be better athletes. They're taking over all the sports. And even NASCAR, it's only a matter of time because NASCAR. Black actually, people NASCAR, ain't doing NASCAR driving because if black people drive NASCARs, the police will be right on the track <laughs> trying to pull yeah, them but, over, all right? Yeah, but that's not going to happen. That's where that's how NASCAR started. That's how NASCAR started. Bootleggers running away from the cops. And you guys are good at that. So yeah, it's absolutely. only a matter of time. Uh, exactly. I know as a black man, I'm good at bootlegging. <laughs> I thought that was the Africans that did the bootlegging. <laughs> no, it does give white, uh, white kids a chance to do something with their money, you know, because it's like uh, they can't compete in sports anymore, right? I mean, they, they can't. They can't. They try. <laughs> they foreign, try. foreign whiteies. The Look, they, they no, pretty good. There's there's no Yugoslavians can play some. It's these lazy American whiteies that can't play sports no more. That's right. <laughs> well, you seem to keep yourself in tremendous condition. But... <laughs> This is, let me tell you something. Colin, this is, I don't like the way you didn't, didn't defend me on this one. Uh, this is street muscle. This ain't fat. This is from getting right. bit by dogs and chased by cops. This is all hard. <laughs> bit by dogs. I think that should be the name of a comedy album. Bit by dogs and chased by cops. <laughs> Well, it wasn't funny. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's what we what, were you being chased by cops while eating a dozen donuts? Jesus. Oh. Hey. Now wait, I, I'm so saying my self esteem. Leave him alone. But don't you bitch. think? <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll no, say sir. one thing about NASCAR. It's the only place you can proudly fly a Confederate freak flag and nobody bust your balls. Now listen. Good point. Oh, I break out my old linen skinny shirt from the 70s. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. See, I'm oh, I know. NASCAR is just like, ugh. Well, NASCAR, I don't know. NASCAR, people, NASCAR people do love it. They, it's, it's, it's proof that if you have enough it. beer in you, anything is fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, have you, what have you been watching all these years? Well, look. Let's talk about Slick Rick, the rapper who's in it. <laughs> he got this? <laughs> That's not why I'm just on. I have an eye problem. I thought Jeff Gordon had a patch on his eye now. So. Jeff Gordon. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about Moshe Diane. Oh, now listen. I thought, I thought it was a bad Dale Earnhardt joke myself. <laughs> Oh, now, Slick Rick is English. He's in INS jail trying to fight deportation. After 9-11, the INS began enforcing immigration laws for convicted foreigners. So, now, the problem is if we let him stay, all the lawyers will use it as precedence. But should we just cut him a little slack because his case is exceptional? Ed, you know Slick Rick. 
Slick Rick is a good guy. He's a, I, he's a people person. I Slick love that. Rick is here in jail right. in Florida. But 50 Cent can run around and do what the hell he wants. <laughs> that don't make no sense to me. Now, you, you know 50 Cent, right? I mean, I yeah. said he, uh, Slick. Yeah, Slick. So, is he, I mean, is he, did you not is he hear me say that? Stupid, stupid. Is he, should I he mean, be come on, down? everybody Wait got something in their past. So what? He shot his cousin. So what? Yeah. <laughs> but he shot he his cousin. cousin. He shot his cousin on Boston Post Road. He was trying to rip money off from him. I'm old and I'm from New York. That's why I'm so proud that I remember the street. It really is heartbreaking to see such a good guy in jail because I grew up with Slick, on Slick Rick. You know, my family, that's a we follow. A lot of Italian families listen to Sinatra and all that crap. Slick Rick and... Slick Rick, not Rick Springfield. <laughs> Slick, Slick Rick, Rick. Oh. Uh. All right, listen to me. A new study from the Washington Post says that people with names like Taisha and Laquisha <laughs> are less likely to get resume responses than people with names like Courtney and Chad. Great. Well, they did this thing, like they sent out, they sent out like, uh, like 750 black named resumes and 750 right. white names on the resume, sure. and the, the blacks were less likely to get reactions, right? right? Which, on the one hand, does look a little creepy and everything. Sure. But on the other hand, you got to look at the bright side. You think just a couple years ago, you couldn't have found 750 black people with a resume. <laughs> Well, I'm saying a couple years. Now, you're still this. mad about the white people can't play basketball, Joe okay? Gage. Listen to this. The white people can't he play basketball, Joe. Just me. hurt you right in your heart. He's, no. a, Man, Mexican. he's a Mexican. No. He's oh, he's a Mexican? He's a Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. No, I'm, 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 no, no Mexican is a resume. You don't need a resume to pick grapes. It's okay. I'm trying to look at the positive. Please say something. Go ahead, First Cleophus. I mean, sure, sure. What'd you call me? Cleophus. <laughs> What's Cleophus? That's a black man's name, oh, Cleophus. <laughs> well, what about Colin? It's a beautiful Irish name. Do you care? Oof. Oh, right, here's my point. <laughs> Is that... I always thought, like, the black names thing, honestly, until a few years ago, I thought it was like an accident, like Anthony Hardaway. Like, like I thought it was supposed to be Anthony, and then say Anthony, and then the nurse wrote it down as Anthony. <laughs> but see, now... Is that true about a lot people, of the names? First of all... First of all, we What's did... Black people... Wait a minute. Black people did figure out how to have these uh, so-called white names, like Cindy, except for we will, <laughs> to keep it real, we'll spell it S-Y-N-D-E right, with right. two slashes over the E. <laughs> <laughs> To keep, it, to keep it African or whatever, because yeah. we understand that, it, you know. But sometimes it's but, just cruel. I mean, I used to teach grade school, and I had a kid named Totem Odom. <laughs> That's what it's like. Black kid? Yeah. I have a friend that has a niece named Bartasia. That is the worst <laughs> name. We'll be right back. <laughs> and, uh... Now, Forbes came out with the list of the 10 richest dead people, people that make money while they're still dead. Elvis Presley, uh, you know, John Lennon, Tupac, Dale Earnhardt, all these people. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that. I don't know what we're going to say. I don't know why I started it that way. But I also think the poorest dead celebrities, which people don't talk about, you got number one was Millie or Vanilli, whichever one died. Um, <laughs> number two was Dana Plato. And, uh, you know, she got shot at Robin a liquor store. I don't know. And number three was whoever dies next from the cast of Eight Simple Rules. Because that show's not going to last. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, because that's actually... His... Oh! Wow! Well. <laughs> really, I'm trying to keep that show on the air, too. They... What's about it? You think they're trying to keep it on because they think it's a good show or because it's like... They actually have a, a heart or a conscience that they're trying to keep eight simple rules on the air without John. If they had a heart of conscience, they never would have put that show on in the first place. <laughs> oh. Ed, what do you think about this? Ed, come on. I, I, I just think it just shows how America is, man. Come on, Tupac is making more money dead than, than he was alive. Yeah. And Tupac's not dead. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to treat. I mean, there's Elvis. Yeah, Elvis. Uh, is, neither is the Hobbit, dude. I think it's got to suck when your manager's telling you, you're not, you know, David Bowie or somebody, you're making a comeback. I got 10 dead guys that are doing better than you. That's <laughs> <laughs> how well you're doing. Greg, what, what can we say? This is depressing as hell. We're alive. We're combined. We barely make a, a tenth of Maryland. We're up. <laughs> Damn it, he's right. And George Harrison, now how's the guy from uh, Love at First Bite? That's George Hamilton. George Hamilton. <laughs> All right, look. <laughs> Hamilton! Speaking of celebrities, speaking of celebrities. <laughs> How come Abe Vigoda ain't on that list? <laughs> Barney Miller. He'll be on my list. Brad and Jennifer and other Hollywood celebrities are going to visit the Middle East to try to solve the complex Middle East problems. Isn't it well-intentioned but naive, Dom, to think that everybody thinks like you? 
they're going to go over and start. Well, I was yeah. thinking, yeah, first of all, I, I, I imagine taxi and friends are very popular in Palestine. <laughs> before, hey, Mom, before I strap one of these bonds, before I strap one of these bombs, can I watch taxi one more time? <laughs> You know, actually, and it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't write my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you watch, first of all, I mean, if you watch Friends, you realize that, uh, that Rachel's not really the, the peacemaker. Uh, Good boy. point. Holy right. Christ, I never thought I could top your bomb with the worst bomb. I know. Bomb. <laughs> I was talking about bombing. <laughs> Why don't you just bail us out? Come on. <laughs> I'm not going to bail. I'm going to strap one of your jokes to myself and run through Palestine. <laughs> Has any respect. We, were, we were talking about before the show about the celebrities because everybody says, I love when people say he's a nice guy, he's down to earth. Right. You know, like, like, a, 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 like Springsteen, a friend of mine met Springsteen, he goes, man, Springsteen, he's a great guy. Down. I love Springsteen. He goes, but shouldn't he be a nice guy? Shouldn't he be the nicest guy you met all month? Shouldn't he be low five and high five? You know who should have an edge to him? Pepe, the 60 year old arthritic bus boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one who should be a little cranky at lunch. true. <laughs> Not some celebrity. It's true. Now, speaking of rich people, what about this reality rich shows? All these shows on you. Did you watch this stuff last night? Oh, anyway, Jesus look Christ. at this guy. Ready? Here's one rich kid from one of those rich kid shows. And I'm up at boarding school, and this kid's from like some town in Connecticut. You know, I don't know. I can just say, F you, I'm from New York. I can buy your family. Piss off. <laughs> what? You like I that? I just thought I was great. I'd love to be able to say that to somebody's family. <laughs> no, he said he could buy his family. Yeah, that would be fantastic. What do you think that somebody? I, I think I can't believe you're wearing a sweater with a hood. <laughs> I wear these a lot. I don't see what's wrong with it. It's actually one of my signature pieces, I believe. It is a good one. <laughs> you should give him more credit for that little brown riding hood. That sweater stinks. <laughs> <laughs> little brown riding hood. I don't know how the subject changed from rich people <laughs> to my lovely attire, but... <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I'm I, wish sure. I, I wish I knew to... I wish I had... Uh, was born to know what it was like to be able to even think about saying that to somebody and be serious. I'll buy your family whatever. Right. Oh, you know, Patrice, he, he says, all he gonna do, he's saying that to other little rich white people that probably got a little less money than he does. He ain't saying that to nobody black, because we always can fall back on, and I'll break your ass in half. <laughs> that's, that's black people answer to everything. What? I will break your ass in half. Right. All right. You go catch up on the latest goods and services. I'll stay here alone with these people. Me. Um, you know what my problem's always been, and people said this for many years at the cellar, even Keith, who's one of the underlings, said it. Um, you guys, I let you guys get too familiar, you and you, and the rest of them, where you compare me to no names going on tour. When I go to Baghdad, I go like the legend. Like that legend. I, I don't so get... don't stand there with this nonsense. No names? You're talking about Drew Carey. No, we weren't talking about Drew Carey. That's on the show. I'm talking about what we're talking about off camera. And Carrot Top is a way bigger name than well, you. Shut up and nobody said Carrot Top. Got, got those commercials. I really hate this. All right. This I, don't last get, go ahead, I don't Dom. get that familiar with you, Colin, because I'm a much, uh, much stronger stand-up. Well, I guess <laughs> that, that, that was definitely true at one it. time. In the last presidential election, it was the soccer moms this year. Now it's the NASCAR dads. What's another demographic that politicians should be courting, and why, Dom? I think pol politicians should go after la the Latinos. We are the largest minority in the U.S. <laughs> I say we because although, although I, I may be Italian now, I'm switching over in order to be a more popular comedian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, President Bush, a pollo loco, viva Zapata, yo, mommy. I love I think the politicians should be caught in the Irish in New York City. Yeah. All they have to do is move the election to the same day as the St. Patrick's Day Parade and put free beer and lucky charms in every voting booth. That's at least two million voters who won't remember who they voted for the next day or the day after. <laughs> All right. Patrice O'Neill. All right, we should court uh, certified hookers. Uh, that would be a great demographic. Uh, most likely, uh, when she agrees to give a little piece of her vote, the bitch ain't gonna change her mind at the polls the next day. Um, <laughs> nothing. Uh, <laughs> hold up, should we read that again, y'all? That's what y'all gave that? Shut up, they All right, now The yeah. ending's at the beginning. That's if I can see it from here. What happened? If you'd flip that last line at the beginning, they would have understood the other. Go down other. again. You got flip that down. line at the end. <laughs> Wait a minute. Most likely, we'll keep going. Most likely, when she, when she agrees to give a little piece of her vote, the bitch ain't gonna change her mind at the polls all of a sudden. Y'all don't even get that. So, you know what? Kiss my ass. Here's Greg Geraldo. 
<laughs> well, uh, we got the soccer moms and the NASCAR dads, and uh, I think the next group will be the cockfighting baby daddies. Uh, you know, they're, they're angry, and they'll support any candidate willing to fight their, these oppressive child support laws. Anyone who'll say, I feel your pain, condoms are for punks. If she didn't want to get knocked up, she shouldn't have worn that tube top. <laughs> it's your money. Why should it get pissed away on baby formula when you got your eye on a chrome tailpipe for your sport bike? <laughs> besides, that baby don't even look like you. Well, folks, that's our show. Good night. Hi, Pat. Hi, Brooke. Okay, last week, over a million, uh, you know, Shiites marched on Kabbalah and slicing up their heads in kind of a religious devotion thing. So the point is, can we deal with the Islamic, uh, the real fundamentalists without violence? Easy out? Uh, you know, Colin, after dealing with the nuns at Catholic school, any group that hits themselves in the head for religious reasons is okay by me. <laughs> as long as they keep their hands themselves, is that it? That's right, and they're easy to pick out. You have a gash on your head, you're easy to pick out in the crowd. That's true. So they don't threaten me. What do you guys think? About, what do you guys think? They got boils. That's why they lance it, and that's why it is blood. When they got boils, that's what it is. <laughs> Who cares if they slice themselves apart? Who gives a damn? Let them get out of the planet. Let them leave town. I'm Who cares? I got so many subjects. Who cares? That's yeah. right. I like that, Pat. Thank you. That is a good point, but there's one other point you guys are missing. <laughs> when you say who cares about a certain subject, that's the subject not we the have. Subject, it's the we have on the it. show. They want to say not the subject. Not the subject, the fact that they're cutting themselves up. That's yeah, right. Let them call them, kill themselves. Get rid of them and then bring in hey. fresh blood. I'm I mean, with the, my the reality is that Islam is a violent and intolerant, violent and intolerant religion. I, I don't know anything about it, but that's what my friend They Rabbi make the mafia look gay. Ginsburg. <laughs> so they make the mafia look gay. That's right. You heard what I said. But the, hey, <laughs> Pad's loaded for bear tonight. Oh, he's really ready. My dad is really ready to go. But do you think the... Uh, don't, do you think that we should, what, what are we going to do about this situation? Now, Leave it alone. Take a do, walk. We can't let drop dead. <laughs> Thank you. Time to go screw themselves. The hell with what it. What about what, Colin? All we of a sudden, it's we want democracy and freedom over there. So we got to let them uh, worship. They don't want they freedom. You don't want to you play with their camels. <laughs> Give me a break. That's all but, I know. Camels and goats and no love for the women. But That's we're right. over there right now. Okay, we gotta. You think those guys are gonna look good doing that kind of stuff in the Halliburton like employee lunchroom? You know, we're doing business <laughs> over there, aren't we? Well, the point is, the whole point of this war wasn't it? To, it was to stop the terrorism, make ourselves safer. If we allow an Islamic extremist state to form, that's not gonna make us any safer. Now you're gonna have problems. Now you're gonna have two sets of, of warriors. You have the Shites, and you're gonna have the Kurdish, the Kurdishes or the Shites or the Shoots. What do you call those people there? They're fighting each other. They all wear the same sheets. You don't know who the hell's the Shites, who's the Shites, who's the Kurdishes. See? Give me a break. He's got a point. I know I got a. Point. Yeah, I, think we should, I think we've summed it up. <laughs> got to say about that, Jack. Yeah. We're going to take a quick turn. We're taking a quick break from the <laughs> shanks. It's like watching tennis. I don't know it's, like it's, a, yeah, it's like going to a religious study. we got our own problems with violence here, by the way. This week, the shooting of the model in New York City. Yeah. Then you had that uh, principal in Pennsylvania, the school kids in New Orleans. What's going on now? It's like, uh, you know, that, let me ask you something. What are they going to do? whoever the hell I was supposed to ask this to, about all the shootings in school, is there a way out of this? Yes, absolutely. The, I'll give you the answer. Okay. Those who shoot, you shoot them. And that's the end of that story. That's right. That's, that's a good point. Wait a minute. I just say man thing. You, you got to turn around when these guys now they're going to turn around and put bulletproof things in the bank. You don't do that. You tell the next guy that robs this bank, I'm going to whack you out. Dead. That's it. That's no, right. more, no more fooling around. He's got a good point. I know I got a good point. Oh, wait, two seconds to check and make sure his prostate gland is all right, because he's really going nuts. <laughs> Dad, I'm concerned about okay. you. You got your two seconds. Go to all work. Right, you all right? You okay? No, check I'm it. having a nice check break it. now. That's why I make a lot of money. <laughs> check his pacemaker real quick. You okay? All right. He's I'm all right. Sorry. Let him go. Okay. That's my man. Any kid that shoots his principal shows a lack of imagination. You know? I mean, if you want to drive your teacher crazy, you did it slowly over a period of time. Any pussy can pick up a gun. But <laughs> now what if, that's a good point. What if, Greg and NRA, are they responsible for this? What do you think? Uh, I, I don't think the NRA is responsible, but, but it's like, you know, we have some sort of constitutional right uh, to bear arms, I guess. But, but, what do you mean, you know, I guess? But, <laughs> well, because it's not clear. I mean, you know, you read that. Well, it's that, not that, clear. It's not clear. You read the language in the Constitution. Who knows what the original intent was? I mean, you guys were there. What no, were let thinking? me tell you something. Uh, the whole, the 
the point is. Let me tell you something. No, the point. The point is, it's not clear. It's not clear that there's an un, un, you know, unlimited right to bear arms. If you look at the NRA, it's one thing to say, okay, you have some general right to bear arms as a state, but it's, it doesn't say, you know, you could have uh, bazookas. You could have, you know, I mean, and, and there's also like they don't accept any limitations on the right at all. Like California, for example, had a, a test, a written test, and which is basically a literacy test, and the NRA is saying that's wrong because there shouldn't be a literacy test to own a gun. If you if you can't read, you shouldn't own a gun. No, I'll give no you one better. Uh, I'll give you one I'm better. Just saying, I'm just saying. I don't pay attention. I can't read. Listen to me. It's, this is the another thing. Hand hand you, let me give you one better. Just be, let me get this point across. You, I was in the service. <laughs> when they found out I was an Italian, they gave me a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't give me a gun. I swear to God. They put me in the kitchen. That's why I can't shoot nobody. But I can't give it a spoon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's your answer. Oh, Rambo had a lot of guns. Rambo. He knows Rambo. Is, I need that. This is, again, man, I hate to what? make this racer, man, but it, 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 when it, no, you, you, don't. Only, you only get concerned when white people are doing this, man. This is an NRA thing, and a, when white kids kill their well, teachers. Well, if we're trying to gangsters are killing each other, hey, all them, you don't say nothing, you don't care. You yeah, don't care about it. There's no assault. subject matter. It's well, because it, it. when we do it, it's an exception. You walk it's around loaded for bear. Oh, Jesus. You probably got something on you right now. You guys invented violence, and when I say you guys white, but not, not Irish and that, but the, the, the color white. Listen, here's the point. <laughs> point is, whatever you say about race, but do you believe in guns? Or gun control, because I think if that principal yeah, had a gun, gun he would control. open his desk and blast at him. You only believe in gun control well, when it's affecting uh, close to you. You're right. When that's it's, when it's, when it's affecting out. close to me, it's look, self -control. then it's not gun control. Yeah. It's self-control, not yeah. gun control. Well, gun, gun control. I mean, people should be allowed to have guns, right. but there should be licensing right. requirements, and there should be some limitations, waiting periods. Right. Like, you, know, you can't wait three days. Right. I mean, yeah, sometimes you have to shoot somebody right away, but <laughs> it should, you know, you should well, be able to wait three days. Most of the people days. that's doing the shooting are, are people that are going to get these these permits, and they're people with permits for guns. No, the that, people, that's not the, true. the gangsters are getting permits. The, the people that well, that's that's exactly the point. My, my right. people are shooting each other. If they I don't had get a gun them, right I now, I'd shoot myself right in the mouth because of this segment. <laughs> More socially relevant commentary with deep psychological underpinnings when we return. <laughs> All right, now I know this is going to kill the uh, hand that feeds us, whatever the expression is. But they're saying that Americans watch. They said white Americans watch 58 hours of TV a week. Black Americans, Americans watch 75 hours of TV a week. Now, do we watch too much TV in general? I know that when I come home, I put the TV on because I feel scared if it's not there. Don't you blacks feel weird? Watch, blacks watch the radio. They watch the radio? <laughs> That's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> Say something. Uh, oh, he's my father. I can't. Patrice, <laughs> let me ask you something, Patrice. What, what do you think about that stat, first of all? First of all, who's doing these statistics? I, it's got to be somebody <laughs> white. Second of all, black people don't... <laughs> Black people, the reason we might, you might think we watch a lot of TV is because a lot of us fall asleep with the TV on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So. <laughs> It is, it is. Thank a, you, baby. <laughs> and, um, but there are more black shows on now. You got the WB, you black. No, first of all, the first of all, the WB, that's the kid. The WB don't even have black shows on no more. No, it's none. Yeah, that's they right. used to, and they canceled all the black shows and put Dawson's Creek and all that. Uh, yeah, they have all the, the young white gay shows. Superman thing that you watch and yeah. all that other stuff. <laughs> but the UPN still has all those, like, those one name comedians that we never heard of, but they sell out. You've heard Carolina of them all. Stadiums. Which one? Name one. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Sit here back. at the St. Louis Technodome, it's Peabody. I don't know. Peabody? <laughs> Dio, you got a name as well. Dio. One name. Flex. You're right, though. That's good, Patrice, and I appreciate that as a fellow comic. I was kind of exaggerating, and you go, you've heard of them all. Yes, I have in real life, but I was trying to be humorous, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Of course, blacks watch more TV. There's, there's not a hell of a lot to do in jail. It's like, you know, I mean, oh. well, no, I, well, you coming from a Puerto Rican, that really <laughs> Well, you know, do you they watch any black shows on TV with any black people? Does uh, anybody watch any white I, shows? Who watches Friends? Who watches this thing? I don't know. I've I never know. seen it in life. Well, you know, what do you want? You don't watch any shows with white people on them? I try not to. I try hard. Sopranos? <laughs> never watch people. Sopranos. Never. Never Cops. seen Friends. Never. Uh, cop. Shut up. Latin people have different. Uh, Latin people have different shows. They watch. We watch mostly those Spanish right. network shows. Those are the number one shows. Those and the number girls. two show is the uh, is the static that comes on your screen when your illegal cables cut off. Right. I watch the Latin shows. They only got one word that consistently: corazón, 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 and corazón. I just get to know all the other words. Everything's corazón. That means my heart. So every Latin song you hear is my heart. It's true. How much heart can you have? It's, it's true. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> this is education, gonna, he's brother. Watching the Does somebody radio. have a defibrillator? He's dying. No, listen. <laughs> Cut us on. I thought he was having a stroke. Uh, <laughs> but you do. Uh, you know what? Sorry, this subject. The, uh, let's talk about, uh, well, first of all, the, uh, let's talk about California. They have protests going on. 
This time they're saying standardized tests are racist. But the point is this. If you do decide to make tests, you know, culturally relevant, what are you going to have? Some tests like, some math tests like, if Jamal travels six miles in his Escalade to the other side of Crenshaw, <laughs> how many eight-tray Crips will it take two hours to get 16 9 millimeters past the 5-0 to pull a 187? <laughs> Do you think us uh, nice test tests are racist, sir? Why do we make a big epic out of stupidity? All you gotta do is be a nice person, do the best you can, and die. That's the end of it. <laughs> oh, Actually, the answer, is, the answer is seven crips. Seven crips. Yeah. Thanks very much, Al. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there doing his thing. Hey! <laughs> and that's no offense to the man in red, by the way. Uh -huh. We're gonna do a buddy movie. You guys? Yeah. You should do a buddy movie. Like the straight Midwestern guy and like the, you know, half mad blood from like, you know, Kansas City or something. I'm not half mad. No, I'm you, be... well, all right. <laughs> you, you guys, you guys, did, I you guys should do a buddy movie. Who? Oh, you two. Pat? No. Old and older. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How old? Oh, listen, oh, damn good. you know, good first one. of all, I really <laughs> dig the spiked hair scooter. When did that happen? That's what I want to know. <laughs> You well, he's really got a point there, you know, Greg. <laughs> yeah, really, hip -hop. I mean, let's I mean, face it. What did this happen? You used to be Hispanic, and now you're, you know, I don't know, Jimmy I, from look, Jersey. Look, what a lot of look. Aha, uh -huh, hit Frankenstein. L listen. Uh -huh. <laughs> Set settle down there. Settle down there, ton DMC. Look. Oh. A lot of, uh... Let's go back to the, all right, yeah, we'll go back to the other it. subject. We can, your wish is my command. Let's go back to it. We're talking about TV, right? Right. All right, black people watch, like he said, you know, a lot of times you'll be, if you've ever been in any kind of uh, holding facility, suddenly it's like six <laughs> brothers going, yo, put on Maury, man. But and the white guy sitting Nielsen. back like this. There's no Nielsen boxes in prison, man. It's all from his Nielsen. I know. Only, uh, once only, again, we're yeah, trying to be humorous, yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. I know, but <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Tell me this. Wow. There's no Nielsen boxes in prison. Hey, thank you, literal ass. <laughs> Why don't you just... I'm just saying. I'm trying to I'm just save you out doing my false statistics, man. You're right. And white people always... Where B, do you think How come there's no white entertainment television? There is white entertainment. Every other channel, except for BET, is white entertainment television. Oh. That's right. Oh. That's no, thank you. Know you. But, it's, right. but look, the fact is, black people, you know, it's, it's an obvious point that black people and white people view television differently. I mean, I've seen a lot of black comics, and it's true, you know, black people, they talk to the screen, they're cool, and white people watch TV, and they're like, uh, Bernice, fix me an herbal tea, you know. Well, that's <laughs> a cultural thing. That comes from church. Uh, uh, church, church. You go to a white church. Oh, what you about? About? He's just <laughs> mocking the entire, like, idea of comedy and people doing that. I routine. know what he's talking about. You, but, you, you answer me oh, you yet? Were? I'm sorry, Pat. You hey, get upset that you can't. Miss. You complained over the weekend because they made a couple of phone calls. So you phone talk. calls? It was an epic. I thought I was doing Gone with the Women this goddamn show. <laughs> oh, this is a half an hour show. They cut me calling. Can you don't say this? Say hello. Go on. Come over here. Here's another fact. Leave me alone already. That's this right. is not Gone with the Wind. That's... This is not a career That's movie. Right. I'm finished anyway. And you're the future. I'm going to I rehearse every Thursday to die. <laughs> Give me a break already. Don't leave me alone with these people. Come back after the commercial. Yo, Western New <laughs> One thing about America is that we're known for our tolerance of all different groups, right? Blah, blah, blah. Everyone's you know, in today's crazy, wacky world, what other group, because a lot of people are getting intolerant of Islam over here, what other group would you be uh, intolerant of? Do you feel we're too tolerant of? Mr. Pat. Producers of movies and TV shows like The Sopranos and always portray the Italians as mobsters. Sure, we kill a few people, 10 or 20 or 30, but that's another story. What about the sweet old Italian grandmothers who stand over a hot stove cooking the gravy all day? What about the greedos who don't wear 10 pounds of golden chains? What about the few innocent priests who haven't molested little boys? But as an Italian, <laughs> the real reason I'm pissed is that I auditioned for the Sopranos. They told me I wasn't Italian enough. Hey. <laughs> Oh, you do, you do look kind of Irish, Pat. I mean that as a compliment. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> Alan. The one group we should no longer be tolerant of is overindulgent parents who bring their baby strollers into restaurants. Yeah. They, ro they roll in these eight-wheel monstrosities with their noisy rugrats to the edge of a table blocking an aisle and leave them there. The parents then look around beaming with pride as if to say, look at what we created. Hey, nitwits. The only thing you've created is a major obstacle for other patrons and the wait staff. The strollers are too big. Carry the kid in a papoose like a Navajo, and maybe you'll burn some calories off your ass as well. <laughs> now that's multitasking. Yeah. All right.
Hard, even though I love all the comedian things, I try to discourage applause. Well, what do you want me to do? You want me to lay down here? What are you your problem? <laughs> I'm not the only one here. Bug, bug, bug the black guy for half an hour. Patrice. <laughs> I like his racism better because it's old school. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's really being tolerant of old white actors making awful movie after awful movie. <laughs> John Travolta is still riding that Pulp Fiction train. He's been back to look who's talking for him for the last 10 years. Let, let Denzel Washington make Battlefield Earth and he'd be hosting a game show by now. And then there's, there's Bruce Willis, Kevin Costalone, they're all finished. And I'm tired of pretending that Arnold still has muscles. He, he looks like Pat Cooper. I'll, I'll, I'll be back from where? Colon surgery? I'd rather, I'd rather see Alan Havey in his deleted scenes from Knock Around, guys. <laughs> Greg, Greg Gerardo. Uh, we've been way too tolerant of homeless guys with dogs. <laughs> Look, I drank enough in my life to have sympathy for a good old-fashioned crackhead drunk. But, but these guys with dogs bug me. They're usually young punk rock squatter types pushing the emotional buttons of every stupid animal lover that'll step over a legless Vietnam vet to put a dollar in the cup of a 19-year-old with 50 piercings and a puppy. You know, if you put half the effort in the school that you did turning your face into a tackle box, maybe you wouldn't have to whore out your dog for smack money. That's our show, folks. We'll be here burning at the stake. Um, if I can find a store that sells steaks at this hour. So good night, and uh, you are it, man. <laughs> respect that turkey. Don't just start carving or trying to be funny. Just I'm not trying it. to be funny. I'm gonna carve the damn turkey. Carve it correct. What do you think I'm doing, stupid? It's not a, it's not a piece of corned corn beef. Uh, on Tuesday, Massachusetts became the first state to rule that same-sex couples are allowed to marry legally. Is there any reason uh, gays should not have the rights to marry as everyone else? Leah, from the gay community, tell Why us. the hell are you asking me? <laughs> um, I think it's the end of the world. Colin, I think it's the absolute end of the world. You know, when I came out as a lesbian, uh, women, lesbians were feminists, and hey, feminists now. believed that monogamy and marriage was a tool of the patriarchy used to enslave women. So in order to be a good feminist, you had to screw as many women as you possibly could. And let me tell you something, Colin, I was a great feminist, okay? <laughs> this marriage thing, I don't know what's happening to my people, but it is a butch's nightmare. You used to be able to pick up 10, 20 girls a week, bang, I'm giving their coffee in a, in a, like a cardboard cup. Now every bitch I meet wants to marry me, wants me to be a father of her baby wants to give her insurance. Stop it already. It's a nightmare. It's the end of the world. All right, the you know other what? side of the case. Yeah, I, I actually right, disagree uh, with Pat and Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I actually yeah. think that uh, gay weddings should be completely legal and allowed uh, as long as they promise that cake is the only thing they'll rub on each other's faces at the reception. <laughs> I remember. I, I remember. That was a good one, Jim. Thank you, Doug. I'm a member of a gym in the West Village, uh, and uh, it's, well, it's not really a gym, it's more of a gay bar with some free weights and a treadmill. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that, uh, y y why, why the hell shouldn't they be able to uh, get married? And you know, the, the governor of Massachusetts, this guy Mitt Romney, first of all, what the hell kind of name is Mitt? And second of all, they're showing cards. Say, you know, this guy, the governor, he said, well, he agrees with 3,000 years of written human history. Well, if this is the case... Then why don't we bring back, uh, you know, uh, the Crusades and slavery and public floggings in the town square? What the Wait hell's minute, is going he talking, on is here? Is he using um, the Bible to speak against us? He's talking about they're 3,000 years of written First history. of all, they're throwing the cards. The they're stupid? telling me yeah. Sid, and then they're telling me carve the turkey. Carve so you it. can't do both. Who ever heard of somebody sitting and carving up turkey? Laying now, Patrice, let me just bring this up. Patrice, you're from the great state of Massachusetts. So this, so when are you and that other f***ing Apollo going to tie the knot? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. What's going on? I don't really, you know. You don't give a damn? No, no, I do. What I'm saying is, um, if, if Would you marriage. Like some white meat? Yeah, come on now. <laughs> I like a piece of wing, man. Here you go. Oh, man, that's why I, you want me to do that? I'm really trying to fall. I'm really no, focusing on this turkey. You shouldn't have put this kind of food out here. Uh, <laughs> you should have kept with these dumb cupcakes, but now we got some delicious. Oh, Are no. those collard greens? Shut up, I don't know what this is. Oh, Thank yeah, I you, said, Colin, for I finally reaching said, out. Yeah, take this. I said get some collard greens with the trees, actually. It's Christmas in Hollis, Queens. You, you know what I'm saying? Dripping your uniform all over that? Shut I know white, white people made it. It's probably no season. I think, First I think of all, that... 
we don't get that. You know, Shut up, ahead. stupid. Listen, <laughs> get, if marriage, if the, if the institution of marriage was still uh, about God and still about, you know, being in the eyes of God and we two are together to make it a fit. If, if it was, I'd be against it. But it's Why? not. Why would you be against Shut it? Shut up. If, if, it, if, it, <laughs> if it was, I would be against it because I, maybe that's in the eyes of God that's wrong. But in the eyes of, listen, wait. In, in the, the eyes, eyes of wait a minute. freaking God. And, wait, wait, the same thing, that, same chapter in the Bible that says in the eyes of God it's wrong. Now I know how it feels. Uh -huh. yes. Listen. <laughs> I didn't snore with your big soliloquy, uh, Costello. Because it was funny. Because it was funny. Because it was funny, Angel. Wait a minute, man. All I'm saying is, it's all about who gets, it's all about benefits. If you get some health benefits, or you get some, uh, you know, whatever benefits you get for being married, that's what it is. So let them get their benefits. Who gives a damn no, about At the risk know? of being called racist, did you just say it's all about benefits yeah. and expect me not to judge you? <laughs> or health benefits or something. It's all about whatever, benefits. Whatever people do no, to get married, like the Benjamins. their will and no, my benefits. I don't like the fact that you, you look like you ate one of the village people. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Let them laugh, like stupid. You stole from That's <laughs> now, everyone, look. The Wisconsin Oneida Indians have agreed to drop their long-standing claim that land was taken from them. Yeah. If New York grants them the right to build casinos on a large plot they purchased up in the Catskills. Do we owe the Indians anything at this point, Jim? I think we've been more than fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> reservations, uh, free turkey around the holidays, all the booze you can drink. I mean, we name teams after them. What do they want? Yeah. Hey, people. You know, wait one second. Let, I got oh, nothing else. What about this? <laughs> next topic. What's that? Yeah, yeah, what's next topic. topic? All right, tens of thousands of protesters will be in Miami this week to oppose the World Trade Organization, claiming that thousands of jobs being taken from American workers. Oh, I'm sorry, am I boring you stupid? No. It's easy to read this shit. No. All right. <laughs> Believe me, it's a real workout for the tongue. You guys don't know. <laughs> it's fun when you're up doing your I own know. act, but once you start to get into the uh, <laughs> other side of the bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, can your right to protest go too far? What do you think about this, uh, the World Trade stuff, you know? Well, I think it's kind of, uh, Ironic that a lot of the people, it's about labor and jobs, and most of the people who protest are a bunch of like white jizz bags with dreadlocks who don't work anyway. Oh, well, there you go. They fly in from all over the world, they come to all these protests, they're total f anarchists, and they come in and they throw bricks and they think that they have a right to throw bricks at the police. Now, I'm not a big cop lover, I've had many cops stamp on my face at protests, but come on, I hate to sound like my mother, but you're ruining it for the rest of us that want to protest. When you show up, this isn't a protest for them, this is a party, it's like their spring break. Mm -hmm. They're going That's to Florida true. for spring break. She's and right. No, she's not. Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> no, she's not. But she she is. To some degree. No, she's to some degree. She is. Yeah. That, that face has been stomped on. Way. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that that was was shut up. Up. <laughs> I had the best joke of all. <laughs> oh, it's too late. Well, nobody, else, nobody else works in this country but immigrants anyway. Leave, That's what leave I was going to say. No, but the immigrants come here for jobs. Then people are protesting the jobs leaving there. The immigrants should have stayed there. Then the jobs would have came to them. If the job's moving out, you can take it. It, it needs some work, that joke, but believe me, it's no, a good one. It's, right. it's a good point. It's not bad, actually. You can take it too far, but, you know, they're not allowed to have lumber. Yes. <laughs> That's my turkey impression. Yeah, you got a little too bad. Yeah. Folks, give thanks as you get to you watch these commercials when I stay here with these people. <laughs> I can't even eat with these stupid hands. They won't let me cut it. Rent it. <laughs> you know. Hey, what do you want, cable? All right, look. The, ne the Source magazine is holding Eminem responsible for the following lyrics he recorded in 1993, or dropped, as I like to say. Never date a black girl because blacks only want your money. Uh, black girls and white girls just don't mix because black girls are dumb and white girls are good chicks. Okay, it's not, uh, you know, William Blake, but my opinion is that if you can find, this could be an, a, li a real complaint, if you can find one black rapper who hasn't said bad things about white people, not in bootlegs, but in multi-million selling albums. Then talk to me and tell them, shut it. Now you, yeah, stupid, does point. this make him a racist? I, I want to say yeah, but I don't think so. I think this just uh, proves that he's really a black guy. That's what we say all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, he's a... <laughs> you cannibal. <cannibals. laughs> he's got no hands. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. You don't know where my fingers have been, bud. Yeah. <laughs>
That's funny. All right. How can I mean, anybody call Eminem a racist? This guy loves black people more than Abe Lincoln did. How can anybody <laughs> imply it's sickening? And the guy from the source uh, is saying that, uh, well, we have to hold him to the same standards we held uh, R. Kelly to. Ooh. And uh, Eminem. But, huh. Well, that's uh, exactly yeah. the yeah. point. Yeah. Eminem badmouths a really black chick. That's now, listen, speaking of pedophilia, let's get to the real subject today. Uh -oh. Michael Jackson <laughs> has been arrested for child molestation, and that's new news. I act like it just came out from me. Uh, here's a clip from an interview where Michael Jackson explains his views about sleepover parties. Ready? I sleep in the day with all of them. When Macaulay Cook and were little, Kiri, Kieran Culkin would sleep on this side, Macaulay Cook is on this side. It's just that right, Michael. It's very right. It's very loving. That's what the world needs now. <laughs> now who's gonna argue with that? Oh. Oh. Right. What? You're, you're going you to me on this one, finger? right? You're going to me on this one? Yes, Doug, right. tell us. Cut him out because he'll leap all over Wait, my Wait, let line. him jump, <laughs> let him do his thing. <laughs> Go ahead. Patrice, well, now look, the point is, I think that, you know, first it was the priests, and now it's the, the Boy Scouts and Mike. It seems like every time adults are working with boys, I don't know if this stuff is so prevalent, maybe we all need to stop pointing the finger at the adults and start looking at these sexy-ass boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. It's a damn good point. <laughs> You know, the Don't one, cut that out. The one allegation that they brought up was that apparently he plied the kid with wine, which I think is really hard on the pedophiles who've been hoarding, you know, Pez's and Mr. Goodbars for so long. Right. You know, it really raises a level. You give a kid a piece of candy, bar. and now he's like, candy, yeah. where's my freaking Chardonnay? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, I don't want to say Michael Jackson's a pedophile, but for Halloween, he dressed his c*** up like a Flintstones chewable. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson did pay for all his kids' cancer treatments and all this stuff for years, and so, I mean, there's a lot of money, so I'm just saying that, forget about the, I'm saying the lesser of two evils between horrible yes. cancer, go, going to some poor yeah. hospital, or yeah. getting, you know, finger a couple of times, no. if you have to make a choice. I'm just saying, if I, yeah. look, nobody thinks it's a good choice either way. <laughs> But we live in an evil world, I'm saying it goes uh, up. So you're saying if he gives him cancer treatment that it, it actually it, it, it entitles him to rub him up a little bit? I'm saying that if He's I was dying of some kind of disease and somebody said, listen, you got to let me blow whatever Michael Jackson does to him. <laughs> Carl, I'm going to blow you and I'll cure you. Yo, I, do do seconds. You I think Mike's the one doing the blow? Yeah, I thought, I, I thought he blew. Them, and then he makes no, a no, 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 no. If you come to my house at Neverland, I'm not gonna give you a b You come to my house but he's a b when he's my a wife and kids sleep. <laughs> well, my mama sleeps. <laughs> Look at kids. that face. It reads like a b oh, He's totally b right. their nipples. Right. Everybody I mean. knows he fights for the pink team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, folks? Not that we killed this segment, but we tried like sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a good segment. Dove, I'm right, hosting right, the show. You've right, been on twice. All right, I'm sorry. How about if I tell you what I got? Right, right, right. The <laughs> boss knows. <laughs> I was helping you. All Get right. your coat on and all leave. Right. All right. <laughs> An important part of any Thanksgiving is being able to talk about the new hip commercials. <laughs> so watch these. And we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, hush. <clears throat> The Pilgrims and the Indians created the first Thanksgiving as a break from the daily routine of starvation, disease, and mass genocide. <laughs> so, too, is this segment a break, a time to reflect on what we're really thankful for. I can't do that. I got nothing on. What, people at home are offended because there's a little goddamn grease on your face? <laughs> hey, don't you fucking message board me on this one. Um, tell me, please. Mm -hmm. Jim Norton. <clears throat> I'd have to say the uh, person I'm most uh, thankful for is my boss, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Not only for uh, proving that there is life after 50, <laughs> but uh, for surrounding me with such a wonderful cast of co-workers like Greg Giraldo, who thinks more about spousal murder than Klaus von Bülow, and <laughs> Nick DiPaolo, who has the temperament of Jake LaMotta and the social tolerance of Pope Pius IX. <laughs> I'm also thankful to Keith Robinson, whose delivery is so over the top, he should be the only black performer actually forced to perform in blackface. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and uh, since I travel so much, I'm thankful to Patrice O'Neill for teaching me about luggage by jumping up and down on that suitcase in the Samsonite commercial. All right. <laughs> Doug, Doug Davidoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thankful for uh, family, uh, mine and other people's. 
Who else can you have? No, seriously, who else can you have known your whole life yet com feel completely uncomfortable around? <laughs> Last Thanksgiving, the whole family was angry with me because apparently I outed my cousin during an argument over a turkey leg. Because he was like, you had the last leg, you know? I was like, shut up, Billy. You're gay. <laughs> Because every year, Aunt Fran is like, Billy, have you met any nice girls? Are you dating any now? I was like, met any? Billy is wearing capri pants. <laughs> was he had to write a musical right here at the table? If Billy were any more gay, he would just be eaten with a penis. <laughs> That's all I have to say. All right, Leah Delaria. I love Billy. <laughs> I'm thankful that Pope John Paul II is still the head of the Catholic Church. I know some people believe that he's so old he uses pre-chewed communion wafers, but I'm glad to know that the man who governs the spiritual lives of millions had, was actually a busboy at the Last Supper. Sure, he's so old he looks like a piece of beef jerky in a poke gown, but whether he's making papal edicts like condoms not helping fight the spread of HIV or just asking for stewed prunes and a Matlock rerun, he's still Pope John Paul II. Second, the traveling Pope. He's been everywhere but the realm of reality. All right, Patrice O'Neill. I'm thankful that evidently many women have this clammy little ball man fetish. <laughs> and I am so thankful that my friend Jimmy Norton is a clammy little ball man. Take off that hat so he can get a bigger laugh, stupid. <laughs> Thank you, clammy. Uh, oh. Somebody please pass the Norton in the gravy. Um, I'm thankful that Dove, David Dove, got to be on the show to finally prove why no one has ever heard of him. Um, I'm thankful that Colin has achieved his dream of being some kind of Frank Sinatra in this awful new Rat Pack he's trying to create. But, but the only thing Colin has is too many Joey Bishops and one extra Sammy Davis. And, <laughs> Hopefully for one day of getting my girlfriend pregnant so my mother can finally be a baby grandmother. So love... <laughs> There's nothing. Love... I uh, love you, Ma, and uh, happy holidays, everybody, man. Take care, man. See All right, here's what I'm thankful for. Show's over. Good night. <laughs> if you watch the war on CNN, uh, is this how you really thought it would look? Is this what Notre Dame said World War III would be, like... Scrolls at the bottom, you're saying like fire and plagues and, you know, Mesopotamia crusaders. And there's, oh, Gandolfini signed his contract with HBO on the bottom. <laughs> uh, the Schwimmer is not coming back to friends. And the drums like, what's the Schwimmer? Wasn't it a king, a prophet from Judea? I think it sounded similar. Maybe, uh, but seriously. <laughs> Guys, with all the, uh, Jesus. with all the, <laughs> what do you mean? That one didn't stink. It was good. That was a lot of words. I'm <laughs> shut up. A lot of words, and two of them got laughs. That's all, all right, I care all right. about. <laughs> Hey, somehow we gotta mix it up, right, guys? Now look, uh, the war. Do you feel? Do you feel now the coverage on it is first time it's been live? You're watching firefights as they're happening. The uh, journalists are embedded. Do you feel more personally involved? Jeff, you're from the South. You must know a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're pretty much shooting at each other all the time down there. So, uh, I, yeah, I think it's, it's it's much more personal this time than like 12 years. And 12 years ago, it was like wide angle and long distance shots, and 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 I don't know. You just it wasn't as personal with watching bombs drop. But now, when mm. you're riding I, along with these guys in the tank, and they're talking about you know sleeping two hours a day, it, it's much more personal this time to me. I like I like the first war better. I thought that, because the sequel's never as good. The first one's always better. But what's the difference between but, the first war and this war? That's what I want to know. What's the difference between the first war and this war? I don't understand. I didn't watch either one of them, but I'm trying to figure out why You're everybody's upset anything? about this one. No, I'm not watching it. Oh. I don't know nothing about it. George, why did you answer that? Because it's Whoa, whoa, wow. wow. What? I want somebody white to answer it. Um, <laughs> Because, because we asked the same question. <laughs> right. All right, well, what's the difference as far why, as... Because he said it was like, this war is more... Per, but what's, because this why, one's live, like you're watching a battle as it's happening. It was live then. No, no, but you were watching... long distance. The it's closer last now. Time. Everybody's right up. Peter Arnett and everybody's right on the scene right, right now. Right, right. So the difference the troops, now is... Yeah. They're, they're on the sh so when they're being shot at, it's not 10 minutes ago, it's right then. What are you talking... Who remembers? That's... What? You know what? Listen. What are you, 50? How do you remember something? Yeah, we are 50. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm going to ask the same question today, Why don't y'all talk about dummy? the Korean War? Jesus Christ. How many times can you hear the word embedded, by the way? 
Oh, that, the yeah. whole sound of it, they're embedded with the right. truth. It, it sounds like a violation of don't ask, don't tell, doesn't it? A little bit? <laughs> they're well, embedded with the truth. I like the Fox News coverage because it's like so blatantly biased. Mm -hmm. Like they don't even try to pretend to not be biased. Like you see the guy that when they caught that guy for throwing the uh, hand grenade into the, into the tent, and it was some woman, uh, Joan right. something or other, I, I can't remember her name, and she was saying, uh, they caught the guy, Sergeant Asan Akbar. That's his name, folks. Asan Akbar. Like, well, hey, what do you suppose, five, what do you suppose no, Asan no, no, Akbar is, is upset about? George Fox has a and, uh, CNN. I don't watch it, so I just want to know what no the difference, difference is between Fox and CNN. There is no difference. It's basically the same coverage with a scroll underneath there. It's basically the same. All those networks are the same. And you notice they don't have BET, BET up in there, do you? Oh, that's, that's right. right. Because you can't get a correspondent from BET. They ain't not going to going closer than the East River, too. <laughs> you can do that. You know, white folks... <laughs> Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's finally well, coming out. Talk to him. Don't talk to him. White folks are crazy. They go over to the wall. I'm with you, George. They, they go to the, the wall. They're standing right there they in the middle of the wall. You, you know, and we're trying to find uh, Sudan. Oh, that was a tummy hawk just went over my shoulder like that and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> and then they do stuff like this all the time. The hurricane, we're going to get in a little closer, you know, and the hurricane is about to get all up in their ass. We're gonna, black, people, <laughs> black people don't do that. The closest we're going to get is to an ocean. On the other side of the ocean, we're not going over there and do no reporting like but let, that. But let me ask you this. Back that, was good, that was a good point. Ruben what? from American Idol? Hey. <laughs> Listen. I agree hey. with Patrice. Uh, holler back. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where you got to? This uh, Hassan Akbar, is that really biased or isn't it kind of strange? Can you imagine the Iraqi army having like a Colonel, Colonel Morty Feinberg? No. <laughs> if the guy's name is Alan Akbar, he should not be the <laughs> You know what I mean? So where's the bias? What is this bias? No. I don't understand but, what this means. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So well, the guy says he hates. Because, because as a reporter, you're supp even they say themselves, fair and balanced, you decide. I mean, we could, we could decide for ourselves it's biased, but the reporter is not supposed to say the guy's name and smirk while they're but saying it. Is, <laughs> but it I mean, is a little... Yeah, but we can make that decision ourselves. Now, uh, let's talk about the POW tape, which is kind of sad. The, uh, uh, yes. right, Al Jazeera yeah. showing that tape. Now, do you think... Uh, you know, obviously they're going to do whatever they want to do in Al Jazeera. Right. And believe me, I don't even watch Al Jazeera. The kids have it on. And I, <laughs> yeah, damn it. Jeff, you're from the South. You must know a lot of people in the war. What the? <laughs> Jeff from the South? Yes. Yeah. Jeff was in the Army, I think. Were you in the Army? I'm from Brooklyn originally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeff, are you worried about the wall? Man, Jeff's not worried about the wall. Yes, he is. It's all Southern guys. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know that there's any more Southerners in it than anybody else. I mean, the of course there are. What? Why? Why? Ellen, my assistant Ellen Theus was telling me about a friend of hers today in the Marines. Who's about Ellen Theus? Wow. Why is she to her? She's from the South. She's from Louisiana. What does that got to do with anything? Her friend got. What does that got to do with? Badly. <laughs> Wow. That's quite a He's looking at you like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, he knows I, what I'm, I'm talking I'm about. sorry, I was wrong about that. I didn't Jeff, realize. Jeff, you know there's more selling guys fighting in this war. Why don't you admit it? Well, What's yeah, wrong he, with that? Well, what? George Bush should be started. proud of yourself. Yeah, George, George Bush started it. He's a southern. He's from the south. Yeah. And you're from Georgia too, aren't you? Yes, I am from Georgia. What about it? <laughs> damn, goddamn right, boy. Yeah. What? Suddenly it's like an Otis Redding record. Now, you guys right. talking about war? All of you talking about war? I don't like war. No way, no how. That's why I stand. I don't like war. I don't want war. Oh, look at him. He's lying. He's the meanest son of a... No. I want it. <laughs> bomb him. Bomb him. Then bomb him. Why we got no, to bomb him? This is what I want. This is what I want. Here's where... Show me something. One good time, right? Okay. One good time of Arabs... Uh, some kind of coalition of Arab for America. Just something that lets me know that they act, there's some Arabs out there that actually are likable. You know well, what I'm saying? Actually, be, actually are like, hey, yeah. everybody, we love my, you guys. My well, cab, well, just well, once. My, my cab right over here today, the guy was as nice as he could be, man. <laughs> nice as he could be. But you didn't see that, that 357 in that head wrap up there, <laughs> You mean yeah. you didn't drive your monster truck here? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess, uh, sorry about that. I don't I'm know. Sorry. That's about it. Let's just say this about Al Jazeera. I'm canceling my service. I'm serious. They tried to give me the Al Jazeera Lebanese TV package. Which I said, don't call it a package, first of all. all right. And then after that, I said, we'll be right back. <laughs> Spring break is happening, ironically, right now. And uh, people say, how can you be negative about a bunch of drunk college girls taking off their shirts? I ask myself that, too. It feels like high treason. But the truth is, you wouldn't think it was so funny if it was your daughter. You spent 20000 a year trying to give her the uh, dignity afforded by a college degree. And she, you have to watch her sell herself on TV for $5 worth of drink beats, right? So my question is, is spring break right now in bad taste? 
And does it really show us to be decadent, like they say, fella? I think that question should be posed to anybody over 45. Anybody less than 30 I'm is... I'm over is 45, and I'll tell you my answer right now. Yes, please do, because we want to hear what you want to say there, Granddad. I think it's okay to have... <laughs> I think it's okay to have naked girls anywhere, anytime. Spring break, Easter break, Christmas break, whatever break it is. I didn't think you were going to say that, George. I'm yeah, thank you. I'm yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I thought you were going to say it should be yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love the, even the whole notion that these kids need a, a break, you know? That's what I like. <laughs> It's so draining. And after four months of sleeping until noon and drinking cases of beer every night, you really need to let off some steam out there. <laughs> they really, uh... Well, but still, I still intend to get to my videotape piece, you sons of bitches. Now, I say, this doesn't look decadent to you. This doesn't look like the fall of the Roman Empire. That and right there? Wait, they're going to show it. Oh. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, Perfect. let's see that again. <laughs> oh. Look at the one in the yellow. What's, what's... <laughs> I know. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, dude, dude. What's your point? Wait, look, there's slow motion pull. I don't know my point, but dude, I do know. Dude, in 10 years, dude, in 10 years, it's going to be all cottage cheese. Forget it. Look at that. But now, you know, don't you think it's rather ironic that you got all these women's in burkas and everyone's fighting for the freedom to what? To be that? Yes. No, I'm sure they're Okay, but that's not exactly the most empowering What is your problem? What is your problem? Well, I don't ass. No. Is that your problem? No, it my is. problem is I'm trying to get take the other part of the position. Stupid. That's my problem. Why, Jim David? <laughs> Enjoy the well, Isn't that the you, point? You isn't that what I direct you? Women are sitting over there right now going, no, we'd be in bomb today, but next year we'd be in Daytona Beach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> well, it's stupid. No, there'll be, there'll, be, uh, there'll be wet burka contests in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It is. There, there is a deterioration. I know what you're I saying. I, mean, I, I used to go to spring break, and you started to see a little of this stuff, but each year it gets worse and worse. I mean, it used to right. be if you wanted to see naked breasts, you know, you needed a lot of cocaine or a nice car. Or go you to know. one of my family reunions. <laughs> okay. What, now, if, what if they finally fi uh, fire that missile with the measles in it and kills us all, and you never had a chance to... <laughs> you never had a chance to... <laughs> missile to with the measles Whatever they got in their missiles already. <laughs> You haven't had a chance to see a wiggly little young ass? You're Come right. on, man. Are you kidding me? No, Let him go. Yeah. Leave him alone, That's old man. a good point, but yeah, let me ask you. Right. Shut up. I was at spring break before you even knew what it was, stupid. Oh, you in was... In fact, that was the king's break. It was called fall break. Oh, the king of spring break in here. <laughs> Listen, are they, got, are they gonna get us with measles? Well, Whatever they got in there. They have the new measles missile. Measles and a flu bomb. I'm nervous, but I've, been, I've had Please the shot. Please correct me, smart man. What are we going to hit us with? Yes. Uh, influenza? Botulism? Uh, who cares? Yes. Russia actually... <laughs> yeah, they're going to be dropping bank on missile. everybody. <laughs> the, measles, the measles missile. That's going to be an ugly day yeah, around we'll here. Without scratching and itching. All right. It's all so glib. <laughs> you know, it's all so funny. Ha <laughs> ha, spring break girls. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. well, you all have daughters. I'm with you. I, don't, I got two it ain't daughters. Gonna be so, see that? It ain't so funny. It ain't funny. You know, how old are they? How old are your daughters? Don't nine, answer them. Nine and eleven. Oh, oh well. Oh, eight perfect. more years we'll be rubbing on Jeff Foxworthy's daughters. Oh! <laughs> That's legal! Uh. Eight years ago? Not, not, if I, not if I still have my monster truck. <laughs> oh, shit. If you shoot... If you shoot a big black man for rubbing on your teenage daughter, you might be a redneck. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I like it. Come on, white power, no? <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's worked his whole career saying the one thing I won't say, and then dummy from Brooklyn has to say it. All right. Um, let me ask you this question. I don't even want to answer. But where will spring break go? Don't you admit it's gotten a little wild? Girls have clit rings, all kinds of stuff showing up. Where does it go from here? What's it going to be like in 10 it's years? It's going to be the same. It always has been the same. This is the same thing. We have. It's going to be the same thing 20 years from now as it is right now. Don't worry no. about it. We'll be no. rubbing on your wife no. 20 years from now. It, it, wasn't, your... it, it wasn't like this when we, when we went on spring break. No, oh, it's like, like, They're going to be burning virgins at the stake in 20 That's years, exactly man. <laughs> it's no, it's definitely if it was like that, I'd still be in college. That's why I left college. It wasn't like that. And I'll tell you, I blame Luke. I blame Luke and the two live crew started the whole thing. Yes. yes. Hey, hey, hey. Definitely change. Even that dance, I mean, that kind of like freak dancer where they dry hump each other. And then they say the kids now, they're not dating, they're not in relationships. Because you, you don't have to. You dance for 10 minutes, you're free. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know? All these guys got kids. I, can, I can't talk to them about this. This is, you know, I'm not, I don't have any kids. I love this. Me neither. I like I'm acting that. like I, I have kids that. for the sake of the segment. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, I know.
I don't know. Give me a paper. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know I don't know a damn thing. I just know one thing. What? I asked the same question four times. Everybody threw it in my face, and I didn't appreciate this one bit. If you know anyone in a wet T-shirt, leave it on our website. Even a fat guy. We some of them have nice ones. We'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, ready? Um, ugh. That's the first time they make Anybody on the set can make an arbitrary decision to cut me at any time, and they do it. You understand that? Like anybody just go cut, and I'm off the air. Shut uh, up. I can't imagine why. Me neither. Why don't you go get another uh, spray on tan, stupid? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the reality, speaking of. Uh, speaking of <laughs> I, I'm the reality sorry. Cancun, uh, the first reality movie opens Friday in theaters near you, created by the producer of The Real World. Let's take a look at this clip. All right, we're going to start this wet t shirt competition, so we're going to need some hot ladies up here. That girl's like 14 years old. Now, what do you guys think of this, okay? Well, I, I, for one, am excited about this movie because it's a lot easier to be the creepy old guy in the back of a theater than the creepy old guy at spring break. So, I, uh, and we know what both of us feel like. Yes, we do, Colin. Uh, I really don't... I don't need to see the real Cancun. I'd like yeah. to see the real Hong Kong. Which is <laughs> about a bunch of Chinese people making scatological pornography and coughing into each other's faces. Say it. Say it so I can get 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. He's not going to say, say it. the word. Say what? Exercise. I, we, no, yeah. Sar, stupid. Please. Say it. We had a bet. All we had right. a bet that uh, Sar would be the first joke out of your mouth. No. <laughs> it's going to kill in the theaters. I mean, all these, you know, you get a bunch of kids that go, oh, you know, we went on spring break. As long as my daughters aren't in it, I don't care. You know. <laughs> they are in it, stupid. I mean, why wouldn't it do well? Uh, every type of reality programming yeah. has worked. I mean, everything, every, they're on real world like 19 now, yeah. right? So why wouldn't that movie work? <coughs> and it's also a question of the reason these movies are out is because now they're finally realizing everything on TV and movies, most of it stinks. It's written by dummies. And that, you know, even though reality TV may stink, it doesn't stink as bad as regular TV always does. Yes, it does. Well, no, it does. No, it it's does. worse. You know what's sad? That you actually, I know why you're defending real t regular TV, because you probably, your dumb manager probably told you, yeah. hey, you know, Jim, they're really noticing you on the show. <laughs> yeah. And what you actually doing? think gonna, they're going to fly you out for some dumb yeah. meeting, and yeah. you know what? You're never going to be the lead on a yeah. show. Oh. They're not going to build a sitcom around that. What's going to happen is... What's, yes, they will. What's, what's, they will. They will, Colin. Come what's, on, stop it. Stop it. it. They'll call it living inside a tequila bottle. Yeah. <laughs> that might be encouraging, though, because it's like, even if no matter how bad you do in this business, you can always get a job hosting a show on Comedy Central. <laughs> The reason people want to watch reality programming is because uh, people are like me. I would much rather watch real people cry and have crises than people pretend to reenact some writer's idea of what a crisis yeah. is. You know, let's watch real people. <laughs> but they're not no, showing just... real situations. They're showing uh, contrived situations. Joe Millionaire. That wasn't a real situation. It was. It was built so everybody could feel okay when they walked away. They're not showing reality. Yeah, but people well, got you know, upset and they cried and they had. You know, that's what I want to see. I want to see people break down and lives get ruined. Now wait a minute. It's all about reality. Now, amateur porn is reality, so people love amateur porn, yes? yes. Why do you love amateur, amateur porn? Do you like it better than regular porn? It makes you feel oh, like you, uh, you could possibly... Uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> it may... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel like you could possibly... Oh. Some, oh, come on. <laughs> it makes you feel like you could possibly <laughs> be there right. yeah, you know. and then do it. Yeah. And you know what else? These are, <clears throat> the, we should support amateur <laughs> porn filmmakers. These are per people that are working outside of the studio system. And I think... Uh, <laughs> First of all, Agent. whoever made these cards does not know you guys, because one of the questions, do you ever go online to look at porno? <laughs> 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 Do you ever get offline uh -oh. when you're looking at No. But now, you guys just, we want to talk about the vacation, because you guys had a vacation yeah. getaway, a nice family vacation. It was, it was a little reality TV, a little ugly American, a little Graham <coughs> Greene type, you know. It was great. Comedy. It was Brazil. It was, it was, oh. it was, it was, these guys went to Brazil. They just got back. Awful has that tan year round. It doesn't matter if he's, you know. Let me tell you something. Doing That's a one nighter in Teenack, he always yeah. has that tan. Uh, something wrong with his liver. You could see Jim. Yes. 
Jim can't, he's not allowed out in the sun. You know, he's, got a, he's got a combination of the powder disease and a couple of other things. Like the boy in the plastic bubble you got a picture? Thing. You got a picture on? We got some pictures of them uh, on their vacation. Yeah. Uh, this is the kind of uh, artwork they were doing down there. You know? uh, oh, look at yeah. that. Yes, the guys, you see beautiful uh, women there. And, uh, oh, there's <laughs> What do you think? That is, uh, that, that, I know, yeah, that's, to, uh, no, you're trying to, uh, no, he was visiting that's somebody. A Yao, that's a Yao Ming, uh, poster. You think, <laughs> let me tell you something. If you think Meryl Streep is a good Does actor, think, yeah. watch a whore or prostitute pretending he's good looking. Okay? <laughs> Pretending he's in shape. I, I can't. I'm trying to put myself into the mind of a whore in Brazil and seeing you three guys walk in the door, and I don't know who I would go for. But I, come on, I, it goes without saying. Look at that little mush <laughs> right there. He, we were it's sitting. True. We were sitting. You actually the good looking one. At least he's he horrified. At least. At least listen, shut up, stupid. At least at least he's trying, stop trying to get on. Oh, <laughs> at least, at least he's uh, packing you. Oh, you. <laughs> Wait, stop Listen. buying Viagra over the counter there. Bro. <laughs> First of all, we were sitting, we're eating, right? We're eating, and I look at him and I go, "Be careful about the seafood. You might, might get sick, right?" And then I realize he's going <laughs> on hookers in Brazil, and, and, and I'm warning him about fish. Oh, oh. people! <laughs> did you, did no, you guys? Right. I, on I, that I, note, I would like to say we'll be right back, and I hope you appreciate the openness that these guys trusted you with just now. <laughs> we'll be right back. Dries wants to say something. I'd like to say that that picture was a touch-up by Comedy Central. It was done earlier, and she was a model, and it oh. was all staged. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a touch-up because <laughs> they didn't make you look ashy. <laughs> <laughs> Boss you know going what? after your own culture. Uh, mm -hmm. Finally going to laugh from your people. When now what? Go ahead, boss. When we were in Brazil, after I was done with a beautiful prostitute who was a 10, um, a 10, okay? A 10 in American I'm or a, Brazilian? A, a, calm down. <laughs> All right, a headliner's talking now. Listen to me. <laughs> All right? Now, I'm, I'm done with this beautiful hook. I'm laying in bed watching TV. This is true. And, and, and everything's dubbed in Portuguese. And Crocodile Dundee 2 is on. And his dumb little stupid par comes on. Not only do you stink in English, you stink in Portuguese, too. Okay? They hate you in more than one country. I'm telling you, it's horrible. Uh, 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 you sold that a lot better than it really was. But yeah, I'm telling you, hey, please. I'm going to overact that one a little Shut bit. Shut up, I'm a big act. <laughs> I can't only, I'm doing this with you only zero. Only this show he brags. Yeah. He brags like as if you know, he was a movie star. I'm with a prostitute. <laughs> You say, you say, like, like he's really scored. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! What type of oh, right, look, you know what we're going to talk about? Uh, Many wonder if, on, you know, they armed the pilots. Was there an armed pilot on you guys' flight? They don't announce we, uh, that. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. And I, I don't think they should have on, fella. those drunks. They should What's do. that? Those drunks. They, they're drunks and they're ex-Vietnam vets, man. One little yeah. dude slipped and hit his head on the door and he's turning around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, let me tell you, man, L.L. Airlines... They don't have hijackers because they check every car a, a mile away from the airport. So, it, it, see, America is confused with uh, freedom, uh, losing freedom as losing yeah. convenience. We want to. We don't want to lose convenience. We don't mind losing freedom. We just don't want to get to the. We want to get to the airport on time. But they should just check every car a mile away from the airport. If you got a 12 noon flight, get there at. Well, that's, 2 what, that's what's good about pilots with guns. I mean, that is the last line. If a pilot has yeah. a gun, that, yeah. that's it. I want them no, worried you know about what? flying. I want them worried about shooting somebody, too, the, the power to think that they can shoot. When do they get yeah. to shoot? Well, when they think it's a hijacking? Well, well, first of all, I'm, I'm just, I agree with you, actually. Um, I think that they should absolutely arm all white pilots. Listen. <laughs> well, no. That's, That's redundant. <laughs> Why even say white? Um, what, the Chinese ones? Yeah. Well, so I'll tell you, there should be racial profiling at the airports. Whenever it's a terrorist attack in this world, you know who you think of what first. What show are you on? You don't yeah. go, oh, those Scottish are at it again. At the what? airports, what you know. He on? That was what? from the NBC calling question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. I didn't do that show. <laughs>
Don't talk to me. Now you're trying to say that joke. You're using no. his joke yeah, in December. You wrote no. that in December. Well, well you really smashed. annoyed me the fact that he was saying that racial profiling should be. And who do you think? You don't think you're going to be stopped, you little dirty looking Arab? You're going to be stopped. <laughs> It's true. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, little militia boy. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't bad. I got this going. It was funny. It was funny. It was funny. He's starting to laugh. I All right. It. I so don't it. Really oh, oh. Oh. And the other thing I hated, I have to be honest, everyone's disgusted me so far, including myself on this show, but was when Patrice goes, LL Airlines, like he's Mr. Sophisticated World Traveler. Well, Instead thing. of saying, shh. Instead of saying an Israeli airline, which I've never been on, my, my agent told me that it's, uh, they have... Ella, I saw that look. Shut up and when let the, the crowd laugh September at my joke yeah, before you jump the boss. Oh, and look, as you can... Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the end of the... They the shouldn't the give... Look at this. No look applause. at this idiot. Yeah. They should not give... <laughs> <laughs> he so needs a gun. Uh, uh, you just hate him because he looks like every guy at social services. They call from the back. They go, should we let it? No. <laughs> When we come back, Nick DePaulo, Patrice, and I will respond to the message board. Oh, <laughs> so good. Comedian. You know, one thing we love is when you go online and tell us what you think about the show. Tough crowd viewers are not only the most opinionated bastards, they're also the worst spellers, all right? <laughs> I've been promising we're going to respond to some of these comments on the air. I thought I'd ask two of our most controversial panelists, Nick and Patrice, to join me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's start with Patrice. Patrice, this one is from one of your biggest fans, apparently. We're not allowed to say their stupid email names, oh. I guess. Um, I think Patrice stinks, and I don't like him. <laughs> Patrice uses the most overused white jokes. That's his entire act. It's not the fact that he uses them, but he steps on everyone else's punchlines to get to them. Oh, yeah, and he's fat. I know who that's from. <coughs> well, look, he's, a, he's probably a quadriplegic. Typing, <laughs> <laughs> typing with a straw in his mouth. He is fat. <laughs> F you, jackass. Uh, <laughs> I have to uh, cut people off sometimes because sometimes I have to get my point out, man. So I can't let uh, Stroke Mouth and the Puerto Rican always <laughs> squeeze the knock knock jokes out. Give me a chance, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Here's the next one. Patrice has two things. Patrice has two things going for him in comedy. This is what this one's from. Yeah, cholesterol uh, and cancer. No. <laughs> Did you see him coming at him? <laughs> Look, here's Patrice. Patrice has two things going for him in comedy. He's black and he's fat. He doesn't have to try very hard to come up with good material. If you're a fat, minority, gay, female, or handicapped, you should be a comic. Skinny, white, male comics are the funniest people out there, but political correctness holds us down. Amen. Oh, Amen. Thank you, Greg Rogel. This guy <laughs> got to be a hacky little white comic, of course. But you know what? I don't think it's Greg because he's Jewish. Uh, this is the work of a real solid Aryan. Uh, so it's these, one of these white boys who watches me in the back and wonders why I'm not bombing every night. Shut your face, stupid, and take the two stars Naomi Judd gave you, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nick, you're next. Are you got time for me? Thanks. Yes. Nick. <laughs> All right, this one's from some fan of yours. It says, Nick is a dumb Dago working class boor. His IQ is under 100. He's as funny as a urine stained New York alley. Just by being alive, he makes fun of low end white trash. What a travesty. <laughs> dumb Dago? Who the hell are you, Elliot Ness? <laughs> If you're going to use an Netflix slur, use something somebody other than Strom Thurmond's going to find funny. You know, what, what, what next? Nincompoop? <laughs> and as far, as far as my IQ, it is under 100, but that's only because your sister swallowed 40 points of it last night. <laughs> and hold on. I'm not finished with you, you punk. <laughs> and as far as being funny as a urine stain alley, who would know more about urine stain alleys than someone who was conceived in one? <laughs> Good night. No. Here's another one. Nick DiPaolo, I even laughed at his jokes tonight. I finally saw some humility in him. Yep. And now I get his harsh jokes. I didn't get a good one. I finish it. Last week he seemed like a racist bigot to me. I'm glad to see he's not. So you finally found me funny, huh? It's amazing how much better my jokes work when your view isn't being blocked by a pair of 14-year-olds nuts. <laughs> As far as humility, humility doesn't make a comic funny. It's his point of view. You know, I want your laugh, not your vote. <laughs>
And as far as last week goes, maybe the only reason I seemed like a bigot was because you were watching the show while you were sitting on Spike Lee's lap. <laughs> P.S. Bigot is spelled with one G, you dumb Polak. <laughs> All right. I get too many to really, uh, you know, right read them all, but here's one. Colin really st needs to stop eating on the air. He looks like effing Jiminy Glick. <laughs> and then this other person writes back to that person, hey, either Colin eats on air or we don't, and we don't have to hear his incoherent rambling, or he doesn't eat on air and we do have to listen to his incoherent rambling. Look at I love that. Would you rather I spoke like this? and just kind of gave you the joke and the punchline and be one of the comedians that laughs at his joke so that you get it? Is that the style you like, stupid? You can't follow individuals? What? That's one of the insults they said about me on the message board. They laugh at my jokes all the time. Is what? It, it, what? They said I laugh at my own jokes all the time on that message board. Really? I hate that message board, man. God damn They it. said you laugh at your own jokes? But do you know what I'm talking about? First of all, do you know that I'm talking? But second of all, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm saying, everybody always complains, oh, comedy is uh, too hack. And then when you try to be your own self, whatever flaws you might have, then I get to listen to dummies like this who want a game show uh, host with blow dried hair and a suit, standing there smiling at them with perfect teeth. To <laughs> you, mother. All right, listen. <laughs> well, wait a minute. That was John Stewart you just talked about. I really did get mad. Mm. That was Ken Over he's talking about. This is. <laughs> All right, this one's from a guy for me, just to show I've still got it. I drink his bath water. He could not be hotter. I'm not a fat chick either. I'm a bodybuilder who can't wait till tough crowd comes on every night. Rock on, you sexy Irish bastard. You know what? Listen, big guy. I'm a bit of an amateur bodybuilder myself. I've decided to throw you a bone. Here's a promo shot we decided not to use of me. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, everybody. We do like read a, the message look boards. like a gay bowling well, <laughs> That's good enough. We'll be right back. Oh. <laughs>what the funny thing is this is like one of my favorite shows right now and my favorite people and i still feel like killing everybody on the panel right now <laughs> i don't even know why maybe i'm just a hateful person or maybe you deserve death i don't know <laughs> think about it thanks to recent legislation as of last sunday airline pilots are allowed to carry guns so we asked our panelists what other profession profession would you give guns to and why ken i haven't said this in many years ken over oh uh, thank you i didn't know you felt that way about game show hosts okay uh, uh, I think that shrinks should be armed, not so much for their own protection, but for ours. You see, they are society's first line of defense. Every day they see problems that will never be solved. Years of Prozac and therapy don't come close to the healing power of a 38 slug carefully placed at the base of the skull. Beautiful. All right, Jim Norton. Um, I think stand-up comedians should be uh, allowed to be armed. This way, the uh, next time you're on stage and some <clears throat> jack-off in the audience answers his cell phone, or some irritating Long Island whore is just staring at you blankly, shoving buffalo wings into her fat face. <laughs> or some guy with a bad mustache and dumpster breath comes up to you and goes, oh, here's one you can use in your act. You could just put the barrel of the gun into their mouth and blow their stupid brains all over the bar menu. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice O'Neill. Uh, I uh, really think Jim Norton's T cells should be given a gun <laughs> 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 to, to help protect them from whatever virus he brought back from Brazil because a drug cocktail ain't gonna be enough. <laughs> Also, Ken Over should be allowed to carry a gun for security against Matt Lars' attempt to have a murder so he can be the only one in showbiz with that awful haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like something that <laughs> it looks like something that you use to start a fire when you're stuck on a desert island. Rich <laughs> uh, 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 article in the New York Times about what is edgy comedy and what is censorship these days. If you want to see the difference in the way the world is, watch All in the Family and then watch Becker. All in the Family, because that was the new All in the Family. Like, yeah, you had mixed feelings in All in the Family. Here's this prejudiced guy who's also a good family man and said a lot of things that seemed to make sense. 
Becker, they're trying to be edgy. So maybe he was a little bit prejudiced, but his best friend was a blind black dude. His confidant is a black nurse, and underneath he is likable. Because this is the thing about the networks. They're obsessed with likability. If they did Archie Bunker today, after the first season, they'd do a focus group. And if six people said he was too mean, out of 500, they'd put him in a Hawaiian shirt <laughs> and tell him to smile more and stop yelling at his wife and stop calling Mike a meathead and let people sit in his chair. <laughs> Yes. I'll tell you right now, the networks, they don't like you making fun of anybody. You don't talk bad about blacks, women, Latin. The only acceptable comic target in Hollywood is the white male. Uh, <laughs> Greg? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, pe people need to lighten up. When you knock a racial or ethnic group, it doesn't necessarily mean you hate them. It just means you really don't like them because they're prone to crime and have huge penises. <laughs> Patrice! What was the question? <laughs> the question is, are the only people you're allowed to make fun of nowadays white males? I hope so, or my career is over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Lewis! You know, I don't think so, because, you know, if, if that were true, then how come none of us have a sitcom? And I know Patrice is black, but if I was going to hire somebody to bash whites, it would be Patrice. I think we should have a show of, the, of, of just us guys. It could be called a, a wop, a kike, a spick, a mick, and, and the uppity darky. Dom! The only acceptable target is the handsome, successful, wealthy, incredibly charismatic, man about town, white male. You know, kind of like... Me. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. What do you guys think is, uh, what kind of things are not okay to say on stage today or in, more appropriately love on network TV do they stop you from saying? A woman came up to me in Ireland and she says to me, I swear to God, she goes, you're evil, you f <laughs> True story. No, listen. <laughs> Normally you can't. Let me explain the rules of TV. You can't say on TV, but when you say it with an Irish accent, it's not a big deal over there. I said this C-O-O-N-E. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Well, it's actually, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the comedy because it's spelled with a K. Yeah. So that's even this, totally. Even this network. Um, well, what, what did you just say? I said even, even, even this wonderful network that this show is on that I get to do once oh, a week. Oh, my Lord. Um, I, <laughs> what are you going to say? I was doing my half hour special. Yeah. And uh, I do the thing about the sniper, the black sniper. Yes. And blah, 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 blah. The punchline was nigga in a Buick. And <laughs> they, it's they, so funny they, to get to the They cut out they cut out Buick. They cut out they Buick. Cut out Buick. <laughs> I swear to God. Because because they didn't want to uh, oh. Buick. Oh. Oh. In a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was just illogical. It wasn't funny. Because it wasn't really a Buick. Oh. But that's the point. That's why it's funny, though. Was it a Cadillac? Cadillac? The reason it's funny is because right. we don't understand why things are funny. Hard consonants are funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, blah, blah, blah in a Chevy or blah, blah, blah in a, in a, in a, in a Maxima is not funny. Buick is funny. That's why. And the fact that he wasn't in a Buick is the reason. I'm a comedy genius, and it's hard to... <laughs> Express. You're right. <laughs> why? Why that's funny? But, but don't you think? Funny. Basically, we all know the deal. We all have met many times, sat down. If you're doing comedy, a bunch of years, people seem you seem to know what you're doing. You get laughs all over the country, all over the world, yeah. and then you go to these network meetings. If three people with no sense of humor going, you know, that's really not. I don't find that yeah. funny. It's like who cares what you find? Uh, but they're in charge of making artistic marketing. decisions, yeah. and there's 50 of them making money off you. Yeah, you know what I mean? I asked a guy once, his name is Sandy Gruschow. He's like the head of Fox. I've there. heard of him. Yeah. I asked him, and I was doing, I was doing this, he liked this one comedian I was doing, and he goes, where'd you get that? I said, you know, I told him where it came from. And he, I said, well, so what's your background? I said, I'm thinking, you know, somewhere, he's a, a marketing, finance, marketing and finance. I go, did you ever like see a play? Did you ever like read a book? I mean, it's like nothing. It's amazing. Yeah. But then even like you, you talked about with the test, the, the test audiences, that doesn't even produce the results they want because they say they want to, if they told me, look, we can't judge our own, our own, uh, you know, right. our own uh, minds because, because our own judgment is, is off so often we're pandering to people we don't really know. So we're going to do these test groups and that's going to result in hit. Well, but even that doesn't work. Seinfeld so, was low Seinfeld test. 
never what? been. And there's yeah. no way you're going to tell me no matter what mutants they had in the room, there's no but way any group of people found, have. according to Jim, funny. You know what they have? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Not sorry. You know what they have, though, is they actually, the way they do it is they don't test it in front of humans. They actually have a hundred monkeys, and, <laughs> and if the monkeys don't take a crap, that's the show they put on the air. <laughs> so, <laughs> so on Geraldo's canceled shows, they took a crap? <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I did. I hold this truth to be self-evident. Please don't leave me alone with these people. We'll be right back. <laughs> Fellas, the show's on. <laughs> it's a very good show, too. Yeah, I know, but the conversation at the beginning of the monologue, they don't see you, and then, you know, it's not professional, in my opinion. But I could be wrong. Maybe you guys talking during the show is a good thing. What the All hell right, do I get know? get on with it. What's it, like, <laughs> what's it like having a little freckled Irish <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, it cut to the chase, there, didn't you, Don? <laughs> well, folks, customers are suing Macy's, Dillard's, and J.C. Penney for racial profiling, something minority shoppers say has long been an unfortunate fact of life. Now, first of all, Patrice, what do you people do with it, J.C. Penney? I thought they would be caught dead there. Second of all, who's following them around the story? Is it white people? I've been to those stores my whole life. I'd say half the employees are white, half are people of color. You act like there's never been 70 kids from Antoine Fisher High bum rushing a Korean deli. Let me tell you, my eyes have seen what they've seen. Even when you buy something, you still got to make the guy nervous by pretending you're not going to pay for it, the poor Korean guy. You have to hold it open in the store. He's like, yo, you pay for that? Yo, I'll pay for that ching cha. And then the poor little Ecuadorian guy, the two little Ecuadorian guy looking at you, what are you going to do, you Mexican? And then you pay. What do you think about this? How long was that insult going to last? Uh, <laughs> This is what I'm saying. They always watch the black people. I don't know. And listen, this is the funny thing about black people. We don't steal. We're the only ones who really buy stuff. All white dudes buy are clogs and, and silk shirts. And, <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you, if you, look at the, if you look closely at the Winona Ryder video, Wesley Snipes was standing right next to her. That's the only reason she got caught. Because they was looking for... <laughs> They were looking at Wesley. <laughs> that is, uh, I, I agree. Uh, happy Valentine's, by the way. But uh, I, I think that uh, that it is, it is, it is, uh, it is racist for black for uh, people to follow black people around the store. Because the reality is, black, shoplifting really is more of a of a white woman crime. Yeah, it really is. You know, blacks are more into like mugging and carjacking. Uh, rape, rape, and, and rape. rape. <laughs> Stabbing <laughs> Sorry. But what about, uh, so Patrice, do you feel like people, when you go into a store, do people kind of like this? It's, it's, it upsets me only, only because the history of what we do. Black people go in a sneaker store. I can't believe how black people get treated in sneaker stores. I buy a pair of sneakers every other day. And, <laughs> and you ever see a white man shop for sneakers? Yeah. He, he wants to know how much spring is in the shop step. Does this zipper really matter? All I want is the pair of sneakers that match my belt buckle that day. And they, <laughs> and they still treat me like uh, Mr. Oh, what are you? It, it's, 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 are you actually working out so much you're wearing out sneakers every two days? <laughs> Out. But, it's also, but there's no racial issue when you walk into those snotty stores, any of those snot stores like Gucci, Pucci, whatever the, you know, all of those stores where it just costs way, way too much, where it's out of control. Anybody who walks in those stores is immediately, what a piece of crap you are. When they come over to treat you, it's like, what are you doing here? Why would you even bother to walk in this store? The idiots are selling three sweaters there. Who the hell is buying? How does the store even stay open? What's the point of this joke? These are the questions <laughs> that I keep asking myself. Well, everything doesn't have to be a joke. See, what you did was you're not like a lot of these comedians that go for the laugh. You just had a nice, <laughs> <laughs> you had a nice little story. All right, look, let's talk about this. Speaking of great jokes that I want to make sure I get out. I was, this uh, Reverend Gene Robinson has been elected the first gay bishop in the Episcopal Church, okay? That's right. He was elected yesterday, and I'll tell you something. I heard one of his sermons. I'm not kidding. And uh, first of all, I don't think uh, you should start a sermon by talking about how you were disappointed in the Tony Awards. But also, <laughs> but I say it's better you find out up front about these guys. Not like the Catholic Church, where you don't find out until you're, you know, face down in a pile of vestments with rosary beads around. Right <laughs> Tom, uh, Tom, what do you think? Well, I think that it's interesting you would say that 
Uh, I mean, I was an altar boy, and it's interesting. No, it's interesting how anything can be a sign of rejection. I look back and I think, you know, what about me, Father? How what? I wasn't good enough for you, Father. <laughs> I wasn't sexy enough. Oh yeah, the O'Malley twins got it twice a week, but you couldn't lift up little Dom Herrera's cast and make him feel important. So. And now, now I think we know where that little Irish freckled d*** show came from, the O'Malley. He's a little jealous of the O'Malley boys. Everything has its guard. No. Do you think it's okay? Do you guys really think it's okay for the church to have gay or does it bother It shocks me that people in this day and age have any issue with gay people at all. But on the other hand, if you're going to believe in this Bible nonsense, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty clear in there that God's got a problem with gays. You know, it says a man shall not lay with another man. I mean, it says that in black and white. I mean, I guess if you do it standing up, that's all right. <laughs> Well, who cares? Uh, on, the list, <laughs> on the list of things that we got to worry about, gay priests is like on page 96. Wait, After, what? are we eating too much garlic as a people? I would, be, I would be gay, but I just can't get in that kind of shape. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give in to the dark side, folks. Watch these commercials. We'll be right back. <laughs> You know, uh, longtime Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat is being forced out of power to make way for a new prime minister who can work with Israel. Last night, they threw him a retirement roast. And we happen to have the tape. We're very lucky. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the compound. And we're gathered here, Rama, 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 tonight to honor a good friend uh. and a fellow and a hell of a freedom fighter, Yasser Arafat. By the way, hey, give it up. Come on, come on. No, no, no. By the way, nice headdress, yes, sir. The Olive Garden called. They want their tablecloth back. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Ooh, ah, ooh. You know, you know, but seriously, folks, you can't mention Yasser Arafat without mentioning his beautiful wife, Suha. You know why Suha's vagina is called the West Bank? Because it's occupied by Israeli soldiers. That's why. Is this the one? Hello? Breathe, that's so funny. Now, now I'd like to bring up an old friend, a buddy, very funny guy, works all the major high clubs, Abdul. Thanks, Mohammed. And by the way, nice dinner. I ordered the hummus, not the Hamas. <laughs> hey, you try doing this without Jewish writers. Now, I shared a cab with Mohammed on the way over, and let me tell you, he's not exactly a member of the bath party. Whoa. <laughs> laugh, folks, because if these jokes don't bring down the house, there's an Israeli bulldozer parked outside the will. <laughs> Mr. Arafat, you're like a father to me. You taught me the difference between right and Jew. <laughs> I'm going to miss you more than my six dead brothers. <laughs> Did I say dead? I meant martyred, lucky oh. bastards. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, folks, a lot of people forget there's Muslims in Africa. And obviously, if this next guy's any indication, they're not all starving. Whoa. 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 Please, please say hello to a man from the Sudan, Kareem. Thank you, Puerto Rican Arab. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're a great leader, my friend. The, the, the Yom Kippur War, the Six Day War, the, the raid on Antibi. Oh, boy. No wonder they gave you the Nobel Peace Prize. You never won a war in your life. <laughs> oh, so, we're going to give it up, everyone, for, for the man of the hour, my friend. Ah, my friend. The man who puts the tada in oh. his tada. <laughs> Yes, sir! Elephant! Oh, thank you, oh, wow. Wow. My friend! Allah Akbar! First of all, it's Intifada, not Infitada. <laughs> no wonder the Oslo Accords fell apart. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. What a hilarious night. Hey, guys, I don't mind if you bomb. Just do it at next time at a restaurant in Tel Aviv. <laughs> oh. uh, I'll tell you. Oh,
play. It's great to be uh, roasted by a bunch of uh, fools whose only TV credits is Al Jazeera. Uh -huh. Yes. Off prime time. Uh -huh. Look, I know that for many years, uh, big criticism as I refused to make face-to-face -face negotiation with Israel, but why? Two words, gold in my ear. Ooh. That's not a face you want to face, believe me. I'm kidding, she's a, she's a lovely woman, very handsome woman. Uh, this reminds me of the quick impression. Moshe Dayan. Uh, yes, I'm old enough to remember him, so what? Uh, who am I kidding? I'm old enough to remember Ramses. The first. Oh. Uh, oh, hey, oh. hey, we got a gift for you, okay? Oh, yeah. It's a sea cruise on the Achille Lauro. Oh. It's the first rock you ever chucked at an Israeli tank. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Don't be a stranger. I mean, I'll still be around, you know. It's not like I'm going to retire in Miami. Allah oh. <laughs> uh, Akbar, good night. <laughs> We've all been at these network pitch meetings. It's the worst. There's no greater hell than having your uh, brilliant pitch rejected by people who greenlit, you know, my big fat Greek life or something, all right? Mm. Uh, pitch your show that would never make it on TV, network TV, Greg. Uh, as the fastest growing minority in America, Hispanics are underrepresented on network television. So maybe we can piggyback on this terrorist and dictator craze. Uh, I'd pitch a sitcom starring Saddam Hussein. He hangs out on the sidewalk in Washington Heights playing table games with old Dominican dudes. It's called Sadominos. <laughs> or, uh, or, uh, or a Seventh Heaven family-oriented inspirational type show starring Osama bin Laden as a tour guide in the ancient Peruvian city of Machu Picchu. It'd be called Osama's Llama. <laughs> <laughs> or, or finally, a show that you'll never see on any network ever, The Patrice O'Neill Show. Oh. I'm glad I got a little dig in. That's good. good. It was good. instinctual. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, well, you got to dig in earlier and you felt guilty yes, and now you feel happy. Maybe I did. <laughs> Louis Black. I guarantee you'll never see this show. It's a family show. It's Jews. He's an accountant. She's as jappy as they come. It's Nazi Germany. It's Hitler and his wacky posse. It's the sitcom to end all sitcoms. It's Holocaust My Ass. We take the premise that many idiots have that there was no Holocaust and watch the hijinks ensue as the Nazis try to live with all those crazy Jews. <laughs> hey. No, Lewis, it's not that we don't think there was a Holocaust, we just think the figures were a little high. Ice Ogden Roger. That's what those guys say, right? Oh, Tom Herrera. Tom Herrera. Uh, uh, it's Herrera. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> the happy comedian. Every week, a comedian goes on the road, and his wife and, and his kids encourage him to bang another waitress. She's a part-time waitress and also a stripper who's in law school or medical school because if he gets sick, then she can take care of him. His middle act is all really hot chick who's also happened to be into women also. Another also. At the end of the show, he takes the girl home, and then he and his wife sleep with her, and that's why he's called the happy comedian. Oh, beautiful. All right, Patricio O'Neill. Uh, this is my show. I gotta, act like, gotta get the pitch thing go. Hey, the reincarnated ghost of a suicide bomber comes back to Earth and convinces sleeper cells that killing themselves and others is wrong. Each week he circles the globe, finding a new adventure. Uh, <laughs> and he's, he's chased endlessly by a group of evil Seattle-based pimps who want those 76 virgin bitches for themselves. And, <laughs> And hunted by law enforcement because he came back looking just like the nine of clubs. And, um, <laughs> how come you un <laughs> unpaved dirt road to heaven should be a fine addition to Pax Television. Oh, that's beautiful. 
You're blind with us here. <laughs> Folks, what's the matter? Unpaved dirt road to heaven should have got oh, that one. actually beautiful. Yeah. Let me tell you Unpaid something. Unpaved dirt road. You know what? I'm going to sit here and talk to you guys. I'm not reading mine. Because first of all, mine always gets cut out anyway. Why should I bomb? Yeah. Why should I bomb? I go last. Well, usually you guys will find, but usually everybody has 20 dick jokes in their stupid act four. And I go trying to be clean, take the high road. I look like an ass. People at home are saying, oh, that's not funny. He's not funny. You know, they're laughing all these dummies dick jokes. I'm not paying the price today. Today we're leaving like this. Uncomfortable silence. <laughs> I've actually heard many times in the past 10 years, white kids come up to me and talk badly about somebody and describe them as a real white guy. Really white. You know, this is from other white people, self-hating whites. When did white become a derogatory term? used by white people to describe all the white people. <laughs> Nick, why is it so uncool to be white? Because Suge Knight says so. Who's gonna argue with him? I'll tell you when it became uncool to be white. <laughs> Since that got nothing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Have a sip of time. <laughs> Shut up, Dave. You look, like a, you look like a burnt biscuit. Now look. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Come on, don't touch me, will you? This ain't prison. Yo, I'm <laughs> you know when it became uncool to be white? After all these Super Bowl parades, when the black, you know, athletes make the white dorky guy dance. You know, we don't, we don't make the black athlete read his contract out loud, right? I mean, oh, oh, I'm saying, that's when it became uncool. No, it became uncool when you wear these pants that fit exactly how they're supposed to. <laughs> Tight around the ankles, stains on them is fantastic. Let me tell you something. What, why, here's why white people are uncool. They try to be black, but they still try to have white style. Like, look at Collins Dread, this corduroy. It's, it's pure trying to be black, but trying to keep a whiteness to it. But it fits exactly. Do you see how black people's clothes, they kind of fit? Now, stand up for a second, Greg. Just stand up one second. <laughs> you see how Greg's pants fit? He's back. Yeah. That's why they're going make it. By the way, uh... <laughs> Applause for the black guy. Yes, man. Yeah. Racist. Yeah. Chicken. By the, way, by the way, Patrice, it's good to see you've learned to talk without saying hey, hey, hey first. Listen. Okay. That was a good one. Independent <laughs> film hair. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Your plan messiness. Shut up. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Oh, Clothes you aside, <laughs> you guys may have had a flash and flare, and you don't anymore, by the way, but you may have had something when I was coming up. But why is it uncool for blacks to be part of the white world? Because they don't, I think white people don't have anything to fight. Black people have like a, a grudge, they have a fight, they have a, a grudge. Thing to, yeah, they do have a grudge. They have Ooh. a bit of a grudge, right? I'm not kidding. I mean, yeah. What's that date back white to? <laughs> well, it's, this whole this whole sellout thing is so you know it's like you know I'm I'm half Colombian half Spanish. People always, I've had people say that I'm a sellout, that I'm a self-hating Latino. You know, and luckily I don't care what those greasy wetbacks think. But <laughs> it still it happens to me all the time. Right, because he, you went to law school and Harvard and all these good schools, right? Yeah. Well, no. Why does that mean it's white if he just goes to law school? That's, That's not, not us right? saying it. We're saying black people but say Brian, that. They say Brian Gumbel acts white, right? Yes. I mean, no, he's like a newscaster. I couldn't be a newscaster. Well, white with my people accent. don't say black people act white. Black people. Say white people act Brian, right. Brian Gumbel's an asshole in any race. <laughs> it's not, look, it ain't, it's not a, it's not a, the diction. See, a lot of people think because you, when you use diction, and it's an attitude, man. It's a certain kind of uh, posture. It's, it's a good, when you got a good posture and a, you know, when, <laughs> when everything's delivered, I like black people have, I have to move, but it's funny how people, like white people can just go and blow, and, 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 and without move, see, I have to move. You see how stiff Greg, he's stiff as a boy. You, you he's see? Spanish. He's Spanish, right? Black Greg's I'm white. No, no, no. There's no way he's Spanish. <laughs> he's white. See, even that, he's I bet, I bet, I know. I can be I bet, to be called white. I bet his pesos right. he's not Spanish. I give him a buck. <laughs> First of all, you know, that's another stereotype. You know, uh, there, there are white people in, do you see how he's delivering his... It, it, let, him, let, let him finish there, will you? <laughs> Look at these. But that's the other thing. If, if the way black comedians talk about whites, like, oh, yes, sorry, they'll do that. Well, if we walked around going, yo, we talk to... I'd be like, you oh, do! God, you no, we don't! I do, no, but wait, most of them don't. I don't talk like that. Shut up. You, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that was in Palestine.
told you I'm to saying, shut up. And there you go. That's, it comes from the heart sometimes. So you're saying, basically what you're saying is your people are real and spontaneous from the yes, heart. Yes. We, we, start, people sitting we, start, we start from here and work our way. Yeah, you start here. Don't do that again, please. You start here and you stop here. White people start here. OK, ready? We could talk about this for 10 years, but hey, let's move up. Let, let's move on to what, obviously, you know, black people had a nice run about 40 years where people were trying to emulate them. They were almost finished because they're actually becoming white, and oh, you know I'm right. Christ. So now, who's going to be the next? So Eminem's not white anymore. He's officially who's now. Who's the next race that's going to make it big in this country, an ethnic group? Because a lot of people are coming over. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. Huh. The best, black people haven't really, we should be, black, white people still, still, I try. You still have an arrogance there. Get that, your hand out of my face. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we we haven't made it until finally that you decide to merge it with us and give us full uh, racial cooperation so that we can make Puerto Ricans and Arabs the people that should be oppressed like they okay. should be. But listen. But listen to this. He's right. Yeah. White people. It's true. <laughs> White people still. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, white people do still have an arrogance. We don't have the humility that I see in the rap videos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. Listen. What about Eminem? Black oh. people are now being Shut forced up. to sniping oh. to get a voice in this world. Uh, That's a white guy. Y'all thought he was white too. Shut up. That was our happiest day. When he was white. <laughs> um, all right, I think it comes down. Are we almost done? I think it comes down to this. Being cool is about accepting yourself as a white person who talks and acts black. Coming up, we're gonna talk about monogamy. You're not even sure what that is, are you? It's cheating, stupid. <laughs> It still reminds me of Shirley Manson from Garbage. Men and women, is this ever going to work? I, if you're really going to understand where men are at, listen to this awful story. Bill Witkowski is a comedian that I know. He's from some broke steel town in western Pennsylvania. One day he told me he was growing up, there were like no women around or something. Him and his friends would get down to the banks of whatever, the Allegheny, and hump the mud, take their pants down. <laughs> and I know the girls are like, oh, how psychotic. And guys are like, oh, the right wing full of consistency. You can see where the, you know. The reason I tell you this story is to let women know that all these magazines trying to figure us out as if we're on the same thought process. Remember, when all else fails, we'll grab onto Mother Earth herself and start humping. <laughs> all right? This is what we are. And because of that, I ask you, Sue, to start off, what part of we're going to cheat on you no matter what don't you women understand? What part of we're going to leave you, take all your money and your kids, do you guys not understand? <laughs> you made that sound like a... You made it sound like a threat. Hey, man. <laughs> Who, who wrote that for you? Hey, hey. I wrote it for myself. <laughs> Why does Sue keep looking at me? Because you told help. me to shut up, and I'm still mad at you. Oh. Well, you just... <laughs> See, it's the way you say it. <laughs> <laughs> he just called it dumb, but it was well done, wasn't That's it? Right. <laughs> yeah, you can't just say shut up on the show. And the black guy got blamed. It was so perfect. You know, oh, I've, I've, I've cheated a lot. Really? But, that sure? uh, I'm just saying that. You but, guys no, I have, you I, guys. Have, I have cheated a lot, but, but, but people always use that biological <laughs> thing as the excuse. Like, well, men are biologically programmed yeah. to cheat, you know? Excuse. But it's not, I mean, we're, we're biologically programmed to do a lot of things. You know, we're biologically programmed to, you know, to kill people and take their food. Well, you Mexicans know, but, are biologically yeah. programmed to have 4,000 kids, so <laughs> that's the, <laughs> nothing. Oh. Shut up! That was good. There you go. You climbed all the way down from the yeah. Empire State Building. Oh, come on. Oh. That's what the show is about. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Wait, Nick, Nick wants a moment of sanity. Right. Wait a minute. Right. Uh, is that a true story about the river band? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait. That is true. Oh, Bill Kowski, you ever meet in a comedian who looks like Joe Mantegna? He used to go down to the riverbank and have sex with the mud. Because my girlfriend rubs mud in her face before she goes to bed. I hope it's not from Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have a kid who looks like Mantegna someday. I don't know why it's such a big deal. Girls use uh, ballpark franks. Oh, uh, now, wait a minute. Yes, they plump when you cook them. Hey, no product placement on this show. <laughs> Shut up. That was product placement. <laughs> that one you wrote. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Say something about that one. <laughs> no. I'm King Kong, but this is a that wasn't aimed at me. She said it with pride, hey, too. Ballpark Franks. Don't worry. Boston Heck. Look, there's 10 
women. Oh, Jesus. Every, we Wait, sorry. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> there's, ten, yeah. there's ten women that every one guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's supposed to cheat. Not only do I have my ten, I have, uh, there's dead dudes, I got their ten. <laughs> uh, gay dudes, I got their ten. Uh, dudes doing life and retarded dudes, they don't even know they got ten. <laughs> you gotta, I'm gonna take their ten. <laughs> unless he catch me, give me back my ten! And I'll just be like... <laughs> Patrice is meeting all these women because he stayed at my apartment a couple of years ago. Where do you think ago. he's meeting them? Weight watchers. <laughs> <laughs> On top of the uh, yeah. Empire State Building, King Kong. He Paul, stayed at up. my apartment. You shut up. Oh, not you. I'm, no, he <laughs> said, I'm not sorry, me. sorry, sorry. Wait, where <laughs> do you see blonde? He's black and I'm going to tell you. Wake up. Spit it out. Oh, shut up. Go ahead. <laughs> he stayed at my show. apartment. It was a sixth floor walk up for two weeks and he never left because he couldn't make it back down the stairs. Oh, oh another fat joke? Yeah. That was really awesome. <laughs> I mean, if it's true, that's even worse. Is it sad? You're revealing a nice thing. He made me go remote. shopping for him. He did say, oh. Really? Yes, you like that. How many that? pounds of ribs? You like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shut up! <laughs> Oh, you're so racist. What do you think? Come on and be a soldier. Oh, see, that's both. Daily show. All of racism. Listen to me. A bunch of whining Jews. right. No, it's not. They're not, Nick. They're not just whining Jews. There's a lot of other white faces. That's true. Let's ask this question. I don't know. I can go back to these questions when people are like slurring and slandering every other thing. <laughs> yes. And I go back to some question from like the Jenny Jones show. Can men and women really be friends? No. Um, <laughs> let's talk about cheating physically and emotionally. Because oh. I think a lot of women, they say they cheat emotionally, whatever the hell that means. Yeah, because they're have. exhausted from taking care of the guys. Oh, another funny one. Shut up. <laughs> Look, women, who cares? Jesus. <laughs> I mean, who cares? Who are you sleeping with? <laughs> What? Come on. I want to know who she's cheating with to get on this show. Uh, Ooh, oh, man. Let's let that one, one die. Let's let that one just sit we there like a bad pie. We know his stuff, but he's suffering in his own Look. little self. Sips uh, 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 it out there, Star Jones. Go ahead. It's finally a reference they can understand. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? That was a good sip of timing. <laughs> the only system that worked was when women wouldn't have sex until marriage because it made guys get married because it kept that focus, that energy that you have before you have sex with a girl. And then in the 60s, women wanted feminism and equality. Men tricked them and said, yes, you're right, you can be like us. They're like, yeah, yeah, you can have sex whenever you want, don't get married, don't worry about it, yeah. They're like, no, we just want jobs, we want to keep marriage, it's too late. We tricked you, ladies, okay? So, we have to go to a commercial. If we go to a commercial, will you promise to wait for me, darling? I like that my 70s Irish corduroy threads have now become dressed in black. And don't <clears> think. But, uh... <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, I just think we should all, as comedians, sit in that bomb for a second. Because I've never really sat there and appreciated what that feels like. At least they're fair. They're not laughing at everybody, including the host. <laughs> Michael Douglas has to pay $1 million to Catherine Zeta if he cheats. You know that? It's in the prenup, I heard. I read somewhere. And uh, so that's pretty amazing. That, that's his story. If she comes in, he's got to have a good go-to story to get out of that million-dollar debt. What are your go-to stories if you get caught cheating? Greg, you're Spanish. You guys must have a million. <laughs> Honey, these private investigators are morons. <laughs> Who are you going to believe? Some broken-down, failed mall cop and his videotapes and stacks of pictures and... DNA evidence, or me, your husband. <laughs> and besides, you smashed my guitar, so we're even, right? I mean, it was a great guitar, and she was a really fat girl, so... Well? All right, Patrice. Well, I, <laughs> thanks, Colin. Well, I would tell her, hey, sweetie, this has nothing to do with you. Stop being so selfish. <laughs> what, does my, what does my sex life with a stranger have to do with our love? <laughs> Now beat it. <laughs> Sue. I'm sorry. It's just that when we're having sex, you're always yelling faster, faster, harder, harder. And I just thought that meant you wanted me to get better. <laughs> so I was just practicing. <laughs> Nikki. I don't cheat. I have, uh, I don't have a go, I have go-to stories, plural. And not, none of these work. Um, because you can't use the same story every time. Next card, please. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this, one, this one didn't work. Uh, yeah, that's a used condom under the bed, but I used it to masturbate so I wouldn't waste the paper towels. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. 
That is not a hickey on my neck. I got splashed with hot oil at the San Gennaro feast. <laughs> that is not a hickey on my balls. I got splashed with hot oil at the San Gennaro feast. <laughs> Yeah, that's a red pubic hair because I let Sully borrow my underwear last week. Good. Uh, uh, that, oh, that's the eight. picture I want for my wall is you telling that with his giant Suge Knight hand with the ring right there. I know, I felt like Faye Ray. I, uh, I felt him losing it. I just wanted to help him out a little bit here. <laughs> All right, my technique is the old Thank Meisner you. acting technique. We just repeat what the other person said until it sounds like they think they're crazy. Girlfriend's like, hey, there's a girl. Yeah, there's a girl in the other room. You were sleeping with her. Yeah, that's why she's there, because I was going to sleep with her. <laughs> well, she was naked. Yeah, oh, she's naked. I, I, I took a girl to the house, put her in the other room so I could sleep with her while you were out. <laughs> oh, I really sold that one. Anyway, uh... <laughs> A lot of you think you're slick and you've gotten away with cheating. Well, you haven't. You know, after you say your pathetic alibi, you still feel a little something you can't quite put your finger on? That's because it's eating at your soul, courtesy of a man you might have heard of, name of God. Sound familiar? Sleep tight. Have a good night. What do you mean it's all right? It was great. You'd love to steal that one. Hey, what is this, the blood side of the room? <laughs> you guys are... All right, look. <laughs> A new stat came out that the gap between the rich and the poor is, uh, of course, on the rise, and among blacks, it's even the same now as whites. Now, is this affecting the black community more than it affects the white community because of the perception of unity and uh, sticking together? Yes. Patrice. Yes, it is affecting uh, a certain amount of uh, black people. Um, but me, I mean, being that I'm a rich black American, I'm trying to race away from these poor blacks as fast as my caddy will take them. <laughs> but even the fact that right, aren't we rich blacks trying to do that? No, we're not. I'm talking. not. <laughs> I wish I was rich. Just the fact that you have a red caddy tells me you're never really going to get away. <laughs> you'll be, at best, you'll be ghetto fabulous, but you're never going to be like, that's the whole point. You're never going to have the brownstone in Fort Greene and be walking so like a light skin. I'm just trying to and, tell and you. you. know, why is that acting white, though? Why is, don't blame me. You're the well, ones that say it's acting white. And you're saying it. That's your topic. But, yeah, but I did not say it. Jeez, I said uh, because of the obvious truth. That among black people, if you talk like a white person, they go, oh, you're white, you're white. What's like a white person? This is what, that's the arrogance of Don't white be people. So what is like a white person? Using the right you words? Shut, shut. Correct speech? Are you pretending like a white person? Are you pretending? <laughs> after all these years in comedy, yes. that, you, that black people don't always go like, well, here's the white guy walking like this. That's what a white guy does. That's what white guys do. No, you say this is a white guy. This is right here. Yes. yes. <laughs> How did I get involved in this race? See? <laughs> what did I do? That's what did I do? He's the white guy in the pit. Yeah. He's the white guy. Exactly. Look at the way Tony grew up in a black neighborhood. Wait. What? <laughs> yeah, well, I had a black person who lived across the street from us. <laughs> Is that, is that who you bought the coke from? No. <laughs> no. It was Cap. It was I. I lived across the street from Cap Calloway. I'm playing, Kevin. Jesus Christ. Cap right, Calloway. I lived across. The street. All right. Let's Cap, let the crib talk for a second, boys. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't think I don't think rich black people should be held responsible for you know the plight of other black people. I mean, once you reach a certain level of success, it's just natural to move on. I mean, if that wasn't the case, politically incorrect would still be on in this time slot. Oh. <laughs> no, I totally, I, I, I totally disagree with that. I think black people should take care of the rich black people should have or feel some responsibility for all the poor white people. We have a problem. We haven't had all good black leaders since Public people. Enemy broke up. But we really see that's another thing though. Black people don't really Please pretend we as if you're rich. Please. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I got a couple hundred in the bank. I'm a hundred there and that counts. Oh. Um, Please black people food. really don't have a leader. Our leaders are appointed to us by somebody. We don't vote for our leaders. We just, Al Sharpton is We didn't vote leaders. for him. He just decided uh, to be he's one. He's your leader. You got no, no. no, 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 no. I'm going to tell you something right now. And he's going to be the president. Wait a minute, Kevin. Al Sharpton is not our leader. Yes. You some black people ain't vote for nobody with no perm. I'm sorry. That's right. Oh. I'll tell you on. exactly what it is. You guys are playing innocent and I'm damn getting mad. You know Al Sharpton, the only reason you like him is because he irritates us the most. That's how you decide who's a leader. Whoever takes yes. us off the most. Thank you. So let's call it the way it is. We just called it the way it was. Homeschooling has become a fast-growing phenomenon. My doorman Steve has a theory on what's uh, wrong with the schools today. Let's uh, listen to him for a second. When I had to go to school, I had to read the whole book 
or a half the book, a three quarters of the book, just to pass the exam or study it or a book report. Today, they got the textbook, they got the answers on the question behind the book, and they still fail. So I don't know what's going on with the schooling today, and it, lo it looks very bad. I have to see him every morning. Every morning. <laughs> How you doing, kid? The, uh, not only is there homeschooling, it's, it just used to be like the rural whites, like, you know, Randy Weaver types of homeschooling kids, but now it's big among the black people again. Why do you think there's been such a rise in black preschooling? Rudy. Well, the reason, because the curriculum sucks. And you got third graders that are angry, and they're the size of Patrice. So it's like, I'm not sending my kids to that school. It's true, there's a lot of violence in the school. <laughs> violence. I think true. it depends upon the individual situation. Some people need homeschooling. Like, you know, like in Patrice's case, he couldn't squeeze out of his bedroom door. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good for it, isn't he? Yeah, it really is. Was I can understand. He really is shaped like a tampon, and I'm fed up with him. Wow. <laughs> so what are we doing homeschooling? Uh, we have, I, have a, I have a daughter, my wife and I. We have, uh, we're doing homeschooling, and we have uh, two priests that come over and uh, teach uh, my daughter it. in the basement. That's home right. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> now, uh, one of the biggest reasons why black people now are keeping their kids home and teaching them, because they are giving images to their children from their history. It, me coming up, we didn't have too much African American stuff. Don't afford, please. No, oh, we didn't have too much African American stuff. I mean, I remember well, coming up. You have a whole month. Columbus, <laughs> Columbus, exactly. everywhere. Exactly. That's the problem. The problem is we have a whole month. The whole year, and everybody knows this. You have the 40 Lincoln presidents, free to slay 42 too. presidents up on the board, and then, you know, you have one picture of Martin Luther King in February, and exactly. on the 28th, they rip it down. What about that's the dead presidents? Do you don't count them? I ah. understand. That's true. That's it. That's yeah. Listen to me. Look, they don't teach anything black in, in schools these days. Are you crazy? You got to send them to, like, uh, Kitty Cloth High to get a black, but then you don't get any Kitty Cloth, Mr. Black People. It's, just, it's that cold yeah. you know. Look, I don't care how you live your life, folks. Just don't leave me alone with these people. We'll be right back. This is the part of the show where we take news stories from lots of different papers and see how far we can go, right? Oh, I like that. Okay, we call it improv. Some people call it the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer has announced he'll be leaving his post in July. Oh. The official reason, of course, is that he's tired, blah, blah, blah. But let's face it, we're just trying not to provoke the Arabs. I mean, Ari Fleischer, why don't we just uh, have a picture of Muhammad up there eating a pork chop, for Christ's sakes, huh? <laughs> it's a little too Jewish. Anybody? Yeah, I mean, I really feel bad for it. It's like, how are we going to replace a guy who says whatever he wants to say, the best ever? No, wait. What the hell did I just say? He, he's the best. You're, you're the new candidate for the wait a minute, wait a minute. He's, he's the black the best, sellout. Wait a minute. He's the best person that says what he's told to say ever. And yeah. we're going to miss him. That there makes no sense at all, does it? Anybody? Yeah. It makes sense to me for some weird reason. It was reason. funny, but there, yeah, it had to follow the first part, and that was the problem. Damn! All right, let's talk about this then. Tongue splitting. This is like the new thing. They split the tongue like that. Oh, Delicious. I like that. Ah, the kids today. Yeah. They say it's more snake-like. What do you guys think? It's kind of hot. Yeah? I think Patrice yeah. should have it done. That way he can eat quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, they do a lot of crazy stuff. The tongue piercing was kind of far. Now this is taking it a little bit too extreme. I mean, it, it, to me, it looks like Satanism in, in, in a crazy kind of way. I like it. I think, you know, my grandmother, she used to have a plate in her mouth. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. Back and, in uh, Ireland? Back in Ireland. They, had, they had actually come from Africa. Ah. And uh, that tradition <laughs> continued. And uh, a lot of the meanies had plates, saucers uh, in their lips. You know, Amazing. big plates. You know? As a way of breaking down Iraqi POWs, this yeah. is the next story since we're on a roll. Oh. Uh, U.S. officials are playing Metallica and Barney. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. What's, what's the source? Because this sounds like totally ridiculous. Yeah, like how many torture techniques did they go through before they figured out Barney was the way to go? You know? <laughs> Hopefully that was, you know, before the testicle clamps. You know? Right. <laughs> but after, like, you know, Peter Cetera and, you know. Well, the Metallica, I mean, that's actually a good thing. The safest place to be during a terrorist attack would probably be at a Metallica concert. You know? That's right.
right. They're not going to come anywhere near this. So the safest place is to be in Harlem, because y'all think the terrorists are looking for us. They're looking for y'all asses. Oh, you guys want to jump shit, huh? All right. Mm -hmm. A new study shows up. All right. A new study shows up. You want to jump ship? I. Right. A new study shows that one in five girls under 15 years old has had sex, and one in seven has been pregnant. Wow. That's pretty sick. Who they all four blocks. <laughs> 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 what do you got? <laughs> I think the Spice Girls started. Those English hookers turned out our 10-year-olds with their stupid lunch boxes. The lunch box campaign is what happened. But that's biological. If you can have a baby at 13 or 14, that's, that's real. That's, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm an older father, so I want to be a grandfather earlier. Yeah, I'll see what you're doing. You know, so it started. He's going to so be opening up on the R. Kelly thing. You know, so, uh, <laughs> no, I just had a baby, you know, I, and thank God, because I had frozen my sperm years ago. And uh, not that I want to get into that, yeah, but I did. The number of uh, four television shows starring minorities uh, has never been higher. Mm -hmm. Will be Goldberg is the first black lead on a sitcom, NBC, in five years. What do we say about this? I thought there's always been blacks. I mean, the WB, yeah. there's more blacks on the WB than on Thomas Jefferson's plantation, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I love that sitcom, Julia. <laughs> you know, that was good. That See, was no, a good show. Oh, yeah, we had Jim David on here one time, and that's still the oldest thing I've ever heard on the show. It really is. <laughs> Jeez, I'm the only one that remembers that. Julia These people are, I'm 90. These people are 20. Wasn't, a, what, wasn't there a black show that uh, followed Uncle Buck? Hmm? <laughs> oh, that was Kevin's canceled show. Uncle Buck. <laughs> It's like 10 year olds in a fucking big hotel. But they appreciated, I think they appreciated the meanness of the spirit of that one. I, no, I love you. He's attacking Uncle Buck. No, and WB, know, WB, WB doesn't even have black shoulders. No, it doesn't. No, you know what? The, the trend was they would they would all build their, their stations up on the black shows and then they get rid of us and they yep. all go mm -hmm. on UPN. Yes. You guys are living in a damn free no, world. No, we're not. That's they what they did. They built it on Fresh Prince, Cosby, uh, uh, the WB had. Yeah. Something. I guess it really must be. That's what they did. I guess it. I guess it must be amazing to live in this kind of world where everything we do is evil and everything you do is good. <laughs> Why do you always say we, Colin? You're uh, white. You're not white. You're not the white man. You're. You're a potato eating. Uh, no, he's. <laughs> He's boiling uh, nothing. You're poor like us. He's Eminem, man. The average. <laughs> you're just Eminem. You're the blacks yeah. of Europe. Wait, the, uh, are, you, are you really the black of Europe? The blacks of Europe. We have to get on this thing. The average American watches 135,000 commercials a year. You don't want to fall up behind, do you? So I don't know why I didn't tell you that. Said we'll be right back. <laughs> well, folks, we always heard, we all heard about that New York Times reporter who stole stories from other papers and is paying for his sins by having to stay home feeling book and movie offers. In hope that something similar will happen to these guys, we asked them to pick a story from the paper and tell us what they got. Mm. Rudy Rush. All right. Our old mayor, Rudy Giuliani, just got remarried, everybody. And I remember when he was dating her, he let her stay at the Gracie Mansion. Now, y'all call brothers players. White guys are the only people I know that can have their hoes living with them with their wife and kids still in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Bloomberg's uh, traffic meter maid mafia racketeering gang has got to be stopped, man. What do you mean, officer? You already started writing a ticket. Well, stop, you asshole. There's three minutes left on the meter. <laughs> Ma'am, you can't put the ticket in my hand. You can't just give me the ticket. Uh, what, putting it, bending my goddamn, uh, they took, bending my damn windshield wiper? That's part of police procedure? You make me sick. I like to drag you and that gay little three-wheel buggy behind me like a just married can. <laughs> All right, Kevin Meany. Well, my news story is the gambling scandal of Bill Virtues Bennett. He was that former drug czar and the man who told everyone to live a pure life. He preaches temperance, except when it comes to speaking fees, slot machines, and fried foods. <laughs> he's, prob he's probably drinking too much, too. <laughs> Have you seen his eyes? <laughs> They're spinning like plates. 
Yes, indeedy, he used to smoke cigarettes, too. But he had to quit when he started coughing up white mice. <laughs> Tell me what to do. Take a good GD, good look at yourself, Bill. How dare you? Your war on virtues is wrong. Terribly, horribly wrong. Oh. Back to you, Colin. Thank you. Now, let me... All right. Oh. Were those uh, eyes like plates? Were those the same ones the ancestors used to have in the mouth? They... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Greg yes. Rowe, go. Uh, well, uh, we're in orange alert again here in New York, and um, I, I, you know I don't think it makes a difference at this point. Though, you know, no matter what Al Qaeda is threatening us with, there's nothing really worse than what Bloomberg has already done to this city. I mean, <laughs> you know, well, it's true. I mean, if, if they want to park a van, you know. If they want to park a van filled with explosives in front of a government building, they, you know, they, they better have a lot of change on them, because it's going <laughs> to... You know, and, and here in New York, you know, we're, we take the terrorists in stride anyway. It's people from the other states that worry too much. They went to bring some guy from North Dakota. He said, it, he said it, it could happen here. No, no, it can't. You, know, it, it, you have to build a civilization first. I don't know. What are they going to do? Crash a plane into an Applebee's, for God's sake? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Please tip the paper boy on your way out. Okay. I'm not saying my career hasn't had plenty of insults and slaps in the face. But did they just play the music on me on my own show? At the end of my monologue? To wrap it up. Is this what it comes to? <laughs> like a, like some doddering like a Peter O'Toole at the Academy Awards. Get it? Get it out, Mr. <laughs> on my own show just now with the music. It's over. It never <laughs> stops. It, again. it never stops. Okay. When you're a comedian, it never stops the abuse, does it, really? Yeah, point. <laughs> Fine, Pat. Oh, that really made me mad. <laughs> so they finally <laughs> and, oh, So they finally caught Eric Rudolph. How did he elude authorities for this long? Pete, Pete, Pete. Caves. What? Caves. Caves. That seems to be the way to go. I mean, he was on the top ten for five years, hiding out in a cave. What is it with caves that we can't find them? It seems to me if you want to bomb something in New York City, all you got to do is pack a sleeping bag and go hide in the Lincoln Tunnel for two or three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> they just signed him. They just signed him for the center square of Hollywood Square. <laughs> <laughs> because all a-holes go into center square. There is no... And let me tell you another thing. And let me tell you something. The guy should have won the prize for the survivor. He's a true survivor, not these a-holes. That guy's a survivor. He don't have to go in no tunnel. Just walk up and down the United States. Nobody bothers you. That guy was not in a cave. Look at him. He's all groomed. He's had a little mustache. Why does they got bulletproof on him? Who cares? Who's going to shoot the guy? Forget about it. I'm not going to shoot this guy. They got bulletproof. They got chains here. I need protection. Not this idiot. Shut the bastard. Gung ho. That's where Bin Laden is. It's a save a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he was hanging out in Christian crazy nut right. job homes and hanging around from house to house and house. Look at him. He's all They're going to find out that about 25 people helped him. Of Guaranteed. course. Do you ever go camping? I stayed one I night at the Delaware camping. River. I came out smelling like bacon. I had squirrel bites on me and poison <laughs> ivy. One night. This got five years? No way. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really upset about this cop. Why? Harassing homeless. Because that's really what he was doing, harassing this poor guy, getting trying to get some food. And send, he ended up being uh, a top ten dude. Yeah. But really what the dude was doing was harassing a poor homeless guy. That's, uh, it's sad. It's really sad what he was doing. No, it's sad is you're being nice because it's like the three Italians and the one black guy in the show. This is like how... First of all... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up for a second. Italian, <laughs> yes, I Tom's am. Italian. He oh, I'm sorry. He's yeah. like the suburb... What, you didn't know he's Italian? His last name is Papa. Who cares? Let's get back to the bomber. I got him <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, go to the next question. Come on, I gotta take a, I gotta take a pill. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. The next question is: the FBI is being criticized for profiling criminals in two recent cases: the Louisiana killer, Derek Todd Lee, and uh, John Muhammad, the sniper. Both men were black, and both cases authorities relied for months on the FBI profile exactly. that they're white. Look, look can I say now? This. Wait a yeah. minute, I'm gonna finish this sentence. I wanna say something, man. Wait, Go ahead. For you. Look it, I wanna say something. Go ahead. Look it, man. In the last year, <laughs> black people have been arrested for embezzlement, plagiarism, sniping. Because they're good at it. And, and wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. All, all, and all 
crimes that were supposed to be, and now mass murder, and I just want to say that all black people ever wanted was an opportunity to show what we could do. Right. <laughs> If given the chance. Absolutely. If given the chance. <laughs> Let me explain something to you nice ladies and gentlemen. The but best gangsters in the world were Italians. We were the best. Don't let anybody say the black guys are better murder, but we were the best because we had flair. Black people don't have flair. They can't spell the word. I think, no. Let's go, go back to the bomber. <laughs> All right, Pat. Go ahead. Let's talk about the bomber some more. Let me ask you this. Yeah. This bomber, a lot of people down there are supporting him. Right. Speaking of white and black, a lot of the white rural whites, they feel disenfranchised in some way. They say like, like poor blacks, and they support a guy like him. First of all, disenfranchised, half of the people that watch this show don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Who cares? Whoever supported him, let's go on to do other things like cartoons. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Why the hell do we care? Let's go on. You're so far, you went to two subjects. We're in about, you know, we're like this now. <laughs> you wanted to go back to the bomber. You wanted to go back to the bomber, Tom. Hey, hey, pasta hey. majeure. We all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> pasta okay. majeure. Pasta majeure. But who supports them? These people, a couple of yeah, ways, like inbred so. crackers down south. That, you know, these are the same people that are into Christian rock and fishing shows. Yeah. And who's to say you can't be a joint job? Really? Every nut job has a couple wing nuts to follow. Them. Them. What are you going to do? What's the matter? You can't beat them, Joyner. What are you going to do? What are you man? talking about? I'm talking about the white guys. with Because ain't no black people only going to do anything we get our hands over. We're going to take over. So well, I don't like just... the fact that you're acting like this is the first black serial killer. It is the first no, black serial killer. No, it is. What about old men or something from 50 years ago? Black people don't kill How about nobody. two years ago upstate New York, that guy from West, the women buried under his house? That yeah. was, they were there. The white dude, he bought it from a white dude. He bought that house from a white dude. <laughs> <laughs> they were already there. Pat, you hear about this uh, guy, Eric Rudolph, they caught in North Carolina? <laughs> I'm still working Both. on Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Let's go on to something else like, you know. All right. Uh, let's, here's, you know here's, here's, a, a, here's a good question. Where can you go to still buy suspenders? <laughs> <laughs> the same place where you bought this shirt. <laughs> yeah. You bought those in the general store where they caught Eric Rudolph, probably. Now listen to you. Some relationship we have here. You go watch commercials, I stay here and try to fix this madness. We'll be right back. Uh, Louisiana cockfights, or cockfighters are suing the federal government for banning the shipping of fighting birds. Say it discriminates against Cajuns and Latinos because it's integral to their culture, okay? But is that enough to sell out like a welterweight bout at a Kenny Rogers rolling roast? Let me ask you something. Put it this way, if you're an American in the 21st century, and you got a chicken downstairs doing push-ups for his upcoming bout, <laughs> if you think the greatest threat to prize fighting is Frank Perdue, all right? If you can't uh, look at a chicken wing without wondering what his left hook is like, <laughs> you might be a cockfighter. No? All right. Guys, let me ask you something. Cockfighting. You think you should be outlawed uh, everywhere, Pat? You want to talk about cocks? Ask the black guy. <laughs> all I want to... What? Why, why don't you just let Louis Anderson do what he does best? Cockfight. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever a man Nothing. wants to do with his cock in a room full of Mexicans is his own business. Damn right. Well put. Well put. And right, has anyone been to a cockfight here? Yes, I was in Puerto Rico. They're not nice. No? My father had two roosters many years ago. as women <laughs> eggs. Well, <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth. But see, once you, once you see them fight, you go back to eating veal. <laughs> because it's terrible. It's ugly. It's really... It doesn't Why, make is it Why is it? They put prongs on, the, on their legs and they give yeah, all these in numbers in, you know. Yeah, they should kill them anyway. They're yeah, going to die anyway. They're not going to yeah. die. Yeah, well, you're going to fry them. They're not going to die anyway. What do you, when do you turn around and become the head of the cocks? When do you, when do you get... <laughs> I've known, I've known anyway. a cock or two in my time. I heard and they you. all die. I heard about it. Ever since he got his NBC deal. The only way they can save their rooster is if you cape on them. Take off his gogoochers and end up at the end of that. We kill them anyway, so what's the difference? That's you don't true. kill them anyway. A rooster they try to keep to mating with the hens, so we have other chickens, otherwise Purdue's out of business. I didn't know South Brooklyn was farmland. I did. tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> we had ducks on a goddamn fire escape, but crying out loud. <laughs> you saw half black, half black. <laughs> how, big is, how big is your old cock? Am I? <laughs> okay. At low tide, I'm still in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. All right, let's go to casinos, yes? Is that okay? Oh, casinos have become an Indian reservation staple. Tribes now have, like, uh, lobbyists. 
You know, they've got big lines of credit. There's rumors right. of organized crime involvement. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I know there is organized crime involvement. That's true. In the... Uh, in the uh, serial killer, in the world of Indian casinos. I work casinos, ladies and gentlemen, I swear to you. I have never seen an Indian <coughs> in Foxwood. Those are the Pequot Indians. I can't even see a kumquat. <laughs> Let alone a Pequot. <laughs> and that's what I've been trying to say the whole time. Exactly that. You don't understand, man. I what do understand. Is? What do you think? I don't know who runs the casinos. You think it's about <laughs> Indians? You don't think it's Indians? There's only 20 Indians left in this whole country. <laughs> Where do you buy a members only jacket? Uh, what's I didn't buy? I was thinking, Where are they it. still around? You got a point. <laughs> they sell them in OTB. <laughs> <laughs> Look. It is amazing. Oh, how, now this is an interesting subject. Pat, you don't like this one. It's relevant. Finally. The web has become a forum for all sorts of views, opinions. You know, they have the whole blogs and all these people giving their opinions. So last month, a judge made it a thing saying he forbidden a man from putting negative comments about somebody else on the web. That's interesting. Should there be freedom of speech on the web or no? This thing's getting no. boring. I swear no, to God. there shouldn't be. No, they got to put boring? a limit on it. They got to stop everybody just getting on the websites and chiming off. Have you seen your website, the message board for this show? Yeah. The things they say about you are horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it really the, should be stopped. That's, that's before tonight's show. But that doesn't make it wrong. <laughs> It doesn't, doesn't make, make it wrong. wrong. No, it doesn't make it wrong. I mean, you know, don't have a show on TV if you don't want to hear what people have to say in a computer about it. You know what I mean? Are you attacking Colin Quinn? Not personally, <laughs> but I mean, I'm just He's saying. defending all those awful... F Why isn't Pat talking? Pat, do you know there's a computer? I don't like this here, Webber. <laughs> out there called the web. You know what it is. It's, it's not made web. by a spider. I'm, a, it's a, it's web. You sure? I'm still working on the spiders. Tell okay. them. Tell, tell <laughs> they the get web. on and you talk to each other. Yeah, and you don't w have to see each other. I still got the dial phone. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you can type with your car. I don't have to type. I'm past already. It's over for me. You got the idea to type. It was this computer nonsense. You're acting like you know all about computers now. You have your IBM shirt. Oh, thanks. It's well, terrible. That's a nice shirt. I it's know, but Patrice, is Patrice ever in a polo IBM shirt? No, but it's kind of like, that's a good look for you. It'll be like the black guy in the white office look. I like You're trying to white me up. <laughs> trying to white me up. I came in with my show. son John, and they just try to... You know what I mean? mean? Well, that's less threatening. We see somebody like that. You know, like that. He must be friendly. He's coming, coming to fix the cop. Why is Bilbo Baggins <laughs> continue to that. insult me here? <laughs> somebody tell John C. Riley to shut his face. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, as Genghis Khan said to the Mongol hordes, we'll be right back. <laughs> you know, many great works have inspired tireless films, timeless films, I guess you might call them. Works such as Gone with the Wind, Margaret Mitchell, The Godfather, Mario Puzo, and now Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne. What joke from your act could be adopted into a movie, and what would it be about? Pete! I do a joke about how high taxes are in New York City and how we can't smoke anywhere now. Now, my movie would be about a rich guy who becomes mayor, and raises taxes, <laughs> taxes, prohibits smoking, and one night he's visited by three ghosts played by digitally remastered Frank Dean and Sammy, who tell him to change his ways or that something bad's going to happen to him. He doesn't listen. Next morning, he's coming out of his house. A plane flying overhead carrying a trailer park hits turbulence, and the house lands on the mayor and kills him. All the people in the city start dancing around, skipping while they smoke, singing... And that's the end of the movie. <laughs> All right, Patrice O'Neill. <laughs> my, my joke is about uh, my desire to be with a Japanese woman. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a forbidden love story of a large black soldier and a Japanese college student. One day they're making love at her parents' house in Japan, and, and the sex gets a little wild, and Kyoko's head pops through those tissue paper walls they have in the house. <laughs> Her parents come home, and the rest of the movie is Kyoko trying to explain why there's a small hole in one side of the house and a, another hole shaped like a big black guy who ran through the other side. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mine is based on my joke about disgusting people who ride the bus. It's called Speed, the True Story. <laughs> there's no Keanu Reeves or Sandra Bullock riding this bus. It's the real people who I have to sit next to on mass transportation. Like pee-pee pants. <laughs> The guy who wets himself at every turn. Or Betsy Fatass. 
who smells like pesto sauce and insists on resting her giant blubbery turkey arm on my lap the entire ride. And old dingbat Joe, who might be retarded or just likes to clap and scream every time the driver honks his horn. There's a happy ending, though, when the bus explodes and these human cockroaches are blown to smithereens. All right. Hold on. Mr. O'Neill has something to add. I just want to say, do you feel all warm knowing that Jack Benny's still alive? <laughs> oh. Nothing! Nothing! That was... <laughs> you on his bus, you pull the emergency brake. Hold on. Hi, right. right, Cooper. My son calls last week and asked if he could borrow against my will. <laughs> Why would anyone make a movie about my life? My life should be made in silent pictures and then you fill in the spots. <laughs> Anybody can make a movie. I've pissed off too many people over move the thing. Would you please? I'm going cockeye here. <laughs> I am now known as the mouth that roared. The next thing I'll know, there'll be a contact on my head. The title of the movie can be Scott Peterson and my son take Pat Cooper fishing for Father's Day. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Now, Pat, did you, you mentioned to me off camera that you were a little, you got a little information from the show. We took good care of you this morning. Sent you some nice faxes and stuff? No. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you read the damn thing? Well, all of a sudden, you put it on me. Read about the sneakers and the footlock. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. Before I got to do this here, you'll go home and I'll be winding up with this show here. <laughs> Come on, read the damn thing. I can't, Pat. There's not enough time. I just wanted to ask you that question. Well, forget time. They don't, these people ain't going to worry about this show. Oh, I mean, gonna these people, but you know what the editors do? They're going to want clean fish. <laughs> Well, folks, I guess this is it. It is uh, it. It is it. It's been a wonderful show. Um, you know, what am I going to say? That's the way it is. And uh, no jokes were harmed during the making of this segment. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> what? That was pretty good. See, that's the thing about me. I don't choose to be an impressionist, but my impressions are masterful. Fantastic. Oh, nice. Fabulous. Thanks, guys. What about... <laughs> well, let me ask you this. <laughs> Last night was the uh, Cali debates. So, uh, you know, we had the, the Democratic debates are coming up this tonight. What do you think? Who do you like? Well, Colin, uh, Ben and I don't know who any of those guys are. I'm going for Al Sharpton. Yeah, Al Sharpton. That's, that's the right. name. That's the same that way. So Al, Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton. That's well, the same well, way. no, because Al Sharpton's not in this one. I don't think is he? No, he's in the one tonight. Oh, yeah. he's in I thought this was California. That's, um, that was just my great monologue, but now we're in the uh, Democratic. Democratic. So right. yeah. yeah. You tried to catch a stupid on that one, but you did. <laughs> you did. Um, right are now. you? I just heard three applause for Al Sharpton. You're gonna say, "Come on, Al! Come yeah. on, baby, Al!" Look, no, no, here's my biggest problem with with black leaders. All right, black people don't choose them. That's oh. right. White people choose them. Uh -huh. We didn't choose Al. Y'all choose whoever y'all hate the most. How come? <laughs> Why? Stick with Al. I'm really... sticking with Al Sharpton. He has a because... perm. Now this is dangerous being in New York. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why you gotta stick with him. In my opinion, if you're black and you're a real black person, you go with the only black guy. That's right. Al Sharpton. That's, That's how you. Black. Take it out. You just sell out. That's, that's your problem now. That's very broad. You that's very broad. Huh? That's very broad-minded of you. That's how I feel, Kyle. Stupid. <laughs> now listen. Don't you think, uh, what do you think? Dante, you really, you're going to vote for Al Sharpton? I got Al, too. Uh, I, think, oh. uh, I think that the black people, got to, we have to pick our own leaders, like what Patrice said. When they, uh, so why do you have Al? I like Al. I, why? Because he, like, he, he, he had a part in Malcolm X. He's, Al Sharpton oh. is not our leader. What about Farrakhan? He'll be a better president candidate than, than Al. Oh, Jesus. No, yeah. no, no. Oh, Jesus. No. There's a lot of Jews in the audience. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bottom line is, let's face it, if, you, if we're going to be real about this, I'd say maybe if I give total credit, one of you four is registered to vote to begin with. That's a You got to. You know, even though I don't go for the Republicans, man. If you're going to go, I got to go with Gary Coleman. I got to do it. You got to go with Gary Coleman. But it's true. You guys don't like to vote. You know why? Because you see it as a white thing. It's just like when any black people, whenever there's a red light, they got to cross against the light in front of the car because we invented traffic lights. And you don't like oh, 
And the first heart plasma. That's right. That's right. And the peanut. That's right. Here's what. Hey, look. First of all, black people always believe in conspiracy theories, right? Right. And the fact that the guy who's the president now had less votes than the guy he beat means why would we vote anyway? We believe it don't matter. Really doesn't. He gonna steal it anyway. He gonna steal it. I mean, why should I get out my bag to go vote for what? I didn't vote for Bush, and he's still the president. Still the president, you know, because his brother. <laughs> but don't you guys get more Florida. pleasure out of saying I don't vote anyway? It doesn't matter. Then you would have actually, you know, being enthusiastically in the stupid voting process. Yes. Hey, I voted. What's your point? It's, it's, it's either way. It's either way. I, I voted and it's still. Let me say difference. one. Let me say one thing. When I was watching the de Democratic debate last week, I'm looking at Al Sharpton, who I, of course, despise like any self-respecting white person, but I said, this guy's the only one. Uh, wait, <laughs> let me finish. I you love Bush. I let bet you me love finish. Bush. Oh. No, no, but, but I saw him up there, and I was like, he's the only one with personality. All he the is. poor white he guys, is. don't you realize what's happened? Because you bastards started busting up all second guessing us on every move 40 years ago. <laughs> now everybody jumped on your bandwagon. We're walking around the Twitch. Second guessing you on what? You oh, jumped up all your teams of lynchings? You, you did it. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying this. I'm saying you really give us a Twitch. I hope you're happy. Now we can't even leave the country anymore. We're like, uh, uh, uh. Oh, I, oh, get, I, get, I get a Twitch that's every time all. I get pulled over. I mean, that's Oh, Jesus. Jesus. You're right. Well, I mean, <laughs> all those scary racist cops. Oh, yeah, that man. When's that going to yes. die? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, they are. I know a lot of cops that are old. That's what they're talking about. No one white person and one day admit that there's racism, what are y'all trying to do? There Just say it's racism and we'll agree with you on everything else. We'll admit it's all that to I'll it, tell you man. what, there's we'll no admit, racist cop. We will admit it's racism if you just give us a date. When you're gonna stop hollering racism? Even if it's eight years from now. Okay, oh, let's not talk about that. Just give us a date. Give us a date. Give us a date. Give us a date. We can say the same thing about the Holocaust. We can say the same thing. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Easy. You gotta show. You gotta show, Flex. Who cares? Let me handle this. I'm a loser. You're on TV. Don't do this. Don't say Holocaust. Just give it to me. Listen. When are we gonna be able to say? The Holocaust was this many years ago. All right, get well, over it. I'll tell you. Well, since you guys had ended in what 1865, why don't we say? Oh, I'll even keep it up to 1960 if you want to go for the Jim Crow thing. Okay. 1960 Holocaust. I don't want to hear it. You hear us talking about the potato famine ever? No. <laughs> you and the Jews need to shut up. <laughs> In Germany, Germany, Germany denazified Germany. Yeah. You still got the rebel flags hanging up in 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 the south today. So when they start to de de dixify the whole country, then we'll stop big beefing about. It's true. De dixify. De dixify. Yeah. I like that. That's the word for the day. He has a new word. Dante has a new word. De dixify. But I'll tell you something. It's true. They do have a couple of rebel flags up there. Uh, as opposed to when I walk through Times Square and hear those stupid Israelites who you guys probably love saying, let's kill Whitey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not racism. Uh, that's not racism because they don't have the power. Uh, uh, well, they seem to have the street power. You guys are phonies. Can I say something about the Holocaust, about black people and the Holocaust? And the Holocaust, the Holocaust, the Holocaust. The Holocaust. If black people had one face to call the leader of race like of slavery, like because it's too broad, we just hate too many of you. If y'all, if you just made like one dude with a funny mustache and a big bike, like he was a dude that made slavery, we'd be like, all right, we hate him, and then we can move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very smart. I'm telling you. All right, look, we're going to a commercial, believe it or not. <laughs> but we're going to come back and, oh, we'll be right back to these direct appeals aimed deep into the heart of your wallet. <laughs> Dante, if you hear the word de-dixified in your life, remember it started right there. I'm still right. de-dixified. I'm still not right there. Word. Now, speaking of de-dixifying, spell hey. differently. <laughs> NBA star Tracy McGrady said in Maxim Magazine that 5% of the NBA is gay, and he's seen incidents with his own eyes. <clears throat> well, we all know it's not Kobe. Mm. Now, I think that there are gays <laughs> in every business. <laughs> we're looking at, we're looking at the rainbow. <laughs> but in the NBA. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is this true? Do you think it's 5%? is actually gay? I don't know. I hope not for the simple fact not. that my views would probably change on the game because I would start questioning it. Like, if I wouldn't be able to think that a foul was just a normal foul. Like, that's a gay, <laughs> that's a gay <laughs> right there. That's, that's probably gay right there. But that's why I just watched the WNBA because we know they all lesbians. It ain't no mystery there. It's just <laughs> real <laughs> uh, 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 the best part of the game is the subplot, right? <laughs> but what do you guys think? Uh, do you think there's a lot of gay guys in the NBA or no? 
I never thought about it. I really hope there's not. Yeah, I hope not. Exactly. But the NFL had these little things. They they you gotta wait till a few come out and be like, oh, I right. couldn't take showers because I thought I might sell up a little bit. <laughs> all, all I'm saying is, how many white models do you have to sleep with? before you wake up one day and think that uh, Patrick Ewing is attractive. That's what <laughs> He's got a point. Well, they get bored with women. That's it. Early. I think if Dante played ball, I would think Dante was gay. <laughs> uh, shut up, you little I'm just talking about the shirt. <laughs> Puerto Ricans would wear that shirt. Right? <laughs> uh, Seriously. Uh, Somebody now, has to come out the closet. That's as simple as that. That's the only way. Because no one's come out the closet and they because you can't even blend in. It's like the NFL, the, the, like the, the left tackle can be a sissy, but nobody can keep just yelling, left tackle's a sissy. It's just too much of a team sport. Right. But like, it's, if, you know, one dude, man, at the line, you a sissy, you a sissy. And it's just like, man, you know, stop it. You, you know, it's just, it's too, it's too little. It's like a gay golfer. It's just too, it, you're too, too good. He's, you know, right do you guys have any personal gay experiences, sports growing up that you'd like to talk about? Well, I didn't do that. I was four. Yeah. Well, look, I didn't take a shower because my Jimmy wasn't like long enough, so I wasn't gay. I didn't get turned on. I just left early because I didn't. I wasn't hanging low enough to like you know take a shower with the rest of the guys. Yeah. Well, you know, William Stevenson used to tell me when they played street football in his neighborhood and they play tackle, you know, like in the park or something, one guy would stick his finger up William's butt when he's trying to play. Ooh. Wow. Well, Jesus, Colin, never, when did that? <laughs> I don't know. But, is that, is that de <laughs> this is This may need to be de by the way, this next one. A New York Times, Sunday New York Times, which I know you guys can hear less about because it's not handed out by a 5% Muslim that just came out of jail. Um, but there's a new trend where all, they say all these black dudes are on the down low. They say the DL where they're going to gay bathhouses, but they don't consider themselves gay. Now, what the hell is this? Do you guys know about this? Wow. wow. Yeah, you know yeah. what? You know what? You, Why do you think we're experts on this gay issue? We don't know. <laughs> Why even Jim David on the show? <laughs> you really are coming at us with a bunch of questions. And I'm going to question that toupee on your head. Because I really don't think that that's your hair, Colin. I really do. I don't think that's Colin's hair. And I'm about to snatch it off on national television. <laughs> It's pressure, it's pressure on, on every black segment of society to keep it real, even sissies. That's right. Yeah. White people can go around being flamboyant and <laughs> and, and we got to still be like, word is born, son. <laughs> Pop me in the butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. But whose fault is that? Your own. That's... Uh, what? <laughs> oh, I don't know the answer. I know I want to blame white people, but I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> but don't you think, now, when you guys were growing up, I'm saying, didn't you always think a guy wasn't gay if he let some gay guy b him, but the guy that b him was gay? Where did you get that from? What is that? Here's a question I wrote myself. Whoa. Is there any group or combination of humans that you brothers won't break out the beef for at this point? Colin, <laughs> <laughs> that is wrong. I'm, Colin, you know, I'm starting to think you're racist and gay. And I'm going to tell you something. It's nothing worse. It's a combination. It's nothing worse than a gay race. And I let some things slide, Colin. Like when you wear corduroys and your back pockets touch, I don't say nothing. When you got to... <laughs> Right now, shut up. It's kind of rough. You guys really, I, I, I'm not coming. You want us to admit that we're gay? We're not we're gay. Not gay. <laughs> No, I, don't I mean, Dante gay, got that shirt on, but he ain't gay either. I know it. Now, we don't know per se, per se. We do. Yeah, you're right. Dante's too strong. Now, I want you to hit me. Nobody right. can Dante look me like down. He really is. Hit you after the show. There's no the gay black pirates in society. <laughs> 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 All right, ready? Wait a minute. Dante, Dante, no. No, no, no. Dante's gonna beat them seven times in the lap. He's a dangerous dude. He's my he's, friend. He's not a, yeah. He's well, not a tag team wrestling he's, match. Well, shut up, stupid. Well, shut, shut up. up. <laughs> All right. Hush. Okay. Oh boy. Wait a minute. I'll shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Colin. Right. Fine. You don't have any beautiful people. We'll be here. You'll be right back. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
When friends see other friends messing up, you don't talk behind their back, you pull an intervention. Patrice O'Neill needs my help. He goes out to Hollywood recently, this is all true, doesn't get the fame and money he deserves. Why? He's got what they call an attitude problem. He needs a psychological makeover. But first, we need to have him show you exactly what he did out there. This is verbatim dialogue, so you can see what we're talking about. Okay? Let's take you back to LA three weeks ago and we had Patrice on the set of some TV show he's doing a guest spot on. First, you get there early in the morning. First person you meet is the young production assistant, an enthusiastic innocent usually. You excited? <laughs> it's six in the morning. What are you, uh, uh, what, I don't, do, no, I'm not excited. All I'm doing is three lines in a stupid show. What are you doing? You're just a call sheet girl. What? But just, you, you're just what? You're meaningless. You're like your phony. Beat it. Oh my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> just trying to help her, Colin. <laughs> he really believes he's trying to help her. And you people are saying, oh, we made up the she dialogue. She was being a phony. That was a nice version of what he said It was six her. in the morning. Hi, I'm a young <laughs> She's not excited. All right, next up is one of the actors. Hey, man. How you doing? We're doing a scene together. I'm Jake. Hey, dude. Do you, uh, <laughs> you want to run some lines? For what? What, so we can go over those dumb jokes that we just read? What do you want to do? Is that why you went to acting school? So that you could be a stupid delivery boy with a paper hat? Dang, man. That's what, you're useless. You might as well keep it on. You suck. <laughs> Beat it, Jake. <laughs> I'm just joking with Jake. I'm, I'm playing around with Jake. Jake, I'm playing with Jake. This is how he is everywhere. I'm playing with Jake. Anybody think, well, it's a racial or cultural thing. Okay, let's say the show star showed up. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, man. Hey, everything's cool, but that script, that sucks, man. What's wrong with that script? That's the thing, you know? Not with a brother like you, you know, we can make it more, you know, make the scene more like, like, like the hood, you know? Word. These, these white writers, they can't, you know, they can't write us realistically. You know? Oh, yeah. We, we you want to do improv? Ghetto? You, you're about as ghetto as Urkel. We, where are you from? You're not even real. Tennis lessons are more ghetto than you. What is wrong with you? Come on, man. You got to get out of here. You make the Dean Hardison look like 50 Cent. Stop faking the fuck. Playboy, I'm just messing around. That was. I'm messing around with him. Hey, yo. Come... You really? I'm messing with him. That, that was not scary enough. You gotta be. For... Come over here. I want to show you something. The future. Man had real talent, man. He was my idol coming up, man. Shut up, stupid. <laughs> Shut your trap. So honestly, I'll be the both of these asses, and I mean it. I'm dead serious. I'm not even playing. You see, Patrice, your friends can't believe you died. They're very sad. You died of poverty because nobody wanted to do a show with a 300-pound angry you-know-what. But you can change, Patrice. I want you to change. I want you to walk over to Rich Corson, our executive producer, right now and say, hey, thanks for having me on the show. Common courtesy. Hey, what's up, Rich? Hey. And hey, thanks for being the only guy in show business with a goatee. That's real original. Ugh. He sucks, too. What? What? Wait a minute, folks. Me and Kevin talking. All right, we all say we want good people to run the president. What's the matter? I'm just throw a spear at me next time. Gotta go. You're, you look like a little Bushman. What's the problem? Oh. How is that? How is that racist? Jesus. He just spoke to England. Uh, listen. He should be banned from television for that. The fact that y'all laughing shows how racist y'all are. <laughs> this whole audience is racist. I'm marching on y'all tomorrow. I swear to God. I'm marching on Tough Crowd. Al, right up. Al Lamar. Me and Al Sharpton. Al Lamar. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Great, now they're going to cut this because you're going to scare all the white people in charge of Congress. Good, Colorado. good. Oh, all right, folks, we all say we want good people to run for president, but what we really want are good-looking liars. Promise things we know they can't deliver, so we can throw them out in four years. Pick someone to run for president and tell us why. Patrice. I picked uh, David Blaine, the magician. <laughs> Because he, he can make the world so much fun. Like, he could go, hey, pick a terrorist card. Any terrorist card. Hey, you'll be amazed as I pull a duck with oil all over out of my hat. Um, <laughs> nothing. Watch as I make, watch as I make missiles and Arabs disappear. Ta-da. Um, <laughs> and follow my pendant. I willingly gave Kobe some ass. <laughs> nothing. 
<laughs> well, sure, though. I like the butter. How about you, Kev? Ah, uh, you know what? If I wanted anyone to be president, I would want it to be Shaq. Because Shaq can do whatever the hell he wants. Shaq can call the UN right now and tell them that he wants to bomb France. They're going to say, but why, Shaq? They didn't do anything. Uh, I don't know. I don't like the basketball team. I think the basketball team stinks. I want to drop a bomb on them. I want to dunk it. So I want to press the button. I want to do it. Well, Shaq, if that's what you want to do. I want to do it. That Shaq ate his balls. He called me with that Shaq. And you think this Shaq is going to be good? Yeah, can How do you try to make my own Shaq? It's true. He just, he just tried to make mine say kaboom vomit. He wanted to take all of his vomit and put it all on me. <laughs> okay, next is Flex. So for me, it would be uh, P. Diddy because he get the young people involved and they would listen. Everybody would be real jiggy, real fly. The cabinet would dress nice. The Secretary of Defense would probably be Loom. <laughs> he get his band, all jobs in office, and get on MTV and shoot instead of making a band, making a presidency. It'd be like that. All right, Dante. All right, Dante. Mm -hmm. all right sure. uh, I choose Jennifer Lopez. Uh, thank you. Let me finish. So good. Uh, born poor in South Bronx, even more amazing. A, a Bronx-born Latino girl reaching her 14th birthday with no kids. Call Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Oh, that is our show. Okay. If you see my hat, thank you, baby. Throw it in the ring. Tomorrow. Good night, everybody. He just got it You're worried about your hair, look at my hairline, okay? I'd rather be able to comb it. Look at this. I'm almost finished. <laughs> Let me ask you something. I know, folks. I was being falsely humble. I still look good. I was like Bruce Willis when he was going bald. <laughs> I know you're pushing it. Let me ask you something. Should there be laws to protect uh, discrimination against the unattractive? Laurie Kilmartin. Yeah, there should be laws to protect the unattractive. They should be actually be forced in public to make the rest of us feel better about ourselves. Like, if I see, like, a really beautiful woman in the street, I feel, like, old and disgusting of that. But if I see, like, a little girl with a cleft palate, I feel pretty. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about? Discrimination of looks. Uh, if I, you know, like that McDonald's case, I, I mean, I... I don't think there should be any laws forcing people to hire uh, the fat people. But, Look. but no, I don't, I don't think there should be. I don't think there should be any laws. I don't think there should be any laws. But it does feel wrong in this case. It's McDonald's. I mean, the guy he wasn't looking to be an aerobics instructor. He wanted to flip grease burgers. You know, it's nah. like McDonald's hires retarded people to work the cash register. They can let this, you know, tubby dude, you know, work the something. It should, oh, yeah. it should be law. It's not bad. I, I got fired for being fat once at uh, J.P. Licks ice cream, and I got fired because I couldn't maneuver. Uh, <laughs> It's just too, it's too fat to maneuver, and so like this dude got to get this scoop, and this dude got to get this scoop, and I was rubbing up, and I should have been fired. Look, uh, it, it, look, man, I, sometimes, man, like that dude make me lose my appetite. If I'm going to order food, I don't want to look at the I, look, right. I don't look at it. Certain right. industries, it makes sense. Yes, yeah, it, it makes sure. sense. Your appetite? Excuse me. <laughs> if I manage a JP Lex and you come in for a job, I got to look at the bottom line and say this isn't going to work for my profit margin. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't we be crawling out of a Lucky Charms box? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great that he got in. Oh, it's great that he got into <laughs> it just before he went to crowd work. All right, look. <laughs> Don't. I mean, we all know our. Oh, jeez, why do I bother? The, uh, <laughs> on, I'm saying Carl. that you should get fired for a certain look, man. But I don't think that's why you're fired. I know how you are, and I bet your attitude is awful at the job. And the first day you walk around bossing people around, screaming, abusing the customers, making sexual overtures to some of the girls online. Holy I can just mother imagine. of God, what the. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. Hey, look, I got fired because I was fat. At least that's what they told me. They, I could yeah. not do what that's I was what supposed to do. Me. But then again, short people should get fired if they can't help me. If Look, if I go someplace and somebody short that works there asks me to get something down for them to get for me, yeah. then they should be fired. It's true. I think, but, well, yeah. Yes. Let me, but, but the problem is that they, in this case, well, too, I don't want to talk about... Fat or short? Sorry, I was talking ugly people. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Them too! Look, man, ugly, look, ugly is a disease. Don't try to sit in and try to be some kind of whatever you're trying to be by saying, oh, we don't know what ugly is. Shut up. Look, ugly is ugly. Somebody is physically bothering your appetite. I beg your pardon, sir. <laughs> now, but look how much 
Actually, Cal Gorbachev did with the Port of Wine stand. He brought But he had a dignity the about his Port of Wine stand. But when that, some of them get real swollen and it looks like a clam or whatever looks on your face, I don't want to see the dude. But I'm not even talking about just that. I just meant plain ugly. <laughs> <laughs> ugly without a disability or kind of, huh? Yeah, ugly without a reason. Yeah, whatever, man. So, wait, so what, what is the point? So if you're ugly, you shouldn't be. My point work. is that life is unfair, and you have to admit the better-looking people are, they get better jobs. People smile when they see them. Ugly people have a hard road to hoe, as my mother used to say. And it's tough to be a hoe, actually, when you're ugly. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Believe me, I was saying the same thing I was saying. My mother's name, but not coming to that one too. No, no, or, no. Also, there's a new hit reality show called Extreme Makeover on ABC, where they give people plastic surgery for free. Sometimes about $50,000 worth of plastic surgery for free. Now, I don't believe in plastic surgery right now. Just look at me. You know, I mean, God obviously has granted, bestowed some great gifts, but 10 years from now, I'm sure I'm going to have hair plugs and like false teeth and, you know, my pants will be bulging out like I tried to shoplift a live eel out of Petland discounts. I don't know. I'm getting aroused. Thanks. <laughs> so the point is, do you think it's good plastic surgery or bad? Well, I live in Los Angeles, so I can speak for plastic surgery. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, every day the bar gets raised because these women are getting it. So if you want to be competitive, and it's at the point where every woman has breast implants and lip implants and men have penis implants. I just want to see in a thousand years when they're digging up what was L.A. And everything will have decomposed except for the lips and the breasts and the penises. And they're going to be going, what the hell was this place? <laughs> and by the way, just as a side note, I know you're going to not believe because he's not tall and he's Irish, but I've heard the rumor on... Greg that he's packing a wallop, and I'm not kidding. Yeah, I've heard yeah. that too. You heard that too? Yeah, female, female comics comedians talk. talk. Yeah. Apparently you got quite a little, uh... I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what else female comics do, otherwise they wouldn't know the rumor. <laughs> you heard that too, right? Yeah, it's out there. <laughs> What about like a mother who gets plastic surgery and her daughter looks nothing like her? So she's like 16 years old going, look, you got to get that nose fixed or people are going to think you're adopted. Right, right. No, well, where you that? I saw triplets with breast implants and there's got to be pressure on the third to get it or she's going to throw off the set. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that show also, the part of the problem with that show is that it, it glorifies plastic surgery and it makes it seem like plastic surgery is the first step, you know, the first thing you should do. And if you're a kid, for example, if you have a huge nose, now you think I got to get a, a nose job where maybe you should just try to get the rest of your head to be bigger. <laughs> it's a radical medical breakthrough yeah, right there. I hate, to, <laughs> I hate to make it racial again, but uh, black people aren't really getting plastic surgery. Huh? No, you're right. Mike, Michael Jackson, he's uh... a... <laughs> he don't count. He don't count. <laughs> oh. Touché. <laughs> Okay, See, I folks, get it to you. you get to watch the commercials. I have to be alone with these people and reassess what's going on here. We'll be right back. Oh, boy. Okay. This, the ban on assault weapons expires next year, and uh, House Republicans aren't planning on renewing it. Starting next year, Uzis and AK-47s could be legal again. Um, I didn't even know there was a weapons ban, by the way. Somebody forgot to tell Compton. Yeah, that's right. Now, listen. Uh... And it really will affect rap for the worse. Let's face it, what is a rap without a Glock? Nothing rhymes with musket. <laughs> uh, creeping down the street with my single action shots, jam sometimes, damn this thing. Hey, watch the barrel, man, you almost took off my mirror. <laughs> Does anybody think this assault weapons ban should not be banned? How about you, Greg Fitzsimmons? Greg <laughs> Musket Fitzsimmons himself. <laughs> Greg the Musket. <laughs> Greg Automatic. Uh, rapid rapid fire. Musket. Rapid fire. This is a rapid fire. She said it was. I've, uh, you know, I haven't seen a lot of deer recently, but I mean, these, these hunters talk about that they have the right to have the, the cutting edge technology. Deer have not evolved a lot unless they've sprouted wings or developed the ability to disappear. <laughs> Unless they burn you in a crack deal or something, right? You don't need an automatic weapon. Yeah, I mean, if it's a gang thing, that's one thing. But deer in general... <laughs> well, it's easy to have the sort of, like, uh, condescending, elite attitude when we live here in the, in the cities. But, you know, if you live out in, like, a ranch in Montana, you know, you gotta, you gotta shoot varmints. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and it's a lot easier if you can just spray the little bastards, you know? You don't <laughs> no, I'm all for the automatic weapons on the farms because... You know, stray bullets when you live in Idaho, not a huge danger. Right. So get an assault weapon, but it's got to be attached to a tractor. That's the only way you can buy but what it. If you have, <clears throat> what if you've got a religious cult and a compound in Texas, and you want to have sex with children without the feds getting up your ass? 
You're going to need to be armed. Now that's oh, true. Wait a minute. That was a... Hold on. We have to go back about 17 years. That was a David Koresh <laughs> reference if anybody didn't... <laughs> It's never going to get banned because our crazy cracker president has to make sure crazy crackers who are in this NRA thing vote for him. It's about 50 million of a minute, so he's not going to ban this. you got to keep him happy because no one else is happy with the president right now. Unless, like, you better hope North Korea attacks so that he can have another war to have so that people like him again. Because right now, those are the only people that are going to vote for him, and that's why he can't. It, he has to make sure that that... Well, that's, that's a good point, but let me ask you this, too. What about the fact that... Uh, but to, oh, no, that's a good point. Um, all right. <laughs> Damn it. Let's move on to the next part. What about the fact that yeah. he just called that reference dated then followed it up with the word cracker? <laughs> you still say <laughs> I never say that. Not you, you, but I'm saying white guys. <laughs> Just in the green room. Rich, uh, good, yeah. Take care. The whole idea of these guns, I don't understand why people think that there's an unlimited right to bear arms. I mean, the, the, in the Second Amendment, you get the right to bear arms because we need a well-regulated militia. That's what it says. And I don't think a bunch of rednecks blowing up watermelons with grenade launchers is a militia. Yeah, but, you... but in fairness, let's take this case, This what just happened today. Yanko Rosenbaum, the Jewish uh, Hasidic kid that got killed, got stabbed to death by... Lambert Gunnell's in your cousin, I believe. Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, in case he will be. if he had had a gun, the NRA would say if he had had a gun, he might not have died. Now, that kid stabbed him with a knife, so at least why, he wasn't breaking the Why did I say that? What do you mean by that? What I'm saying is that people talk easily about, oh, guns should be banned. But if I'm living in the middle of nowhere, in some place in Idaho, and I got my family there, you get the creeps if you're from New York. A bunch of crickets, there's a bunch of psychos out there. You want to have a gun and protect your family, man. Yeah, I don't, right? think, I don't think guns should be from banned what? completely. I'm just... From psycho serial killers, from what? That only live in the woods? What are you watching? They live in the woods. In the 13 part six, yeah. stupid. That, you don't, know people get killed. killed. Oh yeah, right, really? Don't, they have hockey these, masks too. There's, right? no, there's no serial killers? <laughs> <laughs> and they're all up in Idaho in the woods? <laughs> Wherever they are. But the point in is, LA and, and, and it was LA too. in New York. If the Night Stalker, right. whatever his name was, Richard Ramirez came into your house, you like to blow his brains out. So she said, no guns, but that son of a bitch was, did you ever see him? Isn't the Night Stalker <laughs> older than my Waco reference? I think the Night Stalker was around the time of the Waco guy, actually, correct? <laughs> you know what's killing us? Those stupid Discovery Channel specials. <laughs> We're living 15 years in the past. But don't you think what? the reason America hasn't had an a internal revolution, besides the, serial, the Civil War, is that they, uh, the police know everyone's armed and they're afraid to attack? The police would not attack us. <laughs> You're going to be those damn right police, left wing. The police are waiting to attack? Well, I'm yes. sure they are. Oh, oh no, you have that discussion amongst yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, just, I will. Yeah, they're not ready to attack anybody. <laughs> hey, all I know is the last time we argued about police brutality, I walked out of the cellar into McDougal, and five scared young black youths scared of getting shot by the cops were yelling, white bastard, cop, cracker. Cracker, this was a long time ago. That's and, uh, terms, that's terms and the cops are just standing like this. <laughs> cops are standing like this, like looking at each other, like don't say anything. So please, that's absolutely not them. true. I swear. I wasn't God. even there, and I know it's not true. Bro. I swear on my mind. I swear. What do you mean it's not true? They say, I'm a bastard, and the cops. They're, they're rolling down the windows of the whatever it was SUV. And they roll down like this. <laughs> the cops are right here, standing here on McDougal Street, <laughs> and going, Yo, you white crack. Are you sure that wasn't the song that was playing out the Jeep? <laughs> I swear to God, oh. you're living in a dream world. Every white cop I know, all they say is, I'll never stop black people because I don't want to lose my job. That's what they say. Really? So let's not pretend it's just a lose. Not all Boston. And they say that when they're over your house eating cookies and having milk, right? <laughs> Colin, I'll never hit one of them in the head again with a billy club. Eh, 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 eh. I'm sorry, I think reference too. Taser and Glocks. <laughs> sorry about that. Billy Club was... Uh, <laughs> we're going to be right back. <laughs> right back after this massage. Fat people are demanding an end to discrimination against them. Ugly people, I couldn't seem to get that off the ground, but we're going to talk about that sometime soon. <laughs> soon, they're actually doing this march in Washington, I believe, unless this was a joke, but I thought it was serious, called the Million Pound March, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> What other groups should be protected from discrimination and why? Patrice O'Neill. Uh, aside, aside from black people, uh, leave Indians from India alone. I know they look like suicide bombers, but they're not. No, no terrorists wear sweatpants and two socks and tuxedo shoes with such pride. <laughs> And do, oh. do you think a woman who hated this country could give out bourbon chicken samples at the mall with such purpose? 
leave them alone and let them, leave these folks alone and let them worship the statue of the lady with the six arms and the Sinbad swords <laughs> in peace. <laughs> Lori, come on. Uh, this one is very personal to me, Colin. Uh, I want to stop drug dealers in Harlem from discriminating against the blonde, blue-eyed white woman who lives in their building. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Jimenez? You think you can't sell me crack because I'm white? I have to take two trains and a bus to the East Village to buy my crack? When I knock on your door at 3 a.m. on a Thursday with a $10 bill in one hand and imaginary roaches crawling up the other? <laughs> You think it's okay to say, sorry, stores closed, snowflake? <laughs> no soy la policia, Mr. Jimenez. No soy la policia. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Greg Girolo. That, that was racist. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, we need to stop age discrimination. I tried to help my son find a part-time job recently, and no one would hire him because he's two. It's, it's shameful that in our country, children are denied a right that kids in Guatemala take for granted. Let's end all ageism. If a 15-year-old boy can have sex with a 15-year-old girl, then why can't R. Kelly? Ever heard of the Equal Protection Clause? Maybe the government shouldn't have a say in how a blossoming young woman chooses to deal with her daddy issues. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it was one phrase. Oh, wow. oh. Greg Fitzsimmons. I think we got to stop discrimination in the strip clubs against strippers who have C-section scars. Oh. I mean, these are the women that need it. They have a child to support, not just a coke habit. That's right. The beautiful ones don't really need the money. Let's base our dollars we give away in strip clubs on needs. Now, I have a wife and a child. When I'm asked deep in a lap dance with a woman wearing nothing but body glitter and a fake smile, I want to know that my money's going to support a hungry child. Or six. Because I'm all about family values. Where are we going? Oh. True, true. I say, what's the matter? Yeah, nothing. What are you belly aching about when I'm about to do my thing? Sorry. You think, it's, you think I'm that much of a cool pro you can yell in my ear while I do it? I can, so go ahead. <laughs> I would say that the, uh, we should stop discrimination against the corny. There are a lot of corny people out there who just say the wrong thing all the time or do the wrong thing. They're never hip or cool enough for our slick little society. <laughs> I think that if you want to listen to Michael Bolton or NSYNC or whatever, that should be your business. If you want to put up a you know, hang in there, baby, cat, sign in your office. That is fine by me, all right? I mean, I've got my own streaks like that anyway. I personally can't get out of the house in the morning unless I high-five my framed poster of Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Great movie. And then I do deep knee bends while I blast uh, One Night in Bangkok on my clock radio. We now return you to your regular, more attractive programming. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Concerns have increased that American prisons are now becoming recruitment opportunities for radical Islam. So the question is, do rights such as freedom of religion apply in prisons? Greg? They do, unfortunately. I don't think they, they should as much as they do, but they do. There's even laws that guarantee it. But uh, there's got to be limits on it. You know, I don't think you should be able to just claim like you know, you're Catholic just so you can uh, play priest and his altar boy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we're all waiting for the brothers to talk on this prison oh, subject. Yeah. Get to it. Yeah, you know more See, about you know what? <sighs> you want yeah. me to... I'd be racist if I didn't say that, too, though, right? Because well, then I'd be ignoring course, the fact... There's a lot of white boys in prison, too, that get, to, that get to be whatever religion right. y'all have to be so you don't get raped. Bla black they people... They get raped anyway. Black people, are, they have to join that the Muslim thing so they can... It's, it's a solidarity thing, man. You get beat up. You gotta have a... a you gotta be a member of something in jail. You can't be like a guy, like in the movies, who reads a book. And just to, hey, I don't bother nobody, you're gonna get raped. So you gotta, you gotta enjoy something. Actually, in jail, though, they actually are more privileged, though. The, the Muslim culture, the, when you are Muslim in jail, you get a special diet, you get to eat a different way, dress a different way. They bring them in body oils, they get all kinds of stuff. Kind of like the Jews. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they so do, they, I mean, there is a reason also why Islam is so popular in prison, because there's like that, uh, there's like that whole chapter in the Quran about uh, how to keep your dignity while tossing someone's salad. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't 
prison itself enough suffering than than not being able to do whatever. I mean, you might as well be able to do anything you want to do and in prison because prison is the yeah, but it's yeah, worse. Is the thing. But what about the fact that it's it's much worse? We all know, and please don't deny it, it's hundred times worse for white guys because they're the ones that get raped. They oh, join each Shut your mouth. Oh, Bring yo. up the Aryan Brotherhood. I'll turn <laughs> yes. on this table. There's four guys in the Aryan Brotherhood in the whole country. Now listen. Well, they got me. the new Nazi logo. The mafia now. in there they right scales the hell out the of the rest of the, the prisons. No, they don't have the Jews. You know that. Stop it. Uh, who who has the prison? Jews? The white who has prisons? The white guys were in the prisons uh, too? Yes. Yes. You saw I've that movie. The <laughs> you saw that movie. I quit. I quit the business. You saw, wait a minute. Whoa. You saw that movie uh, Bound by Honor starring uh, a lot of B actors? <laughs> and white boys. <laughs> oh. And also, white boys, white boys got a lot of clout in prison. Oh. That's true. And Shaw, Shawshank Redemption? You saw uh, that? Yeah. Yo, Morgan Freeman wasn't they the big They don't even prisons in Nebraska. Never White mind. people are not relinquishing their power just because they're in prison. Oh, my God. Yes. No way. You, really, mm. you guys are living in a dream. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, they are not Speaking of B-movies, why don't you drop heard. that B-movie move of the one guy applauding and then the audience joining in, yeah. stupid. All right. And by the way, what white, what what white, man, what white power? You, you think the, the toothless, you know, uh, methamphetamine addict that's in jail, the white guy, you think he's got a lot of power out on the street? Don't even argue literally... with him about it. They're blatantly lying to give me First a First of all, y'all are the most removed from prison. A giant lesbian, she ain't never going to jail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, white Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican. And, a, and a Mick with his own TV show. Yeah. I'm still going to go to jail if you're on TV. <laughs> me and this dude got more chances of going to jail just standing next to y'all. Oh, you're right. I I forgot the cops are on like a fascist hunt for you guys. Yes! <laughs> what's, with, yes! what's with all the sarcasm oh, about it? Said, because nobody can believe this, these outright lies anymore. You're pimping white America and they're taking it, but I don't. Listen, <laughs> last night the Democrats got together for a nice little debate in Boston. Speaking of white Americans cowering, watch this as our powerful people show their you power. You said that <laughs> you wanted to be the candidate for guys with Confederate flags on their pickup trucks. I think we need talk to white southern workers and they need to come back to the democratic party martin luther king said come to the table of brotherhood you can't bring a confederate flag to the table of brotherhood we need to bring folks together in this race now i make no apologies for reaching out to poor white people If you're a poor white person, you deserve to be, because y'all got all kind of opportunities. Yeah, you're right. That's the yeah. truth. We really want every aspect of everything, and everything bad that happens, we're responsible for. And everything good Absolute, that happens, you, yes. somebody must have... Uh, can I, can I do know. something uh, unprecedented on this show? Yes. I'm going to take the side of the white person. Yeah! Wow. Oh, Jesus Dude, Christ. Wait a minute. I'm just going to say, I'm going to say this. I don't like anybody, more than even race, I don't like anybody that takes things out of context. And what? this dude, wait a minute, uh, this dude please. was not saying he supports racism. He's saying he wants crackers to stop voting for Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I took it. And that's not a bad thing to say. He wants those dudes Thank to you. vote for Democrats. And that was taken out of context yeah, they, and it was abused. That's what I'm to, saying. They keep trying to paint Dean as like having race issues. I mean, it, 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 you know, he, he can't possibly be racist. He's from Vermont, for Christ's sake. And you, you can't really hate <laughs> black people until you're around them a lot. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, it takes a while to build life for Judy has to get a word in. Judy has to get a word in. First of all, there's plenty of giant lesbians in jail. That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> number That's a good two, point. thank you. Number two is he grew up in New York City. Who did? Dean. He was a doctor in New York City. He went, grew up in New York. He went to like some richy rich. That statement wasn't racist, Colin. It, it, oh, I didn't think it was racist. Of course not. It actually was. Say that in context. It's strange that Sharpton would be the one to say it, but it actually is a weird stereotype that he's somehow equating. I, he's equating to... white. He's equating white working people with right. guys in pickup trucks and and uh, you know and uh, Confederate flags. We which don't is know what he means. But that is a stereotype. It is a stereotype. It's no. It's no way to, you know, you know the, the, you're not going to get them to put down their banjos and get off their cousin and vote Democrat with that kind of attitude. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Let's face it. Will there ever be a candidate that can relate to both races? Patrice? Hillary Clinton, maybe. Maybe. I think she's going to get it all, man. She, she's the next president. She's the next president that counts. Watch. She's going to really? get them all. All of them. Because nobody, no white person is going to vote for Sharpton just out of pure out of the Sharptonness. Tawana, you no, can't that vote for a thing. It's, it's just so ain't ridiculous. Gonna happen. They're not going to vote for it. It's just nobody that does represent. He's At least this white boy is trying to represent 
everybody. He's trying to include everybody. At least you got to give him that. Well, I'm not going to vote for him because I don't, you know, I'm going to pray for Sharpton, but I'm not going to vote for anybody, really, because, you know, oh, conspiracy right. theorists, you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the fact that, I love the fact that this son of a bitch was a doctor. He went to all these schools. He became this big wheel and running brother. You're going, this white boy. I bet he'd love to hear that. This white boy ain't got to well, What color does he think he is? What Kind of silly, you is? know what I'm talking about. How would you like me to say black boy? You don't think that would cause a little problem? You do it all the time. Oh. <laughs> Fine. You go watch these exciting new hit commercials and we'll stay here along with each other. <laughs>
you know, I'm, do the right. thing. Do the I'm thing. I'm sure that you watch porn so that you can please your woman better, right? Yes. Yes. Oh. Grab a bite yeah, of right. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even You're believe You're grabbing that. this bite. Actually, I watch porn yeah. to see if I match up to the porn guys. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. So what's... Wait, like, what's I'm sorry. No, I'm saying, I, don't, I don't even believe... Where, where do they even get these numbers? They have these like, weird... And it's needles. not even I mean, women. it's like one out of every three people on the internet I know claims to be a woman. Right. But it's... Well, I guarantee it's not. Because you're entitled to life living in the pursuit of commercials. <laughs> so here they are. <laughs> now, you might have watched last night, although you couldn't tell by our ratings, <laughs> where we took some of our regular comics from the show and secretly taped them for a few laughs at their expense. <laughs> Tonight, we present the second installment of our Tough Crowd Hidden Camera Photo Shoot. <laughs> Our five comics thought it was a publicity shoot for Comedy Central, run by our beautiful photographer, Ellen. What they didn't know was that there were a few other cameras in the room, behind mirrors and in the ceiling. Sorry, boys. Tonight, we take a look at Patrice O'Neill. Now, Patrice, everybody knows that you're... That we would call you a chisel, except that Jim Norton's the cheapest son of a bitch in comedy. <laughs> but you're not too, Why do you have to prove? Why are you trying to match Jim? Watch this. Uh. Can I ask you, please? Huh? You get paid all you get paid anyway, right? Concert training? Well, through my agent. I'm getting publicity. You know what I'm saying? You pay you pay They pay you, right? Yeah. Money? Yeah. Can I get a couple of these pitches? Basically I'm asking for free pitches. So if I get free comedy show, then you get free pictures. Just <laughs> paying you. You may get five thousand for this. Yeah, but then how much do you make for stand up? Give me free tickets for stand up. I don't get five G's <laughs> for taking pictures of some movies. Yes. Why can't you just give once in your life? Because I've given. Take, take, take. I've given a lot before in my life. Take, Point take, at take. Me again. What, am I holding? Maybe. I'm not holding any signs of Colin Quinn. Tell me your best joke. Nobody's making me laugh. That ain't our job. I thought if that you, is. You're a comedian. You you're going to take pictures of me, too? Yes. For we, money. There you go. We trade. It's all business. It's, we trade. <laughs> it's all business. All I'm saying is I'm going to and people are going to say, who took your headshots? Because they're going to look good. Yeah. And I'm going to say, good. this white girl, I'm going to Clean on the table, maybe scream at me, or just scream at me in general. Give me some <laughs> free bitches! <laughs> now, Patrice, I tried to be nice and work out a deal with you, but you just, you, you were so cheap, you didn't just make yourself look cheap, you made Steve Atwater look cheap, all right? <laughs> Watch here as the photo shoot is over, and you're still trying to get a hook up. What are you charged for a shoot? Headshots. Um, last time I did headshot was four fifty. Oh, so two? Huh? So two hundred? If you give me four tickets, how many tickets you, you have to give? <laughs> Call me on an off day, and I don't, I like I don't like studio headshots. I got outside na nature. That's what I like. Okay. So you don't need a setup. Just be like, I need some money. Patrice, you need headshots today? <laughs> I got 20 bucks, baby. All right. Just call me. Just be like, I need some money. See you guys later. Hey, have a good one. Bye. So, oh, you didn't give me a number. You didn't give me a number. I'll give it to you on this. I call you at 4 in the morning. Hello. What you doing, Ellen? You ain't doing sh Take my picture. <laughs> Oh, Jesus folks, Christ. that was beautiful. <laughs> didn't care to half a <laughs> route. You didn't give a damn. All you want was those free pictures. So unbelievable. <laughs> oh, folks, this isn't over. We got two more to go. Tomorrow night, we'll look at Mr. Keith Robinson. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Islamic fundamentalists recruiting in our nation's prisons, which as you know are all white run, uh, make you yearn for the kind of gentler methods of L. Ron Hubbard. What group should be trying to recruit our prisoners and what should their pitch be? Uh, Todd. 
I think the Islamic fundamentalists have the right idea. The U.S. Army should be recruiting in prison systems. 93% of prisoners are violent, repeat offenders, and it costs more to house them than they pay an enlisted soldier. Put their skills to good use. Training, whatever. They're violent. That's why I want protecting me. Not my half-sissy cousin who joined the Army to pay off his student loan. And the pitch would be real easy. We do more before 8 in the morning than you do before your entire 10 to 25 sentence. <laughs> or they can make it real easy. Go Army. It's not like you got anything else to do. <laughs> All right. Greg. Uh, if there's one group that should really move into the prisons, it's organized labor. I mean, outside of prison, there's legislation to protect workers from carpal tunnel syndrome, for example. You know, if typing can hurt you, imagine the repetitive stress injuries from being constantly gang sodomized in the prison laundry. <laughs> Sometimes this goes on for hours with no overtime pay. And prison wages are terrible. Nobody should have to work for months just to buy a cellmate a decent string of anal beads. True. Now, Judy, before we get into yours, I'm what do you think? Off. I didn't get to do that photo shoot, Colin. What is I that? I didn't set it up. Go talk to these other dummies. Yeah, well, I will. Good. <laughs> now, listen. Yeah. Judy, we're still in the middle of the show, by the way. Oh, sorry. So why don't you tell us what you would do with the prison, whatever the hell it was. <clears throat> well, I think the TV show Trading Spaces should recruit prisoners. <laughs> Their pitch would be, do you feel that your bitch's cell is too cluttered? Are you sick of using the toilet as a coffee table? Do those vertical bars make you look fat? <laughs> Why does Bubba's cell seem so spacious, fresh, and inviting? How about Bubba redecorating your cell while you redecorate your bitches? Get ready to close your eyes, drop your pants, and experience your cozy new confinement. <laughs> All right. Patrice Patricio Mirage. Patrice. Uh, a recruiter from the high school football freshman association. Uh, <laughs> look, gentlemen, in all phases of athletics, practice is essential. So in this fragile time of violent hazing, we look to you inmates to show us the proper way to fight off unwanted butt cheek advances. We <laughs> We'd like to start off with Mike. We hear his jammy shaped like a pine cone. Oh, <laughs> oh not, nothing! It's not easy. It's not easy being the third anal rape joke in a row, is it? Yeah, right. Where else was you gonna go? I didn't even go there. I know. Uh, and it the, didn't get a laugh either, so you might as well went there. Did I get a laugh? Shut up! I... No. <laughs> Judy, why don't you just, why don't you try not to make, why don't you admit? Love the hell with what? it. What? What am I in? Nothing. I got nothing. It. Could we do the boot out. thing again? Which which thing? Could we do the boot thing again? Well, like I think that? that's a good idea for yeah, the uh, yeah. end of the show, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Folks, <laughs> here's a radical fundamentalist Islamic thought for you. The show's over. <laughs> good night. <laughs> hey guys, those aren't just for decoration. Please feel free to enjoy them. <laughs> oh, God. So here we are about to sacrifice <laughs> money, <laughs> troops, et cetera, to a place that we don't even have financial interest in, right? We're going to do all this, and somehow we're the bad guy. Is it bad publicity? Now, Patrice, you travel to the continent, as we call it, well, when we have this in our hands. I'm very You're well a worldly traveled, guy. Yes. Yes. You travel to the continent a lot now. We know they think we're arrogant, but this is serious. They What's going on? But see, here's the thing about, they, they here's the thing about them. them, and when I say them, all foreigners. Them, okay? Yes. <clears throat> it's almost like, uh, you know Duke's basketball team? Yes. You know how you love to hate them, but yeah. if they suck, you don't want to hate them? So they, they really need us to be arrogant, so if you think about it, except for kicking your ass and, right. you know, arrogance. That's the, it's they, like you know. the about hating the guy that's oaring. What, what's the word for or? <laughs> or? No, what's the word? <laughs> you know, no, I mean, that's coming you know, to my restaurant. Make, 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 make it go. Make it go. Yeah, they got it. No, <laughs> no, but it is the arrogance. You know, look, America's such a big... It's like if you know a big, giant guy, and, and he, but he's a... He, uh, you know, and that's the United States after the Marshall Plan, you know, after World War II, then, then, pe then people right. will like the big, giant guy that's next. But if you're a big, giant prick, then people will hate you, and that's Patrice. Is he talking to you? People don't care about our problem with Iraq because they're not going to be directly affected. You know, we're the ones who are in danger. That's why they don't care. You only care about things that affect you. I mean, I'm pro-choice because I'm not sterile. If I was sterile, I would be pro-life. 
Yeah. Uh, Snack Boy. What, yeah. what are we, what, uh, what are we number one in, except for export? I don't know, are we the number one dad exporter and like, can I, we That's what I'm saying, yeah. nothing. No, but that is a problem. That, even that, that's what people hate about us too. I'm not saying they're right, but that exporting our cultural, you know, our economic imperialism, the Gap stores, the Banana Republic stores. We have Banana Republic stores in Panama, for Christ's sake. No. Right? It's not economic imperialism. Panama, Panama, Panama is a Banana Republic. But, <laughs> But you think of the, every time you see TV, you see like, you know, the people cheering, like crowds of like foreigners cheering because like, you know, Usher is like opening the new planet Hollywood in Bangkok or something, you know? You'd think they love us, but then you don't see all the starving behind. They probably pay those people like two cents a day to get out there and but cheer. Want us, they want us to see, they want to see us, they want to see us down. That's why the World Trade Center was, was good for them to see because it gave them room to feel bad for us a little bit, but it then it opened up. Uh, George W. To it's like, it's like vulnerable, it's the vulnerable side, like when, yeah, but when Jim Carrey did down. Yeah. Truman, when he played the serious part. Right. But Good example, the, boss. You know, Thanks. Yeah. You and know, they don't hate us, by the way. They don't hate us. The right, United States has less support in the world now mm -hmm. than we ever have before. That's yeah. got to upset people. I mean, even look, like I was in Vietnam. People in Vietnam don't hate the United States as much as, as Europe, for example, hates us right now. I was in the Vietnam. They, have that, uh, they still have a uh, <laughs> Museum of American Atrocities over there. You know, yeah. What except that the, the only thing in there is a '76 Gremlin and a poster of Paulie Shore. <laughs> but they got over the war. But here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Now, Jim, as a gay man, I hope I'm not outing you. You're out, aren't you? Norton's gay. No. No. <laughs> I did it once for a ride, but. <laughs> but Jim, don't you feel that, for instance, like a lot of people don't like Bush? You don't like Bush. In a lot of ways. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> but I'm saying you don't like. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. You're right, Bush. That was George, too easy. Uh, George Bush, you're right. Well, no, no I, mean, I don't, I don't, I, it's not in my interest to see my president fail. I mean, yeah. I, I will, he's my president and I'm going to support him and I don't, you know, but I don't think the axis of evil thing helped. I mean, just think of it but, from their point of view. I mean, like if you're sitting in, you know, in Iran and you're eating your hummus or whatever the hell you're eating and then all of a sudden this guy comes on TV and says, you're evil and you're going, what, we are evil? Who? We said, they said yeah. we are evil? They, you know, perception not official. Matter. I mean, people hate America for a lot of different reasons, but it's perception. Like you said, the axis of evil speech by George Bush, that affects, you know, he, when he acts like he hates all the rest of the world and doesn't care what they think, that's going to affect us. You know, Bill Clinton went in and, and uh, did a lot of military actions without UN approval, but nobody cared because people respected and thought that Bill Clinton liked Europe. Like the French, you know, the French had no problem with Bill Clinton because he was cheating on his wife and they admire that. Uh -huh. But <laughs> I hate to bring... Oh, Frank is a real p***, I'm just realizing. I hate he really to is a scared little man. I, what do you mean? Why don't you back our president? Why don't you go, we're going to war and deal with well, it. Well, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? Let me ask you this. Here's the other question. Speaking of scared, nobody talks about the fact that Israel, and I hate to bring this up because people are going to think I'm like Adolf Hitler, but the, just the truth is a lot of people say Israel is the reason everybody hates us. Yes or no? No, they're jealous of us. What about Israel? They, the rest of them, that's got to do with Israel. <laughs> I know it doesn't. Yet I brought it up and then you switch back to the <laughs> yeah, other that's one. Right, that's that's why I thought I'd say it again. No. no. They, 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 they stared at show business failure, Israel. which you already have without dumb, the dumb. Jews going against you. No, 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 no. I, it's nothing to do with my show business failure. I know I'm nothing. Can you eat that or put it down, please, you coward? It really is nothing in here. Jesus. I think the people really don't hate us. They just don't like the people that end up, you know, over there, like, you know, taking the national resources by computer and stuff while they're in a courtyard watching a donkey get beat up by a couple of one-eyed goats. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Now, you want to talk about censorship? They just told me to stop eating these on the air. All right? Stupid, you almost got me fired for my own job, dum-dum. Sorry. Sorry for yourself, because you'll be out of work too, idiot. <laughs> now, you're like, we really don't want it to bleed in your teeth. Now, the Oscars are coming up like the Super Bowl. We all get excited about the Oscars, right? It's, it's no. like the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't like the Oscars? No. Why not? Because they stink. Well, okay, why do they stink? Because they're not accurate. They do nothing but give out the wrong awards to the wrong people for the wrong reason. I see. And, uh... <laughs> Wow. Well, you know what? I totally agree with you on that. Like, Nicole Kidman was nominated for an Oscar for the Hours because she wears a fake nose. But it's like, oh, she's really a beautiful woman. I mean, if they were you good, but yeah, she was great. But I mean, let's not forget that she's gorgeous. If they were going to really be authentic in that part, they would have cast Danny DeVito. The Hours, the Hours was, it was, it should have been called Three Crazy Bitches. That was a frightening film. The Hours was like sitting through menopause. Every scene, if I want to spend that much time with a bunch of miserable women, I'll watch The View. 
That oh, totally it drove me crazy. You know, I, I, you, Thank I you both. So please don't ruin the ending. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> oh, go ahead. I, I first of all, um, the assignment was for all of us to see all the movies. These sons of bitches did their homework and you couldn't uh, see it. Look, I knew you weren't going to see it because you were the only black guy that went to uh, see The Hours. Uh, yeah. what, who is it about? It's about any famous people The Hours? Yeah. Who? Nicole Kidman. <laughs> You're truly on a joke. No, it was about, it was about that you stupid uh, Virginia Woolf who cares about her. Well, I did see about Kathy Bates. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, no, she, uh, Pat, Kathy Bates was naked was in that. Yeah, Kathy Bates. That's the that last movie one. stunk. It was she, boring. Oh, she, I loved it. Things. I thought it was great. Yeah, I love that she's up there. They keep saying she's brave because she got she got naked. It's like it's like she's got she's got balls. Seeing an old fat naked lady was like seeing an old fat naked lady was like seeing Norton's mom at work. I was really. Your hey, fat mother. Now, Jim, let's do a movie. I know you saw it several times. Can <laughs> you probably see some of the outfits from Chicago? What, 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 Chicago? <laughs> you probably have two of Renee Zellweger's outfits at home. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did you think of Chicago? I thought it was great. I do. I thought, I thought Chicago was great. It's got, it's got murder, it's got beautiful girls, it's got tap dancing, it's got scandal, it's show got tunes. show Stop. tunes. But it's not, it's a, you know what it is? Chicago, Chicago, Chicago is a musical for people who hate musicals. No, it's not. It stinks. You didn't uh, see it. Exactly. You didn't see it. I see what I saw it. Just think your performance in Spider-Man, idiot. Yeah. And you're picking me off. Spider-Man. And no, I was really good in good. the 25th hour. Shut up. I was going to bring that up next. I, I was very good. good. It bothers me about Norton. He had one line in Spider-Man. You could tell it's like, hey, this is just the beginning. Like Bronson Pinchot and Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to leave this in. Yeah. That was your first and last role in a movie. Shut up. Yeah. yeah. Now, you I was terrific. First of all, what did you play in... Why don't you tell the people... 25th hour, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and what did you play? They probably don't recognize you with... It was a stretch. I played. Was I it played a doorman, show? but it was really, it was, it was pivotal. Yeah, the movie. He was the 26th hour. Nope, you'll be in the director's what? cut. What? <laughs> Nothing. Great. <laughs> what do you think? Now, guess, guess what, guys? There's actually something to talk about with the actual Oscars. Now, they're saying no red carpet this year, out of respect. What do you think about that? To who? For who? There's going to be no red carpet yeah. to walk out. Out of respect for what? For the war. I think that's great, because I think they should give a special Oscar to whoever gets past Joan Rivers without beating her to death. <laughs> I want to bash you know, her face. You know, he's in. happy about no red carpet. He probably has a dress made out of red ribbons. <laughs> I don't How did you know? <laughs> Can you leave skinny Jiminy Glick alone? <laughs> oh, come on. Leave Don not alone while you're explaining the story. Yeah. So, listen, uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking, of pedophiles, speaking of pedophiles, what do you think of the, uh, what do you think of the whole thing with, uh, uh, what's his name? Roman uh, Polanski. Roman Polanski. He shouldn't be nominated, um, although the fact that he can be a pedophile and still be nominated does give a lot of us hope. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe well, you know what, though. You know what? No. Good. The you know what? Good. You know what? He, he, Wait. his mother got killed in the concentration camp, and his wife got killed by the Manson family. Isn't he entitled to a little teenager? <laughs> You know, I, I, just love one. I love that he ran away to France. I love that he ran away to France. That's just great. Like, he raped a 13 year old girl and then he runs away to France. 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 Well, stop with the. With the what? Stop with what? Wait, he didn't wait. He, she, with... she left with him, like. Yeah. Shut up, shut so up. He, raped, he raped a 13 year old girl. Ah! Shut up, dummy. Let me yeah, get my point. Let him get his point. He, ra right. he rapes a 13 year old girl and then he goes to France. Like, in France, it's totally acceptable somehow. It's good. Because all the men in France look like 13 year old girls. So they're like, well, they do. It's really not a problem. Now. The Pianist was a great movie. That was great. The Pianist was good. It? Oh, yeah. He, I saw know, them all. He hid in all, my these little, all these little tiny attics, you know? It would make that Matrix uh, effects in that movie. That would have been really good. <laughs> oh, you that was it. awful. <laughs> that was a good movie, though. Uh, right. you, you, might might you might want to start writing things the down. The Pianist? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> what? The pianist was good. Look, the pianist you just, wait, 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 did you just cover up that bomb by going, no, but seriously, that was a good yeah, film. Yeah, of course I did. You saw it ate his balls. I'm trying to it get just, out of it. That pianist took a pretty anti-Nazi take on the whole thing, though, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you didn't approve of that? Yeah, well, you know, that's the easy I'd way like out. More even -handed it's the easy approach. way out. Yeah. That was a good movie, though. It really was an excellent movie. Oh, you're so proud that you saw that movie, aren't you? All the movies I saw were excellent. Because for once you didn't see New York. Oh, because for once you didn't see a movie like Stone Jet Lee, so you feel like you're an intellectual now. Gangs of New York was excellent. What do you think? Gangs of New York stunk. Well, that's that's what that was, it was like Mick Pride. You should have loved that. It was not Mick Pride. The only one was Daniel Day Lewis. The rest of it was corny. That you, you, didn't was like, like, you didn't like that. You didn't like about Schmidt. What do, what do you like? Films with car chases, you jackass. Yeah. About Schmidt. What do, what do you like? Films with car chases, you jackass. Yeah. <laughs> I like true. Night at the Roxbury, starring me and Will. That's true. Oh. That never got an Oscar.
think Colin's movies that he's been in, they had a grand total of $4,600 at the box office. <laughs> Colin, Colin was in Married to the Mob, which they shot, they shot that in my apartment. Did they, that was your apartment? Yeah, it was uh, my apartment. Oh, so yeah, that's I why just, I got kicked out. I was wondering what that uh, swing was in the bedroom. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was mine. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Well, uh-huh. Mm. Uh, here we are arguing over the Oscars, and none of us has ever even been nominated for an American Comedy Award, which is pathetic. <laughs> we'll be right back at this commercial. <laughs> Patrice was just pointing out the overacting Jim did in Act 3, trying to bring charisma to his role. I was good. I was good. I saw the thing. Just a few days. Sorry, A few days, our best and brightest Americans will once again face the most fearsome people on the planet, Joan Rivers and her daughter, Melissa. I knew that. I've asked these guys to pretend the impossible has happened and give their Oscar acceptance speech. Let's start with Greg. Oh my God, this moment is so much bigger than me. This moment is for Emilio Estevez, Freddie Prince Jr. and Lorenzo Lamas. It's for every nameless, faceless, assimilated white Latino guy who, who now has a chance because this door tonight has been opened. I stand on the shoulders of giants before me. Lorenzo Lamas' early work in Greece and later in Snake Eater 2. And, and of course, Emilio Estevez in the Mighty Ducks trilogy in that Garbage Man movie. <laughs> Guys, this is for you. Muchisimas gracias. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right. Jim Norton. Uh, well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the older gentleman who made me kiss his dinky when I was seven years old, which not only made me hate myself so much that I had no choice but to beg and grovel for love by entertaining, but it also showed me exactly what I'd have to do to get ahead in Hollywood. And uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank people like Alec Baldwin and Janine Garofalo for proving that you can have a great career even if you lack any talent just by standing on a soapbox, babbling melodramatically, and making a total ass out of yourself on television day after ooh, day. Ooh! Patricio! Ooh! Patrice O'Neill! First of all, I'd like to thank my fellow nominees, <laughs> Greg Giraldo, for uh, his role in Obscurity. I was on Conan 14 times in The Letterman, but no one still knows me. Uh, <laughs> Jim Davis for his inspired performance in Gobble Gobble, the Frank Perdue story. <laughs> How he actually tried to look like Frank Perdue for his role. <laughs> and Jim Norton in his wonderful performance in I Was a Teenage Wear Clam. As he <laughs> turns into a mullet right before your eyes. And uh, <laughs> to my ex-girlfriend for believing I, if I became famous after we split up, I'd still buy her house. Whatever. <laughs> and, and my mom. <laughs> Jim David. <laughs> it's like a car accident. All right. I have a thousand people to thank, so I'll be brief. To the guys who beat me up in high school, may your life be an endless parade of child support and restraining orders. <laughs> to the priest in my Catholic school, may your prison time pass quickly. And to my acting teacher who said I would never make it and who's been in the closet longer than a Nehru jacket, I say, sit on this, you old queen. <laughs> All right. Jim, Jim was giving a real speech. He really was. I'd like to thank the Academy for my early roles in movies like Married to the Mob, where Matthew Modine made a joke about my voice and I wanted to stab him. <laughs> I was like a, lo a glorified actor. He's like, hey, that guy really does sound like that. <laughs> Three Men and a Baby, where Tom Selleck yelled at me for not rehearsing with him. As I said before, I'd like to knock him out. And one time, I auditioned for Cocktail with Tom Cruise, and I was auditioned to be a bartender, and I pretended to be making uh, an imaginary drink, and one of the producers goes, you don't have to do that. And Tom, I look at Tom, like humiliated, and he goes, shrugs his shoulders, like, but Tom, you have no power? You're like a giant star at that time. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you don't know you're Tom Cruise. You can't tell the guy shut his mouth. This guy's trying to do a little pantomime work. <laughs> So, I mean, that's about the end of it. I'm not going to jump on that other one. And uh, i got plenty more. Folks, if you have any comments or thoughts about this show, please visit the Comedy Central website and go to the Tough Crowd message board. Good night. You heard what I said about 50 centalvos. Ha! If you want to see the great cultural divide between us and Islam, just do what I did yesterday. I was switching back between the war and spring break. And you see all these kids driving from Wisconsin to Daytona, and then you have a busload of suicide bombers from Syria to, you know, Baghdad or wherever the hell they were going. 
It really is kind of interesting and ironic. Not necessarily laugh out loud, but Patrice, let me ask you something. <laughs> Last week, you said you weren't watching the war. Have you started watching it now? Absolutely not. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Would you care to add on to that so I don't see her in I mean, whatever. What, I mean, what? More war you stuff? You do watch the Hey, war. did you hear about the, the sheep? No. Tell him, Greg. The, the what? The about sheik? the sheik. Yeah, Greg Reeds. Go ahead. Yeah, um, uh... It seems that Patrice and the Sheik had an assignation in his tent last week. Oh, and, uh, uh, it's assignation? What does that say? That means like, <laughs> I like that word, actually. Thank you, buddy. Now listen, what has most surprised you about the war? Anybody? Greg. Uh, I think that uh, more people protested before it started, you know what I mean? This isn't exactly Vietnam. Before the thing even got going, there was people out in the street misspelling signs asking me to give Peach a chance. And, uh, <laughs> But I sent a protest start to try to book Martin Sheen and then worked their way down from there. <laughs> I'm all for the war, but I'm starting to get annoyed because it just seems like the, the government's telling us that, like, you know, they're going to be running out and greeting the soldiers with apple pie and love, and that's just not the case. They yeah. don't want us there. They don't want Probably us Probably falafels and some lamb. Did you really believe that they were going to run out and, and <laughs> greet us and gleefully throw down their weapons? I did. Now, let me ask you something. If Iraqis came to this country and they were trying to, you know, rid us of our despotic tyrant, would you throw down your stuff and run? <laughs> Look, I made falafel. I'll answer that if you tell me why you got your outfit from the set of Poltergeist 2. <laughs> Listen, hey, 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 hey. We're gonna get that's personal. not necessary. That wasn't necessary. Okay. If we're going to get personal Listen, this early, it's going to get real, real ugly. Yeah, that's oh. true. He's true. All right. Listen, a civilized gentleman let, would like to speak. Let middle-aged Buddy Holly say what he has to say. <laughs> Now listen, listen. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Listen, I agree with him. I said in the 50s they shouldn't let Negroes on TV. Oh! Listen, J.J. Shut up. All right, you're right. First of all, let me just say this. Here's how polite of this war we're fighting. Today, they, two, they dropped in 120 lawyers. To like, me, uh, like military lawyers to make sure we don't bomb the wrong places and everything's on the up and up. Honestly, well, how bad is your life gonna suck that you want to be a suicide bomber? I mean, that's actually the that's an upswing from where I, I want to volunteer to you know scratch Jimmy, the Jimmy, slow down. And first of all, <laughs> first of all, you just asked about lawyers. Then you just asked about what I the said hell they dropped you? a bunch of suicide. Jimmy, listen to the question. <laughs> Say it one more time, Colin. Would you? I said they just dropped a bunch <laughs> of lawyers. Not yeah. suicide bombers prepared. <laughs> <And> listen. <laughs> That's right. Have a Jimmy. sip of calmness. <laughs> Jimmy, I did say. Yeah. Just let him relax, Colin. Don't yeah. do Okay, go ahead. Okay. If I might say, I'm all for dropping lawyers into any wartime situation. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh... In fact, I think the suicide bombers, if I may pick up Mr. Schubert's topic, should strap lawyers to them. There you go. Thanks for the assist. Yeah. Thanks for the assist. Here's something I found out. I like it. Uh, uh, by mistake, I watched 60 Minutes last night. Yes. And, um, <laughs> Did you have to explain it to you? you Ooh, fantastic. <laughs> Put really, hair really uh, Good one, Kevin Bacon's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> now... I learned something about some Ayatollah El Hakim. Right. Could you reiterate on him? Well, you the guy was. I'll give you twenty-two dollars. Well, no, it's the guy that was. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the guy that they're going to bring in, the Shiite Muslim guy, that they 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 killed Saddam killed all his relatives. Now he's the guy that might come back into power. Is that the guy you're talking about? That, that yeah. Was, that was interesting. So what do you think about this whole thing? It's kind of like we're going to let the Muslims extremists are going to have to run the country. Well, that's I mean, what, I, that's what we did. What Saddam was saying. I mean, we created Saddam was saying. Now they have another guy to create and put him in his that's place. That's right. Why but don't you think? Why do yeah. we do that all the time? Because we, we do that. We're hey, at the time, it's this. a good idea. You can't. But I'm saying we leave people back. hanging, man. Why do we leave people hanging like this? Well, we shouldn't let them hang. But I'm saying the other stuff. Everyone's like, oh, you with dictators. But that's the way it goes. You can't. Everybody. Why is it that only this country is held up? to that standard. The rest of the world does hypocritical stuff. I mean, people like, hey, everyone's against us. Russia, China, Germany, France. Yeah, and they have their own stupid motives, of course. So they act like somehow we're morally uh, reprehensible when, you know, we're just doing our own thing we, for us, what's best for us. Well, we, don't no leave, we don't leave people hanging, though. We don't leave people hanging. We, we never do. leave. We do. We've we been, well, been with the Korea Afghan Afghan for 40 years. Afghanistan. Uh, England thinks we, what? England thinks, we, I'm looking for help from Greg. Oh, England, right. Well, you guys are both English. Yeah, yeah, we both go to England quite a bit. Don't travel. The, the yeah. English think we were late for the war or something like that. Yeah, we never did. show up. We, They're we still really, angry about World War II. Yeah, yeah they, and, and but they're doing good because Tony Blair really sells it. You have to admit that. Yeah, yeah he sells it better than Bush, I think. And I would, yes. have, I would have approved of Bush uh, pushing us this way if he made the same kind of. Because Tony Blair gave the "I'm not your friend, I'm your leader" speech, and Bush just right. kept saying weapons of mass destruction over and over again. Right. 
he learned that short phrase. And um, but, it, it, also, they, they can acquit themselves on their feet, the English leaders, man. You see, if you ever right. watch them do question time with the prime minister and stuff, they have to answer to the parliament every week. Right, and right. you don't really see Congress grilling Bush over an open fire that often. Right. He kind of right. comes out, like today he's speaking to the Coast Guard, which is, of course, a very dangerous, seditious liberal group to speak to. Right? Yeah, but so he's taking a chance I really, there, man. I wish I had something to interject, but I'm all like, I know, I'm just just like, great. 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 what What you're saying is, his style of a content, but do you ultimately think the content of Blair slash Bush is correct? I would think that Blair is taking a huge risk because his party can ask him, unlike in this country, his party can ask him to stand down and they can vote him out if they disapprove of what he does. But somehow you're implying that that's a good method because you go, unlike in this country, like you don't like the uh, democratic process, like somehow it's yes, good that's exactly the way what they I'm do saying. It. Me. I'm impugning the democratic process, Colin. Well, you're implying it with this is fantastic. Dueling rednecks. I've never <laughs> seen. This is brilliant. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that he, uh, he has to actually answer up. And I don't right. think Bush has had to answer up in two years' time, man. That's right. right. He hasn't had to answer to anybody except well, himself. What are you kidding me? This whole war is an answer up. In my opinion, it should be like World War II, where FDR would just say, okay, listen, here's the story. Those bombs you heard were bombing Germany. You people shut up and mind your business as we over in three years. Really? You want everybody, everybody to shut up and mind their business? Yes. yes. Then why not move to Russia? They're they're people, people have to shut up and it's mind like their if business. Somebody, there. Would you like Colin Powell to come up to you and go, hey, Greg, I saw you're right. Here's what you need to do. I watch you. I'm a fan. You need to cut this uh -huh. thing. He doesn't know. You don't know the military. No, no, you're right I don't, there. Know, the I don't know the military. That's but what I'm saying. Uh, the government doesn't know what's best for us. Otherwise, they wouldn't f us over every few years. So you're not, you're, you're not with the war, though. You're not, you're not for the war. Did you really you're catch really that? Really oh, my God, I did. Yeah. Perhaps <laughs> I'll notice over here, Patrice. <laughs> wow. wow. I'm, you know, the I'm sorry, I thought that was the AIDS pen or something. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know what this stuff was. I'm for the, this is why I stopped watching the news. You thought that was a Mercedes thing, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> or something Jewish. So, um, it, 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 all right, look. War never changes. This is the wrap-up, by the way, so shut it. Oh, look at that. You guys are really my favorite jail couple. I'm serious. <laughs> but is that... Okay, basically all the top albums are black. The white albums don't sell as well lately. <laughs> because everybody downloads them. You're People are afraid credit. to download the black albums because, you know, if they catch them, they'll put two in the back of their head. <laughs> now, all right, well, listen. Well, let me tell you something about terrorists. Okay. D <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, Patrice. We all like rap, but you have to admit, its message has definitely accelerated the decline of Western civilization. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we took two, is that? We took two, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me finish. We took 2,000 years to build it up from Rome. You destroyed it in 18 years from Hollis. Stupid. <laughs> oh, you're trying to get your joke out. You're an ass. Yeah. Um, look, I'd like to explain, first of all. I'm trying to all, get a brilliant line out. You're right. I am an ass. Yeah. I'm trying to get a brilliant thing that I wrote out. Right. Here's what, here's yeah, what I'm going to say with all my heart. All right. What have... <laughs> what musically... Have white people ever contributed Beethoven. to anything? Whoa. River uh, Dance. He had to steal that from some rap, 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 rap music. Rap music. music. Rap music was stolen from Blondie's song Rapture. Shut your stupid <laughs> face. That was the first rap song. Let me say one thing. Look, as much as, as much as I'd like to be on his side, shut up. Yes. That was the stupidest. Yeah. He got Dumb. that. She got that from listening to rap. Rap idiot. is good. Yeah, yeah. Rap is oh, bad 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 bad. Why, why white people's contribution stupid. to music is minimal, man. Yeah. What about classical about music? I saw, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. He agrees with me. I saw his whoa, half hour special. Do that riff about how white people have nothing to add to society. I saw it. Yeah, I didn't see him. I'm we down. have nothing to add to society. No, 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 there's only two kinds of music. Good music and bad music. Well, not white and black music. Good music, bad music. Unfortunately, you know, the good stuff has become, you know, it's fringe. Like, but there'll always be like, uh, you know, a band like Nirvana come along. As long as Whitey can play guitar, we're still going to be okay. Jimmy, let yes. me ask you something. Did you ever think to yourself, <laughs> calling Jeff and going, look, my throat's messed up. I'd like to reschedule for next week. <laughs> you sound worse than I do. Jesus I my throat too. <laughs> I got problems too. It's not I, worse than a nervous sore throat. It sounds Easy. like you're Shawman cursing us out on the set. Hey, listen. <laughs> oh, no. I was getting a junior book right now. Can you, can you leave retarded Troy Aikman alone? <laughs>
You made a good point. We're trying to destroy that. Jesus. <laughs> you know, the, the music being popular has nothing to do with the culture. No one cares about the culture because exactly, black singers. Exactly, because it's. It's, it's look, not about the culture because. It is a black, black culture. No, it's not. Black singers were popular back in days where they were sure going to be were. shot for looking at a white lady in a convenience store. They weren't popular. No, they they were. That's why white they people were. had to steal it let and make it popular let, like Elvis. Let, let a pause break get his line out about how they were going to shoot that. You phony bastard. No, I was trying to shoot them for looking at a white lady. No, I had another joke. I was going to say. skin, I'd act like one. Go ahead. <laughs> That's right, lumberjack with AIDS. Spit your thing out, pal. <laughs> that should have done. That should have done better. Oh, no, it shouldn't. Have. It was mean and it hurt. And it was accurate. Uh, <laughs> you know, at least throughout music, uh, artists are afforded the, uh, you know, the uh, option of expressing their opinion. Like when the Dixie Chicks. Uh, Little singer said she was ashamed of George Bush. All the country fans in that very open-minded, liberal, pro-war way burned the records, you know? And I find that when country stars say something, it doesn't really adversely affect my life that often. Like, you know, Toby Keith might be making a waitress cry in Alabama right now, and yet I get off scot-free, you know what I mean? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that easy for layman's. Country music stinks. No. Rap is, is a Country better form of music. Stink. It's horrible. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's, it's horrible. It does stink. It's uh, awful. This, the commercial stuff, you guys don't even know. I shouldn't even talk to you about Matter of fact, you, name, one, name one country. Charles Van Zandt, stupid. Excuse me? The commercial uh, stuff, like you're from the sticks, you're an Irish drunk from Brooklyn. What do you know about country music? <laughs> You had a good point there. Uh -huh. Irish music is country. Irish music is country. It is country music. Right. There was a land bridge that connected Ireland to Kentucky. And they, they came over with their banjos and their flutes and whatnot. Yeah, you just, you know, Colin, you're saying that just to keep it going, but you, you don't like country music. I do like country you're, music. You don't like country music. I like it. Colin, you forget I know you. Yeah. You don't like country music. <laughs> Uh, and you love rap and you like to know about rap. You like uh, you don't like rock and roll. All that like stuff. Rock, too. Look, black music is 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 the catalyst. Nobody's is that denying a good word? Black is, that, is that the right word? Yeah. Right? Nobody's yes, denying it. It's a catalyst well, for everything else. Everything you else. Think, but according to you, and I know you, black music, anything black, anything white people do is good. We stole from you. Yes. <laughs> Name one thing that you Computers. do naturally. Computers. Computers. <laughs> that was Chinese. <laughs> don't laugh. That was either Arab Shut or Chinese. Shut up. Don't person. laugh. Basketball <laughs> was ours. Basketball, Basketball was ours. Basketball was yours. That's, That's right. That's right. right. They hijacked it. They, <laughs> they let us in. You right. better keep hot. They bum rushed it. <laughs> uh, nothing. Uh, All right. Um, <laughs> when we come back, we'll check March Madness pick. Welcome to a crazy little thing we call Act 4. Woo! Love songs. We all were criticizing music. I think we did, but we're supposed to. But let's see if we can do any better. <laughs> We've asked our panel to open up their hearts and give us an original love song. To help us out, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Armenian Rob, our guitar player. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. We're going to start out with the golden throat of Mr. Jimmy Schubert. The golden set of pipes. Ah, here we go. Here's my love song, because I'm not in a caring relationship, I'll sing to the thing that gets me through. Porn. I love porn because I love a movie where the guy gets the girl in the end. And sometimes he gets the girl in the end. I love porn because it doesn't always need to know what I'm thinking. I love porn because it doesn't get mad when I've been out on that drink. I love porn because I don't have to tell it it's ass when speaking the dress. I love porn because it doesn't mind when I leave the house a mess. I love porn because it's never going to go, hey, get a towel, it's in my eye. I love you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Now up is Mr. James Nortone. Yeah. Yes. You ready, Joe Millionaire? Yeah. <laughs> nice and soft. <laughs> Baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> I never should have put itching powder on your tampons Or got your dad drunk and made out with him at that party Baby, I'm sorry I know I should have told you or wore a condom There were better ways to let you know I have gonorrhea Than yelling, tag, you're it, and laughing and pointing Baby, I'm sorry And when we broke up 
I never should have started that rumor that your ass crack smells like the toe webbing of a Haitian marathon runner. Even though it's true, baby, I'm sorry. You're very good. You're very good. Oh, Seeing good. you said country music stinks, that just proved you. All right, next up is Greg Proops. Sorry. I'm still a little moved over Jim's song. I mean, that was sweet. Uh, it's baseball season, and I love baseball, but my team from San Francisco lost to the Anaheim Angels last year in the World Series. This, of course, is a personal affront to people from San Francisco because we're cool and groovy and like gays and they're <laughs> dicks. <laughs> so I've written a little song about their mascot, the rally monkey, and it goes like this. Oh, I hate the rally monkey, and Barry Bonds does too. The monkey hates gays and Indians, and Asians and blacks and Jews. The monkey is a hateful fascist who supports the dominant paradigm. <laughs> The rally monkey wants the corporate oligarchy to dominate your life. Oh, die, rally monkey. Die, you little bitch. Die in a humane, self-empowered way. Oh, I thought I heard a little dead influence too. All right, Patrice O'Neill. Oh, thank you. you. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> that usually never happens. <laughs> Hand me that tissue. Good. That was very nice. In the words of Jay Giles and Jim Norton, love stinks. Good night. My own show, Patrice and Norton are on the show tonight. I had some nice brownies I was going to enjoy. And uh, both of them smashed them right as they were coming out. They smashed them with their stupid Brazil AIDS hands and ruined my brownies. And now I can't eat them. So I hope you're happy, guys. Thanks. You guys smashed my stupid treats. Well, let's look at the media's coverage of that Russian school terrorist attack. They haven't mentioned terrorists once or the word Muslims. And never, they said like Arabs. They never say any of these things. Why is that, do you think? Probably because behaving this way is just such an anomaly for Muslims. <laughs> They're normally very peaceful, rational people, and to see them acting like this, I mean, it's well, just I think hard we to all believe. know the uh, Muslims do control the media, though. <laughs> nice one! Ted I like Koppel? That. Well, what do you think about that? Uh, don't you think it's just more political correctness? Like, people are, they're really just afraid to say, like, Hey, this is like a Muslim thing, not that it's all made. Say they, say who they is. I don't know, the Jews, the media, what do you want? What? Say who Excuse they are. Excuse me, why would, the why Jews? Why the Jews? What is that? What is that? Why do the Jews not want to say Muslims for everything? I don't they know, don't want they, to they, they would say Timothy McVeigh was they a Muslim if they could if it was Jews. <laughs> all right, then let's just say white people. Just white why do we say... The left. The left. White people in the left. Excuse Why is it the left? Because, because they have the right. Fox isn't saying it either. That's, that's yes, right. they are. They're not no, saying they're, they're not, Muslims. No one is saying Muslim. Why because our country is so afraid of offending anybody that you can't identify anybody. But even when they identify themselves by something, you're still not allowed to say it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> people, but you got to say, people, they, they're Muslims, man. And But see, they, they, this country's starting to get this thing where, wait, Muslims and Islam... Really, let's just say Arabs, man. Let's not, let's stop trying to beat around the bush with this religion. We're not mad at Muslims. No one's mad. They're well, mad at Farrakhan. I am. has the biggest Muslim yeah, population, but no, one, Why you are... Arabs, but no one cares about Indonesian people. They they don't, no one Muslim. looks at them. Where was Bali? Arabs. Arabs. They were Arabs in Bali? In Bali, who, who committed the, uh, the terrorist attack in the night? Look at them like that! Say an anomaly to start the like show that. off ever again, I'll punch you right there. That was a good word. No. Leslie, it threw the whole crowd and it startled now, my heart. Here's the, <laughs> the deal is, it's these Muslims who do not value life. We're not they, talking they, about the Muslims. We're talking about our media won't say Muslim. Why is that? I don't know. But I don't like the fact that... they don't want to attack the, what happened? the religion. That's a hard word to say. What no, because our car... <laughs> It's the religion. No, it's not, because they attack the Catholic it's Church. Always it's always so, they attack the Catholic Church. Because it's Catholic, 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 Catholic people are white. You know this goofy country. That's it's what I'm white saying. White people yeah. are pussy with. You're not even fun no more. That's Get what I'm rid saying. of white people. <laughs> Don't get rid of us. 
We're not useless. You, you just... Without us, you wouldn't be driving your SUV with this new Sally and your yeah. nice... Yeah. Oh, 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 you. 300 years ago. Now you're just, your time oh, is up. Hush. And you still haven't paid white people back for the free ride over here you got. I don't like it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let them laugh, stupid. Oh, yeah. A crew from Africa. <laughs> stupid. Yeah, a few months ago, reparations. A few months ago, the New York Transit Authority, giving, speaking of an example of, told a sick employee he couldn't wear his turban, so maybe had a heart attack about that one. After negative press, <laughs> the TA has come up with a turban. I, I wish this was a joke, what I'm wearing right now, and it's not. It's going to be something like this. I'm not kidding. Like this. I swear to God. I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. But it's not a joke. It is a joke. I swear to God. It's true. It's absolutely true. But it's true. It's but he knew that's what's that's just. But did they actually be wearing this? Get murdered, man. Somebody will kill somebody in this well, show, man. No, it's ridiculous. I mean, the fact that you, you take a job and that's a uniform. I mean, I'm Catholic. But you don't see me wearing a priest molesting a kid on my head. You know, you know. So Actually, I, I do you see, that. see that. Yes. It's on my website. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think we've gotten, like, well, just anybody, that anybody that says... ridiculous. But, Judy, it is the left that has set this... Of course, it's your, the left. Why, it's why, your why responsibility. Why are you yelling at me not. about the left? Because I'm you're not. the only one that comes close to the left that we can represent yeah. them. And you're you're sitting sitting on the left, I ask you until you turn on me. Go ahead. Yeah. You, it's your responsibility. Every time we make fun of certain people, it's your responsibility to let people know that the Sikhs don't like the Arabs that we don't like. They don't like the same people, Sikhs and Indians. Right. We got to say that these dudes if... don't like those. They Arab don't like don't it, like. but guess what? Even though I love the Sikhs, yes, they're great. Too bad. Now you're here, you wear the stupid transit cap. This is so man. Pretty soon McDonald's will have hats like this when we go. You know what the no, problem is? No, no, here's the thing. Problem. No more people wearing religion. Stop with the religion. I don't like going to the airport and seeing the ladies in the burkas. No, it's scary. Ever. No more. <laughs> No, it's scary. Nobody wants to hear a guy in a turban say, next stop, World Trade Center. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's last stop, yeah. World Trade Center. Yeah. That is wrong, dude. Ooh. All right, Muslims. Speaking of clothes. That is wrong. I don't like the fact that there's a little part of you that actually thinks you look cute in that thing on your head. <laughs> Days of thinking I look cute. A little ended there is five percent of you that thinks that you kind of look all right. No, there's not. Yes, I'm there finished is, and I know it. Unlike you, you didn't just. As I on, said many times, at least once I knew what it felt like to be good looking many years ago. <laughs> you never knew that. Uh, you right back. I don't like the way you ended this. <laughs> Now, Patrice and Norton are in a real argument. Did it ever occur to you maybe it's karma for smashing my brownies, you two scumbags? Each week we take... I really stink. <laughs> Each week we take a look at some of the movies that opened over the past weekend. The first movie is Paparazzi, which was produced <clears throat> by Mel Gibson. Here's a clip. When your name is up in light, the cameras never stop shooting. Don't take pictures of my son. <laughs> One good shot deserves another. I've now got that paparazzi that were involved in your accident. What's so bad as a paparazzi? Now, isn't this one of those movies from like 10 years ago they should have made? Like, oh, the paparazzi's out of control. Now it's like, oh, who cares? It's over. It's First good. of all, it's unbelievable. We, we all know the paparazzi would never cause a car accident. That's right. <laughs> but I like, one time I was nice, watching that, man. I was watching that, uh, Paparazzi, like, on Celebrities Uncensored, yeah. and Tony Danza goes, hey, what's up? He looks over, we'll wave the camera, punches the guy in the face. <laughs> now, that's funny. Mel Gibson, <laughs> Mel Gibson produced this. Yes. Um, so, of course, all of the paparazzi are Jews. <laughs> I would like that. I like that joke, but I would like it better if your chair wasn't swiveling like your William yeah. F. Buckley Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Mel fucking, Gibson produced. Well, I should just sit there and look into my tea. I have to talk yeah. like it's fairly natural. That actually looks like a nice turtle. Are you saying that this looks like it sucks just because you have to say that? It actually looks like a decent movie, man. It does <laughs> look like a decent movie. <laughs> It looks, it, it looks like it's entertaining. Oh. Tommy Sizemore's in it, and that white boy, that's, he's on the come up. He's a good actor, man. Who? That white, uh, what's that kid? Whatever his name is. What's white, his name? The white, white, kid. white boy. It's Tommy Sizemore and a white boy in it. First of all, don't call him Tommy. You don't know him. Yeah. Second of all, Thomas. call him what he is, a white man with mass. I don't say boy. <laughs> Our next movie is Vanity Fair. Papa Rossi looks like it's going to be good, man. Our next movie is Vanity Fair. This one, your people will love this one. Vanity Fair starring <laughs> Reese Witherspoon. Take a look. All my life, Becky Sharp longed to live in a world that was out of her reach. Now she will enter the world she always dreamed of. 
where polite society is turning out to be anything but. And the higher she climbs, the harder it will be to stay one step ahead of her past. Vanity Fair. Now, isn't this just a rip-off of Red, White, and Blonde? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Judy? Don't pretend well, you're not going to see this movie, because we know you are. I, uh, my friend Lynn loved it. She said it was great. Well, and what does that mean? That means I trust my friend Lynn, and she said We don't know good. your friend Lynn. I'd rather what read the think? magazine. I don't know. I don't, I'm going to... Do, do you think... Do, does anyone... I have... like those period movies. <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> shut up, you pig. <laughs> so <laughs> disgusting. That is, that's what I was thinking. I can't it's another way of saying chick flick. Yeah, Julie's yeah. movies. Julie's monthly, <laughs> Julie's monthly movie. <laughs> let's just sit with mine. It was a great one. Those pieces Next is, uh, let's yeah. just take my choice on that. It was perfect. Um, <laughs> my joke on it, which was yeah. great. Uh, Next is The Cookout, starring Tim Meadows, Queen Latifah, and Danny Glover. Here's a oh, clip. Patrice is going to love this. Cousin Todd got drafted. Drafted? Damn this war. Huh? You stand to make millions. Do you think things will change? Where we're moving on now. How do you plan on celebrating? We're having a family cookout! Let's go! The cookout. Okay. A lot of substance. How many more of these uh, uplifting, you know, black movies do I have to see? Hey, man, look. Soul brother, soul family, soul. Cookout, yeah. look at They could be. Grandma, mommy, mommy. They could be out. They could. They could be out shooting each other. It could be violence, man. It's, this is a fun-loving family movie, and you should go see it. But it's, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I will go a, see it, but I will go hear it. It's probably. a. It's a period piece. It uh, is two, a period movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go see it. Piece. I have my period. Was shot in my neighborhood. It's a period. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Plums. I don't know if people are gonna accept this though. It's like kind of weird, like like Queen Latifah playing the sassy broad with corny people. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna be too much of a risk for the public to accept. <laughs> well, I think it's. I think the reason we go see movies like Vanity Fair is because we don't want to see the period piece of today's period, which is that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at it, man. It's well, going to bring some. It's going to be more entertaining. <laughs> if you think that's a bad movie, right? Your people if turn corners just like well, white people. Not, Shut up. Uh, well, Every movie you make stinks like a white comedy now. No, what no it doesn't. You? No, it doesn't. What happened to you? Yes, it does. What it happened to people? It, well, because finished. you know They're why? Like white. Because white because. Because the people, who, people, the people, people. Who, the people who run Hollywood. All right, right I have had it with your anti-Semitism. Oh, oh. I'm not, I said the people who run Hollywood. You went like this. The people. He said, I love you, Judy. All he said was the people who the run Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> he said the people who run Hollywood. The people who run Hollywood. The people who run Hollywood. They're not. They don't. Nobody's saying what they are. They're, they're trying too hard. They're, they're trying very hard right. to, all, to get no. to get the the young white dollar. No. I mean, I have to tell you, it's all about young money. black dollars is not. We're not big at the movies. You mean the Benjamins? Yeah. yeah. We're not big at the movies. We're big in clothes and we're big in, in uh, sneakers and clothing. We're not big at the movies, man. And so you're big. Period. We'll, you big? We support. Wait, we support the first two weeks of the movie. Yeah. The next three weeks is for cleaning up the theater from all the. <laughs> <laughs> And it's still got the right amount of political correct white people going, oh my God, look at the wildness of their behavior. That's what and you I'm do. Sure end, I'm sure at the end, the white people... Why do you always realize... act like white people are cool? You're not cool! This one always acts like, oh, Queen Latifah, no. White guys are the, 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 the goddamn straight men of life. But we're not, you, we're you're not, not shocked, funny. But we're not shocked by black people dancing. But you know cool. me. That's <laughs> why. Right. You are shocked in Harlem or Bronx or Brooklyn. I a gorge in Harlem. <laughs> No, you don't. Yeah, how many times have gotten f***ed in Harlem? You ain't nothing. Harlem starts on 80th and 2nd Avenue. No, well, that's where you get your home. where I get home. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay? This is the Middle East. This, this is where Geraldo was <laughs> when he's giving up the coordinates. This is our studio, 10th Avenue, right here. That's our studio right there. So uh, if you see Peter Arnett, he'd probably be over here with a comb over. All right. Now, I'm sick of saying this. People have to eat these trees. Look how good they look today. I'm the only one that ever eats them. It's ridiculous. I'm diabetic. Oh. He's diabetic. He can't eat Patrice. <laughs> Talk to me. I didn't mean to start on a bad note, but he is, you know? All right, look, Peter Arnett got fired. You see this, okay? First of all, why was, what does National Geographic have to do with the war that they would hire somebody and then fire them in the first place? Who reads the war and reads stupid National Geographic? Nobody. But do you think he should have been fired? Well, what well, I want to know is why you started off the show like Alibaba on that carpet there. <laughs> I don't know, but why did you start off this segment like Alibama? I see what a team player. <laughs> that, 
like neither one of them, they, yeah, they should have been fired because they're working for a company. But they can say anything they want. Right. And they can do anything they want. Geraldo was showing prayer, but didn't the, didn't, the, didn't the government give away all the, we're going to come hunt you down in 48 hours. They were giving all the information. They didn't change. It wasn't a sneak attack. He just did something stupid. He got fired. Well, the same come thing on. with stupid Peter Arnett. This guy, everybody knows he's a... He was an anti-American during CNN war. Then three years ago, That's he made right. some other charges. I watched, it's not like, oh, Peter Arnett, the great I, patriot. I watched his coverage during the, during the war, and every time he was on, he would have some negative thing. Like one night, he was talking about how they'll never have democracy in Iraq. He goes, you know, uh, Iraq is not America. There's millions of different little individual hate groups, and they don't get along. And I'm thinking, if that's not America, I don't know what <laughs> is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bunch of different people that hate each other, slapping a few Starbucks, you won't even know you left. <laughs> so should he got fired? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay. And they yeah. act like it's a big surprise that Arnett gets fired. That guy blows more jobs than I blow black guys. <laughs> Except I have more dignity afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. It's true. Okay. Right, she said it because she has more dignity yeah. afterwards. Remember that. All right, hold a lot on. of dignity. First right. of all, this is tough crowd, not BET. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, B and D, we got a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the guys were still, the girls were. <laughs> well, because I think it's the left wing media. It just, it, they're, they're not anti-war, they're anti-Bush, obviously, so they're going to show everything that's negative that this country is doing over there just to make Bush look bad. Yes, but no, well, don't get country, it over your head. Not... What you're saying is right, but you're almost in over your head, stupid. Yeah, I know. Listen, uh, 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 no, wait, wait, I st he I st started st with left wing like he knew something? No, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> The left right. wing. You didn't first even know what a left wing is. First of all, that's just something on the turkey, stupid. Right. Yeah, that's smart. First of all, I can't take my mind off the cookies. I started off and I stopped at the good point, all right? You know me or him? Uh, him. Uh, him. Uh, him. can say anything he wants. Yeah. He, say, he, he works for a private company, so he says what he wants and then he gets fired. But so what, what is the deal? But, getting, but, but even for Geraldo, how low is this? To get kicked out of a yeah. war zone. Like, how big, how big of a what do you have to be to they go, hey, suicide bombers, gas, but you are a crime against humanity. <laughs> I think they just want the dudes out anyway. Well, they, you know what? They, they just want the, the reporters out. But I think he wants to get subconscious. He wanted to get booted out with Well, them. they don't want him to go into a chemical warehouse and open the door and there's nothing in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, give him a chance to remember 15 years ago okay. when that thing happened. Well, how many things have a wrong <laughs> done since then? <laughs> right. Maybe 17 years <laughs> ago. <laughs> the trouble is these reporters go over there and they embed, it, they embed <laughs> these guys with the troops and they start thinking they're actually in the military. Like, I saw Ted Koppel wearing a Marine uniform. <laughs> it, was, it was unbelievable. And you go like, we now leave you they with some gone. disturbing images. And they cut to Ted Koppel oh. in a Marine uniform. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't gone. That's, that's, it's just they want them out. They just want yeah. all the reporters yeah. out there. Well, they, they should all be out there. They, what, what war has been reported on a daily basis on TV? None. It's... You know, maybe the last six. You know, no, not on a daily basis. Other than that, no. Yeah, other than you know, no, but look, what? But the whole thing is, they want him out. Maybe they want him out. But don't you think that it's like this whole thing where the media is actually now trying to be unbiased, and they never are. We all know Fox News is pro-war, and CNN is Al Jazeera West. Everyone has their side. Right. But I'm saying, how could you not be biased? Who ever heard of anybody who doesn't have bias based on their life experience or any network? Yeah, it's a ridiculous and, goal. And you know what? Don't That's not true. I started grown men. You What's know? that? Don't, don't berate grown men. To fire them. Boy, what are we discussing right. yeah. there in career? It'll, it'll fire, so what? Fire. But you know, hire Geraldo if you want journalistic integrity, okay? <laughs> Every time he collects a paycheck, he's raping Fox like they were a drunk girl at a Puerto Rican Day parade. <laughs> Good evening, friends. Listen, listen. I'm sorry, Corelli in the mix. <laughs> She just called you. Now, she, hold on, I'm saying to you. She Go called ahead. you gorillas in a miss. I don't want to say anything for starting trouble. Oh, you troublemaking <laughs> Jew bastard. Yeah. You yeah. people are Ricky, always stirring something I up. I know, but at least we wear gold, not silver. Hey, this is tin. You look like Al Sharpton in denial. All right, enough. enough. Wear another earring. We'll forget you're 60. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Gorillas in the mist? That's done? <laughs> he is fat with his fittings. That's very funny. Uh, 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 thanks, Jew. I thought you were funny. But the only point 
Me no point to be like now after this I have to get back to the subject so I look like the cornball. I it's like, but seriously guys, back to the issue. <laughs> Anyway, the point is, no, I know you're trying, but look, they're psychotic, you know that. Comedians, nobody cares. We only care about ourselves. Does everyone realize that? We touched uh, on a few points. Though. Yeah, we did. We, we touched, touched on a few, but then when I, tr I was a trainer, oh, I better get back on track. I better get on track, because I got to deal with people, too. I have people to answer, I'm too. I'm tired too. of the white meetings out? on yeah. the show. That's why. I'm getting white they, meetings every They've been getting a lot of yeah. white meetings on the show, yeah. as he deserves. Tell them what yes. the white meeting is. White meetings and white people tell you uh, to be yourself, but they really tell you don't be yourself. <laughs> but... <laughs> They say, say everybody you. else is not. Be, but it's not you. Them. It's not what you. It's just. It's white meetings. It's like but saying they, something. Yeah, but you need you got to figure it out. I don't know yeah. what the hell it is. You need them. But say how they uh, talk to you. Well, it's like, hello, Patrice. Well, there's, worse, <laughs> there's worse white meetings than that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like the one after Platypus Man was canceled. We're <laughs> <laughs> talking to a guy from, to a guy from Bentonhurst, too. He knows I'm a bad white I know. Listen, look at I gotta wrap it up so everyone shut up. Let me wrap it to say, how come every third segment I have to go shut up? That's not dignified for a TV host. You're right. You bastards. <laughs> All right, here's what I want to talk about. This is serious because a lot of reporters are getting injured. Yes, yeah, serious things are happening over there. People are getting hurt. Jennifer Eccleston, I was watching this the other day. Roll this clip for a second. Let me just say something that's happening. 4,000 are flocking oh, to Iraq seeking martyrdom against okay. U.S. and coalition no. forces in Iraq. These men are from okay, Algeria. Okay, stop for a second. Each now, do you see oh, the way she was doing the whole report down like this? See the girl from like that. Again. She's just like this. Oh. Looking up like, I shouldn't be saying this, but the Iraqi report. Now, let's cut back to it for one more second. Arabia, Tunisia, and also Libya. See? Yeah. Baby's got the sniffles. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Saddam, if you touch one hair on her head, we're going to fly there myself and crush her right in her eye. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're going to talk about we're going to talk about the second subject. First, we have to go back and review what happened with Voice. He watched Dumb Norton on the show, who's become very prepared because oh, yeah. he's like afraid his career's falling yeah. apart. So now Voice, <laughs> Norton totally like memorized everything. So you're like, we even Norton can be smart. Maybe I can say smart things too. He memorized his horrible <laughs> cliche. 15 year old left wing no. speech that his daughters had to help him with. That's true. No. And then he stood there and the minute we threw him off the track. He's like, wait, I'm telling that's you, not the way the order goes. The word, oh, the oh. word left wing threw him right off. When he yeah. said that, he was yeah. so, he was oh. so, had to be smart after that, it scared him to death. Exactly. I guess you would have been comfortable if I would have said chicken wing. First of all, nothing. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Nothing. <laughs> 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 okay, we're going to change the subject. All right. Yeah. Bring him down the house. <clears throat> this is, uh, look at this footage first. on your mind, player. What's with you? You been drinking some of that hater aid? What's up, player? Where you from? From the hood and misunderstood. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> oh, y'all uh. discuss this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you this. At what point does the movies where the uh, goofy white person is redeemed by the black person, at what point do those become racist against us? That's white guilt, man. Uh, that's right. That's when exactly. black people got nothing to do with that, that's white people's yeah. guilt about yeah, well, racism, so they're going to let themselves look. I think it makes me sick when they make old white dudes try to be cool. It makes my stomach hurt. <laughs> yeah, you know what? No, no, one's, what? no one's forcing these guys to take these roles. I mean, yes, he, still, he still made $10 million off this movie, so... You know, look at, hey, we're here for 500, so look yeah, at the difference, say, you know? <laughs> no, no one's forcing you to do that awful game show you did last year that <laughs> bombed. <laughs> Stupid. He's, a, he's, a, he's only getting 500. Who? See more? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, um, so what is it? Is it race? You know, well, it's a Disney movie, and Disney has always been a racist company. I mean, uh, Jesus. Well, look at look at it. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. All seven dwarfs are white. How hard is it to find a black dwarf? You can't get Gary Coleman on the phone? Is that that tricky? Holy it's a oh, racist look. company. You, but here's the point. He blew That's his chance to work with Disney for that horse <laughs> That's a big company. I know. That was a sweeping Patrice, I realize you're black, but this look. isn't a movie theater. You don't have to talk. <laughs> I am boycotting this movie, not because oh. of the stereotypes in it, which are all true. I am boycotting it because I thought it was going to be about an interracial love story. Right. And it ends up she gets the nerdy Jew at the end. She doesn't get the good white guy, she gets the nerdy Jew. Sure, yeah. a big black bitch and a nerdy Jew. But why? If the okay. sex doesn't kill him, his mother will. 
<laughs> Why is it? Dave well, Louie has a point. Let me hold on. Thank you, LL Cool Whip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen. Oh, once again, hold on. When I bring this listen. back on topic, I want yes. okay. yes. to pull it more. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let Jack Lane, the lady ears talk. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what was that? I hate to laugh at him, but it was funny. What did you say? Jack Lane with that body shirt. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go go ahead. ahead. Thanks, Thanks, Rich. You know, I, I, talk, I talk to the Star Search people. You're still in the running. Okay, let's get back to the yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, thank you, because Robert. Patrice is going to want to know about this. All right. This is the racial stereotypes are that's what you know. Uh, that's comedy. You know, there's no right. comedy yeah. right. without some racial stereotypes. But it's only when black and white gets involved that people complain about it. Right. But you take the show Will and Grace. Right. right. <clears throat> now the guy. Now that is gay stereotype. The guy that plays the friend. That guy is gayer than sperm flavored whitening strips. <laughs> and <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, he's an over the top, and any gay person should be offended by that, but I don't hear Voss complaining. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Voss is I'm not, not really gay. gay, I'm just happy. Wait, it's <laughs> like, but you know, and no matter what, this is the thing I'm sad about is that people are questioning Queen Latifah, but every time the white, the white people have this thing about black people, we have to answer to other black people that we don't even know. He can look like a complete jackass, and he's just Steve Martin doing his little right, white right, thing. Right, right. But Queen Latifah is, oh, she did her Aunt your Mama. Oh, I didn't see it. Don't act like a, a white, so, that was a white voice <clears throat> of outrage about her Aunt your Mama. Talk about your own people. They're the ones who yeah. get mad at her. But, you made that but, white but voice right then, stupid. Well, it's, and it's, I didn't fall for it. It's shut for, up. Yeah. For <laughs> shut up. I know, I don't know it, but there's a, some the reason white it's, it's white person's fault. It's got to be. Every time. Right. Now, are there any people, let me ask, I, God forbid I get back into this, but are there any people that are off limits to make fun of? Any type of groups like Arabs, or I don't know, somebody Jews, right? No. Jews, Jews, Jews is, and gays no. are not, and that can't be messed with too much. No, oh, and black people and, get messed with by white people. I know. As, as we shouldn't. Oh. In, in, in 10 years, Arabs are going to be the people who can talk. To, about anything and you can't, mm, you can't. Where's that going to be? I already got in trouble. Couple, one of you boys you over. in trouble? Yeah, I did, uh, I went on a radio show, right? I did this, did this joke. I, stay, I said, how do you like flying since September 11th? So I go, truthfully, I don't like it. If the two things that make me nervous is the disgraceful practice of racial profiling and guys wearing turbans on my aircraft. <laughs> and, which I thought was funny, right? Yeah. And I got Indian people, like, wrote in on my email, you little punk f you're dead. <laughs> we heard you on that show, you're dead, you little punk. <laughs> and look, you know, you have to respect <laughs> you got you got to respect what was that you just did you mind my accident and another thing tell me for three shut the hell up well, I finish this yeah. go ahead finish <laughs> <laughs> I think it's snappy this yeah. time all right over I, felt, five minutes. I felt bad because you know you have to respect people who have strong religious beliefs sure if you don't They'll kill you a lot of the time. But my point was, why do you have to show your religious beliefs every second? Like, you know what I mean? I'm Christian. I don't come bouncing onto the plane spike to a cross. Because it's rude. It's rude. They're going to tell you to check the cross. Think about that. What's your problem with me? Why is it kids? I'm the host, you son of a bitch. Stop I'm not the host. Stop it. I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, this is great. <laughs> State TV. Let's start with Rich Jenny. I would say to the Iraqi people, when you see Americans protest against the war, don't be confused. Even if there's a million people protesting, because the fact that a million people believe something in America doesn't say anything. <laughs> in America, we have a million people who believe that if you put cream on your thighs, they'll get smaller. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Iraqi news. Stay tuned for Letterman. He's got stupid camel tricks. All right, Lisa Lebanelli. People of the Arab world, the United States does not want to destroy Iraq. We want to make it better. That way you people will stop moving to America. <laughs> no offense, we love having you here with all your unconditional hatred of us and all. It's just that with you driving our cabs and pumping our gas, there aren't enough menial jobs left for our darkies to do. <laughs> Who, by the way, hate us too. Patrice, Patrice O'Neill. Uh, <clears throat> we are here live at the five year anniversary of Walt Disney Baghdad. Uh, President Al Sharpton is in attendance oh. to enjoy today's festivities. <clears throat> Disney unveils his new character, Benny, and his sidekick, Willie the Stick, that he keeps strapped to his chest. Whoa. And uh, nothing. <laughs> don't, don't forget tonight at 1.25 a.m. in the Sands Hotel basement, Lisa Lampanelli performs her one-woman show. Ugh. <laughs> 
Hope to see you there. Good night. All right. Rich Voss. <laughs> Rich as an, Voss. As an American reporter, I am sure you people think I have my own personal agenda, but I am not a left-wing liberal lunatic. I am your worst nightmare, a right-wing Jew. I am pro-American and pro-Israel. So here's my piece of advice. Run. Don't look back. Get get out of town because we are going to bomb the f out of you. And this weekend I will be at Stanford's and Sons Comedy Club in Kansas City. Oh. Let me just tell you one thing. My favorite part of that was when he cursed and still the audience was like, no. You hey, stupid shot. I have to do mine. <laughs> Oh, I'm in a bomb, I can tell. <laughs> Here are some words of advice for the people uh, when we take over, when we democratize you. One, these are the things you have to know. If you order the large meat lover's pizza from Little Caesars, they throw in the crazy bread free. <laughs> Two, always supersize. And uh, three, the big question we're facing philosophically in this country is why does Simon have to be so mean? So keep that in mind. You loved it, didn't you, boss? All right. We now return to your regular programming. Good night. Well, no. You don't. No! Yo, what's up? Okay, according to a court document obtained by Sports Illustrated, Kobe Bryant told cops he was going to take a shot at paying off his accuser. Kobe is quoted as saying, I'm in the worst effing situation. What do you guys think? What else would he do? I mean, let's that face it. That doesn't work. No? You tried it? Oh, I got a girl back to the hotel at the Funny Bone in Pittsburgh, and I told her I'd give her uh, two of my CDs. <laughs> <laughs> if she dropped the charges. Yeah, and uh, it didn't work. How much, is, uh, how much is the rate worth? Like, how much, what's the going rate? Well, the wife alone for the ring for the wife was four million. I That's not the way I'm talking about. All right, these phony girls in this audience, they're not, they're not even going to really discuss it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But what's the price? What's the price on on the rate? Meaning you're okay, asking white guys. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a black guy in a the, sweatsuit asking the, us what the price of rate. Wait, is. But, see, uh, yeah, listen to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. That's because white guys use roofies. They don't even go through this thing. <laughs> I'm talking about what how much does it cost to to for a woman to sell her humanity, which is what she's doing. She just sold off. She just sold it off, but man. She didn't what, do 10 million? It. 5 million? Was That's true. 15 million? I don't know. You how much would you charge? I'd, charge a, I'd probably charge a million. I get, I'd do so. People could heinously violate me and then have Can you imagine for a million? That's it. Why not a million? Guys, yes. million. Don't act like you're better than well, that. A prison? Let's go. Before you go to Rahway. You go to Rahway. A Shawshank Redemption happens on you. First of all, uh, Shawshank uh, Redemption doesn't happen because white guys aren't the ones that rape in prison. But go ahead. <laughs> That phony movie, the next person to go, sure, Shaq. That was realistic. The white guy. <laughs> just sound, I hate this country sometimes. Your, your man who is taken is finished, but they say, look, we don't need the, we don't need the bad press for the prison. How much How much you going to take to shut your mouth for the rest well, of your mind? That's it, you hoe? Damn, Colin. Hey, I walk it off. Just shake it off. <laughs> A million bucks. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Those little uh, plastic seat uh, things you can buy for a million bucks? Just sit down. Uh, <laughs> You better hope he's not watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Me? I'm right. about Comedy Central. What do we make here? We make third. A hundred thousand, I'd watch. All right. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let's hear from you two. John, you have any opinion on this whole case? You know, I hate to agree with uh, Charles Barkley, but the NBA players are not role models. I mean, it's so hard for me to explain to my son what rape is and what adultery is again. <laughs> 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 but at least now you can do it from a less personal stance. Yeah. But that shows you, Sean, what do you think? Well, at the time, he goes, well, uh, can I pay her off? And 14 months later, we see, yes, he, he can. can. Yeah. Uh, no. He could have saved that $4 million on the ring to the wife and give it like... That four. was the longest negotiation. For, yeah. It, 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 he's paying, he's, he said he's going to get $3 mil or $4 mil. That's going to be Do you it. believe guys are willing to, to give a, a woman a million bucks just to look at something that they pee out of? I mean, that's... <laughs> Just to get a look at that. Seriously, that's all that no, is. No, it is. Now, speaking of athletic, uh, well, miss... Oh, go ahead. Well, I'm just saying, but that's what it is now. <laughs> yeah, I've got my pipe right there. <laughs> but no, that's Very what it is now. But you go back to World War II, you can pay for girl for chocolates and pantyhose, you know, at that point. And you, so you, it's all... you can do that in Arkansas right now. Arkansas, too, now. <laughs> well, speaking of Arkansas, <laughs> let's talk about Texas Rangers. Uh -oh, my that's God. next to Arkansas. Texas Rangers pitcher Frank Francisco oh, was arrested yesterday on a charge of aggravated battery 
After he threw a chair into the stands during a fight between the players and fans, the chair hit two people. It broke some woman's nose. Here it is. Ready? Every guy you laugh, that's just because of the music. Every guy you always laugh. Because somebody getting hit with a chair is always funny to men. You know what I want. It's sad, but true. Let me tell you something. If I'm a woman, I had a choice between giving this up for a million or getting hit with a chair on the face. And she's going to get rich, right? Yeah, she'll probably make some money. Uh, he's I a middle Liz, reliever, though. He doesn't Liz have a lot of money. Liz said she'd take a chair in the face for a million dollars, man. Why she, wouldn't she? She said, I'll take one in the face. For a no, was it five? Did she say she'd take one in the face or take she said she'd take a chair in the face? A chair, a chair. All right. Um, now, T. Sean, you're an Astros fan, but you know these Rangers. What do you think? Yeah, the Rangers. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, even in Texas, you can't hit a woman with a chair unless you're married to her. Unless you're you married know? to yeah. her. Right? <laughs> so how's he going to get off? I think if you're out on a play house, you might as well just have fun. <laughs> you know, and I tell you, I've been heckled many times on stage, and there's many times I've wanted to take a piano oh. and shove it up somebody's ass. You just don't do it. You just but don't it was it. in Oakland, and it surprises me because Oakland sports fans are usually so well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> he, but, should, he should be the dude. If if the average person can smack somebody in the face with a chair, it, it, I mean the same thing. I mean, I'm assuming that we think he's gonna get off because he's. He's not getting off. He's not getting off. Cough up a bunch of dough. He's making he the English to go to jail. Sued. The stadium well, when I gets see him getting off, I say, I mean jail. I, I, that's the thing. I'm any any time I say getting off, it's it's jail. If you got to pay money, you you got off. My, jail is not getting off. So if he's not going to jail, he's getting off. He's he pays. Just, he's but, guilty just on that picture alone. No, that is true. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> On Monday, guess what I'd done? We asked you people to vote on the singular wireless viewers' chairs topic. Yeah. You wanted to discuss, so what they chose was, who's more whipped, like pee whipped, Bush or Kerry? All right? That's what we wanted to discuss. I think, but my pro obviously Kerry is. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Everybody agrees? No. Yeah. You think Bush is? Y'all discuss it, and then we'll... Just look at their slogans. Yes. Bush says, bring it on. Kerry goes, reporting for duty. That's what he says to his wife. <laughs> That's because he reported for duty. You understand what I'm saying? John Kerry. did what? John, well, well, Kerry says, bring John it on. Kerry was a, he, no, he's originally a, Bush said, bring it on. Get out of here. Bush never said anything in his own life. Guys originally, stupid. Schwarzenegger said, bring it on. Exactly. <laughs> bring it on. Stop. Yes, exactly. Bush Stop. said it right after we went to Well, forget about war. that. Let's know who's whipped. Why, are you, why do you have the nerve to sit here? And, I'm not, and it's not because I'm black and he's Democrat. Are you Shut a, your mouth. That's all was a part of it, but it's a little bit. The black. other part, you're black. Why are you saying? Forget about that. Why I'm going to tell you why that Bush is um, Bush is pee with. Go ahead. Not Kerry. Kerry has a look. Man, I like how you kept every, the every, dropped every, the whip. Every, every, I, know. <laughs> I like how this guy. I like how this guy is <laughs> you. Oh, my fault. You. My bad. <laughs> W. I'm saying that Jesus, you can tell Joker. that he's di he's directed. His mother takes care of him. You see his mother coddle him. His father coddles him. His he's wife good. coddles him. Tells him what to do. John Kerry keeps a, a major broad in his corner all the time. This is not just the top broad he's ever had. Just Heinz, but he keeps models and keeps actresses in his stable. He's a pimp. I forgot that he's been in he been in war. The dude got game. He's not first a pimp. Let me say man. one thing. Bush is being let an question. Let me say one question. thing. Who's let me say one thing first. Yeah. I don't like the fact that you're from Massachusetts, you know, it carries history, and we don't. Second of all, <laughs> guess what? Surprise, we found a few white people in the country that don't think it's a compliment called a pimp. Why do you call somebody all in love? Anybody else have anything to say? <laughs> She's got all the money. She's got all the so money. So he's he, a pimp. No, he's got all the money. You he's know what? He's a pimp. He has to sit there and take it. He's a she calls he that big head. She calls him big head. And he just says, yeah. How do you think? Did, did you see? Did you see this lady T-shot on her? The, 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 Teresa Hines. She's a controlling, crazy bro. Who's gonna control that woman? Other than a pimp, he's the only no, one that's no, gonna tell no, you. No, if he was a no, pimp, no, 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 if he was a pimp, he would somebody. shut him out. He, if he was a pimp, he would have smacked him and said, "Don't you but ever smack him." Do you notice? My convention. Because he's smooth. Do you notice she don't talk that much anymore? He got the pop room. He's smooth. No, that's true. John, I think if she leaves, he's Kobe's bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Now, John. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're the one here that has actually served in Vietnam. Yes, I did. So, uh, exactly. Yes. God forbid. It was a Wednesday. 
Like, I was in the army. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. Oh, shut up, will you? I got high. That's all I did. <laughs> now, that's a man's man. <laughs> Okay, what you, didn't say, you didn't say why why, Carrie, why you think Carrie's more pee-whip. Well, I did why. because I, I saw her on TV and her attitude. I just can't imagine him putting... The next time you should have seen her, her hair should have been messed up. Maybe just a little bit of... Not a hair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, a number you, look of, at, you look at Bush, his wife's a librarian. That's she's what she like is. a psychopath. At best, at best, it's going to be... Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, he sits there and takes it, and she busts his balls, and he sits there, uh, and then whispers, I'm going to push you downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> He's just trying to get his son those insurance papers. But Bush's wife has a little thing to it, George. I thought we talked about that. You weren't yes. going to attract exactly. your money. No, and, and he lets it go only oh, so it? far and takes Can it. Can we take change it. the subject? Right. A number of organizations and universities have been giving scholarships to gay students <laughs> because they're gay. Many of these organizations feel... <laughs> How do I do it? All right. The reason they do it, we all know the reason they do it. They say a lot of them get cut off from their families. Good idea or bad idea? Let's start with you, John. I just thought, you know, they're talking about <clears throat> universities like George Washington University, a lot of these other schools, they're thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. They only give them like $1,000, $2,000. You can't buy a good boa for $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, and now they're getting a high look at boas. And, uh -huh. You know, I'll spilling all the whole... Uh, T. Sean, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, uh, it's just, it seems silly for you, that. For that do you say silly because that's a money. gay word? No, I didn't say silly because it's a gay word, because okay. I have a pipe. All right, Nick, but, Patrice, go ahead, but what? But I, if they do do that, you know how they have football scouts? I want to go scout for lesbians. That's what I want to do. That's a good idea. I heard there's a young uh, Asian Patrice, girl over Nick, at St. Mary's. I'm just, for you to, I'm just waiting for one of y'all to apply this to black people. It is. It's like the... I know it. I know it. Go ahead, Nick. It's just a rip-off of the United Negro College Fund for gay people. Matter of fact, this, this slogan is, a behind is a terrible thing to waste. Thank you for setting me up. Oh, uh, <laughs> but how did they go? Uh, what is uh, the dirty? Now the low blow. Now the low blow. I have nothing to come back. Well, that's that's a good one. Funny, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Oh. I didn't even tell you guys about the latest. You know, Oprah Winfrey, she celebrated the premiere of her 19th season Monday by surprising each of her audience members with a new car. First, look at the people when they find out they got a nice new car. Ready? All right, open your boxes. No shadow. Oh, See, that's what we got to start doing on the show. That's we have a little transportation. Everybody shut up. This is a setup. It's not being discussed. It's a setup. We have a little transportation surprise for our studio audience. If you guys look under your chairs, you might find something for transportation in the right front corner. That's right. You got a Metro card. You got a Metro card. Two trips. That's good for two trips. The New York City subway. It's all right. That's good for two trips. Let me tell you, uh, the New York Times reported this weekend that 28% of black males will be behind bars at some point in their life, and right now 12% of all black men between the ages of 20 and 34 are behind bars, so which obviously the question, Patrice, what are you doing here? When do you get out? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no. Patrice, what do you have to say about was this fact? It was funny. Dude. It yeah, was kind of funny. funny. It was very yeah, funny. Acting. What are you asking me? I'm asking you, uh, you know, what do you think about why? This? Yeah, I know why. It's a drug. It's the war on drugs. That's America's way of when they say it's a war on anything. It's really a war on a particular uh, group, right? Um, like the RICO statute. That's the RICO. Th that was the war on the mob. So no, as soon as a, it, wait a minute, war, wait a minute. That was a war against Puerto Ricans. <laughs> the RICO Suave. Puerto Rico. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Do your prepared material, stupid. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Now look at, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. That was, that was yeah. Now look, what I'm saying is this. Uh, the, it's the drug, it's because they, they're in there for drugs. That's the, that's all they're in there for, really. All of those, that group of men is in drugs. And then that's the people who are selling drugs. Puerto Ricans and, and young blacks. That's yeah. how they're making a little money, yeah. man. The, well, first of all, don't you think, now I know he's going to jump all over this one, 
But don't you think that people say racism, which is what you're kind of implying, no? Well, I'm trying, I, I, look, I'm trying to not go there, but of course, it's, the, well, it's a war kids. on blacks and Puerto Rican kids. Let that's what the war is. That's who's going to jail. Well, I, I, hate, I hate to agree with Suge, but there, uh. there, uh, it really, it, there, is, there, is, there is definitely a racial component. Because if you look at the war on drugs, if you target street-level dealers, you end up with a jail full of blacks and Puerto Ricans. Absolutely. And, and then, you know, they need white guys to rape, and that's why you have DWI laws. <laughs> but, but it's looking at it negative. Yes, Mr. Hotel. It's, it's, it's looking at it negative. Okay, 12% of black males are in jail, but think of the other 82 who are on the WB. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, they, they do always focus on a negative. I mean, if 12, you know, you would think if 12% are in jail, think of all the it's women all left drugs, over for the guys that aren't in jail. It's all drugs, I mean, man. That's what, it's the drug, it's that drug thing, man. Black, black guys ain't in jail for, like, uh, kidnapping white girls and hanging them in basements and driving around in vans and, and it, they, mm, they, There goes we, my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> if you look, look at, I mean, you look at colleges, right? I mean, look, when I was in college, I mean, people, you can't say black guys do more drugs than young white kids. I mean, when I was in white college, do more yeah, drugs. I mean, when yeah, I was in college, you know, there were fraternities that were like the Medellin car tell for Christ's sake and you know and there, but there weren't a lot of buying bus going on you know in the dorm rooms white guys ain't got a word till they start this day. Well, you know, oh, wait a minute you know, well okay the drug thing is a big part of it but you have to admit this it's the biggest part of it I wouldn't say that but what uh, else are they in jail for there's a lot you can't pretend your what, people bank don't have robberies a, and well, nothing. you can't what? pretend your people don't have a thug. embezzlement Shut nothing. Up. Burglary. you can't tell me your people don't have a thug they worship a thug culture that includes going that to jail that includes drugs that's it, it includes going to jail for a lot for of things what Thug behavior. Oh, There's no crime called thug behavior. Uh, it's a double Even standard. Shut Come up. On. Kid, don't Look. kid me. Listen, how about this little fact, this little acorn? 25%, 10% of all state prisoners in the big states and 25% of all the federal prisoners are non-citizens. Uh, and nobody ever brings that up because it sounds like a racist thing to say, but that's the truth. Mm, Did that no. just stultify you guys? What do you mean? Yeah. What, what's racist <laughs> about it? What's, why does it sound Nobody's racist? Nobody's racist is a fact, but I'm saying it sounds racist. So non-citizens come in, they're poor, and they tend to commit crime. One, poor people tend to be the people who commit crime. I'm saying one poor of a non-citizens. I just think it's so a what? double standard because white kids get a lot of things like warnings and double probation and things like that. Like white kids, they steal a car, that's joy riding. Black kids, they steal one, that's, you know, a John Singleton movie or something. I don't know. <laughs> But there is, I mean, a huge percentage, a huge percentage of the people in jail are there for these, these, uh, you know, nonsense drug offenses, and like pot, marijuana. Nobody should be in jail for I mean, marijuana. That's what I said. And look, you shouldn't be. I mean, you, you should jail, be real. You, you should go to jail. Oh, Do you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bobby. Go ahead. No, you know what? Everybody's whipping it around. He's Nobody knows time. who the hell I am. This, uh, Can I say true. one You're goddamn true. thing, true. folks? We like it. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Kelly, lock down. Folks, we like it. Sorry about that. Jesus, we'd like to introduce you to former rehabilitated. Rapist murderer Bob Kelly. Go ahead. <laughs> First of all, I stole a gumball machine. It wasn't rape and murder. Well, but passage. the fact is, is that... <laughs> <I> took... <laughs> You did, you did seven years for stealing now, a gumball where machine? Where did seven years come from? Texas. See, where did you start? Where did I'm you in jail grow up? Seven years. Jail. I was in jail from 13 to 15, but like, like a month. Two months. Shut lying. up, Colin. <laughs> 13 to 15, but like for two months here, three. Once you're a ward of the state, you can kick a mailbox and you go away again. You, you're owned by the you state. Sure, but you don't kick a mailboxes. People got to get their mail. <laughs> Sometimes you get pissed off. But also, you were a victim of the American system's bias against Samoans. Yeah. And I'm not, first of all, it, let me just say, just, 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 um, so look at, just, be, <laughs> just because I have no app. <laughs> Let okay. me enjoy Let me it. Say it was really good. It is sad. Shut you up, Jimmy Snooker. You can't that was enjoy really good. <laughs> First of all, I'm Irish. Okay? I'm Irish. Contrary to what you say, just because I have no ass and I don't have bad skin, I'm Irish, okay? Mm -hmm. First of all, I have a lip and everything. But the thing is, is let me get back to the uh, subject, the topic, you ass. I really ate his balls. Why really do I have to be on the show with him? <laughs> of any people, him. I, go ahead, go ahead, Bobo. Go ahead. Fact, re, if you, they rehabilitated me. They put me in a drug room. They set me, they, they put me like, they call it normalization, okay? In settings where you don't feel like a criminal. And you start to become, once you get responsibility, you start actually to take that responsibility and to become not normal again. And that, I mean, that's what they should do. Drug people, black people, whatever, they wow. should. <laughs> Why are you going to look at me like that? I'm 
listening to you. <laughs> what, what, Jesus what Christ, insecure, finish a dumb speech. They should do <laughs> is give them, rehabilitate them, put them in programs instead of jail and putting them in there and then locking them down. Somewhere, you know what happens? somewhere this deserves a clap. I know it. I don't know what he's saying, no. but he deserves no. something because he's passionate. Please. All right, look. So what is the point? Does anybody see, let's say it is all drugs, let's say it is, what is the solution? Because people go to jail, you have to admit it. Well, because the... like you said, it's poor, it's poor people. I'm not saying why they go, I didn't say the cause, I say the solution. Well, what is you go to jail, what do you learn? How to fight, stop, stop, how to live stop, stop, stop looking to put uh, little young black dudes and young Puerto Ricans in so jail. Stop looking for it. When you, you want them to what are we going to do with Stop looking to do it. It's easy to do that on the street. Got that red top. It's easy to do it. What are you going to do if they break the law? We just say, hey, you're Puerto Rican and you're black. Yeah, well, first of all, well, first of all, you need four ounces of, uh, of coke or some mess like that. You get, you get like you get uh, 15 years or 15 to 25 it's years. It's illegal. In jail, but that's but when that's it, keeping black people off the street. When right. it's 15 to 25 years, it should be a, a second. White people are doing the drugs. There's more white people doing the damn drugs. You have to stop the recidivism. That's the main problem. People go in jail and they don't they don't become rehabilitated. They come back out. They keep committing crimes. Better take, criminals. Take, take the uh, you know take take the gyms out. You know, we don't need to create these giant monster bodybuilder convicts. Mm -hmm. you, know I mean? <laughs> you know, once you start working out, you want to kick the crap out of somebody that you should sure. pick on. You know, these guys come out, they got revenge on their mind. All right, I hereby sentence you to five to ten commercials. <laughs> uh, Do you leave out the balls to say that? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh! Well, we're going to try to talk about religion. We'll probably get back to race. Who the hell knows? But... The Middle East, the place where there's the most static, everybody always goes, all you should do is pray at this point. But that's where the most prayer goes on, and it's the most violent place. So how do you keep your faith in God, Dave, during these times? Well, being the last shaker, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, I, I think religion has a lot to do with what we were earlier talking about, which is prison, because people go to jail, and that's when they find this religious uh, zeal. And I think if we... If we just like took the, if we made things legal, that would kind of free up the prisons, like drugs, as we were talking about, and Katie porn for myself. It would clear out the jail. We'd be left with like two Filipinos and Robert Blake, and it would be plenty of room for the Taliban. Something. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think about that? Well, I think with all these religions, people believe them so passionately, but now in most sort of open-minded societies, we think, well, they're all just man-made creations. Every religion has its good and its bad, but obviously, maybe one of them is right. You know what I mean? That's the scary part. Somebody maybe is right. Maybe it's these doomsday cult people. Maybe there are uh, spaceships coming to get us, and maybe we're all screwed for not cutting our balls off in anticipation. How about the Scientologist? Yeah. You know what, though? I mean, and I think n none of us here, I mean, as you get older, especially this generation, Nobody prays, and if you're saying America, nobody cares about religion anymore. When was the last time anybody went to church? How dare you? A lot of people do. When There's did... a lot of deeply religious people. I went on Christmas and two years ago. I don't know any. Do you know any? No. Well, we, live, well, we live right, we live, I'm not religious we live right in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, the only time I but pray to God is if, if, if like, I have sex with a girl without a condom or I'm doing a black college. That's the only time. Uh, sorry. I, don't, are, I believe are. in science. That's what I believe in. I don't, see, I can't get into this religious stuff. I believe if you go against science, you, that's against God. I think God laid something down, and he's not up there minding everybody's business. I think, he's, I think if you go, like people say, homosexuals against God, I don't think it's, it's against science to me. Yeah. You know, if two guys aren't really supposed to have sex, because there's no point to it. Nobody, There's no nobody, scientific who point. Says? Nobody, say, nobody, nobody says nobody yeah. says homosexuals are against God. They're not. A lot of people. Well, a, lot of people a lot of people say that kind of stuff. Certain things are against God, but I don't think. But every, I don't think it is. Every religion is basically. Look, you know, I I believe in spirituality. You know, like, but basically what that is is every religion is the same. It has the same. You they're, know, they're not really. Meaning, the same. But just the way well, you interpret it. You can interpret anything. You believe in there are a lot of people have di very different beliefs. You look at the Jews, they have very different beliefs. They believe Barbara Streisand's worth a thousand bucks a ticket. Hey. That's a different, <laughs> that's very different from a lot of the other religions. The whole circumcision thing, that's, you're, you're circumcised, right, if I remember? Oh, I think so, you, yeah. <laughs> Now that's part of that's part of the Jewish faith. That's a part of it. Not every religion believes you have to, you know, slice off your foreskin to get to heaven. That's a specific thing. The Catholics look at the stuff we believe, right? I mean, we oh. have the Virgin Mary. We have we have a whole right. religion based on a woman who really stuck to her story. Hiding eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna be able to use that tomorrow, Marcella? I, I, uh, I think all religions. <laughs>
we got to go to what's in common with all religions. Like, anything's possible with the help of lube. Not God. Lube. <laughs> I just think, look, man, you, you do what's good for you, man. I, it's just you believe in what's, what keeps you uh, uh, going. You know what I mean? I believe in something, but I can't say I believe in some white dude with a beard with a thunderbolt in his hand and walk around and i can't be i just can't believe in that but i believe in something because i still have that fear of something right. so i don't well, want to well you've never done yeah. drugs then because i've seen that, that white uh, dude. yeah you've got that fear of a white dude with a thunderbolt that's well you should <laughs> speaking of the Aryan brotherhood that's their little <laughs> it's a, well but the truth of the matter is when i started this conversation off i believe unless i'm mistaken was saying that all the violence right now from northern ireland middle east it's all religiously based what do you think the problem is? Are people praying wrong? No, you need or to. Or just every idiot use whatever excuse Look, they can? I, I think it's a, it's a drinking thing. Like in drinking, there's a thing <laughs> called tolerance. And we should all have that in our religion. If you go past your tolerance, your, your, you know, when to say when, you're going to flip out and wake up the next day with lipstick around your balls and a fact early won't stop calling. You know what I mean? I put a religious way. You know, I, I got to hey, okay. 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 stare at Dave like, you're not, and like he's going to make a serious point, but I know yeah. something's coming. I'm sorry. i got to be like this. It's all about the laugh. <laughs> go ahead, but Hart Feltz. All, all we're doing is, to, what do you call them? Hart, Hart, Hart Feltz. Feltz. It was sarcastic. Yeah. Sarcast. Look, the bottom line is this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Why am I was in this Isn't business? Isn't religion something for old people anyhow? I mean, yes. that's all they have after a while. But, <laughs> also, people always bring up all the bad people in religion. Nobody ever talks about nuns working in Africa for 40 years. Yeah, no. About Mormons going in. There's a lot of, most religious people are good. They're better than non-religious people as far as their behavior. Let's well, religion the does make you, it does make you, I mean, like Catholicism, it's, it's basically the stabilizing force in, the, in South America, for example. I mean, it does make people good people sometimes. Yeah. But then the flip side is you have, like, these wars where the Islamic extremists believe that blowing us up is going to, you know, put them into heaven. And you have, like, right. George Bush believing Jesus wants us to get him back. Yeah, if I could use drinking again as a as a uh, analogy. <laughs> religion Are you, are you plugging insomniac, stupid? I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> drinking. I'm just saying, drinking and politics, they don't go together like m many boozes. You know, they, they shouldn't be mixed. When they're mixed, it ends badly. You know, you're going to end up on the floor throwing up blood with candy coming out Is of your ass. Is that right? Image religion and politics. Yes, that was that a, was cell, a phone cell phone on our show. I That's still got it out. Jesus. Thank you. That's Look, God calling. We're the only show on television that can segue from big religion to big pussy. And that's coming up next. My roots are African. The birds I remember. The fruit I ate. The trees I climbed. They're African. Does anyone have a problem with this? And I don't mean my awful, fake, shrill <laughs> falsetto. Exactly. you got to have a problem with She's it. She's the head ketchup bitch. She can say anything she wants. Well, that's the other point. I use her product, and she can be African-American without her. African, black people shouldn't even, look, I'm not African. It ain't like black people are the lost children of Africa, man. Yeah. We don't really care that much about Africa because they don't care about us. So that white lady can have all the problems that come with being African. I could call myself, you know, I could call myself a Russian, Polish, Austrian American, but I choose to just say Jew. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, it says again, it all, right? I don't care what you do. Yeah. She's, uh, she's no less African than Michael Jackson. Yeah, well. <laughs> but she's, she's born really in Mozambique. From, she's really from Africa. She is. So, she's right. from Mozambique. Yeah, she's African American. Uh, I don't know. Wait, what you what's the it? difference between she says if it's not hyphenated, it's okay. If it's hyphenated, it's then it's not. She's that's kid hyphen guy. What's a yeah. hyphen? Because it's just some kind of slick way for white. Look at she's gonna probably. You know what? She gonna name one of her her, her barbecue sauce <laughs> brand. So she <laughs> so she's setting it up now so that she can call. Oh, put the <laughs> ketchup on your <laughs> on your <laughs> beef because I'm it's a stunt. She's yeah. trying to make herself comfortable. Serious. Yeah. But that was a good run. I wouldn't interrupt it. Yeah. She said this in 1993. It, the fact that we're talking about this is testimony to the right-wing political propaganda machine. This story comes oh, from wait. Newsmax. Yeah, but, but she was about to. She could be first lady. In, she could in, be 19, first lady. in 1960, she called herself colored. <laughs> <laughs> because 1993, 1993 was the big French fry. Uh, Oh, honey, big, 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 yeah. African-American, she wanted to try to French fries. You are so attached to that whole ketchup thing. Because she's a ketchup, hey, she's the ketchup, ketchup lady. Heiress. That's right, but her previous name was Teresa Hines Mustard. Yeah. She Teresa Hines Hitler. Hitler. Yeah, she's Apparently, though, Hitler. weren't they mad? Isn't Mozambique mad that she doesn't send some money back their yes. way? Yes, they are. But she I does. Know. But she. I, but they, she does send the condiments. You know, there's plenty of ketchup. Exactly. Going That's the only yeah. interesting thing about it. Hey, she's, 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 she's a lady. Ketchup you know, lady. Lady. She's a lot of big people. Bucks. A lot of people sitting back getting screwed by politicians. She married too. She's taking the initiative.
by screwing politicians. She's doing some politicians. How did I think John Kerry really get that much game when he pulled the ketchup lady? You got to vote for well, a guy that pulls the ketchup lady, and you need to be. <laughs> yeah, look, <laughs> the fact that, first of all, the fact that uh, that GW is going to steal it all over again, you need to have somebody with that kind of money to try to pay for some kind of something to have a you chance he... to beat. Uh, George so you W. Think said, gonna, you think he's going to steal it? What with the vote? Well, he probably. Got, first of all, you know they got goddamn uh, Osama bin Laden in a hole somewhere already captured. They just yeah, going to pop him out in October. Hey, everybody! Yeah. And, and, yeah. and check and check his and check his mouth for cavities. Yeah, if he shows <laughs> and that's up, they going to do. If he shows up dead, they better check him for freezer burn. You know, because it's, it's it's the facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, the fact it's the fact on fact, MLK yeah. Boulevard in every city in the country. It's not the fact of us. It's not the fact that white conspiracy. Don't stupid. argue with me. Most things are. No. You know he stole it. No. They got him already. Oh, you guys really so you don't think he got him already? Power. Can white, yeah. people, uh, white people please go with the conspiracy theory once We can't go with it every time. time. Patrice, where is he right now? I'm just curious. He's in if he was the same place that, look. He, hey, they he's might have. I think he's dead. He's in a magical have. hole somewhere That's with right. a briefcase full of money. There you go. Just like Saddam was. There's so many holes now. You know what? That hole might have looked like a piece of crap in Iraq, but in New York, that hole goes for like 700 a month. Yeah. I live in a two-bedroom hole in a story. <laughs> now listen to me. Yeah. First of all, I didn't like... Uh, let me just review the first half of the show. Is it half over already? You... No. All the right, first right. quarter. <laughs> you and you both said interesting things about how the story stunk. Well, guess what? Shut up for a second, Barry. Let me finish. The <laughs> bottom line is, whether it was a right wing digging it up, unearthing it, whether it was a boring, stupid story that you don't care about, the bottom line is, don't you think it's bad for the show when I have to sit here having a mild heart attack Knowing the story kind of does stink, and you two calling it out for it no, stinking. No, it's not that it stinks. Why it's can't you at least be like him? It's not that the story stinks. At least he made a move, and he's like, he got passionate about talking and catch up for a minute. It's where it came from. Like you trapped. There was no right wing. You know something? There's a right wing news conspiracy. You know what Newsmax is? Fox News. The rest news of it's all only, only white people care about white issues anymore. White like people, politics. We don't care. We just get <laughs> exactly. I know. That's what I love. What do the we black got people? to do with that? I love the black people. Get out of here. We didn't even vote on American Idol. We just pray. <laughs> <laughs> we go <gonna> pray somebody. <laughs> We're praying for somebody. We don't even care. After spending eight months in prison <laughs> for attacking three 12 year olds, a homeless uh, man was recently freed. The girls admitted they made up the story. Oh, so what man. should happen to these girls? I know exactly what should happen. I got a punishment that will that oh. will effectively compensate him for his time in prison and punish the girls. He should be allowed to have sex with all three. <laughs> to do what they accuse him of. Right. And that, that way they get punished, they learn their lesson, he gets rewarded for losing eight months of his life. And we all like her, fellas. So well, they're 12. Who the hell? I'm just saying, she has a vagina. She should have something have to say. I have two vaginas. Thank you. Really? Yes. So, please. What do you think Don't about this? That? That, that's cool. Right. Because, go ahead. What do you think about this? Well, which? About having sex with a homeless man? So, who hasn't had sex with no, a homeless right, man? Why is that a punishment? I think the other side of this, which I guess we'll oh. take it from here, yeah. is, is this, are they trying to, is this story coming on because of the Kobe case? Yeah, yeah, look, man, not. first of all, it's not a common <laughs> thing. Women, I'm gonna say it now. An innocent young blonde. Having a vagina. A black boot. Oh, he touched me. He touched me. Look, having a vagina is too much power for <laughs> one <woman>. person. <laughs> for one it's, person. It's corruptible. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> it corrupts. He's got look, a point. When Listen, you have something that everybody wants, it's too much power for some little girl to have Excuse that kind of me. power. Excuse me, Patrice. My vagina has something to say. Shut the hell up, you idiot! Now you see, now you see, I gotta be a professional and not pretend that I didn't want to do something to it just now. <laughs> as men because this is it's 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 reverse rape i gotta pretend i gotta pretend that that she can do that and it's like hi ha but it's not funny you see she should not be in control of that kind of power <laughs> we'll be right back into this message Condoleezza Rice testified before the September 11th Commission today to defend the Bush administration against charges they ignored the seriousness of the Al-Qaeda terrorist threats. Here's what she had to say.
I don't agree that we know that we had a, somehow a silver bullet here that was going to work. What we do know is we had a systemic problem, a systematic problem, a structural problem between the FBI and CIA. It was there because there are legal impediments as well as bureaucratic impediments. Say what? What basically what she's saying is that because of our system that never wants to bother or harass anybody, 9-11 was inevitably, you know, a byproduct of if you want to have a society that that's, that's that free. You can't blame it on anybody. It's like blaming a rape victim. You know why 9-11 happened? Oh, of a claim. <laughs> because 9-11 <clears throat> happened because of, do you know the expression uh, fellatio? <laughs> With an intern. That's why it happened. Does everyone remember when Clinton was sending missiles, and they hurt, by the way, those missiles. They're lethal. Don't think it's swatting flies. And they accused him of wagging the dog. They said he's trying to detract attention, distract us from the fact that he had Alicio with this intern over pizza. Right. But well, it least, harmed the nation. Correct least, me if I'm wrong, least, that was also yeah. the left that was accusing him of doing that. I don't recall that. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to call... But, but I was just... At least he had the fellatio. I can't picture Bush having the fellatio. Can you picture Laura? No. <laughs> no. Boys, what do you think about this? I think Condi really ripped it up today, actually. Uh, yeah, she that's did a right. good job. That's, that's, that's what we should be she talking about. She tore it up. She did a good job. She was... She it's it. kind of unfair that you're calling her out and, and making her kind of, you know... Hone, hone up to this whole uh, tragic event that she was somehow we could possibly anybody could have seen coming and it, it, she did a good job she was nice she, was, she had a couple tells when no I didn't see that document and her lip was just gonna oh, yeah. <laughs> well you know you notice the teeth you, know, the the you need some orthodontia yeah you notice no the teeth you know. <laughs> right. look I was, don't you defend it because she's a sister stupid I wanted to <laughs> look I would have rather been old crazy Bush up she there stuttering and slobbering on herself, but she, even when that cracker was calling her Dick Clark, she, he was calling her the other dude. That cracker. And she was just sitting there not getting mad. That's and right. you know what? I'm telling you, and she didn't even wiggle her neck. She didn't put her hands on her head. She's cool. <laughs> she's very uncomfortable. That, hey, yeah. that's what scared white people, because white people love when black women go, oh, oh honey, but she was like, <laughs> she was like, Bed, yeah. uh, sir, I'm, I'm not Dick Clark. I'm, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, no. uh, absolutely. I'm going to take what you're going to do and swing it around That's and right. pull it back. It was fantastic. Well, but you know what? It was the official story. I mean, it was the... Does that, make it, that, does the, that make it a lie? Just no, it's not, no story? it's not a lie, but it's like if you want somebody to tell you the absolute truth, switch over to The Price is Right, you know, because you're not going to get... It's, it's not going to be totally... I mean, like, what, this is what with this kind of testimony, they say, well, I didn't lie, but I said things that later turned out not to be true. This whole 9-11 commission is it's, nonsense. It's, 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 which, right, so Bin Laden himself, two weeks later on videotape, was like, I was surprised. I, if he's surprised, yes. how was Clinton Bush or anybody else supposed to know about that? He was surprised. He was surprised. He was, he was, he was, in, he was eating the hummus two, and he was like, this two weeks later. Two weeks later. Yeah. He was. Well, it was yeah. a transparency yeah. of a democracy when you discuss things openly like this. The president didn't want the commission to begin with. Then he said he'd give it one hour. Then he said they have to come up with their solutions in one month. Then he would let Condoleezza Rice. There's enough blame to go around. It's on their watch. You think if the uh, thing was switched, there's still Hannity is still bellyaching about Clinton every single day. Uh, people should have put two and two together. And that apology of Dick Clark, and by the way, the versatility of Dick Clark, American bandstand, he's a security <laughs> expert. It's the same. He he does does it. New Year's Eve show. The, the guy never stops working for Christ. It's the same kind of commission, like, it's the same kind of commission like the Warren Commission. It's like the same commission that tell you is one shooter, and people want to believe it. It's just something yeah. you want to believe. There have been commissions that found the truth. You're right about the Warren Commission. This commission, the truth is, was evident before this commission is nonsense. Yeah, they, they, I, they, I, they, they, I totally with you. I think it's nonsense. They're trying to do all like was, That's why when I was watching it this morning, I got kind of depressed, you know, because I was thinking, look, this is who we have to pick this fall. We have a man who sent us into a war we didn't need and lied about the reasons for going in versus a man who looks like one of the trees in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> That's exactly what he looks like. Doesn't he? Don't you? Yes. That was pretty good. Don't, don't you keep Every, expecting him? Does, don't one, you keep it. expecting him to say, how would you feel if somebody picked something off of you? <laughs> damn it. I knew he was going to run it all. All right, next subject. <laughs> the Three Chicago area schools have asked their students to stop wearing pink because pink is associated with rapper Cameron and the Imperial Gangsters, a Chicago Bay Three gang. <laughs> what do you guys think about this? <laughs> they dress I wonder what guys, no, 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 Jim, yes. what do you think about this? What well, do you think? 
Well, just the, how humiliating to get attacked by a gang in pink. <laughs> it's like, what do you say? You know what, though? If they're getting an education, I don't care if they look like Patrice if he fell into a <laughs> bottle of Pepto-Bismol. You know, I don't care. He'd have to be a pretty big bottle. Like that. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the are always pink. Pink. Yeah, they're pink. The pink. The Cameron Pa, I don't know, the Imperial. I don't know. It's really really me. That pink man stuff is same Colin, 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 How can I, I know? You. I promise you. Don't finish. For every for every look, I will trade you. I will trade you one black person that I don't agree with, just so you don't always agree with white people when they just make up a color to hate. Hey, don't. The it's pink the gang. Kid. What pink gang have you ever seen ever? Okay, you know what? It's very funny, but guess what? If I was a little black kid trying to go to school in one of the town these suckers live in, and I have to deal with the that the white people, <laughs> that the Colin, fact that the white people won't say up. anything to them. Colin, it's made up. <laughs> don't listen to them. Say fellatio. Say Joe fellatio. Clark had it right. Kids need to be baseball batted into submission. We'll be right back. <laughs> the American Medical Association, which I don't know which is like the big organization, I thought that was something like my childhood, but they've stated that regular ejaculation may decrease the risk of prostate cancer in men. If you masturbate at least 20 times, one times a month, you risk of prostate cancer goes down a third. So let's see how healthy our panel's prostates are right here. That's, not, that's per month. I'm a, I'm a pervert, but all I got is one left. A day. That's it. I'm not proud of it, boys, but this is what happens. Sir, why'd you lie? <laughs> I ejaculate <I, I> <coughs> all the time. <laughs> that guy, you go, oh, oh, wait a minute. What's ejaculation? A hundred, a hundred I think I had the wrong word. You know, you know I lie. just, I answered, uh, What's the truth? Flippantly. <laughs> What's the truth, right? I thought the question was intrusive and, uh, <laughs> oh, not, Let's be intrusive. How many times, let me ask you, is that why your legs stop? <laughs> never oh. That was a good one. I that was a good one. Right. You know he didn't jerk um, off no, I, uh, I really, I have a feeling that they're right about that because it's a natural function. And I think keeping the plumbing working is totally. important. On the other hand, it is true what my mother said, it does make you blind. Yes. So you have to take that into consideration. And I'm telling you, I'm yeah. the only one that was a 90-year-old Jewish man when I was 30. And I'm telling you, I used to go to get prostate because I had prostatitis. Believe me, it's no laugh. I know it sounds... Well, now that, I know, I've, now that I've found out about Shut this. up and let me finish. All right, shut up. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to say I actually got a doctor's note, Jim. All right, okay. I got Give a literal start. doctor's note. I'm not kidding. I carried for like three years where the doctor said he has to whack off. I had legal... A doctor's <laughs> oh, note. It was built up? Yeah. Did you go really? to a Catholic school? <laughs> now, mine, mine looks a little low on the chart at, at 26.5. I know it looks a little low. It does look low. But Tom, that's all sex. This is a lie. That's all sex. You're married, I'm Tom. married. I lying? have sex all the time. You're lying, Tom. I look at masturbation the same way I do cooking in Manhattan. Cynthia! <laughs> it's like so many good restaurants out there. If you were to cook it yourself, you'd be a fool. Yeah. <laughs> so you're... So you're cheating on your wife every day? What the hell is that? No, mean? that means no, I have sex with my man all the time. You're and the just, point five is the time I try and masturbate, but my wife opens the door. <laughs> You know but what? that cooking analogy means you're cheating on your wife. Oh, Cynthia, no, you are. Now that I'm all the time. And his is a lie. I'm, look, it, if we're going to do this show, let's just be honest. Uh, Jim's is a lie. Mine's is the truth. How do you know mine is a well, lie? Because, were you there? Because 23 little boys live next door to you. You never know. I am yeah. getting old. <laughs> I'm the oldest one here, and it's getting to the point now where even my hand is not interested. <laughs> you know, I mean, it goes, it is, no, it's not tonight. Not I tonight. have a handache. You know, I have a, you know, so... Uh, but we're all comedians also, and when we're at home, it's a much different thing than when you're on the road and you're true. all alone. There's not a hand towel big enough that can contain a comedian. Really? <laughs> don't try to it's, back it's, up it's, now yeah, like you don't still, cheat. I, with just 20 restaurants in Manhattan, shut up. Wife is right back shut there. up. You guys, that's that's why, he's looking back to the like, oh, oh, yeah, you. Get out of here. You single guys think the married guys don't have sex. A new product you called the Drake Detective. The charts. A new, uh, there's a new drink product called the... Y'all got a product. Quite a subject to the, follow ejaculation. The, uh, <laughs> well, actually, 
It is, the drink detective will help women and men. <laughs> we have to put that in. Doc. Women determine if a date rape drug may have been added to their drink. Now, do you realize what we've come to in society? You know, go out in a bulletproof vest, make sure there's not a date rape drug. I mean, that's just weird. You know, like, how would it be to be at a date and then all of a sudden the girl pulls out an eyedropper? You know, yeah. and just, just takes your drink and does it on the thing. I mean, that's so weird, you know? I know. Have you ever done this GHB, the date rape drug? Oh, yeah, Jim, I do it all the time. <laughs> Did no, you I see did me it. at the I rave the other night? I did. I was out there with the yeah. K and everything. He I gave it to himself and he, and he raised himself. That's right. You did take GHB? Yeah, but Tell I, us about yeah, it. I couldn't get... Well, I couldn't get anybody to rape me, so I just pretended. I think the point he's trying to make is that if you're a, if you're a guy and you can't use the art of seduction, then what's even the fun? I know, yeah, but the there's a lot of, of perverts around. You're it's telling all scumbags these girls... that do that, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, you know. Who's selling... Okay. You're telling all these girls that you look out for something in your drink, but oh. no one gives them advice that it's okay to have seven Long Island iced teas and show your tits to everybody who walks in the bar. Sure. Well, oh, well man. I want to know well, what well, you're Now listen, the Supreme Court has agreed to consider outlawing the death penalty for juvenile, for juvenile, the rapper. <laughs> no, for juvenile murderers. <laughs> Right now, a 16-year-old who commits a capital crime could be executed. Patrice, what do you think? They shouldn't. How Why not? That? I'm not sure. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good point. Hey, look, here's all right. I'm about it six months. Like Malvo, he shot those ten people. He got caught. I'm sure he's sorry he did it. He don't need to be killed. I'm sure he'll never do it again. Now, you don't need to murder the kid. I'm Why? sure he won't do it again. He so, shot people in the face. It was a mistake. I mean, should we kill Bob? What about, what about the terrible twos? We should kill him. <laughs> well, let me say, can I say something? Robert Kelly, as we all know, was a juvenile felon delinquent. Yeah. Show him your head, Bobby. Show him the car. Show, show him what happened. He's got the head. He was in jail for most of his childhood because he's like a I high psycho. Said, what does your head? Um, Listen, psycho. Give him a big head. For the, wait, for, don't give him a big for head. Put a cancer wait, side of him. Just, <laughs> first, first of all, I want Colin. Let I Robert tell us the truth. Bubble gum machine. Okay. Uh, the only thing between me and you. Act. I'm talking about the only thing between me and you. I didn't machine. rape anybody, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, do not. He, he's joking. Either way, you know, my Catholic mother's in Either way, house. either way, Robin went to jail, juvie, for two years for a bubblegum machine. Whatever, Robin. Now listen. <laughs> he raped a bubblegum machine. Listen to me. <laughs> exactly. They took his quarter. Now what do the, you think? Now now you have have a no, I wish I could get my question out. <laughs> Just say it. Hey, what do you got to say? Wasn't there a lot of kids there that should have been killed? It's there. Just oh, oh. No. If I you don't, kids there. If you I don't want your kid to be a killer, don't give him three names. Anybody with three names. Names, John Lee, that's the key. Don't give your kids. Listen, the only th I think that they should kill this kid. If you kill somebody, you should be killed. But the only thing, the reason why I wouldn't like to see him killed, it I would really get satisfaction knowing he's getting jizz bullets shot in his face for the next 20 years. That would make me happy. But what about, what about the little girl, the Central Park girl who just got out of jail? She killed a perverted middle-aged Irishman. I think that's wrong. In Central Park. <laughs> so what was he doing she to her? Yeah, I don't know. She killed him. I don't know what he's going to. A gun machine. They were drunk in the park. They, they, you should not kill. Look, man, you should not kill. It happens to be, anyway, it's redundant. I don't know any little white boys on death row. So it, it's redundant Maybe to say. Maybe because they don't commit heinous acts. Just a f***. Stop. Why can't I say Stop. that? There's plenty of white kids on death row. Yeah, name one besides the, the, the little fat boy that's skinny now that they just let out of Florida. And Ooh. dad put, the, put his uh, right. big sister in a, in a full nose and broken neck. And he's sorry. What about uh, those Columbine kids? They're dead. We'll never know. They put themselves up. Yeah, they killed themselves. <laughs> that's no. what white kids do. They punish themselves. They're so wonderful. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, let's Maybe rather than age, there should be a height requirement. Like rides. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this. <laughs> on that note, let's move on. I'm really getting fed up with these two guys <laughs> over here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> No, he looks a little younger than you. Take care, better care of yourself. 
That's from a successful career, you hack. Look at what you did. David Day, the outgoing chief U.S. weapons inspector, says his inability to find the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq raises serious questions about intelligence gathering. Howie, what do you think? Well, I think that there wasn't, there are serious questions about intelligence gathering, but I believe they gathered the right intelligence. He says that, like you just said earlier, the scientists screwed with, uh, right. right? So that they were, they were taking the money and they were buying crap, right? Yeah. So instead of uncovering weapons of mass uh, destruction, they uncovered like a Ford Focus and lawn furniture. That's what exactly. they were spending the money on. <laughs> but we thought there was going to be weapons of yeah, mass destruction. Yeah, we were supposed to know everything in the damn world. So we were right. Didn't they say, like, they found those Winnebago's and they said there was labs in the back? Right. They were like, and they're making helium they for found, balloons. They found weapons yeah, of mass they destruction. They found Arabs. They're all over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, now you yeah, show me who that one. Oh, oh, that was, that was a good one, Bobby. That was good. Thank you. Bobby was stuck in those sons of bitches. He grew up in one of those uh, Winnebago's. He grew up, Bob grew up in a crank, one of those crank labs. That's right. <laughs> Surrounded by gum. <laughs> when, is, when are your friends, and I mean old white men, going to just decide? that we could deal with the truth. When are we going to be able to deal with the truth? We all know it was a... I'll we all know. Them. Just say that. the truth? The truth is... <laughs> so wrong. It's so wrong on my palate. Don't get it. What do you think about BT? Wait a minute, because they already knew there was, any, there was no weapons of mass, anything over there. Dumb dumb, he just said that there was. There wasn't. And then he no, said... He, he said, said the had... terrorists... There were terrorists, apparently. Well, not Iraqi terrorists coming through back and forth, apparently. He just a minute, he's like, just because uh, the stupid news. Know, they 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 was, they was, they I listened to Saddam, and you know, that's why now but it's I was one of the only way that, that, that people would be happy is if they actually were just about to push the button on the weapons of mass destruction and kill us. And, oh, okay, now you guys can go over there and kill people. We went over there. Whoops, we messed up. What are you going to do? Move on. The yeah, move on. Okay. He agrees, but he's just saying he wants white people to... You just want white people to make some big apology every day. It's not going to no, happen. No, white people just need to We're admit done. that... Look, white people need to admit that they were sneaky over the years. And just... I admit just been sneaky over the years. We're that, sneaky. Get over it. Dane, you're not white, because too many young white girls like you. Dane, <laughs> young white girls hate the white men that I'm talking about. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Experts believe that everybody's a little bit gay, and a number of websites offer tests now to help you figure out where you fall on the scale. Before the show, all of us took this test. Now look at this chart, okay? <laughs> now I got the sideways picture. That always looks gay. It doesn't matter who it is when you look sideways. Are you talking to me? I'm like a gay De Niro on that one. Robert, what do you think? Not of my awful bomb just now, but what do you think about this test? I think it's horse crap. <laughs> First of all, I'm 53 percent. First of all, they, they trick you, all right? They trick you. This, the question they was, trick you? They didn't say it. They didn't trick you. Shut your damn mouth. Don't get tough now. The one word you can say, and you have to say it, you rebel black man. I'm sorry. First of all, they, they, they ask you a question, okay? They say, do you think your friend is either yes, very sexy, or no, definitely not good looking at all. I think Dane is, he's a good looking guy. Uh, and did I they, think yes, he's very sexy. Uh, did, but, they, what? did they trick you when you were 14 and you were in juvie? <laughs> hey, Bob, just touch it. It doesn't mean anything. I'm telling you right now, the gayest person in this room is you. You got that fuzzy beard, no, you, you, your little kooky hairdo, the tight little sweater like you should have a pipe, and when you go home, your little sissy boyfriend that's actually just your sugar daddy boy is waiting for you to go over your scripts. Ooh. And this. Look at that. Look at that. How gay is that? <laughs> What's up? What's up, baby? Uh, oh, well, oh, I see you're compensating for the gay, by yeah, the way. Look, look at the way you keep putting <laughs> the corner of the pool table in your ass. <laughs> Jim but look at this picture of Patrice. He looks like he's taking a on his chest right there. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. You, 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 he shaves his ass. That wasn't even one of the questions. Ah, 
you should have told us. You put that you on the front. You, you shaved your head. Not your ass cheeks, bro. Why would you come in here and tell us you shaved your head? The crack in your booty. Howie, why the hell are you on my ass? I shaved my head. I know when to stop. Let's move on to the Japanese guy that was in the gay video, and now it just came out, and he's saying... Oh, an Indian, picture. Yeah, and he said he's not gay. No, he, he said he's no, just in the gay video. That's yeah. a mistake. One time. Well, at least we know he's the pitcher, not the catcher. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. He said he was raising money. <laughs> Wait, he said he's left. raising money. He said he's raising money. But did he ever hear of, like, a lemonade Shh, stand, maybe a bake sale or something <laughs> like that? Do you have to go in a room with four of your buddies and, you know, ha-ha? Uh -huh. <laughs> Was that, was that a Japanese? That was a pantomime. <laughs> oh, a Japanese gay porn. <laughs> that was a. <laughs> Can we talk about something right now? Dad Kelly. No. Uh, <laughs> about College Hill, a new reality TV series about eight black college students premiered last night on BET. Yeah, and you know what we call the show? What? Cops. Thank God I'm white. <laughs> First of all, Patrice, who's going to be the obnoxious? Who's going to be the obnoxious black person that cries racism on this show? I want to talk about Bobby all being right. the gayest. Throw, I we moved on. We're the black. We haven't now. moved on from your gayness. You're not going to move it on to blackness. I already know the deal about this goofy show. We want to know about your gay problem here. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I think you are being abusive. Shut up. sit and really be gay. We already know you are. Yes, There's a, you know, okay, look listen, look at the back of the topic. Turn the stool upside down and make yourself comfortable. <laughs> If you did that in Bobby World voice, it would have been funnier. Listen, listen. What I'm saying about this show. Bob, wait before you interrupt this show. Oh, God. Is there ever, let me Please, just ask, me. when you were 19, what? sitting at the bar drinking, did you ever think you'd let somebody sit there and tell you that, and you'd sit there and smirk, you half a man? Are you trying to get me to suck a punch you? <laughs> I get on this show once you a year, I'm not going to ruin my career. My, and when you were coming up and somebody said that to you, you didn't know, and you're sitting there cackling like a little bitch. Yeah. Ooh. 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 You want to take that, 53? You want to take that? I'll fight. No, I'll fight that more than six times. Some are born gay, some achieve gayness, and others have gayness thrust upon them. <laughs> a new online test says we're all a little gay, so what's the gayest thing you've ever done? Howie. Uh, this, is, this is embarrassing. It only happened once. Uh, one time I went to uh, uh, um, a television studio, a taping with three other guys and me, and we, we did an online gay test. <laughs> and one of the guys turned out to be 53%. <laughs> It was so awkward, I'll never, I'll never do that again. Oh, all right, please. Dave, please applaud me. Dave. I, I was uh, living with a guy, gay guy, and uh, one night I'm asleep, and he, uh, he was drunk, and when he came in, uh, he started, uh, you know, trying to give me, uh, give me, you know, give me oral. Uh, and I was asleep, so when I woke up, at first I was, you know, kind of out of it, and, and I freaked. I'm like, dude, dude, what are you doing? And he was like, I'm sorry, dude, I'm drunk. And I looked at him, I go, dude, you finish up and you get the f*** out of here. <laughs> All right. Robert! Robert! Go! The gayest thing I ever did was a few years ago, I was playing double-A ball for the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, really. One time, I was younger, me and a couple of my friends were hanging out in my buddy's garage, looking at some <laughs> porno mags. One thing led to another, and I was in the middle of a fantastic circle jerk. All right, now I felt really bad after it, you know, I was questioning my sexuality, but my therapist told me that, you know, it's very natural for a 20-year-old guy to experiment. <laughs> oh, did any, did any pot licking go on to that one? <laughs> Patrice! I was wondering first, can you do something gay by mistake? That, that's the first question. I've done a few sissy things that I didn't realize until right after I, I did it. I, uh, I sat down and peed once. I, uh... <laughs> I tucked, uh, I tucked my winter sweaters into my pants one time. Uh, I've did little sissy low giggles like, <laughs> I've, uh, I, if I can't find stuff in the cabinet too long, if it takes too long, I get gayer as I can't find it. I'm like, I, I, where's the salt? I, I know that. <laughs> yeah. But the 
the gayest thing I ever did was uh, I was watching a male comic do a half hour on Comedy Central dressed in form-fitting jeans and a tight little <laughs> a tight little wife beater with a drum set in the background. <laughs> He's the gayest. He's the gayest. And I did. Like I said, a show nobody can remember the name of. Hi. Nice, nice to see you guys made up. Nice. Yeah. There's never a problem. Can you let me? <laughs> resort of the Al Qaeda network to shift its operation to Iraq because of great opportunities to kill Americans and their allies there, as you said. So, what do you think of this strategy in general, Goomba? Uh, you know, I'm surprised they moved to Iraq. I didn't even know they got thrown out of France. <laughs> I mean, but I guess it's good business sense to get closer to your target. He is cutting down his expenses and, uh, That's you know, right. I mean, but eventually he will run out of suicide bombers. There's only a limited amount of those made. No, well, that's, you're th you don't think he will run out, do you? No, you can't run out of suicide. They keep breeding these little bastards every five seconds. <laughs> they, they're birthing um, little bombs, man. That's what they're doing over there. Yeah. And that's a pro it's not the problem where he's going. The problem is that we're not catching him. That's what we should do. We should just... You know what, my fuck? happy... Let me just stop for one second. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Right. It's the first time any idiot has ever said that without an applause break. It had to be him. <laughs> the whole, the, the, he's a hilarious comedian. First of all, the worst... Shut up. The worst comedians in the world can say that. You get an applause break, yet you can't. And you're waiting for it, stupid. No, no. I heard that you. voice. No. First thing we got to do is no. catch him. Yeah. Like, we said know, that on September 12th. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm gonna watch that tape tonight. Why don't you write a new feeling? Falls into the same life. emotions from early '80s. Uh, Will you shut the hell up? Uh, uh, Should have left it. Now look, no, no, um, Dr. Reedy. All right, so good. what do you guys think? Any of you say about Osama? You think uh, he was kind of a sex symbol for a while? Oh, know. come on, man. You see how he, he's? He's a. I mean, look, he's, he's a, a murderer, player. but he was a smooth guy. That's just like, look. Uh, we know how awful Hitler was, but you know his mustache was interesting. And you can't. <laughs> Osama got this. I follow him too. You know. I just like him. And he's a millionaire. And he's six foot six. Come on, he could probably sleep with a couple of women in here right now. Yeah, you'd follow him if he was dragging a stake. <laughs> Anything, what do you I, think? I, I think he's just moved by trying to move a war around. He's like, okay, we're just going to move it over to Iraq now. I mean, that doesn't do anything. I mean, it's like in Vietnam. It's like, what if they go, like, okay, the war is getting too crazy here. We're going to move it over to Cambodia. Yeah. <laughs> what now? That worked out well. What, 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 would, uh, right? what would your mother say about this? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Wait, I'll explain. You're doing Paul Potts, yeah. moving the wall, right? Paul Potts you see your mama, mama from last comic standing? Can he do the rest of the show hiding behind a tree, please? <laughs> no, no, that's no. racist. In a tunnel. Please. Oh, go ahead. Like, okay, you know, no. Rich Boss, <laughs> my mom was there, like, you know, Rich Boss, he spent the whole show, he ironed stuff all the time, but he never ironed the wrinkles oh. around his eyes. Oh. Oh. He doesn't oh. mother, to mother. Don't you to say, mother, that made Shut. that necklace you wear? <laughs> all right, look, what about this? Germany, France, and Canada are angry by the Pentagon's decision to cut them out of that $18 billion worth of uh, contracts. So uh, here's what President Bush had to say about this. Ready? It's very simple. Our people risk their lives. Friendly coalition folks risk their lives. And therefore, the contract is going to reflect that. That's what the U.S. taxpayers expect. <laughs> what? Just as I stink as an impressionist? Who cares? <laughs> uh, what do you think, Patrice? Should rebuilding contracts be used to help those who help us? It, it, look. First of all, can this goofy country just give us the truth? I think we can handle it. Just have him say, I'm giving all the jobs to my friends. Yep. Why should we give a, why should there be some kind of explanation? That was what he was looking for. No, 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 no. Save that for Voss at some point. He's going to need it. He's just giving it to his friends. Why don't he just say that? He's just giving it to his buddies. So what, if, he, if we got control, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't know if it's called nepotism, but it's called something. And, and he's giving it to his boys. You get, look, the reason people hate this show so much is because you got your boys working. 
Right. And or the other comics who think they're funnier, but you got exactly, your boys working. Stupid. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it is. You can't come out of the bathroom after a ball fight and ask your friend to buy you a drink. I know that's good old homespun logic. <laughs> no, that was a good one. You Hello. know how to make everybody your happy. Buddies. Here's how your buddies. No, here's how you make them all happy. I don't like you the fact that this creep had to like put this weird edge by going. The reason people not people when I say people shut up. I meant the other these yeah. other goofy shut comics. So, yeah. First of all, Sorry, you didn't say that up front. So I you want the mistake. audience to know about the little infighting in the comedy scene. Second yeah. of all, do I it's even have to know that there's a couple of bitter idiots out there that want to be... Oh, shut not... up, Colin. You do know. Stop <laughs> trying to act like you're innocent. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know can't stand This man is outrageous. Every time you talk with that shirt, you should go... Din, 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 din. Now listen, okay? That's an old commercial. But listen. <laughs> What is it? Here's the thing. <laughs> what? Here's the thing. How wait, wait. Explain to us what song that was so we can all have a nice laugh. That was from the old uh, Marlboro commercials. Oh, it's yeah. like a Marlboro. Oh, wait. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Like, Jesus, if you got to explain them, it's stink. Exactly. You're 20 years old, you stupid. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what song. Only me and you know it. I know. All right, look. All right, how about this? Go ahead. You want to solve this problem over there? Yes. No, I'm serious. <laughs> what do you do? You get France, <laughs> Germany, and Canada okay. to attack Syria and All then right. let them rebuild Syria. There you have it. Everybody's happy now. You see what I It's not funny. It's just, uh, uh first of all, where the, where, the hell, where the hell is Germany? I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, <laughs> boy, that thing, you, re you really did win that challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Baby Boy recently performed at the University of California and outraged some students who claimed that his ethnic and cultural material was offensive. And even the other day, they were complaining on uh, the how do you think ethnic humor is in bad taste. That's true. How about no more observations about anything that dis is distinct or unique about any culture or race? Celebrating diversity is wrong, apparently. You know what? All comedy should be like the Gap. Generic, safe, uncomplicated. <laughs> All right. Here's, let's take a look at one of Dat Fan's performances. My mom's like, that's not, that's not funny. <laughs> you want to make fun of us? Huh? You want to make fun of Asian time? <laughs> you want to be a smuck, Ali? It's like, Mom, chill out. I know it's you. <laughs> you don't tell me what to chew. I chew what I chew you. <laughs> Now, Dad Fan, well, who was complaining about this? Was it Asians or other people? I what do you have think no about idea. This? Oh, this so, is the, the people, deal. The people that paid them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, he, knew, he needed one. Now, go ahead. He needed one. Here's the deal. I, I spent an hour and a half afterward signing autographs, and 90% Asian students yeah. were, were, were in line. So and don't I, you think ethnic, if, if an accent is, isn't comedy about heightening <laughs> or uh, whatever they call or <coughs> accents or differences too, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the culture that I grew up in. My family has accents, yeah. you know? I mean, if black comics make fun of, you know, their own culture or race, They don't whatever. make fun of all culture, but go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not you know, show. Oh, if you see, like, Rich Voss, you do some Jewish jokes, right? I do maybe one. I, I usually talk about my life... Uh, uh, you know, I talk about my Vietnamese uh, mother a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, like, if, 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 if Asians do it, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, this guy, he's crazy. You know, like, I mean, I mean we're just, this is what we do. You right. know what I mean? We're basing it on the air. I mean, the stereotypes are part of the... Go ahead, fellas. Uh, I'm just saying, I read that article that complained about him. The thing that pissed me off is that they referred to him in the article as a comic, and I was really <laughs> upset. <laughs> You know, now all I'm saying is that it's 5:14 and that fan got one more minute left on his fame. So I think that he should. Go. Oh, oh. Now wait, don't you have a big What's development? That mean? Uh, I'm sorry, don't Dad. you have a big development deal for winning that thing? Yeah, we're working on a sitcom. Just tell me who the showrunner is, and I'm telling you what's how it's gonna go. It's a producer. Everybody loves Raymond. Yeah, he's doing a sitcom yeah. with yeah, Jay Yeah, you know what? Parker. Everybody's a producer. Is it Mike Royce, Rosenthal, or the other? <laughs> <laughs> Don't force him to lose his job already! Sorry, Doc. Making a name you know Jews? You're right. Don't answer me. Yeah. <laughs> he's right. Don't name any Jews. It's called the only Jew you can name with no reports Everybody <laughs> loves that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, oh, suppose you, sorry, you're right. I should want to mess with the career. You guys are enhancing it so much. Yeah. Let's do it the NFL. 
The NFL, John, now you played, uh, you went to camp, what happened? Yeah, the NFL is now requiring teams to interview at least one minority coaching candidate for each vacancy. Here's the chart. Yeah. Oh, do you know how much I hate putting up a chart? Can't it just come out? What is it, 1950? I gotta pick up the charts? And... Yeah. <laughs> Every other show, they come out of the ground and sh Look at this. Yeah. All right. So what's the story? Why don't we show the graph where how many white CEOs are working at Def Jam? Okay, how about that one? Shut that! Why? No. Why? Hey, listen, what are you talking about? How, ma how many white people are involved in that kind of stuff? Why? Because it's their business. business. What's that? Personal. It's their business. The owners decided this. Boss, was, this is an open, this is a boss, capitalist I, country. Anybody, you the owners you are. decided this rule. Boss, the owners. Wait. Yeah, they they were they were they were There's a. When it comes to this kind of thing, there's a lot of white people smarter that we could talk, have talked for a switch. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Now, John, now, <laughs> tell us about the NFL. Well, first of all, Colin, I don't think any of the coaches should be hired. I think they should be elected. Okay? okay. They're elected by the fans. Let them run for the coaching job, let them speak their platform, their references, their endorsements, and let them get elected to a four-year term. They can be impeached. <laughs> Better than what happens now when we solve the problem. You could either do that or you, or you just make one simple hire. You make Al Sharpton the commissioner. <laughs> I don't think you should. Look, you should have And then anybody. Patrice will get a job. <laughs> <laughs> look, <laughs> you, 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 you. <laughs> I don't want to mess with Goomba. He's a made dude, and I'm getting yeah. a little nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, first of all, I'd like to thank Goomba for wearing his football pants to the show. <laughs> You know it's what? true. Let's have fans be. Vietnam is very big. Why Tell them about have, football. Uh, why don't we just have like Vietnamese coaches? That's right in the middle, and then we just like dig tunnels across the field underneath, and then we just <laughs> we steal the playbook. Yeah? We got the book right here. We have the book for you. All right, Black, white, here we go. First of all, just get us some. Dad, now what? listen to me. <laughs> first of all, is he plugged up? Does he have a, a microchip that says do a, a damn goofy Vietnamese voice every five minutes? <laughs> wow. You don't understand. You know that fan in Vietnamese? That means not funny. Oh. <laughs> Please unplug well, yourself from the Vietnamese matrix for five minutes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A dime is forever, folks. A commercial is 30 seconds. Hey. <laughs> folks, first of all, let me say one thing. Goomba is not uh, involved with the mob. I'm not saying he doesn't have a couple of trucks. But, uh, folks, in my early days as the dad fan of the Irish, I too caught heat for making fun of my own people. <laughs> Tell us one awful truth about your ethnicity. Starting with Goom Start with Goomba. You know, Colin, the awful truth about being Italian is that we never, ever want to leave our mother for another woman. Another woman will never cook like my mother. I will never trust another woman like my mother. I will never love another woman like my mother. I will stay home in my room that I was born in until the last minute possible. So ladies, if you're dating an Italian man, here's some advice. Shut up, take your clothes off, and turn on a Yankee game. <laughs> oh, Patrice O'Neill. <laughs> Look, every black person has a very good white friend that we keep tucked away somewhere. <laughs> and that person always asks, why haven't I met any of your other friends yet? Well, why you think, only white friend? I gotta go back home. <laughs> and when we wear sports jerseys, we don't really necessarily like that team that we're wearing. It's just that the colors go nicely with my rims. And... <laughs> and we all think O.J. did it, but you know how much an O.J. Simpson throwback is? It's off the hook. So that's why. All right, thank you. You mean, well. let's see if we can get through this without heckling this poor see? kid. You want to know this? <laughs> that's bad. Right, and do it without doing your mama's Vietnamese voice. All right. She's right. Do it as your dad. Do it. Do it. Do it, do it. 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 But do like a German Introducing accent. Introducing that kid. Yeah. Yeah. All right, do like a French accent in there. No, no, do a French accent. Come on, it'll be better. Do it. Do it. It's Miss Saigon. You want to do it? Prove to these guys you got the chops, don't worry, do it, it'll work. You want to know the awful truth about Asians? Go to any casino anywhere in the United States and all the conservative Asians that you see at their dry cleaners and liquor stores and nail salons are standing at the tables, the crap tables and pie gout tables, and they're like, ho, 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 that's it, we gambled out of the house. <laughs> Here we go. We win. <laughs> My son no go to UCLA. To Compton Community College, <laughs> where we would serve French fries for my son. <laughs>
Oh, last night we lost five hundred dollars, <laughs> but that won't happen again until tomorrow night. Yes! Oh, good. <laughs> oh, nice. Right. That was nice. And you know, even though it was French, it was a little bit almost like a martial arts. <laughs> I see. That was a good one. Boss. Here are some of the things people don't know about Jews. We don't run the country. Huh. There are only three and a half percent of us in the U.S. The WASPs run the show. Huh. Jewish doctors and scientists have cured more diseases in this world than anyone else. We have won more Nobel Prizes for medicine than anyone else. We have won more Nobel Peace Prizes than anyone else. Also, we helped start and finance the NAACP and march right alongside the Negroes during the 60s. Yeah. Most of all, God likes us the best, and we run Hollywood. Now, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, stop. Let him applaud. Let him applaud. Applaud. Wait. How about the fact that until we fix it, you spelled Nobel, N-O-B-L-E, Nobel, you stupid idiot. <laughs> You are the only Listen, dumb Jew I've ever met to this I never said, no, he's, he's first not of all, he's not I never done. said I won one of those prizes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I well, guess that's a show. It was a big applause. <laughs> hey, it was a big applause. You want applause on that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Nah. All right. <laughs> Concerns have increased that American prisons are now becoming recruitment opportunities for radical Islam. So the question is, do rights such as freedom of religion apply in prisons? Greg? They do, unfortunately. I don't think they, they should as much as they do, but they do. There's even laws that guarantee it. But uh, there's got to be limits on it. You know, I don't think you should be able to just claim like you know, you're Catholic just so you can uh, play priest and his altar boy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we're all Hold waiting on. for the brothers to talk on this prison oh, subject. Yeah. Get but, to it. Yeah, you know so more you know what? <laughs> you want yeah. me to... I'd be racist if I didn't say that, too, though, right? Because well, then I'd be ignoring the fact... There's a lot of white boys in prison, too, that get, to, that get to be whatever religion right. y'all have to be so you don't get raped. Bla black they people... They get raped anyway. Black people, are, they have to join that the Muslim thing so they can... It's, it's a solidarity thing, man. You get beat up. You got to have a... a you got to be a member of something in jail. You can't be like a guy, like in the movies, who reads a book... And just to, hey, I don't bother nobody, you're gonna get raped. So right. you gotta, you gotta enjoy also, something. Actually, in jail, though, they actually are more privileged, though. The, the Muslim culture, the, when you are Muslim in jail, you get a special diet, you get to eat a different way, dress a different way. They bring them in body oils, they get all kinds of stuff. Kind of like the Jews. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they so do, they, I mean, there is a reason also why Islam is so popular in prison, because there's like that, uh, there's like that whole chapter in the Quran about uh, how to keep your dignity while tossing someone's salad. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't prison itself enough suffering than, than not being able to do whatever? I mean, you might as well be able to do anything you want to do and in that's prison, because right. prison is the, yeah, but it's yeah, it's the thing. But what about the fact that it's, it's much worse? We all know, and please don't deny it, it's 100 times worse for white guys, because they're the ones that get raped. They oh, join, shut join your the... mouth. Oh, Bring yo. up the Aryan Brotherhood. I'll turn <laughs> yes. on this table. There's four guys in the Aryan Brotherhood in the whole country. Now listen. Well, they got me. the new Nazi but they got the mafia now. in there who right scares the hell out the of the rest of the, the prisons. No, they don't have the Jews. You know that. Stop it. Uh, who who runs prison? the Jews? The white who runs prisons? The white guys were in the prisons uh, too? Yes. Yes. You saw I've that movie. Prison. <laughs> you saw that. I quit. I quit the business. <laughs> you, saw, wait, 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 wait. you saw that movie uh, Bound by Honor starring uh, a lot of B actors? <laughs> white boys. <laughs> oh. And also, white boys, white boys got a lot of clout in prison. Oh. That's true. And Shaw Shawshank Redemption? You saw uh, that? Yeah. Yo. Morgan Freeman wasn't they the big They don't even go to prisons in Nebraska. Never White mind. people are not relinquishing their power just because they're in prison. Oh, my God. Yeah, no way. You, really, mm. you guys are living in a group. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, they are not speaking of B movies. He's clapping for the word Speaking of B movies, why don't you drop that B movie move of the one guy applauding and then the audience joining in? Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> All right. And by the way, what white, what, what, white, what white power? You, you think the, the toothless, you know, uh, methamphetamine addict that's in jail, the white guy, you think he's got a lot of power out on the street? Don't even argue with them about it. They're blatantly lying to give me First a First of all, y'all are the most removed from prison. A giant lesbian, she ain't never going to jail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, white Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican. And, a, <laughs> and a Mick with his own TV show. Yeah. I'm still going to go to jail if you're on TV. Me and this dude got more chance. 
chances of going to jail just standing next to you. Oh, you're right. I forgot the cops are on like a fascist hunt for you guys. Yes! <laughs> what's, what's, what's with all the sarcasm oh, about it? Not, because nobody can believe this, these outright lies anymore. You're pimping white America and they're taking it, but I don't. Listen, <laughs> last night the Democrats got together for a nice little debate in Boston. Speaking of white Americans cowering, watch this, as our powerful people show their you power. You said that you wanted to be the candidate for guys with Confederate flags on their pickup trucks. I think we need to talk to white Southern workers and they need to come back to the Democratic Party. Martin Luther King said, come to the table of brotherhood. You can't bring a Confederate flag to the table of brotherhood. We need to bring folks together in this race. And I make no apologies for reaching out to poor white people. <laughs> If you're a poor white person, you deserve to be, because y'all got all kind of opportunities. Yeah, you're right. That's the yeah. truth. We really run every <laughs> aspect of everything, and everything bad that happens, we're responsible for. And everything good Absolute, that happens, you, yes. somebody must have... Uh, can I, can yeah. I do something uh, unprecedented on this show? Yes. I'm going to take the side of the white person. Yeah! Wow! Oh, Jesus Dude, Christ. Wait a minute. I'm just going to say, I'm going to Judy. say this. I don't like anybody, more than even race, I don't like anybody that takes things out of context. And what? this dude, wait a minute, uh, this dude please. was not saying he supports racism. He's saying he wants crackers to stop voting for Democrats. <laughs> and that's how I took it. And that's not a bad thing to say. He wants those dudes Thank to you. vote for Democrats. And that was taken out of context yeah, they, and it was abused. That's what to, I'm saying. They keep trying to paint Dean as like having race issues. I mean, it, it, you know, he, he can't possibly be racist. He's from Vermont, for Christ's sake. And you, you can't really hate <laughs> black people until you're around them a lot. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, it takes a while to build life for Judy has to get a word in. Sorry. Judy has to get a word in. First of all, there's plenty of giant lesbians in jail. That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> number That's a good two, point. thank you. Number two is he grew up in New York City. Who did? Dean. He was a doctor in New York City. He went, grew up in New York. He went to like some richie rich. That statement wasn't racist, Colin. It, it, oh, I didn't think it was racist. racist. Of course not. But it, was, it actually racist. was. Say that in context. It's strange that Sharpton would be the one to say it, but it actually is a weird stereotype that he's somehow equating. Uh, he's equating to... white. He's equating white working people with right. guys in pickup trucks and and uh, you know and uh, Confederate flags. We which don't is know what he means. But that people is that is a stereotype. It is a stereotype. So what? No, it's no way to, you know, you know the, the, you're not going to get them to put down their banjos and get off their cousin and vote Democrat with that kind of attitude. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Let's face it. Will there ever be a candidate that can relate to both races? Patrice? Hillary Clinton, maybe. Maybe. I think she's going to get it all, man. She, she's the next president. She's the next president that counts. Watch. She's going to really... get them all. All of them. Because nobody, no white person is going to vote for Sharpton just out of pure out of the Sharptonness. Tawana, you no, can't that's vote for a thing. It's just so ridiculous. Ain't gonna no, they're not going to vote for it. It's just nobody that does represent. He's At least this white boy is trying to represent everybody. He's trying to include everybody. At least you got to give him that. Well, I'm not going to vote for him because I don't, you know, I'm going to pray for Sharpton, but I'm not going to vote for anybody, really, because, you know, oh, conspiracy theorists, you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the fact that, I love the fact that this son of a bitch w was a doctor. He went to all these schools. He became this big wheel nice running brother. You're going, this white boy. <laughs> I bet he'd love to hear that. <laughs> this white boy ain't got to well, What color does he think he is? What color color you, you know what I'm talking about. How would you like me to say black boy? You don't think that would cause a little problem? You do it all the time. Oh. <laughs> Fine. You can watch these exciting new hip commercials and we'll stay here along with each other. <laughs>
Well, Todd, what do you think? Should the world of politics have anything to say about the world of entertainment? <laughs> yeah, they should. No, actually, I don't think so. Here's my point. <laughs> <laughs> what I think, Ow. this is great when a lesbian does it, it really is. Yes, it adds another little texture. Yeah, it's a whole different dimension. Oh. Um, what I actually think is that who is the jackass that works at the government that's monitoring cartoons? <laughs> that's a good point, yeah. too. What department is that, the yeah, cartoon monitoring? Yeah. That's, why, that's why I think it's bull. I think it's like this Robert Evan guy hyping up the thing. There's nobody at the State Department calling him up saying, you know, and first of all, the whole thing's absurd because Jacques Chirac is not, you know, they're painting him to be gay and he's not, he's just French, so he just sounds gay. Yeah. Really gay. But also, but what about the Reagan uh, miniseries thing that happened? Oh, that, that is so ridiculous. It's, why did they have to get involved in it? It's a, it's a, a movie. What, right. It's like, Waste your time on acknowledging all the people that died in Iraq. And but don't you say, also think why? But they're not doing. They're boycott. They're threatening to boycott. Right. So well, you they took it off the air. They totally, took it off. They you, it to so Showtime. then you agree that all the gays that boycotted Eminem were <laughs> too, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. So <laughs> what they're complaining about with this movie? Goes, <laughs> they're complaining that it's just it's a biased portrayal right. of the president. That they made it's, up. It takes stuff. A, they made stuff up and it's a bias. Like I mean, I don't know if you read any of the script, but there was that one scene where uh, where Reagan drowns a puppy. <laughs> That never happened. Go I ahead. just think it's so ridiculous that they think that American people, which they are, are so stupid that they're going to believe this movie and their whole opinion's going to change over a stupid movie of the week. Well, if it's With supposedly something autobiographical, I believe stuff when I see it. So what? You don't it's a TV saw? show. It's a TV show. What? It's a TV show. Yeah, but you can't, you know, there's a fine line between all, I mean, these things have to be semi-true. You wouldn't watch a fake TV show about the Reagan. You want to hear what the story was. I watched all three Amy Fisher things. And did you believe them? Yes, I believed everything. That's what I'm saying. I believe <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I watched, uh, I watched Roots, I watched Roots, and yeah, I, I Roots, never, exactly. but I never believed slavery happened until I saw that. Oh. <laughs> and then I do, though, after seeing it. <laughs> oh, look at Tom. Hey, look at Tom still thinking about that big man's foot in his foot. All right, look. I, I'm sorry. Let's talk. I have Damn! <laughs> Let's talk about the it's Nielsen. It's actually bigger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Nielsen's net ratings. One in three right, visitors right. to porn websites are women. Mm -hmm. Judy, start us off with that, right? Mm. Well, I don't know why. You? No, I don't know why this is so shot. Like, women never have any sexual desires. We're just here to, you know, please. <laughs> I. <laughs> I take the boot again. <laughs> I have a Woody right now, and you don't even know it. And do, what? Do women. Do women, do women get into the, uh, the, the internet, uh, what are you doing? porn posture? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I think it's a good thing, man. I'm glad they're watching, because that way they, they find out what we really like. Yeah, you know, yes. Instead of that, instead of that horse crap the that they try to pull on us. Like, all, like, I, don't. I, I, be pouring candles and, on me and all oh, that stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm, do the right. thing. Do the I'm thing. I'm sure that you watch porn so that you can please your woman better, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, grab a bite yeah, of right. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even You're believe You're grabbing that. this bite. Actually, right. I watch porn yeah. to see if I match up to the porn guys. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. So what's... Wait, like, what's I'm sorry. Not saying, I, don't, I don't even believe... Where, where do they even get these numbers? They have these like, weird... And it's needles. not even I mean, women. it's like one out of every three people on the internet I know claims to be a woman. Right. But it's... Uh, right. Well, I guarantee it's not. Americans, you're entitled to life, liberty, in the pursuit of commercials. <laughs> so here they are. <laughs> now, you might have watched last night, although you couldn't tell by our ratings, <laughs> where we took some of our regular comics from the show and secretly taped them for a few laughs at their expense. <laughs> Tonight, we present the second installment of our Tough Crowd Hidden Camera Photo Shoot. Our five comics thought it was a publicity shoot for Comedy Central, run by our beautiful photographer, Ellen. What they didn't know was that there were a few other cameras in the room, behind mirrors and in the ceiling. Sorry, boys. Tonight, we take a look at Patrice O'Neill. Now, Patrice, everybody knows that you're that we would call you a chisel, except that Jim Norton's the cheapest son of a bitch in comedy. <laughs> but you're not too, why do you have to prove, why are you trying to match Jim? Watch this. Can I ask me? Huh? You get paid all, you get paid anyway, right? Concerts paying you? Well, through my agent. I'm getting publicity. You know what I'm saying? You're paying, you're paying, they're paying you, right? Yeah, Money? yeah. Can I get a couple of these pitches? Basically, I'm asking for free pitches. I get free comedy show, then you get free pictures. <laughs> just paying you. You may get five thousand for this. Yeah, but then how much do you make for stand-up? 
Give me free tickets to stand up. I don't get five G's <laughs> for taking pictures of some losers. Uh, yes. <laughs> Why can't you just give once in your life? Because I've given. Take, take, take. I've given a lot before in my life. Take, Point take, take. Point at me again. <laughs> what am I holding? Maybe. I'm not holding any signs of Colin Quinn. Tell me your best joke. Nobody's making me laugh. That ain't our job. I thought if that you, is. You're a comedian. You gonna, you gonna take pictures of me too? Yes. For we, money. There you go. We trade. It's all if business. We trade. <laughs> it's all business. All I'm saying is I'm Patrice O'Neill, and people are gonna say, "Who took your headshots?" Because they're gonna look good. Yeah, of course. And I'm gonna say, good. "This white girl up on top." Table, maybe scream at me or just scream at me in general. Give me some <laughs> free bitches! <laughs> now, Patrice, to try to be nice and work out a deal with you, but you just, you, you were so cheap, you didn't just make yourself look cheap, you made Steve Atwater look cheap, all right? <laughs> Watch here as the photo shoot is over, and you're still trying to get a hook up. What are you charge for a shoot? Headshots? Um, last time I did headshot was 450. Oh, so it's up two? Huh? So 200? If you give me four tickets, how many tickets you, you have to give? Ellen, call me on an off day. And I don't, I like, I don't like studio headshots. I got outside na nature. That's what I like. Okay. So you don't need a setup. Just be like, I need some money. Patrice, you need headshots today? I think I got 200 bucks, baby. All right. Just call me. Just I be like, I need some money. Hey, you guys like hey, hey, have I'll give it to you on this. I call you at four in the morning. Hello. What you doing, Ellen? You ain't doing sh Take my picture. <laughs> Folks, that was beautiful. <laughs> didn't care to half a <laughs> route. You didn't give a damn. All you want was those free pictures. So unbelievable. <laughs> oh, folks, this isn't over. We got two more to go. Tomorrow night, we'll look at Mr. Keith Robinson. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>
Football Freshman Association. Uh, <laughs> look, gentlemen, in all phases of athletics, practice is essential. So in this fragile time of violent hazing, we look to you inmates to show us the proper way to fight off unwanted butt cheek advances. We <laughs> We'd like to start off with Mike. We hear his jammy shaped like a pine cone. Oh, <laughs> oh not, nothing! It's not easy. It's not easy being the third anal rape joke in a row, is it? Yeah, right. <laughs> Where else was you going to go? I didn't even go there. I know. Uh, and it the, didn't get a laugh either, so you might as well went there. Did get a laugh? Shut up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Judy, why don't you just, why don't you try not to make, why don't you admit? Well, the hell with it What? All. What am I in? Nothing. I got nothing. Can we do the boot out. thing again? Which, which thing? Can we do the boot thing again? Well, I think that. that's a good idea for the yeah, yeah. Uh, end of the show, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Folks, <laughs> here's a radical fundamentalist Islamic thought for you. The show's over. <laughs> good night. <laughs> My first show back at Patrice O'Neill's already accusing me of hogging. You know what? I can't hog my own show. Well, I, I <laughs> President Bush's main justification for war with Iraq was based on faulty intelligence. Does this change your opinion on whether we should have gone to war, Bill? Uh, no, I think uh, intelligence is overrated, you know? It's just a <laughs> war. Go with your gut. <laughs> Besides, why do we have all these bombs if we ain't going to use them? Patrice! <laughs> we should have went to war because they, 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 they didn't even find a match yet. They, they, I don't even think they found a pack of cigarettes. So, <laughs> look, why don't we just say that bullets were the weapons of mass destruction and just call it a day? Okay. <laughs> like, Great oh, crap. Well, I knew that if Bush got in trouble, it would be over his faulty intelligence. All right. Ian! Uh... Oh, yeah, we should have went to war. Intelligence plus CIA plus Bush equals uh, North Korea 2004. Oh, whoa, 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 no, man, get off, no. Should the head of the CIA be forced to resign, Bill? Uh, no, I don't think uh, Bush should be able to just, you know, when the heat's on, to just start <laughs> pointing at people like, well, well, he made me say it. You know, I wasn't thinking the stuff, I was just reading it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Is this a big scandal or is it just like leave him in and, uh, you know? Oh, yeah, I think you should allow him to uh, mess up at 9-11, mess up all our covert activities, provide faulty intelligence, and just carry on being the bumbling incompetent that he has been. It's the Republican way. <laughs> <That's Wait. laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, you see, I'll be here all night. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you this, though. How could you right, really no. blame Bush for 9-11 and say he messed up 9-11? There was nothing anyone could have done under those circumstances. That's right. Don't you feel that's oh, the kind really? of partisan nonsense that really our country has to get past? No, Ooh. Uh, no I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. Thanks for asking me that. First of all, <laughs> well, we, can't, we can't ever be upset with him because, first of all, he stole the presidency. And I'm waiting for somebody, <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to, to, like, write his speeches with the words, so what, in them. Who cares? <laughs> Faulty intelligence? Really? So what? We're going to yeah. attack anybody we feel like attacking. How about that? Yeah. I mean, at some point, don't you think that even having to use the excuse of the weapons of man's destruction are in and everyone questioned him. At some point that was, you know, it's just trying to cater to people and say, all right, this is why, instead of saying, look, here's what's happening, shut your trap, mind your business, go to work, and we'll see you in about six months, and those noise you hear will be bombs. <laughs> That's true, yeah, man. Then, then why, why did they go to war then? Because I have a pickup, and uh, <laughs> gas was 204. That's why we went to war. Yeah, I get what you're saying, too. Congrats. Yeah, but anybody can say oil, that's retarded. We would have been party. better off. Why would we have sanctions for the past 12 years on Iraq if it was all about the oil, dum dums? There's no excuse for that. Wait a minute, stop. It's not about the oil. Wait a minute. Call me time out. Dumb, dumb. Dumb. Wait a minute. You know what? Wait a minute. I never said oil either. Wait a minute. I just asked, why did we go? I knew, oh, he he said oil. I knew it. Oil. I'm, you know, I'm with you 100%, except for, except for the fact that haven't we been using oil for the last 12 years? So what's that got to do with anything? But we brought sanctions on Iraq. Chew your cookie. Excuse me, cookie breath. Dum Dum would like to say something. You didn't like that, Dum Dum? Uh oh. 
That messes with his whole life. Uh, he really called Jeff McCoy. You mentioned McCoy claim that the Bush family is in the oil business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I am. And that Iraq has a gigantic reserve of right, oil. Right, right, And that the government contracts doled out were doled out to friends of the Bush family and members of this administration. Oh, uh, not so, just, yeah, they got about, what, they got about 10% of them. 10% went to the Bush family and to Halliburton. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, 10% out of 100. The privation can you imagine how many friends have you hired to open for you in comedy? What do you hire strangers to open for you? Or your friends? Hey. Hey. You're trying to hold hey. up standards that you don't live by. Hey. <laughs> That's why it's better to collect yourself, this is smart just, guy. The scuttle is design. vague accusation. I'm the, not. The I hate the that I know do not run the free world. There's it a doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? No, it's still. If you're talking about personal. You can't expect personal <laughs> hypocrisy to not be on a, a of level. Of course I can. He's the fing president oh. of the United States. <laughs> but I'm sorry, but what's new? What's new about him? What's brand new about Bush? Yeah, what's he what's doing different from Bush? these yeah, other dudes? Yeah, well, Why was he different from Clinton? Clinton well, he's the same. I have a vehicle and I'm willing Thank to open you, for you. Yes, please. Uh, well, open yes, for you. I believe it's so, a truck. That's right. a truck I do. Yeah, and I will buddy. drive you to your gates okay. and open for you. And listen, let me tell you something, Colin. Only 10% of the openers that open for me are actually friends of mine. The rest I, I pick from a large pool of corporate openers. <laughs> Ooh. Once again, oh, corporate. You're right, let's keep away from corporate oil. I'm sure there's another kind. What, a little mom and pop oil company? There's no such thing. <laughs> don't pretend you that we don't all work. The, war the war is a distraction. To from, oh my from what? God. I don't what? think so. 9 11 had nothing well, to do with the war. 9 11 why did, why why did we go? I know. That's what I want to know. Why did we go? He kept to saying do. weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. He kept saying that. And now all of a sudden, there's nothing there. Because Americans so. need Wait a reason. He can't just say we feel like it, which is what we did. We went in because we felt like going in. We got tired of Saddam. He's he, he, we, he wanted him out. We, and we, he. we got tired. I was not tired, I was tired of Saddam. 12 I was tired years too. Why, why were you tired? Hey, guess what? Tired. I don't like his mustache anymore. So it, that's my reason. <laughs> yeah, he does. Let's attack North Korea because they got 87-year-old men driving. He is irritated. <laughs> He'll be driving here. Okay. I take exception to Kim Jong Il's Neil Diamond sunglasses and Elvis <laughs> Buffon. And that's, so I think and that's the, time see, that's is the to problem move. with this country. Why don't you say that's what attack him for his glasses? Who? Why do? You, if you're gonna do what you're gonna do anyway, why have a, a reason? Because it's not snaps. But wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he can say that. There's no. There's no black people in Canada. He'll say whatever he wants here. Ready? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Ah, oh, now it's over. Oh boy. All right. Well. <laughs> I guess we, uh, you might just say that this is, uh, I don't want to make people feel guilty, but my therapist says it's not good for you to leave me alone with these people. So we'll be right back. Okay, now this is a humorous little story. Harvard has recruited a hip-hop expert to teach classes on hip-hop <laughs> culture. Another craven white attempt to win the love of the black people by pretending that hip hop is culturally valid. You don't think 99% of black people are laughing at us right now for having a hip hop course at Harvard? Is it, they must be standing there going, is there anything we can't get them to do? <laughs> you are being played and pimped, Whitey, and you don't even know it. And then some people might say, hey, but Western literature, what's the difference? Let me tell you, do you think there's no difference between Dickens and Dostoevsky and like a Shakespearean sonnet and a guy, uh, you know, who's like, Rhyming Glock and West Side and whatever else, snitches, bitches, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Patrice and all your other lovely values, Gucci and I'm sorry, rims, tire rims, very important, Burberry. Uh, dead homies, pimps. Ooh. Let's face it, it's about crime and punishment versus oh. the police. There's two ways of saying this. Should colleges be teaching courses on hip hop, Patrice? You just recited one song you heard. All of that was in one song, Colin. You didn't even say hip hop. First of all, blues, jazz, it's, the, it's a category. So it's a music category. You should learn about it. It's, it, has a, it has a culture. They're not teaching it. blues, they're teaching hip hop. First of all, Stupid when's the last time, wait, 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 wait. When's the last time you've hummed an algebra problem on the bus to get you through that long ride? <laughs> Rap, it, it, has a, it has a purpose. I've never used geometry. I always use rap. I follow their clothing, their, their, their whatever. They're mumbling. <laughs> rap is important to me. And, uh, I'm it's not just, saying it's, it's important. important to you. It's important to learn. You it's think it's important to, teach to white, white nerds to yes. learn rap? To, so that they won't do what you did. Well, Barberry, it's Barberry, stupid. <laughs> that 
that's the that's what they teach Burberry. No, you said Burberry. Bar. Bar. Burberry was a white product until you guys caught on to it, and so was Gucci. Everything's was a white odd. product until we start buying it. Nike, and then you realize, right. oh Jesus Christ, why don't you talk to white guys about this? Uh, white guys, <laughs> oh. I, I think they should <laughs> teach hip hop because it's as valid as any other schlocky pop cultural stuff that they teach at any college. Schlocky? It's not schlocky necessarily. It's relevant. Why are you apologizing to him? Tell him that you stand by your words of schlocky. Stop trying to give him white confidence. Let him, <laughs> let him back up off his, his statement like he was getting ready to. Hip hop is not, it's not schlocky. It's a fan. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I understand. It's still white. It's, it's disco. disco. We will be embarrassed in a couple it's years. It's disco. Disco is three years. But yes, 20 years, years is disco. Oh, yeah. It's only three years. It's only three years. It's only three years. It's only three years. Go listen to what's yeah, name. Celine Dion. Yeah, go try yeah. that. <laughs> going on for like like 20 years i mean it's current right now i don't know that's why you have to right. teach you just can watch it for free on mtv or but be let's like just that. be honest i'm not saying so listen, listen i've listened to plenty hip-hop before i matter of fact i was at your, your raps is invention stupid you don't tell me how long i'm yo mtv well, listen to this know. dummy here's what i'm saying <laughs> you're <laughs> telling me that the content of hip-hop with all its violence say it's women no, no, wait, wait, all of it. wait a minute stupid 90 percent don't tell me Listen to me. He's getting violent. Listen. It's violent, man. You're, You're telling violent. me. All right, let's say 40%. That's like if one blue Your song had bitch in it. Now it's one song. It, one song doesn't have bitch in it. Listen it's to only, me. It's name two rap songs you've heard that got bitch in it. I don't know. Oh, exactly. About everything. That's the white man's idea. How about everything? Stop. How about everything ever done by Snoop? Dre, everything he said, naughty about, by nature. Blue Tank Clan. Blue Tank Clan. Is that the producer's name? It's, I right. just named everybody. There's not one story I've ever written without the word bitch in it. It, it no, had no. a context. Shut to your it. trap. He's just an actress. <laughs> House of Pain still isn't on top. Yeah! So, <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. Uh, can I at least get my question out? Yes. No. What was your question? My question was if the content was the exact same lyrics and it was white guys rapping that and they tried to make a college course about it. Would there not be women's feminist groups protesting all over the country, the outrage? Yes. That they would teach them? I don't understand. Yeah, well, I don't if white cool. rappers made... No, no, I'm saying if white guys had that kind of tone in their songs, wouldn't there be like feminist protests all over the country? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe they bad. do. Maybe they white guys talk about murdering themselves all the time. That's stupid. Turn your music backwards. <laughs> Listen to the devil songs. How about wow. that? Now he's the one talking about stuff from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. It's still... The last white hey, record what do you think? It was Judas Priest. Oh, they did. <laughs> oh, they did Jesus have to go Christ. to court. Judas Priest went to court over there. Oh, that. Jesus. Oh, thank you, know Bill. Thank you for giving me some. Thank you. Judas Priest. in 1988. We know they went to court. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Well, then what are you talking about? Shut up. Don't make it make no, no know sense. What example, you stupid ass. Man, you too. No, I'm not. What one example. You just, just named groups. I can go blur uh, Nine Inch Nails and not say their songs. You just named groups. I just fuck, because I can't say their songs on TV of your groups. Oh, you really are okay. sick. That's why you host this show. That was a slick white thing you just did. I can't. <laughs> Cash rules everything you want to baby. <laughs> That is bling. just so hip hop what you just did. Well, dollars dollars. 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 That was totally hip hop. Bling bling. Yeah, it's showing all the money. Yeah. Um, you should have thrown it in his face. Oh, Can I get on to Jerry Springer? He's running for office. What does everybody think? Jerry Springer running for office. Greg. Um, I think we should have all of our television friends run the country. I think Deputy Dog should be the sheriff. And I think uh, Captain Crunch should be the Secretary of Defense. And uh, I think that Tony the Tiger should be the press secretary because he thinks everything's great. <laughs> there you go. Okay, we'll be right back. But you won't know exactly when unless you stay right there. <laughs> Well, guys, what's that? I missed you. I missed you, too. I wish you'd been on the trip so you could have flattened Bob Kelly and Nick. Miserable, both of them. Miserable bastards. Um, let's talk, first of all, I want to talk about Troy, the big movie this weekend. Troy, based on the Greek mythological uh, homoerotic, you know, story of Troy. <laughs> well, what kills me is, didn't Brad Pitt and all these Hollywood people, don't they all say anti-war, yet they'll make a war movie? So is, there's a time limit? Isn't that hypocritical? Isn't that a double standard? I agree. Thanks. <laughs> it wasn't a war movie, though. That's not a movie. It was a war movie. Did you see it? It they wasn't a war put, movie. They could have put sanctions it on was the a it, was a, it was a comedy. Did you, did you see it? He's the worst. I've never seen such a non-Shakespeare dude. Right, right. I mean, he was cute in it and everything, but he was just like, uh... <laughs> 
You know, what can it do? Hector. Did you watch that? Hector. He's the war. That, that movie. This wasn't even a war movie. Extinct. Oh. Maybe they just want, they're in favor of war with pretty people. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, if we're going to have war, let's have some good-looking people out there. No one wants to watch these regular people on, in, in the TV war. Yes. You know what I mean? Sure. They want to see the ugly... What's your point? I agree. <laughs> Last time I did the show, I was disagreeing with everyone. This time, I was disagreeing with everybody. Well, you look like Oliver North, as you pointed out. You yes. do look like a warrior. Thank you. You know, funny. North. he thinks his last, like, appearance was so spectacular that anybody remembered it. <laughs> that is true. Like, what? That is Remember true. last time when I disagreed? <laughs> last time I got... <laughs> exactly. Oh, See, just... already I got the show going. Shut I guess you won't oh, get it Or just as bad, he's trying to, like, get, you know, like, the regular thing of, like, last time, so people are like, yeah, you know, he's always on. He should yeah. be on. That's what I was doing. You're right. Lolo, you're noticeably quiet, unnervingly quiet. What's going on? Uh, well, I didn't see the movie, but, but I you agree. Know the history of I agree that Brad, yeah, I agree that Brad Pitt is adorable, and I also <laughs> think, and I also uh, think that Hollywood is hypocritical because they they are all anti-war supposedly, and they do make movies that glorify war. But and uh, mafia, mafia, but what? Sword. like what though? What's a glorify what? war? He was going to say but. Well, but that's what sells, right? I mean, it is hypocritical. There's no argument. It's hypocritical. People they do whatever they, they got to do to sell movies. And then that's, and that's why all the movies suck, because they basically, they, they're they all oh. aimed at 14 or 12-year-old boys. You no know good movie? 14-year-old boys want to see Brad Pitt naked? I thought it was girls. For no, that but one. it's still a war. It's still, a, uh, it's still oh. a pretty... <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I just not, I, sometimes, you know, you don't pay attention to what's coming out your mouth, but I realized something. What? <laughs> what war movie glorifies war, except for in the 1940s? Just funny. Right. But no other war is glorified in... in oh. Well, even the movies that don't glorify... Yeah, Platoon was glory. It, it was, was glorifying stuff. Because the fact that you're watching a bunch of people, on, it's glorifying just to watch anybody on a big screen. That makes no, it... No, it's history. You know, but even when they show... No, Goodfellas doesn't glorify the mob, even though it was... Goodfellas does glorify. You want to be in the mob after you, you watch Goodfellas. You want to be in the war Platoon. You want to be a Platoon. You don't want to be... What? You want to be a Platoon with all the fellas smoking joints? And shoot and shoot little <laughs> Chinese girls? Yeah. It, well, How what? you doing, potheads? Whatever they are. Good boys. <laughs> don't go killing. It, 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 but they show, you know, they always show them loading up their equipment and you hear them snapping at that cool practice. That doesn't no, no, make no, you, you want to... You know who Okay. Rambo. Anything. Oh. Do, 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 boom, no, bow, not just Rambo. Bam, smack. That's glorified. <laughs> but Platoon, uh, Hamburger Hill, what, you know, any, any Vietnam movie. Vietnam it. movies always show how messed up Vietnam was. It doesn't matter, but they're still exciting. Apocalypse Now is not glorifying. Dude, what? You didn't what? Think what? <laughs> you didn't think Apocalypse Now glorified war? Glorified which which part? The one when the guy got his head chopped off? No, how about what when part? The, what part was the it? beautiful illustrious scenery, the fireworks, the Playboy buddies, and they see all these crazy like Cambodians sitting there waiting for Brandos at the ball head. It's exciting. It's for, it's, for who? <laughs> for anybody watching it. You're right. It's like yeah. it's exciting. Like yeah. Super Troopers. That's a good movie. That's a good point. <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, Super Troopers was a funny movie. But when you see good. that movie's you, underrated. I agree with you. I swear to God, I'm not I, kidding. I'm not kidding either. Stupid. Can you see that? <laughs> okay, listen to me. We're gonna talk about NASCAR. Uh, They're trying to integrate NASCAR now, and uh, Magic Johnson is at the helm of the Magic Johnson movie theater chain. <laughs> and uh, that's how I know him. That's personally, it's, uh, you know, I saw Jeff Gordon on TV the other day. I was watching the thing with him, and he was like, yes, I think it's a great idea to integrate. We can use all the multicultural. And I just was thinking, Jeff, you are really ruining yourself with your fans. They're going to blow your brains out, stupid. <clears throat> yeah. Has anybody uh, asked black people if they want to be part of NASCAR? Like, um, no. Yeah, but they, they don't want to be part of it. But black people only like driving fast after they've stolen the car. <laughs> Just what do you think? Do you think black people like NASCAR? I mean, no, we don't. And I'm tired of white. Why don't white people just say, do, I mean, do you want us in NASCAR? Do you, no. do white people want us in NASCAR? No. Why? Because the truth is, and this is one thing that always bothered me about those speeding tickets on the Jersey Turnpike profiling. Will you admit that all black people speed above the speed limit? Please. <laughs> I'm not saying some white people don't too. And I've never known a black friend of mine that didn't speak. Well, because we're trying to get off the highway with racist cops as soon as possible. Uh, <laughs> but isn't it true? But also, that's, that's the only way to... Uh... You gotta do speed, though. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever what the white guy person? doesn't speed? Jesus. Plenty of people. What are you saying, NASCAR? Here's, see, here's the, Colin's gonna say, Colin's gonna go, this is why white people like to drive fast, has an outlet because we follow all the laws and rules. Of, what a ass! Colin, no, Colin. I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's a good one. <laughs> only, old, only old 
old Chinese women drive 55 miles an hour. Everybody else drives 75 miles an hour. This is, that's the fact. Not everybody does, but black people all do speed. And some white people do, but all black people speed. No, they don't. Even old ladies. No, they, they do. I don't speed. I drive a speed I, limit. You, you can't just say, you, that's like saying all Puerto Rican people are lazy. That doesn't make them bad people. <laughs> That's a, that's a character oh, I have. It's the guy that doesn't know he's insulted. He doesn't really insult him, but he doesn't we'll stick right up back. to him. That was funny. This is a segment called Picture This. I'm going to show a bunch of pictures, and you tell us what's going on in the pictures. Ready? <clears throat> How about this little number? <laughs> That's uh, Robert Kelly and Nick DiPaolo in, uh, back in Massachusetts. <laughs> Nothing? Okay. <laughs> that's it. Well, that's a big gay marriage, right? It sure is. Yeah, now try, try keeping those muscles now that they're married. <laughs> <laughs> he only thinks in one term. We gotta pick out, we gotta pick out rugs. <laughs> All you do is push-ups. You know, people, <laughs> you know the, the gay couples that are uh, more straight-looking that get married are like, Great! I had to show those two! Why? Those guys look like a couple of macho individuals. I don't think anybody here would have the balls if you were there to titter and laugh if you saw those two get married. You'd be like, oh, that's cool, guys. Who would titter? They look like they'll kick ass. <laughs> but not, it's not, open if you, not if you saw those jeans from behind. They're assless. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that uh, Ross Bennett's in the corner watching the whole thing. <laughs> hey, that guy, he looks a little creepy. Now, don't you think, though, all jokes to the side, if you're going to be married, you're the earliest gay marriage people. You don't get dressed like that for the marriage. That freaks out the whole nation, man. That looks like what everyone's afraid of. A bunch of S&M guys getting married and, you know... He should wear a dress. One of the guys grand. should wear a dress so it looks more normal. Well, okay, but I meant... <laughs> <laughs> but, but does it, though? Well, anything's going to look more normal. That's frightening. I don't think you give white people enough credit for what they're scared of and not scared of. I don't think they're scared of that, though. I mean, the average, are you scared of that? I'm, I'm, you represent the average white guy. He right does. Uh, I totally you do. am, first of all. Here's but, um, I totally am. Uh, I just feel bad for the guy in the hat because I know this was not his dream wedding. You know what, what I mean? Like, he'd been going through the catalogs and stuff like that, and they're like, let's just wear our street clothes. You know, but, so he's yeah, really But, Paul, like listen to me. Oh. When Patrice brings up race, if you've watched the show as more often as you claim, sure. I don't like to change the subject. Let's get <laughs> racial. He I said just, the I average just, white person, <clears throat> does that scare us? Uh, Speaking for the white people, where are you from? Some place uh, Philadelphia, what? Pennsylvania. Ugh, how dare you? That's, I'm that's, kidding. That's, that's, another, that's another Boston in Philadelphia, too. Uh, Can I see some? No, I'm not, I'm not no. as a white person, I'm not scared <laughs> of the... Is that disturbing? <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of Midwestern white right, bubble heads out there. This guy here, look at that guy's shirt. He's, where where he's are the white not, people at? He's from Goofyville, North Carolina, wherever he's from. Is he scared of that? Let me ask you something. White guy who's talking to from Goofyville, North Carolina? The one that's going, who, me in a goofy way? You, sir. <laughs> white guy, do you feel representing the white race? Because that's what you're doing at this moment, so be. <laughs> do you feel as a white person that we're more, ex we're less, like, what he's basically implying <clears throat> is that our people, correct me if I'm wrong, is that our people have lost any semblance of moral, uh, value that we don't know right wrong we don't want to judge anything so he, is he saying is that true that that picture doesn't freak you out a little well that's two questions i don't think uh, <laughs> <laughs> he really is a little carolina he's got a southern accent yeah. go ahead uh no i don't think people lost their sense of morals white people sir <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that white people have i think uh so you think but does this oh, picture bug it the, the, let him finish the second he's part. not gonna finish he doesn't want to oh, lose his God. job at the plant that's why he won't stay <laughs> All right, let's talk about this next picture. Oh. Ready? One more oh, picture. So Come on. That one. Oh. <laughs> Michael Moore got the palm door. <laughs> Thank God. You know what I love? Oh, what a he, freedom fighter. I, I love that he. I love that he won. He won the palm door. So he's so so, so he's showing us the palm de fat guy. <laughs> I uh. I hate to be. I'll tell you. I, I like to, to show him type. the door. <laughs> <laughs> Charles. <laughs> What are you saying? I, I really, I hate to not know what white people know, but what is the palm door? Some French boy to give it Cannes Film Festival. You know Cannes Film Festival? Oh, well. Soul Plane won it last year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. What about the, what about the 11-year-old sex braces? Now, we talked about sex braces before, but now we're talking about 11-year-old kids. Ooh. 
<laughs> wearing these sex braids. They pull it off. That's all <clears> sex. <throat> I don't know if they're doing it or what, but don't you think this is finally the end of a uh, crumbling civilization or no? no? Forget what? about <laughs> you wish you'd been there when you were 11. We all know that. <laughs> what about it, though? How it's old scary. was you when you first started having sex? How old was you when you wanted to first start having sex? <gasps> Probably 13. With guys or girls? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when, when, I, when, you, I was a I, when I was 12. I, I assume, I assume, I, was a when I, was 12. I know, Colin. He wants to let you know, but before, before. I should be leaving those two guys. Right. Before, let me ask you, before you was assaulted by whatever I was police assaulted. assaulted you. It doesn't matter, but you I was cute. cute. I mean, he wasn't assaulted, cute. he did it voluntarily. Oh, those, those were his old bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I remember I this girl when I was, I was in uh, literally kindergarten, I'm not kidding. And she used to let us uh, go behind the cars and like touch her, I remember touch that, her yeah. butt. And she was uh, like five years old. And did you have to pay Hallie. her? Hallie. Her name was Hallie. Did you have to pay How her? How old was you? I was in uh, kindergarten. Don't say a name. She's sitting home with the kids right now. <laughs> 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 her Can Hallie, you imagine her name's your mom? Hallie Florino. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> tonight, tonight, we have some audience members who need to say something to somebody in their lives but can't bring themselves to do it, so we're having the comedian say it for them. Our first audience member is called Steve from Connecticut. Steve, what do you want to say? I have a message for the president about weed. Um, first of all, <laughs> let me just say one thing. Todd Glass will handle it. Todd? Yes. Have you ever heard of Florino Builders? <laughs> okay, you want me to go? Um, I'd like you to go, because okay. I co you called back the one that I ended the last segment with. I already covered that one, stupid, right, but go we, ahead. Here we go. Um, too many stinks. Uh, I, th I think up to this point, uh, the reason they haven't legalized pot, Mr. President, maybe they haven't been honest with you. Every time those rallies, they're always telling you you can make rope with pot, you can make shirts with it. But what they forget to tell you is the real reason they want to legalize it. And maybe if I'm honest with you, you'll legalize it. You can also get f with it and giggle with your friends. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can I go back now? You guys go together. Thank you. There you go. All right. Next is Matthew. Matthew, who's your message to? My message is to all the homeboys hanging outside my apartment. Oh, oh. Matthew, Paul Tompkins is going to take care of things for you. What? Well, this, uh... All right, Paul, this was not the problem I was briefed on, but what's your problem again, sir? The homeboys hanging outside his building. Oh, those homeboys. Oh, Listen, no. why don't you knock it off and go on somebody else's stoop or uh, something with your... Uh... 40s and uh, stealing rims or shooting each other or what have you. <laughs> Quit it. Ah, I hope that helped. Wasn't really my question. Okay. Like, 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 he, did you think we could get somebody whiter than him to solve this problem? And we did somehow. Mm -hmm. I know it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Now here's Sean. What's ailing you, Sean? I've been with my wife for six years and she still won't let me be her backdoor man. But you're still a baby. How could you be a six years mad aid boy? All right, Patrice O'Neill is going to fix things for you. So backdoor, backdoor meaning what, what we think it means. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Women are very, very uh, competitive and jealous, and they don't like men to enjoy anything without them. So stick something in your back door, and while she's looking, go, jealous? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, hope. Hope. This is hope. Hope, who do you have a message for? Um, You're not married to that last guy, right? No. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I want to tell my mom that I work for a porn magazine for women called Sweet Action. Oh. <laughs> All right, you're in luck. Greg Giraldo will help you. Greg, tell her mom. Well, there's, uh, there's good news and bad news. You, you've raised a productive and ambitious daughter. Yeah. Uh, the bad news is she's obsessed with c <laughs> Oh. I thought it was women. You know, oh, I see. On the, uh... On the, on the other hand, you know, on the other hand, it, she works for a porn magazine, but it could be worse. She could just be a whore. <laughs> Get a boy, Mom. That's it, folks. Tough love from Tough Crowd. We'll be right back. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's get back to our national pastime, race relations. Newsweek had an article about how movies such as Malibu's Most Wanted and Bringing Down the House are angering blacks because the new ver version of racism is the black as mentor teacher to the unevolved and naive white person. Right, now let me get this straight, because this is what I've heard for the past 20 years. You don't like the Cosby show because it ignores the real problems of the underclass. You don't like Martin, Jamie Foxx, because it's somehow minstrel behavior. You don't like Barbershop because it was disrespectful for the civil rights movement. And now the movies where the goofy whites get validated from the blacks, those are racist too? 
by playing the race card indiscriminately, <laughs> it has the effect of devaluing even your legitimate demands. How about one last movie? Denzel, Tay Diggs, Morgan Freeman, and Wesley Snipes help Ben Affleck, Tom Cruise, Colin Farrell, Leo DiCaprio, and they're the confused, uncoordinated, nerdy, and they get transformed into people of substance and validated by the brothers. And we could call it uh, reparations for Rochester, or kiss my black ass, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying, you know, I didn't mean to get off on the wrong foot, Patrice, but stop trying to pimp us with manufactured second generation rage. You know, when white people hold out the olive branch. <laughs> what was we? What? Shut up and don't say we. Oh. Trying to say I'm not white. What black reporter are you getting your information from? Who are I just mad? saw a Newsweek. All right. All I'm saying is this. No, there's no report now. I'm telling you, this is my opinion. When we hold out the olive branch, you go, yo, why got to be an olive branch? What's wrong with a birch branch? We go, you know what? I never thought of it that way. We are racist. And I ain't your brush, brush. Well, I can't have an olive branch. I can't be like everybody else. All I'm telling you is, don't you agree that we're damned if we do and damned if we don't from your community on, on issues such as this? What the hell did you just say? I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> First of all, here's the reason. This is what white people understand. White people have been stealing uh, stuff for, for years. You took Jesus. You took... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you took rock and roll, try to claim as yours. You took uh, you took a lot of stuff, try to claim as yours. And I'm saying you is not the you skin color, not Irish engineering. Uh, <laughs> man, but, you steal all but this is this here. Let me say this: this dude right here, this this roll. thing here is it's only because they can't still rap that they're making it like they're making fun of it. But if I'm but telling you, sixty years, damn, if you do nah, sixty years from now, they're gonna try to say Eminem and it rap. Watch, <laughs> white people would be slaves if they could just to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> that whole that whole playing on racial stereotypes, you know, the white guy pretending to be a big hip hopper or the black guy pretending to be a white, you know, playing on every racial stereotype, it's been done forever. It's boring at this point. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to keep happening as long as people stop seeing themselves as individuals and keep classifying themselves as members of these big groups like black or Italian or sexual deviants with cashews for a head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice that insult. <laughs> you know, why does it always have to, why do we have to be classified in groups all the time? You know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, anybody that says, you know, off the hizzle, shizzle, my nizzle is a moron, whatever his race is. <laughs> well, oh, by the way, a lot of people do complain about me eating food, and I'm sorry about uh, that if it makes them uncomfortable to people at home when I eat this food, so I'd like to apologize <laughs> to you right now. I hope you <laughs> yeah, what are you saying? Well, I think, look, I did an Olive Garden commercial because I was Italian, so it's not like, you know, you gotta go to where, wherever you're gonna get the gig, you know? And if there's gotta be more to this than that, go on, please. There's gotta be more than this than that. You do, I mean, you gotta, if there's, there's a black guy, there's a white guy, and the white guys look like idiots. If the white guys should be upset, look at that. Yeah, I think it looks pretty hip. How, what do you say, Jim? Well, I, I want to know why black people complain about certain things. If you're going to complain about anything, complain about family matters, because they showed the worst thing you can show, which is a black nerd. There's nothing worse than a black nerd. <laughs> Except for a white shellless turtle. <laughs> 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 Shut your face and enjoy it. Shut the face and enjoy that one. Does the shirt, even the color of the shirt, matches oh, perfectly? I think it's perfect that a turtle and a whale are on the same couch. <laughs> good one. All right. Enough. And you thought all the uh, writings for the honeymoon has died. Well, there they go. <laughs> this is all. This is like some reparation. Or I don't know what white people. Exactly. White people are always trying to pretend racism doesn't exist. Shut your trap. You stop it. Oh, it's stop. here. Enjoy How many it. More how many more apologies do you bastards need? You didn't give us one! <laughs> Holy jeez, we didn't give you one? Well, I'm talking your skin color, not not it, not Irish. The, the color white. <laughs> the color white didn't give us any. That's what we talk about. That's we let thing. ODB out of jail the other day. Isn't that a big enough apology for you? <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to the next subject, another racial uh, thing, which is the Georgia, you guys heard of this Georgia high school? Mm -hmm. The white kids are having the separate one. The white kids want to have the separate prom. <laughs> you heard about that? Yeah. Now, when I went to high school, this is not, not a joke, so I'm trying to be funny. We had racial tension in my high school at the prom. I asked out this cute Asian girl. She blew me off for the head of the math team. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> then they moved back to China. I say a plague on both of them. Seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't even think of that. Um, <laughs> so, let's move on. What do you guys say? <laughs> <laughs> <It's the white laughs> well, black people should oh, prefer a, a separate prom, so you don't have to watch white people dance. That should be one of them. You know, it, I, it, it's, it, is, it's real, it is actually upsetting, because you think, well, the white people, they want a separate prom, but if you see those kids on CNN, they really are like old school, 
hardcore racists. What, what did they say? They, you know, they were like, we don't want them coons brushing up on that white they girl. They did not. That's what it is. No, they didn't, they didn't say it. it. You know what, though? No, they didn't say <laughs> it. They, they were thinking it. They were thinking it. And, thinking it. and the white dudes want the separate prom, not the white girls. You know why the, the white, white girls want to be at the black prom. <laughs> <laughs> White prom. No, they they were not, it's, it's upsetting. It's upsetting. It really, this really did upset me because I, I thought, you know, it was kind of be like, you know, there's different kinds of racism. You got like, like Adams people have a certain kind of racism. I mean, the cops, they, they have a different kind of racism because they, because they had to move out of their neighborhoods to Long Island they and the black guys were beating them up, that kind of stuff. That's a different kind of racism. That, that old, that racism down there was really, was really old school. And it's like, it's sad that, you know, that in this day and age, they're, they're, the races really do not want to get well, along. School racism, and though? But what's new school racism? New school No hoods. No, let me tell you something. It's not even racist. It's, it's, it's the bottom line is the white students said they wanted their own prom because they were afraid the black students were going to bring their kids. <laughs> you know, don't look at me, stupid. Let them laugh. I think oh. it's, to me, look, to me it's sad. <laughs> I gotta What's be mad at that on national TV. I know. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a problem. How dare you? That's a problem with being black. You have to defend your whole race every time. They gotta sit there seriously or else you know, they get abused by their own people. Yeah, who cares about the boring white prom? And plus, black people are going, oh, Lord, can I party with the white kids? They, they don't, no one they cares. Were. That's what was sad about. They no were. one cares. No, I don't like your Georgia black impression, by the way. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, Jesus. <laughs> you know, you think. You... <laughs> You would think Something that like Brock uh, Peters. The, the prom is like the one, prom is one of those things that makes you realize that we all have more in common than we have different, you know, and that's what's sad about it. Like prom night, it, you know, always reminds us that wh whatever our races may be on the outside, vomit is always multicolored. <laughs> that's beautifully said. For God's sake, don't leave me alone with these people. We'll be right back. <laughs> Everybody. That's why nobody sits behind me anymore on the couch when I'm doing my monologue. Because these sons of bitches can't even sit there like this and give me a plastic smile. So it looks like I'm bombing. You guys had a nice tone for the crowd watching at home. They're like, all right, you guys are just sitting there thinking of your awful acts or whatever else is going on. Now sacrifice my feet. My feet was starting to hurt over there. Oh, you can sit monologue. down over there. Jesus. I can't see. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Damn! <laughs> All right, look. Y'all trying to get rid of me? <laughs> no. Well, welcome back, by the way. Everyone's happy to see you back. Why? Well, Patrice was in L.A. burning the last few bridges in the industry that, <sighs> of people that actually... Awful! He really did. You, you showed your contempt for many people. We're going to talk about that in a minute. First, we're going to look at the fall television season. Okay? First up, Whoopi. NBC's uh, If Whoopi. you want to hang around here, you need to be white. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ralphie, she was mocking you in that. Yeah, she looks Puerto Rican to me. White Beyonce? I don't uh, think so. Come on. That's what do you guys think? Want... Yeah, it stinks. They always, and that's how they want their black women to be like that, honey child. Whoopi ain't even that. that was... Oh, honey, that ain't even us. That ain't Whoopi. The white girl was acting like that. What are you Whoopi talking about? Whoopi was acting like it too. It was like her mother, the mother of that. But whose fault is that? Whoopi or the director, the network? White people. Tell the white people to do that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you really, you think the director was sitting there on the set telling her to, telling her to, to <laughs> minstrel it up yes. a little bit? You really think that? I know. Wait. Oh, come you on. You said something so, before. Uh, Go ahead. I mean, uh, you know, she, she did that even on Hollywood Squares. I'm sure there was no one telling she her to. Didn't. She was much, I saw it, but she was more like a mama. Oh, like yeah, she was like Maya mama. Angelou on Hollywood Squares. Yes, Listen she was. <laughs> Listen, she was more subdued. All right, we'll go ahead in a second. Let me show Louis Guzman's uh, new sitcom. Who? Luis. He's getting free rent in a building that's held together by rust, graffiti, and whip lard. I have a nicer building if you would have given birth to a shortstop like a Dominican woman's supposed to. <laughs> He'd be playing for the Yankees right now. Oh, please. He'd be half Puerto Rican. He'd be too lazy to practice. Oh, oh no, he did. The best thing is they shot that in L.A. There's no Dominicans or Puerto Ricans. <laughs> I'm going to sit there like, I don't know what that is. There's a little Mexicans out there. I thought it's it was getting pretty racial TV, you know what I mean? I thought it was pretty funny. Of course, because you want to be on that show. Those other I told him he better stop acting white. He said, there's room. George Lopez, Luis Guzman, there's a room for a new Puerto Rican on you. Exactly. Here. Well, he's going to have his own show, but you call him acting white. Why? Because he's intelligent and well-spoken, for Christ's sakes? No. He's like Cervantes. <laughs> yeah. right, let me take a look at white. Speaking of acting white, what about this, the, uh, the white trash show? All right. Got us a little treat. Who could tell me the three sweetest words in the English language? Miller, 
Genuine draft. Bacon, double cheeseburger. Pamela Anderson mullet. Wrong. Everyone knows the three sweetest words. A girl's gone wild. Whoa. Oh, uh, isn't it sad that what's, even on the one show, what's wrong with it? You ever see a blackout, a mullet, hanging out with three white guys and a mullet? There's not enough shows explaining white people's silliness. I, I agree. I love the mullets already. Silly, silly. I know, but why they have to put the black dude in there with the mullet? You really think he's going to hang out with them? Well, because somebody's no. going to complain that there's no black people in the show. Exactly. Not that that show. Show. Oh, no, that show. Why do you think me and Keith are on this show? Oh. You know what? Actually, that, that, actually, that is a good point. That is a low blow. You know what? Ah. <laughs> that disgusted me. <laughs> that made me sick. It should have. Shut up, stupid. All right. <laughs> that really hurts, you know? You guys really... You know what? All right, let me get back. I'll do that in a second. Here's a clip from Jake 2.0, also on UPN. <laughs> okay, listen up, everyone. CIA station in Kandahar has been tracking Ivan Benikoff, a terrorist on our watch list. Now, once we've confirmed Benikoff's ID with satellite visuals, U.S. CENTCOM has an unmanned drone standing by to launch a Hellfire missile right at him. This is so freaking cool. Do you understand? Even <laughs> I know! The politically correct, <laughs> even the politically correct on, on TV, they have to make the, even the terrorist <laughs> in Kandahar, <laughs> Afghanistan, <laughs> his name Ivan Benikoff. <laughs> Thank God he's a Russian white terrorist, not an Arab. All right, let's look finally. This is the most. <laughs> let me just show you something. They Eve's new sitcom. Ready? Uh, Eve's sitcom. Eve. Damn. That, uh, that's a saying something. Want me to say it louder? Oh, excuse me. You alright? Yeah, I think so. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> no, I think my dress is caught on your pants. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Forget about this part. He's got what kind of self-respecting brother lets somebody bump him like that and doesn't do anything? <laughs> if somebody stepped on those cheap sneakers of yours, you'd put two in the back of his head, stupid. You can't judge anything. I mean, it's the pilot. It's the first episode of all these garbagey shows. You can't tell from a clip. They're all bad. And they, I, I love that they're all gay-themed, too. There's like a million shows this season that are all gay-themed. It's like every show on television has to have gay overtones now. I'm like half expecting Dan Rather to do the news in like ass chaps and a leather hat. <laughs> But, Greg, are you being a little nice bitter? to them because we've had a pilot or two that got judged early? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Well, defending bad shows. Greg, and first of all, guys, you know, <laughs> you know uh, great, great art takes time to unfold. That's true. That is the truth. Much like my underwear. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can commercials solve all your problems? You go find out. We'll be right back. Well, folks, the papers in New York, the Times, about every paper about the white kids attacking the black kid in a biased crime. Here's a quote from black city councilman Charles Barron. If this had been some blacks got together and done this to a, beat down a white person, the mayor would be outraged, the police commissioner, they'd have a lesser value of life when it comes to us. Okay, now let me just finish my thought, and you can talk for the next 20 minutes. This is why the average white working class person calls the media liberal and votes for Bush. If this had been blacks attacking whites, it wouldn't have outraged anyone. It wouldn't have been in the paper, because everybody knows that blacks would racially assault whites probably a thousand to one against the other way around. Nobody wants to say that, but we all know it's true. And it's been that way for 30 years. And all the white liberal people won't admit it, so they sell out the blue collar white kid street fight so they don't have to call themselves racist and keep their money and privilege intact. Patrice O'Neill? <laughs> I saw you reading that, but did you really believe I it? I wrote it. Do you really believe that? Yes. Black people don't do nothing to white people. What? Are you out of your mind? We don't touch you. Uh, uh, when? Uh, Get, we, uh, we kill each other. Uh, we don't do anything to white people. Oh, shut up. Well, you you admit. are killing me. Go ahead, you Ralphie. Be, are Ralphie. you out of your mind? Be Make careful. Your you point. Little... Stop trying to act. Okay, okay. Stop just trying to have emotions. Okay. All right. Four, four uh, white guys beat up a black kid. Yeah, there's a switch. That happens all the time, player. You try Where? Walk, walk up and down Crenshaw. Walk up in uh, any, any street over 100. Also, uh, okay? also, no, also, uh, Carla, also, up? also boxing during the Olympics. That happens a lot there, too. We can, that's why we beat, look. No, no. I'm going to tell you exactly. Look, Go ahead. That's the only time we get a chance to whoop white people is when it's legal in no, sports. Don't be or, silly. It's not no, 1950. We never get a Let chance to touch something. white people. Shut your trap one second. 
You know what your problem is? Except that you're golf, so fooled tennis, and basketball. by this nonsense, which everybody in the country knows is a lie, including yourself, that you don't look at where economic problems, where you really might have a legitimate case about racism and systemic stuff. You look at the lie that four white kids beating up a black kid is not happening in reverse. Well, maybe if they deaths. wasn't saying we gonna beat your ass, nigga, we wouldn't say it was racial. It was racial because they say nigga in it. When they well, beat come it, on. It, it, was, it, it was racial. It definitely was racial. Of course, but, it's but, not, but not every, time. When I was, high, when I was in high school, I'd take the subway back from Manhattan to Queens all the time, and I was always by myself. I'd get jumped literally 20 or 30 times over the course of the, of the years, and it was always black guys and, you know, white bitch and white mother that came up but a lot. All, all but he had to do to say I was Puerto Rican. is admit that he's Puerto Rican. <laughs> if he stops, if he stopped trying to pretend to be a white dude, he wouldn't get his ass beat. Really? But that goes against what you just said, that white yeah, black guys never beat up white. <laughs> They beat him up for being a Puerto Rican, acting like a white guy. Oh. That's why they beat him up. They were pretty insightful people. First of all, I never said. Uh, I never said. Let me just they, say one I never thing. said they beat me up. I said that they that they that I got jumped. But I, you know, I slapped those bitches mean? around. Means... <laughs> right, let me ask you. Speaking of race. What about the Kobe Bryant thing? That sounds like it's got a little, your thing on it has a little racial something to it. it. The new word is pathismograph. Everybody should be horrified about it. <laughs> yeah. It's a machine. If Kobe gets convicted, it's a machine that they're going to put on his penis to measure it's what true. makes him horny. It's true. It's true. It's a real yes, machine. Yes, white people It's learn. a real machine. It's yeah. a real machine. They're, they're going to decide whether to take his kids. And I know, I, look, an 80 year old woman turned me on yesterday. How's that going to be? <laughs> they should be able to judge whether I'm a rapist or not. I agree. I agree. So what turns me on? What turns but me also, on is so sick. I, I, I can't imagine that being And, and also, if, anyone, if anyone's wrapping a cuff on my penis, that's going to get me going no matter what. Exactly. <laughs> and no matter what they say, if it's dirty, you're going to get a... Yeah. Or you're gonna sit there like a, it's, he has no, there's no win, lose. It's a, it's a, it's a lose, lose situation because if he sits there and they're That's showing ridiculous. him titties and he's not reacting, they're gonna go, oh, Kobe's a monster. He has no feeling. Right. So it's, it's he's gonna lose. No, that is a dangerous thing. It's like Clockwork Orange, the movie nobody saw except because I'm 71 years old today. <laughs> But that plies McGrath, this cuff thing, it's only if you're, it's if you're convicted. So a good way to avoid well, that's the cuff. The but the best way to yes. avoid getting that thing on is not but, raping yeah, I have to admit, that's, that's a weird place. thing to decide somebody's taste. Because if you're sitting there, like you said, you got somebody right. putting a cup on your can, you're sitting there, and you know, they're telling you all kinds of dirty stuff. Anything can set you off. We got a uh, machine to measure the horniness in Ralphie's titties. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as we discussed earlier, the fall TV season is a time when networks unveil new shows they know will be canceled so they can make room for mid-season replacements. Nobody knows more about being canceled than comedians, so tonight... We're going to create, let them create the perfect vehicle for someone on the panel. You see why I skip lines, young man? Other, I just said young man with no irony. I am an old, all right, I'm on my way out. I'm going to be dead soon of, other than themselves. Ralphie, what's your sitcom idea for some of you guys here? I have a sitcom for Patrice O'Neill. Nice. Patrice wanders the old west fighting crime, a la David Carradine and Kung Fu, but he calls it What Up Fool. Okay. <laughs> You gonna finish your cornbread? Uh, <laughs> if you can snatch this white bitch's phone number from the palm of my hand. Anyway, actually, I've got an idea. It's for Greg Gerardo. It's called uh, any one of his great sitcoms that he's already pitched to you, stupid execs, and you bought, but you didn't put on the air. Mullet's okay. Greg Gerardo project about the comedy seller. No. Inside Schwartz, okay. Jeff Roger, uh, Jeff Ross project about inheriting a business. No. Get it together, Hollywood. What's the next story about a large black man roaming the mid uh, old west, solving crime? I'm telling you, it's a f***ing hit. That I was... don't know what he said, but it was great. <laughs> it was really indecipherable, and that's coming from me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, it's we're gonna cut it. It's an afternoon show. We're gonna cut it and edit it, but you have to admit, you had no ending for that. <laughs> No, I like the ending. I like the ending. To be the ending. 
All right, who's next? I told Jeff. my friend Ralphie Mayer <laughs> is staying with me this week, and uh, we're good pals. I knew him when he was still the uh, food critic at High Times Magazine. <laughs> Ralphie, I'm going to pitch you the greatest sitcom ever. You're right, take notes, okay? It's a remake of Gilligan's Island, where you play the island. All right? <laughs> Now, the island, of course, is totally deserted, you know, like filled with desserts. All right. All right? <laughs> Give him a break, folks. He performs in the round, okay? <laughs> but hey, if Ralphie really wants to be a hit, he'll play his strengths. And let's face it, the big trend now is shows with numbers in their title. There's Jake 2.0, there's 10.8, there's 24. Why not Ralphie 478? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's funny, folks. He's letting me stay at his place. Laugh it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Patrice O'Neill. Oh, boy. It is a great reality show star, Ralphie called Having Trouble Standing, starring uh, Ralphie May and his co-star, that thing in the front of his sweatpants. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you got to You got to make that joke. You, you had to chop the balls. Who are you to talk to? To make fat jokes, you fat <laughs> bastard. You got some hair. before I eat my dinner. All right, wait. Oh, is this on the Food Network? Or what? what do you mean? Oh, that got, that got so crazy, it was like a school of krill was swimming by. Now, <laughs> it's what whales eat, what? dummy. <laughs> the honest truth is, I didn't know either, but I laughed. I didn't know either. <laughs> Well, I think I should What's that? Patrice, shut up! Greg, I have a show for Ralphie, Patrice, and Jeff, oh, and they would all good. basically play themselves. Okay. Jeff would be a guy whose only discernible income is the Friars Club roast he does every two years, <laughs> and yet, and yet somehow drives a Porsche and owns luxury apartments <laughs> in New York and L.A. He can afford these things because he's an, assa he's an assassin who runs a side business delivering chicken wings to Ralphie and Patrice. Uh, the show would be called Trigger, Wigger, and Patrice. <laughs> oh, I'd, like to, oh, I'd like to stay, but I have these high-powered executives to drive home. Good night, folks. Take care. That's the Boston, Boston couch. Mm. Oh, yeah. brother. Yeah. Why do you have to smash up my brownies like that, stupid? <laughs> Two New York City councilmen have introduced a bill that would set a curfew prohibiting anyone under 18 from being out in public in the city without an adult between midnight and 6 a.m. I guess that's for all teenagers. <laughs> it's for you, your kids. Now listen, what do you guys think of this law? I think Patrice better go out and lobby against it or else he's not going to have anybody left to date. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You probably should have said, what are you know they what? supposed to mean? <laughs> that a pedophile joke or, you know, you yeah. know what, that was... So are we supposed to just start talking? Is that how this... Yeah, thing? yeah. Okay, just just, want to just make start sure. talking, but basically try to make it on the subject. Oh, okay, right. You also like these make curfews? Think, yeah, you know, the whole curfew thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think that and these are kids under 18, correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Yes, under 18. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I think that, I don't think that they should. I think they should, should be indoors. Yeah. Definitely. I think they should. Right. That's my opinion. I'm not allowed to have a business <laughs> show about opinions. Is it is it you are, you are. Is it right? Is it we go one at a time, right? That's well, no, we don't do that. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We try to cut each other off as best okay, as possible. Cut each other. Go ahead, stupid. It, also, de say? it also depends on, on, on... Well, we usually don't. <laughs> it depends on the kid's background. It depends on what their parents are about. If their parents are like... Is they white or black, you mean? Like... I can't say that. I got a black. No, that's what we do on the show. We do our race a no, lot. No, it depends. I think it depends on what they're. No, it's not a white or black. Jesus, thing. crap me up, Paulie. You <laughs> heroin addict, can you just looking it up? I think it depends. <laughs> Maybe you should stay off the streets, you drug addict. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I if think I'm that is <laughs> If I was made to come in the house early, I got in a lot of trouble. My mother was single parent, man. She worked all day. She was too tired to discipline me, so I was out running the streets. 
doing goofy stuff. And I should have had a cop make me go in the house, and I'd yeah. be off the streets. If some yeah. of these kids need somebody to tell them to get the hell off the streets. I think they're too over Because they're who's robbing nowadays. people. 35-year-old right. people aren't robbing anybody of in the course, streets. Of course, it's when I you're young, you get into all this trouble. But he's not, well, well, Patrice is not talking about, uh, I, uh, he's not talking about, uh, he's talking about committing crimes, not being overprotected. Well, the curfew is overprotective to me. I don't understand. I think they're too overprotective I think it's an individual situation. But that's a problem. You carry individual situation for whole country for a society. My mother fell off the bus when she was pregnant with me, not with me. She did not fine. She I'm fell off and you she shot fell out. Off the bus <laughs> she fell off the bus <laughs> door. Pregnant. She was pregnant. They were Dorchester Avenue. She was completely fine. She fell off a bar stool when she was pregnant with you, and she got knocked up while she was sitting on one. <laughs> <laughs> What he's saying is, <laughs> here's the problem, all right, we've talked about crimes, and look, when I was a kid, the, the crimes I committed were always because I wasn't in the house. If I what? was, when I was, look, thank you. No, 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 no. Get him, get him, well, 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 get him. Let me tell you. Okay. Don't let him finish, get him. You have to. When I was a kid, we would ring people's doorbells and say, uh, you got Prince Albert in a can? And when they said, yeah, we'd go, well, you better let him out. Uh, he really saved himself that time. All right, look at this. A Maryland high school is holding its all-white reunion for alumni who attended the school before 1969. The year was desegregated. And apparently there's a problem with it. What a shock. Let's see what this picture is. It's probably, yeah. uh, look, the good old days. Wait, what's, yeah. I, what's, the, what's the name of this town? A little place called Utopia? No. <laughs> Now, Paulie, <laughs> racist. That's a show, man. <laughs> Let's face it. I told you, Peter's no, charm was wearing off. You didn't believe me. Sexual, Colin. I think they're afraid of the sexual proudness of the black men. What is I'm proudness? Seventy years old. I do. I think I'm seventy. <laughs> I saw these guys break dancing in Times Square the other day. They had their shirts off. Black guys. They were hot. They were. All, you couldn't even get a space because all the Midwest ladies were like standing there leering at them, like, oh my well, God. Well, is there hot. is there high school reunions with just black people that don't want white people to go? Thank I you. Also, yeah. Good one, Paulie. Yeah. yeah. On yeah. Right on yeah. Right yeah. Right <laughs> Can I tell you something? We only, we only, black people only complain about have you guys, just because we feel like have it. Have you had that before, though? Have you What's had that? that? Well, just like a black guy. We try, guy we try thing. to keep white people out of everything we so do. So then why can't the white people you don't have to try. They always find a way to call the cops, or they always find a way to do something to involve themselves in our fun. Now, but you gotta here's have, what they do. You gotta, they, have, you gotta have black people at the white reunion, because once the white girl gets drunk, she's gonna want to hook up with the black guy anyway. That's right. So. I totally agree. Well, people want to go to this corny event. Exactly. This is not the point. The point is we don't care. We only care exactly. because white people, we just say against anything white people are for. Thank you. But we don't want to party with, what old black person want to party with them? <laughs> Young white people are corny. Yeah. Uh, imagine <laughs> those those old fuddy duddies. Exactly. Duddies. So why do you have to irritate us with these party? stupid ass lawsuits and complaints? Who wants to party with an old white woman money. after her uterus falls on the floor because she's trying to dance to 50 Cent? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's right, but we'll let him on the point. We'll be right back. <laughs> U.S. troops stationed at an air base in Germany will be no longer be allowed to visit prostitutes, even though prostitution is legal over there, which I didn't know was legal in Germany. Yeah. The, uh, the military feels everywhere. that the soldiers should follow the same laws and morals of our country. America, no matter where they are. What do you guys think about this? Well, I think, yeah, I think you got to get, I mean, if you're over, I mean, that's a, like the, it's uh, obvious, it's a bonus. You got yeah. Can you say the P word on the other, on the show? Yeah. Yeah, no. you can't. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, it's an obvious thing. I mean, I think that, yeah, everyone's got to get, you know? You can't. Like vaginal. Fighting, if you're everyone's got to get you're vaginal. Fighting, uh, and you, right? Yeah. And you the same yeah. thing. What do you women, think, Stu? The I women over fighting. I think you should do a commercial with Polly speaking out for it, that that's you right. should get Right. But what do you think, Sue, as a woman, do you I find think, this is good for the Well, troops? as a woman, I don't know how I feel about prostitution, but as a fa I think if they're in a different country that they should well, be able to hit right. it. Either, either way, how are, how are people, I mean, you're over there, and you, if you're an army guy or whatever, and you go start hitting on the army girls, right. and all of a sudden that's problematic. That's right. You can't go get prostitutes. How are you supposed to just jerk off all the time? Why don't they worry yeah. about the so What are they supposed to do if they want to get laid? It's, it's ridiculous. Get transferred to Abu Ghraib. If you want to get laid, you should be able to... I just think it's so funny that everything's about sexual repression instead of like the limbs that are missing on the soldiers and everything. Why? Well, do in Germany. Well, this is after the. This is after like probably no. after they go out. No, not for trees to be quiet because he knows it's all brothers over there in Germany. That's why half the kids in Germany are half white he and black right now. What about the prostitutes here? I'm not lying. 
All the German girls of the early 70s, all these brothers came with their smooth raps, schlagging, hogging. Next thing you know, all the kids are white and black. Admit it. That's where Millie and Vanilli came from. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worldwide, man. It's worldwide. You know, it's, you know what They're this on is, a worldwide this is, mission. And this is not because the black soldiers are getting the bitches to do it for free. And the white soldiers are paying. We, we know the deal. That's why I ain't talking. I, no, those soldiers work really hard. Prostitution, schmostitution. It's all the same. They get a tune-up every Wait, excuse me. That was all very great and street credit, except for prostitution. Schmostitution. <laughs> Let me show you prostitution at its worst. Right here. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> she's not a prostitute. Look at she's 17. I told you. She's not 17. Wow. Let's move on to the next subject. You're 42. What's your name? You're 42. <laughs> NRA is supporting a lawsuit by a New Hampshire high school student who was not allowed to post for his yearbook picture with a holding a shotgun. Mm. <laughs> wow. Is that the kid? What a hillbilly. Uh, he's a good looking kid. What do you guys think of this? I don't think anybody should be able to hold props in their pictures. I think everybody should have to get rid of them. The baseball team can't hold the baseballs. No, I had baseball on my, on my prom, The orchestra big, can't hold the violins. I had a big bomb. And the glee yeah. can't. <laughs> no, you, the, the re you should be allowed to hold a shotgun, but only if you're wearing a trench coat. Right. <laughs> I don't know. We didn't get to have props in high school. The only prop I had was a tissue in my bra. I don't know what. <laughs> I mean, this is a, this is this guy's hobby, correct? This is what he does. Yeah, it's, it's what he does. He's just this is what he identifies. So with. let him let him have let him let him have no, it going. It's all I good, right? So. You got like a white girl behind you. <laughs> look at this! Look at his photo. He's awful. They, what did you show say? Him, they should show him surviving an incest experience. He's horrible. <laughs> I got nothing. Do yeah, other kids do, <laughs> you got anything? Do other kids sure. have other things behind them, or is he the only one? Yeah, that's the point. It's like if you're on a basketball team, you do have the basketball. Right. Right? So this creep wants a shotgun. What's the a big deal? The club holds each other's balls. I think they that I think that, that. If, if everyone's allowed to hold their their stuff stuff up there, I think it'd be good. But if he's the only one, it's like the big picture. He's got a shotgun. I don't think that makes <laughs> that's sense. That's the wrong message. Yeah, that's no, not good. I think that it's, plus, it's if only it's a shoot, it, If his school does have a shoot up, they'll know where to go too. Yeah. It's the end of the world, dog. What's the end of the world? When, when you're trying to muster up feelings for this, we, <laughs> nobody cares. And this, is, care. this is why the rest of the world hates us, because we're trying to really care about it. We don't even care if he kills everybody in the school. That's, That's how we are, do. and we don't I care. Do. We're watching this poor kid. He probably got beat up, and he got abused, and he wants to have this little rifle. He's going to kill somebody someday. And you know what? We're sitting here trying to muster up feelings about it. I don't care. Cause you know what? He probably lives in Utah or somewhere. New white Hampshire, people, stupid. White people have lived there, too. It, 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 yeah, he's just going to kill a bunch of white people, and I'm going to go, oh, wow, that, wow, that's effed up. What, oh, 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 that's terrible. <laughs> I'm going to try to care. I'm going to try to care when somebody asks me, how do you feel about it? I'm going to go, I don't, oh, it's, I, 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 it's, no one cares, Colin. You don't care. He doesn't care. No one cares. I care. I care because I, care. I think that it's wrong. Because, because you got a good him. point. But I think that he's talking about the existential <laughs> vacuum that we live in in today's no, society. I, I understand what he's talking about. But I think the important thing here is that people have to keep in mind that guns are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ski gun. It's not what? even a real yeah. gun. That's, that's the thing. It's not that's even balls. a gun. But it's not a real gun. It's a, it's a ski gun. But what is right. ski? I mean, what is Well, what that? about the deeper point that we're getting to, which is the fact that no one cares? Nobody. Are you sure I it's care. not just you look that feels the, empty? No, look at your apathetic Why? crowd. Look at these bunch of they might be there. They might be apathetic because what? Look at this guy. He's, no, not because of us. He's, he's one of these guys that looks like, like, entertain me. <laughs> these guys aren't entertain. Why don't you entertain me, sucker? Why don't you get up? He's just sitting there. <laughs> These guys, blah, 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 blah. This Sir, is why it stinks, because he don't care about that kid. We don't. Well, why should you care about this son of a bitch? But I got my own they problem. don't care, and that's why the problem, because they, they act like they want to care, and then they want no, us they to be the, the catalyst for their goddamn empathy. Well, that's what we get paid for, stupid. No, nobody I don't get paid for that. that. If we can't be the catalyst to bring some excitement to people's voids, what the, the f*** are we doing? We, and people we do, them. but how are we going to bring excitement to people's voids if they don't let us in? Oh, my God. They've lost their minds. Now, wait a minute. All right. You've you got a good point. Let's I'm talk about it. But why are you saying that we, we don't care? I mean, like, people because, are forgetting that... Because we're trying to muster up something. We're going. trying to get to no, another I level. Care. You're trying to bring us back to some... No. Point. No, don't use this that better be, language. This better be relevant right now to what me and him are talking about. I think we right should care eye. because every life is worth something. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Now Patrice likes his music. The only one that hates it is that square Keith. Uh-oh, I guess this is, wait a minute, before we start, what is this in protest? I gotta work on Martin Luther King's birthday, so this is my protest fist. 
Nobody forced you to come. Well, I'm it sorry. did force me to come. No, it is. It, it, it is disrespectful. I want to say to you, from all the white people, happy birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I still got it, baby. Why don't you just accept that? Hundreds of people who believe President Bush's policies dishonor Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday protested Bush's visit ugh, to King's grave last week. Take a look at some of the action. Demonstrators at the tomb of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. in Atlanta protested the president's visit, opposing the war in Iraq and the administration's treatment of the poor. There's an insult to all of us who believe in the life and the legacy of Dr. King. First of all, how annoying is it to see the white people in the middle of the protest? I know even you don't like that. But does someone with a political reputation of Bush dishonor King's legacy, Jeff? First off, they were protesting the uh, war more than they were uh, protesting... What the heck is that beeping crap? Somebody's got their cell phone on in the middle of the show. All right. That's not right. So, um, that's, that's the... But there's no color when it comes to Martin Luther King. It's all about... Ugh. It's mankind. <laughs> It's about mankind. What are you trying to win? It, 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 it's definitely, that was awful for somebody who's on an improv show every week. It, 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 so my husband, it was racial. It was racial. Go ahead. It was racial. So what are you saying? But do you think it disrespects him? Well, I think I, mad because it was black people mad. So, so I'm just following what I, what I, I, I have to do. Can I say something? What That's I have right. to do on this show is be witty immediately or you're going to fuck with me, right? That's... Not with me know. sitting next to him, Okay, because I will nail your ass so bad uh -oh. you won't hit you. I got him covered. I'll wrestle your ass, I swear to God. All right. John Hanna. <laughs> John Hanna was a black man. Who's can, I, can I just John say... the jersey he's wearing. I don't think it's wrong for the President of the United States to acknowledge a great man like Dr. King, but if people are so worried about his legacy, they should go out and vote and get rid of this guy, is what they should do. That's uh -huh. honoring Dr. King's legacy. I could have lived without, except for the applause. Why do people act like they love? I just want to see one white person be honest and say they didn't like Martin Luther King. Just one one white white there was one, one. James Earl Ray. Yeah, James Earl Ray. Put your hands the damn world. Why don't you step in and straighten this crew out? I think that uh, Bush needs to address the civil rights uh, the, in his own state and the lack of advance that they've made. You know what? You've been I've been too long. No, no. Listen. You're I've been in Tennessee, you're a born killer. Don't act like you don't like the death penalty. <laughs> I'm, no, no, I'm against the death penalty. But I've been to laundromats in Texas. Your eyes don't say And uh, they wash the machines, they still say colored and white on them. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> they still drag black men on the back of trucks oh. up to five years ago. What? One so guy in Texas. What happened five so, years ago? Let me tell you something. What? What happened five they years ago? They dragged the black dude to rob bird on the back of the truck. By the way, those guys got raped in jail too. Nobody was to say it. Yeah. The Iowa caucuses were taken. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> the two guys. Why, why did you say that? As we supposed to be, we supposed to know because Iowa was on like that? Yeah. You're supposed to look what, at the paws poor, in the back. Wait, the poor, the poor uh, guy that dragged the black dude to death got raped in prison. Right. And why that was your way of protesting the poor white man. You why really suck. Why am I on this show today? You want to hear the truth? Sit down. That's his truth. So it should be the truth. What, Colin, he's what, not, the, what he's does not that mean? To it. That you're means misinterpreting that, that, that you can't ignore cause and effect. They got raped in prison. They were crazy. They went crazy in prison, got raped by the black dudes, and they dragged this poor guy into it. Cause and effect. So you're saying the poor guys, if they didn't do what they did, right. then it would have, they would have not got raped. Yeah. What does that mean? What? That, it means just what you say. Wait, so what's the, wait, cause and effect, that means there had to be something uh, before the dragging. Not the effect, Patrice. Right, not the raping was before the dragging. What was the poor thing that happened with the dragging? The raping. The, the raping before. happened after the dragging. No, no, before. Those guys that got out of jail, they went to jail. You're assuming they got, oh, so that's just old I'm government. Assuming you don't even know they got raped right. in jail. Shut up, Colin. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm not gonna shut up. It just stuck around. Come, I have to talk. Um, <laughs> I'm oh. I'm gonna shut up. Why? You don't like point? a fact? You because you don't want to hear the fact. You don't want to hear the truth. That they those poor white boys got raped. So they white black dudes in jail, and they turned into psycho racist Klansmen because of it. So you're now you're saying those two are like uh, Miss 45 from the movie where she got raped twice, and then now she's shooting <laughs> yes. everybody in the park and everything. Oh, uh, you know or what? I'm uh, not old enough to know that movie yet. We have I Miss 45 or Eileen Warnes, where it's all is all uh, their fault. That is what I'm saying. So this is tough crowd yeah, with Colin cool. Quinn and Patrice talks a lot. <laughs> this is how it always is. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When me and Patrice are on, this is what it always deteriorates to. Um. The Iowa caucuses were today. Here's a look at the Iowa Democratic Committee during a caucus practice session. 
They use characters, this is true, from The Simpsons, instead of the real candidates, even C-SPAN, this is what they do. Well, I'll go over the candidates. Homer Simpson, Marge Simpson, Troy McClure, Mr. Burns, Ned Flanders, Barney Gumbel. You can form a group um, of uncommitted people as well. I vote for Marge. <laughs> now, who could explain what a caucus is? Does anyone know? I don't anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's mountains and uh, yeah, the caucus the mountains. Yeah. A caucus is where they kind of get together and decide who they want to pick for the for the primary. It's not a primary. It's a different thing. No. Yeah. That's the primary, right. they actually vote for the actual. They're in <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> who cares? Who cares? <laughs> I wouldn't decide for us. That's it's for them. Not yeah, a Jew in the whole thing. Wait a minute. At least Iowa's are still, they have that sincerity with it. I was like, oh, the process. Can you imagine us going to some caucus? No, because nobody would show up. So let's cut the b <laughs> You wouldn't show up either. None of us would. They're all losers. Look at these four candidates. That it looks like a reunion of Super Tramp. <laughs> <laughs> North Korea has agreed to freeze its nuclear program in exchange for U.S. aid and their removal from the access of evil list. Now, this story never made it further than page six of the New York Times. What is your theory on why the media hid this story, Patrice? Because they already decided they're going to go kill that little Chinese man, so there's no point to even... He's already on the list, so what's the point? Of, he, he can't get out, like Sonny from... The Bronx Dell is too late. Now you can't leave. That's the whole thing happened. They tried to give his little ass a chance, and they blew it, man. Now it's they going in to take care of business. I think it's just the opposite. I think it's because... Oh, I'm sorry. Jeff, there's a little tension between me and Jeff. He don't know what no, I'm talking about. I now, love you unconditionally. Stay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> What didn't you understand what I was saying? I well, she said, what you talking said, about? What I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, First up, he called him the little Korean man. From the oh, Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, no. He called him a Chinese but man. He did that it's, a movie. it's a movie reference. And it was hilarious. Yes, but I'm just saying that... <laughs> <laughs> you can feel it, right? <laughs> All right, we'll be right back after this commercial. <laughs> It's time for another Armageddon. That's where we point out the things going on in the culture that'll help put an expiration date on our society. Today's Armageddon is the rise of stripper-inspired activities for preteens. That is, they teens, preteens, including stripper wear. Look at this little T-shirt. All right? Look at that, for heaven's sakes. You know, it doesn't look very Armageddon when they have, like, a hot model there. I, know. I don't understand. No, it's not a 12-year-old. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. All right, but let's pretend this is a picture of somebody that shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so, Susie, what do you it think? It is so wrong. You know, in the summer, walking down the street, these little girls have their entire bodies showing the crack of their behind, the midriff. Teenagers are way too sexually stimulated. Their hormones are going wacky. They do not need more stimulation. I am completely against it. Yeah, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> but you're an adult. You could go to a strip club. You could turn buy porn, whatever. It is not necessary to be walking through the streets with nothing on. Well, because it gets younger and younger. Now it's really young. They got little girls where, you know. It's sexualizing, it's sexualizing preteens, which I think is completely wrong. I Why? blame uh, Britney Spears and all people of her ilk. She's going to have to do porn, I decided, eventually. Ooh. She's going to have to do porn to keep her career going. She makes out with old ladies, has, <laughs> has, uh, has uh, you know, uh, fake weddings, you know. You're um, being awfully quiet on this one. Why? Well, because she likes it. Look, <laughs> exactly. That speech you, is, you can only, uh, look, only a MILF can make that speech. You, you can't. A what? A what? What are you using? A MILF. What's a MILF? That's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, big time. She's fine, too. But... <laughs> Oh, okay. Go ahead. Look, the only you get is a man. That's not even a good acronym. The only it is a good. I didn't make it up. Where's the two? We didn't make it up. The You're only, right. The older you get is a man. The, the younger, not and not pedophile young, but you know. We're talking pedophile young. Yeah, we're talking we're that talking, young. If that no, not is, her. No, it's not that her. 12, it's this one. 11, 10, hey, 11, 12. I, I, I hit, see girls uh, that age. Wear that shirt. That shirt means nothing. When I hit uh, 36, I definitely felt like I was wrong. <laughs> you know, in terms of just I would look and that go. That makes it more exciting. No, it doesn't make it. No. It adds that whole other level of I'm like, guilt. dear God, not guilt. No, no. Shame, it's a, no disillusion. Erection. I'd say to myself, man, if I wasn't married, I'd still be standing here pointing at you. <laughs> uh, let's talk about these shirts. The West Virginia lawmaker wants to make the sex offender alerts on the license plate. What do you think about this, Rich? 
Well, I, I think that's uh, that's a lot more a lot more work if you're a child. Now, if a, if a car pulls up and offers you candy, you have to go around to the back and check the license plate before <laughs> you decide whether to get in the car with them. You know? Why? Maybe they're just somebody trying to give you candy. Well, well, does anyone have a problem with genuine wanting to give candy? There's too many foul right. people out there for you to put. Look, at, I believe if somebody commits a crime, not everybody who commits a crime is a criminal. Sometimes if I kill you. And I don't need to go to jail. Yeah, the child molestation has huge recidivism, recidivism, whatever the word is. You just said something really funny. Yeah, I know. You interrupted him. But child molestation is a different story. People who are child molesters don't just molest one kid. They're not going to change. That's the profile. What, but that yeah. profile was over after the statement right. was blocked. I think that all child molesters should have to dress like Abe Lincoln. That's right. Spot them a mile away. <laughs> just have them wear the big hat and, the, and they, have to, they have to glue on the beard every day. If it falls off, they go to jail. <laughs> Gotta keep it glued on. Glued on. I'm it's all for the scarlet lettering of child molesters. At the very least, why? Right? If, if you're a pedophile, why do you even get to drive? Why don't they take your license away so you have to walk? What? That's right. Why, why are you even alive? Why are you? Out? They shouldn't even be alive. This conversation should not be happening in a normal civilized society like Saudi Arabia. They cut your balls off, <laughs> cut your hands off, and we're gonna. Have this discussion. They should give That's them, they should give them antidepressants, which decrease your libido. A lot of those are set up too, man. Like Mike, it's getting ready to be proven. Mike, Mike didn't touch that little boy. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just say one thing. I don't know why your people spun this one that Mike's innocent. First of all, because he's black. First of all, first I'm of sick all. of it. Time out. Hey, hey, college, college. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. First of all, what? First of all, black. Denounced Michael Jackson years ago. We know that. So but it's not a fact. black thing. It's just a it's fake thing. thing. And, but but also, also not a black thing. man not not oh. to denounce black people. The yes. only black people who decided to make a decision. Black people aren't even just to aggravate us. To try to find a new way no, to cheat. Uh, this is broken. Of all, I think working. the crocodile hunter was much worse than Michael Jackson feeding his kid to the baby. That's as bad as anything Michael Jackson. At least Michael Jackson got good songs we all love. And, and the crocodile hunter did nothing. I, it's, going, it's coming out that that kid, if he's not alive, his mother was. Or something, something's going on. With oh, the I kid. think it was. I didn't say. Right, right. That wasn't corny. If I'd said like we all wish his family condolences, that would have been corny. I mentioned tough crowd. That wasn't some corny service. Don't mm -hmm. call me on nonsense like that. Was. First of all, <laughs> shut your trap. Wait, you did, you, did you did you go? Uh, uh, have a tough crowd. Man, yeah, some kind of quiet, hey, 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 goodbye, hey, asshole. Right, and dandy, dandy, yeah. dandy, 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 shut up. Yeah. Move on. Shut up. And then they did an impression. Hey, tough crowd. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. We'll see if you guys find it just as glib when Dick Gregory dies. <laughs> <laughs> so Cheney and Edwards went at it last night. <laughs> What do you think? What do you think of the debate? I, Before I say what do you think of the debate, John, you might as well talk now because I'm not going to hear from you the rest say, of the John, show. I'm going to say, go ahead, John, go get him, John. I'm going to say in this debate, Cheney was a lot like his lesbian daughter. He got licked. <laughs> First of all, you realize you look like Cheney right now with those eyes. He doesn't hear like Cheney. You got some psycho he eyes, dude. He looks like that Kennedy that was up on rape charges. What's William that? Kennedy's <laughs> Doesn't he look like William Kennedy's Don't he look said at me. Show. Why are you <laughs> staring at me like that? Relax. John, John's been sitting, because you know John writes on the show, right? So he's been sitting around all week going, I'm not going to let him do it to me, man. No, I'm just going to talk you, mother. <laughs> if he's got his best three button shirt on, leave him oh, alone. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's <not> <laughs> Go ahead, John. Go. Got buttons. There's nothing worse than an out of shape, in shape white guy. It's <laughs> yeah. Except wow. an out of shape IMAX screen. Oh! oh! I don't hey, like, oh, let's, let's get past it. I don't like the way John talks out of the side of his mouth like Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> and Dick Cheney. Take a sip. Yeah. Hey, stop. Colin, why don't y'all two switch two pays? <laughs> Nothing oh, that deserves more. That was funny. Back to, All right, to the debate. Let's go. You know what bothered me most about that debate? What? Uh, Edward's wife. What the f What is... Where did he get that wife from? Is that his mom or his babysitter? <laughs> she is That's his one of the white guy. He's I, either gay or she got pictures of him touching little boys who married that dude. I want to know, know why they... I want to know why 
they had Scotty Pippen actually actually asking the questions. Who was that awful, Scottie awful? Pippen. Did you You're see the lady about, asking you know, the question? Yeah. She looked like Scottie Pippen. Her head was huge. Don't look over here for black approval on your yeah. Scottie Pippen joke, yeah. Stuart. It was really I was bad. looking at the psycho uh, white guy. Yeah, the black. psycho white Okay, <laughs> <laughs> was the first black woman that Cheney has spoken to whose last name wasn't Jemima. Ooh! Oh, God, 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 John, if I hear one more liberal yeah, platitude. Yeah, baby! If I hear one more liberal platitude, that's it. What's, uh, pl what's platitude? Head. That means like one of those statements is just I like... I hate when you use big words like Why? Because we don't know what they mean, you first jackass! Well, first of all... Speak, yeah, speak for yourself. Know. You think you you think know. I knew you what think platitude you meant. I think the only ones that don't know is you and Keith. I, I Everybody knew, else knows what I'm talking about. I don't know what platitude is. is. The thing that bothers people is that... Remember the platitudes? Colin, Colin he, says... Uh, is he supposed to say platitude, but Colin goes, platitude. He says small words like he's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win. You can't win. He really, he thinks if he can't use, win on this show. He thinks if he uses platitude, he's going to get an Emmy with friggin' The Daily Show. It's not going to happen. <laughs> he still thinks he's Rodney Dangerfield. He's still a Rodney Dangerfield. Stop. They're doing good with another thing. Okay. Don't <laughs> Corny direction, stupid. No. All right, let's move on. Why this ain't going nowhere. Why yeah, why? Awful wife you got. I just don't understand. Yeah, what you see, hell? we're back to the wife. Am I right to move on? Police in New York think they found a Gambino. Oh, no, what do you guys want to talk? They found a Gambino family body dump in a vacant lot where at least five guys, including the guy that accidentally killed the son in 1980, might be buried. What do you think about it? You're from Philly. They used to have a half a mob. What? They used to have a fake mob in Philly. First of all, that whole city's corny. That's is a small that, town. Is that, is why, that, why are we still looking? Why? How do they? I mean, okay, fine. They found it. So what? These people are dead. They've been dead for years. What are you gonna do? Who are you gonna go after next? Huh? I think, That's why the people keep dying because everybody that thinks they found something gets killed and get buried in the same place. Let it go. Let it go, man. Yeah, that was a good point. Listen, Colin, I uh, I got another. Uh, Attitude. Good. Oh, yes. Yeah. What, does platitude what are the mean? odds? What are the odds that Billy Joel would be the guy that wouldn't be the one that killed John Gotti's son? <laughs> that was a damn good one. That was. A, you want some baby here? That was a damn good. That was a good job. John's in the background of that picture. I don't like the fact that you look like one of the grown-up Gotti kids. Well, you know what? They're actually I get nothing for that. That's perfect. Because they're you know sexy what? kids. They're good-looking. Sexy, hot young man. Bobby is gay. Bobby really. Bobby wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, let me tell you something. Liz, Liz called him out. You don't remember Bobby? We did a Liz is show. the producer. Bobby was the gayest dude on it. She's like 82 percent gay or something like that. Liz, Liz it wasn't 82. Liz pointed out. A woman pointed out. He shaved his chest for the show. You're a gay, Bobby. Liz, 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 Okay, we'll be right back with two black dudes, a admitted serial killer, and a practicing homosexual. <laughs> We all know there's a double standard in our country when it comes to what language blacks and whites are allowed to use. Well, just one word. Here are a couple of examples. In a word. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The athletic director at a Philly high school, Philly, again, oh, always, had to resign because you used the word nigger in front of the school's mostly black, mostly black, football, mostly black football team. Then he, then he used it again when he was apologizing for saying it in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> then last week, uh, black cartoonist Aaron Magruder's Boondocks comic strip featured black contestants on a reality show saying, called, Can a Nigga Get a Job? Yeah, say there it again. Been... Say it again. <laughs> Listen, my point is this about it. Because you're trying to read it and get away with it. And he's saying it with passion every yeah. time he says nigga. He don't and say nigga. He's saying nigga. He said nigga. Colin, we're not, no, we're not going to so fall for it. Colin says nigga on a consistent basis, man. Listen to me. First of all, my only complaint is... Living in a country where there's one word that 10% of the population can sell in records, use everywhere. People want to buy the records. They can't even name the thing they want to buy. When do you say it? When you call me on the phone, listen, Kevin, you nigger, and you whisper it to me. He says it. He calls it to me on the phone. Whisper it. I'm telling you. Hey, listen. Hey, you know what? It's a shame. That is a shame. Hey, wait, 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 w
think it is a shame that this is the only word that people use when there are so many more perfectly acceptable racial slurs. It's better be that are being used. Coon. Yeah, yes. Baby. Say your name. Jigaboo. When have you seen an athletic director say, "If you pick a ninnies, we'd get it together on the field"? Point is Why this. do white people want the rights back for niggas? Why can't we have? Why can't this? Because they can't be. You. They can't be one word. Why do you want hey, nigger rights? Can you shut your mouth. You can have the N word. We get Tommy Hilfiger back. No one wins it anymore. No. Do you know the last time black people were white? Tommy Hilfiger. It's all unconscious. The last time I had Tommy Hilfiger. Oh. Nobody oh. wins Tommy Hilfiger. Oh. oh. We want it back. You know. Settle down, he's staring at you again. Oh, settle John. John. <laughs> John. John was shaking. <laughs> I, I think if John, I think because John talks out the side of his mouth, even if he said nigger, nigger it's not gonna come out was like nigger. Was, <laughs> well, was, was he saying it to be mean or was he trying to motivate these guys? What? Well, either what? way. <laughs> It's true, though. I'm just asking no, the question. How do you motivate me as, 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 as my coach? Look, you nigger! Go ahead, nigger! <laughs> you get mad and you go out and make the tackle like a man! Fax that! No. Fax this letter, nigger! Now! No, it's like... Type a little faster, nigger! Oh, exactly. I'll never forget the great Newt Rockney speech. All right, let's move on. Well, okay. Say what you really want to say? Let's move on, you two niggers. <laughs> yeah, the niggers are doing it. Talking loud. I want. I want to be a nigger. <laughs> yeah, these niggers are again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paul, the, the, the genetic testing on you is still out anyway. <laughs> You're definitely not a white man. Oh, yeah, shut up. Shut up, porcelain dial face. <laughs> Take your hat off, Bob. Bob looks like a poached egg. Wait, <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop. You, you, you Sorry, y'all, 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 y'all. You got me down? Oh, cool. All right, let us know. John, how about that call? Can I? <laughs> Those cross colors. <laughs> a report released last week found that abstinence only sex education programs don't work and may have actually had a negative effect on a teen's decision once they become sexually active. So, uh, I don't know if that's, that's one report. Anyone interested in talking about this? You want to go back to your awful, uh, you know. History, present, well, whatever. What is, what is about that? Well, he's he's mumbling through half the things. I was asking the host of the show, you <laughs> ass. The is all talking about the second. Sit back. Back. I don't understand nothing. I don't like saying. your white uh, character. Me like this, Mr. Shut your mouth. Oh, oh, shit. I, I want some more. Put the ring back. Yeah, what's up? I don't want to put the ring. John, back. say oh, something yes. funny. Okay. Thank God, John's gonna do a joke. Get I back. think that they should be teaching abstinence to kids. All right. Because you've got to learn what abstinence is like to prepare yourself for marriage later in life. Thank you. Give me some of that, baby. All right, settle down, settle down. Oh, yes. He's not coming back. Oh, yeah. That was funny. Hey, God, baby. That was a nice oh. joke. Well thought out. A clean, well-lighted place, baby. John is insane. Do you see his eyes? He's man? insane because he, it's his first time on a show, and look at the maniacs I put him with. Well, why does oh, John have crazy more skates with... They're like, <laughs> they're like sneakers skates. They I just don't have wheels. Oh, just shush, shush, go ahead. You cut me off. You should have just let me bomb, dummy. That's true. You should just let yeah, me bomb. Let, let, ahead, let, uh, right. let, uh, let, uh, knee-high Joe, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a clever one. I really do want to high low. Stop it. I want to hear it. Come on, I think, I think, what they're saying is that they stopped teaching sex and they're actually teaching to refrain from sex, right? right? Well, no, you should, everybody's, got, they look, they've been having sex for years. My mother had my sister when she was 15, <coughs> she had me when she was 18. They just were talking about... <laughs> what are you laughing at? He's I don't want to say it. I don't say it. Don't, don't, don't. Shut up and say it. Don't you dare say, say it. I won't say it. Don't say you dare it. say his mother's a whore. <laughs> 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 I'm fighting 
everybody right now. Get back here, you freaking. Can we say? Can we say maybe now? <laughs> Bobby's mom's is a. <laughs> Okay. Leave her alone. Hey. You didn't want to call her out. You could have at least no. said she was 25, you stupid asshole. It's different in this house. If you guys wear the anthropology, Samoan culture, they have sex very young. <laughs> and they have children young. That's cool. I understand. My mother was, can I get back? Coming of age in Samoa. You called my mother a whore. I did. I called my great grandmother a whore last time I was on. I didn't call her. She had, I didn't call her. She his had great the mother grandmother. She was six. <laughs> I said his great grandmother was <laughs> by every whore. She I find that judgmental. They're not I don't know, oh. Bobby. Mother really is a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Well, if celebrities have a right to carry a gun, shouldn't everybody, Dennis? Hell no, Kyle. No way. <laughs> Brevity is the soul of wit, I agree. Yeah. Patrice. Uh, yeah, Steven Seagal and uh, Joan Rivers got, t oh, Steven Seagal and Joan Rivers got turned down for gun permits, so now that really makes it hard for any other unfamous people to get one. Oh. Damn, well, I, I could have just said. <laughs> I don't think we should make it easier for celebrities to have guns. OJ just had a knife and look what happened. Well, <laughs> Nick. I don't like the question because it implies I'm not a celebrity. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have you know, since appearing on this show, I can't even go to the store for a gallon of milk without being mobbed by crazed fans, most of them black and angry, but yeah, I need a gun, yeah. All right. Yeah. Woo. Uh, what do you think, celebrities and guns, Dennis? You really think uh, they should be allowed to have them? What, you mean, regular people? Yeah. I, th I thought everybody did have a gun. It depends <laughs> how big a celebrity you are. If you're like Gandolfini, you can have a bunch of ass you know, challenge you in bars every night. Right. So you should have a gun. But if you like Screech from Saved by the Bell, I mean, who, <laughs> who wants to kill him other than his acting coach? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've got plenty so of people going after him. So is this because they're famous? Or? No, we're saying like in New York, there's very strict gun laws. Yeah. Celebrities are allowed to have them, but regular people aren't. So if you're a celebrity getting stalked, but what about uh, hot girls get stalked, old girls get stalked all the time. That's, that's what I'm Jerry saying. Seinfeld, he, he walks around McDougal Street like, that's right. he doesn't carry a gun. He's Jewish, they don't carry guns. <laughs> He's right. He's, it's just, I don't know, it depends on how much of a pussy you are, I guess. I mean, it's just, I don't, whatever, So you're man. saying that pussies carry guns? Whatever. So you're wow. saying anybody with a gun in the hip-hop world is Basically, a Basically, and let me tell you something. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, on. yeah. That's, that's what you said. That means, yeah. That's what you said. <laughs> Fooey. <laughs> Movie season since 1997. One of the biggest bombs was obviously Gili. Look at this. Ah, oh, this professional. In every relationship, there's a bull and a cow. I'm the bull. You're the cow. You got that? Yeah, I got it, bull cow. Now, I thought that was a good scene <laughs> myself. <laughs> but how could a movie be that bad with all this money? Nick, what happens? First of all, you got a movie where Jen J Lo spreads her legs and it still lost money. That's how bad the script sucked, okay? <laughs> right? She opens her legs, she says, turkey time, gobble, gobble. Like I mean, that, who's, right? who's writing the dialogue? Jared from Subway? I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, why does Hollywood think every time two celebrities f that they have to make a movie together? You know what I mean? No, Burt Reynolds, Sally Fields, uh, Madonna, uh, and Sean Penn, uh, Matt Damon, and Ben Affleck. You know what I mean? Every time. Two <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, that was pre written, ass. Now, Dennis. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this. Yes. Dennis, you've been in some movies that might not have turned out the way you'd intended. I did a, everybody's done one, at least one giant piece of shit. I've done at least two. <laughs> two if I see huge bomb. Huge. I thought it was great. I thought Dumbo Drop was great. I thought Dumbo <laughs> Drop. No. I thought, I thought, uh, the, when Cuba Gooden was running around, hey, that, he was that, a was, I, that was a good, that was a good, that was, that was a good, I'm not being sarcastic. Oh, I'm okay. saying it was good. Well, you like self-esteem. He's like, that was good. Yeah, this is why hey, Patrice Dumbo, dro Dumbo Drop was not good. This is why Patrice O'Neill. Can I just say something? Yes. This is why Patrice O'Neill is brilliant, because he took your horrible statement, two bombs, 
And instead of saying, well, you can't, obviously, he actually thinks he only was in two bombs. He started complimenting wait, wait, things. Wait, wait, so people wait, wait. go, oh, yeah, five I'm bombs. Talking, but we're, we're, Eight how, bombs. How we qualify? That's how brilliant <laughs> he is. Let me tell you something. I was in Night at the Rock's Paris. How we qualify so in bombs? Because to me, <laughs> we're talking about big budget, whoa, whoa, whoa. high profile, right? What? No, what we're saying is, Patrice. what do you think happens to these big budget movies that make some of these bombs? Not you, but I'm mean, saying, what do you think? Because you've been on the scene where you see read a great care. script. Who cares? Is this a philosophical? Everybody cares it's because a piece movies of shit. That came out last week and I'll be gone next week. No, it's not about Geely. It's about the whole business. Every movie stays. I still don't I'll care. Why? But we, I care. Wait, why oh, do you care? Because I go to the movies. I sit in there watching a the movie, all excited. The next thing, I was awful, and I leave well, miserable. Go see my movie, Secret Lives of Dentists. That's a good movie. It's out right now. Is go it good? It. Yeah, it is good. good. I'll tell you what else. You know what else is good? Yes, Rocky uh, One. Yeah. Rocky One's a great movie. I'm okay. talking about right now. Oh, okay, okay. Sea Biscuit. <laughs> sea Biscuit. They really won't give it up. The Italian Sea Biscuit is a good movie. Oh, oh they live Stallone's for that movie. A genius. Finding, Stallone is great. Finding Help me Nemo out. is a great movie. Leona right and Kaitel have a problem. The with. agents of the problems, Con. Every time two celebrities get together and like P Diddy's hot tub, there's a couple of William Morris agents with telescopes on the roof going, "Oh, we got to do something with those two. Well, that is part of it. But don't you think it's also just the scripts? Let me ask you this. I can't believe you say, "Who cares." I don't We're care. We're in the middle of a set. I, but I, I wish I would have known that before the show. Then I would have said, well, Dennis, you don't care about this, but what do you think? <laughs> or what does your buddy think? <laughs> you said it so. What's I'm your sorry, problem? Did you guys argue like this on the set of Who's the Man? <laughs> <laughs> Another good movie. There he goes again. I like that movie. <laughs> that was good. I like Who's the Man. Well, well, I think we all know what Patrice point, is saying. My point. There's my more point. than two. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> My point at this particular moment is I actually care more about the Red Sox and uh, the Yankees and about uh, what the weather's going to be tomorrow and what I'm going to eat for dinner than I care about damn Jennifer Lopez yeah, and Ben Affleck. Listen, yeah. nobody wants your zen and the art of being a Boston Irish guy attitude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, show some respect. Don't leave me alone with these people. We'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, Chicago, Dennis goes, why are you over there? What do you think, someone's sneaking up behind you? I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh, I don't know, they're putting you're you talking up with guns shot. and everything else, and all of a sudden you're standing <laughs> over there. What the hell's going on? You just told your friend Leota and her Kaitel. Yeah. The de yeah. Judgment Day is coming. Yeah, sure. Chicago Cubs manager Dusty Baker caught some flack for his comment, mm. blacks and Hispanics withstand the hot weather better than most whites. Jimmy the Greek lost his job for making similar comments. The Dusty Baker story went away fast, as it should have, but if he'd been white, you know he'd be making the tearful apology and stepping down right now. I apologize if I offended my black and Latino constituents. I apologize to whites. I apologize to the meteorologists who have to deal with the reality of heat and cold and its effect on the different races. I apologize to the American people. All climates are good in their own way. I do not believe in climate control, except in the case of inclement weather. So the point is, isn't there a double standard when it comes to crying racism, Patrice? Yes. And white people created it. First of all, uh, <laughs> they did. First of all, uh, you know, uh, white people talking about black issues is like uh, what black issue? Uh, well, white people talking about anything black. It's like women talking about, uh, or men talking about uh, abortion. You know, women, no matter if the dude is right or not, women just don't want to hear it. You know, because we don't have anything to do with it. So when white people talk about you know, oh, we were bred for slavery. I don't want to hear. I don't want nobody. I don't want to hear about white. You don't want to hear. You don't historians. Wanna, I, I don't want to hear about. It. I don't, don't want to hear the truth. Look, look, man, Jimmy the Greek. I I agree with everything he said because it's the truth. Leave that Greek out of it. it, it, it it's the it's truth. I agree now. with him, man. But he just can't say it. He's not allowed to say it. But black people are not the real the ones that got him out. It's just white people did that. White yeah, people, people did that. White that liberals part, go, oh Lord, are we not supposed? And then right. they get slavery. Ooh, we ain't supposed to. And then they, because they're scared of you, you can't say anything. Guess what? I think we can say whatever. We want. I think What's Dusty that? Baker was absolutely right in what he said. He is right. Absolutely. That's right. not the and point. I think he's a great manager. I like the way uh, he ha handles his teams. And you know Wait. what? Jimmy the Greek, I don't even remember what he said. What did he say? He said, he said they, they were bred for this. They were bred. You basically know, said the same thing. So they're better athletes. The bigger, big women, stronger, big, men, big, big, big men, children, big women. Big slaves. Look, he's a perfect proof of it. Look there at the size go. of this son of a bitch. <laughs> So Jimmy the Greek said that, that Patrice, Patrice O'Neill would have made a hell of a linebacker. Okay, yes. now I remember. The theory from the guy in Hawaii at the college that did a study on this said it has to what do with guy? the guy. A the guy in Hawaii. Yeah. Did a theory. The, the, did the a piece study of paper on they gave us the read uh, before the show. Here's the black jackass. guy talks over the white guy, you <laughs> jerk. Anyways, go ahead. Go ahead. It says because it has to do with a surface area of the skin. Black people have longer limbs than us, so the heat dissipates. This isn't my theory, so don't fucking so laugh at me. So he's just repeating it. Go ahead, stupid. What are you waiting for? A liver snap? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so it has to do with surface area. They have longer limbs, they have more surface area. And if this theory is true, <laughs> if this theory is true, you could stand I'm on the listening. You could stand longer on the longer limbs finish. You could stand on the sun for a week and not break a sweat, you fat bastard. <laughs> Well, I'm sure. Ridiculous conversation. No, it's not Thank a ridiculous. You. You, it Thank is you. ridiculous. It's a black guy it's laying on a rug. It's not about Dusty Baker anymore. Once he brought up the fact that white people should not bring up certain subjects, that's when it became a good conversation. If you guys can't handle the, uh, you know, the level of it, but hey, well, listen. What are you saying? We we weren't up to par with Jesus you two? Christ. No, I'm saying that this son of a bitch called it ridiculous, but I'm it saying it wasn't ridiculous. We covered the topic. We should move on now. <laughs> It's like your your Fine, it's like your Kaitel story. There's four guests. This Kaitel story. <laughs> this whole thing about how evil Harvey Kaitel. Harvey Kaitel's from do a goddamn scene in the movie, and some Irish guy standing there staring. I'm going, hey, that's Harvey Kaitel. <laughs> <laughs> that's the <laughs> story. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. When I was doing Roxbury, and it was a scene where I had to present. <laughs> I was Roxbury, angry. That's, that's the in intern for the Night at the Roxbury, the big epic movie he did. I had a couple of big scenes with Catan where I was trying to get serious, and if somebody came by, yeah. and they said, hey, aren't you idiots from SNL? I used it in my scene. That's what Kaitel should do. Maybe, maybe they wouldn't have booted him off Apocalypse Now. You know, it's scary that Hedgehog, that Jimmy the Greek, is going to look like me in about five years. That's the bottom <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. You want to move along? We'll move along. Yeah, come on. Like, Let's to, we're moving along. Like to do. Let's go. Come on. I would this? like his indignance without Greg, Greg Giraldo on the show. He's getting a little bit, uh, you know what I mean? You're right. Greg here to yeah. Leave us alone. Go bully Greg. He's not here today. <laughs> Leave us alone. <laughs> Just because Greg's not here, he's going to yell at us. That's right. It's supposed to be a half hour show. People? We've been here for an hour and a half already. Come Why on. can't you be? <laughs> I got other stuff to do. Come on. Oh, so do I. We got to go do a tough crowd sp uh, comedy special. He's got another bomb to premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the road. Oh, hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Are we ready for something? the road. Is this over? Our national economy depends on you knowing which projects to buy. See, it's over. Happy? Go fulfill your civic duty. We'll be right back. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> as we mentioned earlier, many sports figures have said things they wish they could take back. Uh, Dusty Baker, Jimmy the Greek, for example. Uh, tell us something that you guys, immediately after the words left your mouth, you wish you could have took back. Dennis? Hmm. A movie with a giant f***ing elephant in Ray Liotta? How much money is it? <laughs> All right. Adam. Adam Ferrara. I was late for a show, and I ran on stage, and what I didn't know is the first half of the audience were people in wheelchairs. And without thinking, I said, look, I parked in your spot once. I didn't know you were going to send everybody. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Patrice O'Neill. <clears throat> Thank you. In the seventh grade, uh, I was sitting with all my friends at the lunchroom, and the baddest dude in the school came, sat next to us at the table, and uh, he wasn't no big bully type of dude that you stand up to. He beat people up for real. And uh, me and my friends were gigglers, you know, like, he, he wasn't. <laughs> And so, for, for some reason, our silliness got him to start laughing, and I wanted to keep it going, so that's when I said, oh, <laughs> look at that ugly bitch over there. And uh, my regret came right after I heard, that's his girlfriend, dog, and uh, <laughs> then a quick bright light in my left eye. All right. Uh, let me ask you one thing before we go to Nick. Why do you have to say he wasn't the typical bully, like somehow your bully? Let me finish. Let me finish, stupid. Then let me respond, though. I'll let you respond right afterwards. All right. I noticed you have to say, he was a bully, or else he might not have knocked you out. Take your lumps like you did, stupid. I'm oh, my God, it was just as bad a bully as everybody else. He wasn't the baddest ass in the world. Is he the same guy you had to carry guns for, the whole community? Shut up. <laughs> I'm saying... I'm saying... Why did you just do that? message board people? I'm saying to you... Oh, why? Because they laughed at a brilliant callback? No, because... You, yeah, there must be message boards because they laughed a, at a brilliant callback by me. Son of a bitch. He wasn't... I'm waiting, He wasn't dumb. a bully because he could... He wasn't those dudes that... He's bullying people that's weaker than him. He beat everybody's ass. I understand that, but I'm saying everybody went to school with some badass people and how somehow you had to make your guy be on like this mythical toughness so that you would justify him punching you and laying your lights out. And I'm telling you, he was just a normal school bully. Nick DiPaolo. Well, <laughs> what was the question again? The question, Nick, was what would you take back if you could say, to regret anything? And you've said a lot of things that I'd like to take back. <laughs> but go ahead. Back when I was single, I got this girl back to my apartment and, you know, one thing led to another. 
Anyways, when she took her bra off, one of her nipples was off center by like two inches. That's right, she had a lazy nipple. And uh, <laughs> of course I couldn't just keep my mouth shut and pretend I didn't notice. I had to say something wise. So I said, where'd you get your titties, Marshalls? <laughs> And she, she was like, F you, and put on her shirt and ran out, and I spent the rest of the night the way a good comic should, watching porn in the dark by myself. You know? Wow. Now, I think we've all learned something tonight. Nick used the word F you. That was worth it for me. That big Italian going, F you. But maybe it wasn't worth it for anybody else. Um, well, good night, ladies and gentlemen. See you later. Folks, show. folks, folks, yeah, you can do that one. Yeah. Ah. Hey, the reason everyone's acting like an ass. Hey. It's all hundred show. It's all hundred oh. show. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. He doesn't want to, got me in under here. He doesn't want anyone to see that he, he's the only guy who can bomb with two beautiful girls and a cake. Hold on. <laughs> wow! Oh! Was amazing. He has yes. a good body. He does have a good body. Yeah, that's yeah, a good works. body if you're hanging out with the YMCA on the Upper West Side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that means it's a hundred show. And you know what? You guys have been a bigger part of the show. Is not as big as you think you were, but you were a big part. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's check out this. Let's get right to it. What do you think? Sure. Sure. Yeah, let's get sure. to it because. The few minutes of like happiness I felt, I've already depleted from you bastards. <laughs> Everyone's giving me an evil look, and so let's move along. Could be that jacket. Oh, Jesus. it's awful. <laughs> jacket? What are you doing? What's that, from the Johnny Carson line? <laughs> oh, my God. He's dressed for that special Mayberry episode tonight. <laughs> Two bombs. I didn't hit the jacket right, at all. I'll keep going. You stupid idiots. I would have gone with the strokes. I would have gone with a lot of other things. The strokes went out there. Yep. Check out this photo of President Bush surrounded by a group of gritty white guys while he signs the new partial abortion bill. Democrats are saying this shows Republicans' indifference towards women. Was this a mistake or was it a deliberate way of saying, hey, the white man's still claiming 1600 penny. Ha <laughs> ha! 1600 penny F! Holler back! Judy, what do you think? <laughs> I think everything that he does is deliberate and thought out and planned. Good. I think that this is completely planned. I think these people have no clue. They think that women wake up and go, you know what? I'm going to go to lunch, uh, to the gym, and then I think I'll have an abortion. <laughs> I mean, like it's a... You're right, Judy! <laughs> you can't beat that kind of support. He yeah. one of I wish things. his mother had that schedule. <laughs> 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 You don't even know Jews. Jews. How dare Wait, you? He the, likes Jews. I do too. The Italians and I Jews think, get along. Oh, please. I what? Think. They don't? Listen. We're both cheap misers. Yes. Should should men be making legislation for women's bodies? What yes. do you think? No. Can I say I, why? Can I just say this, no. please? All right, Relax. go ahead. I did like you. Hold on. 
I've been here, you know, they're saying that uh, men shouldn't legislate the women's bodies. I'll agree to that if, if women agree to get off Sports Center. Let's make a deal right here. <laughs> they always say, they always say, you know, you men shouldn't uh, do the abortion thing because uh, you've never carried a baby. You've never carried a football. So get off Sports Center. <laughs> Actually, I have carried a football. <laughs> the one woman I should have. Go ahead, fellas. The thing, the thing that makes right. me mad is the, the, a lot of times is the women's attitudes towards mm -hmm. that. Because oh. they always come across as like, uh, it's my choice. But it's two people involved. So right. I think it should always be two. And if you're going to just have it your choice, then when it comes to paying child support, that should be my choice. Right. Thank and that's you. obviously they it's should, your choice. You're right. They should have it. So, Mr. O'Neill, I just I might have a very serious uh, opinion about abortion. I think that's because wow. you're pregnant. It'll bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> It'll bring it down. <laughs> What could you, and then you well, have Judy, Judy, you have what? the women who lie about being pregnant. That's the worst thing. This one girl told me she was pregnant, she needed money for an abortion. One I'm girl. like, one well, girl. it was about 20 of them. Yeah. But no, this one girl said she needed yeah, money for an abortion. Inches. She said, I'm like, how much is it? She's like, right. well, 1500 I'm like, well, damn, who are you going to get to do this? A doctor or a hitman? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Oh, and I'm sure you're really oh, loving and you went with her. <laughs> And Wait a minute. You know, he said he had a serious point. Can we get to it? Yeah, Look. let's try. While he holds his penis. Look. Yeah, let's do that. Go ahead. <laughs> Why am I the only one who wears Look. the stupid party gifts? Hey, yeah. I'm sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dan. All I'm saying is this. Ah, I don't think women. Uh oh. I don't think women should be. They don't have a choice. It's not. I don't believe after they're pregnant, there's one excuse. Great. Other than that, they don't. It's not their body what about no more. The life Why is no body? It's what? not your body. Yeah, once you're pregnant. Have you ever wait, been pregnant? Wait, no. no. Once it's an apartment. After you're it pregnant, not <laughs> it's not. It doesn't belong to you because God didn't ask you if you if you wanted a choice to be able to make babies, and it didn't. He didn't ask us if if men wanted a choice to be able to have sperm. We just happen to be able to do it. But the the result is not your body. The result. I'm saying the result is the baby's body. The, it's the baby's body. It's not your body after so, you're pregnant. That's what, about, what I'm saying. What about health reasons? I don't care. Yeah, Rape what is about, the only excuse. No, what about the, the health of the mother? The it mother don't matter. Die so she could die? What if the baby could it die? Don't, I, I, it, if the New baby could die. Look. I, look. It's not your body. That's all I think. I don't it's believe it's your body. body. It's now listen. my body. I carry the baby. I have to feed the baby. You I don't do. You don't carry s**t, Judy. First I of all. I carry a lot of s**t. In an attempt to avoid another Biggie Tupac remake, Farrakhan is stepping in to help end the feud between 50 Cent and Ja Rule. Watch this. Don't call for Ja to clap back at 50 and 50 to clap back at Ja when we lose Biggie and Tupac. Terrific. Now, wait a minute. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. Admit this. Whatever else has gone on in the world in history, your people have finally lost it. <laughs> Kids in the street, they're yeah. multi-millionaires. Your people have gone nuts. But you can see the, the, Biggie, Tupac, the voice John, of Re the voice of reason is Farrakhan. Yeah, <laughs> Why Whoa. wouldn't he be? Because he's a moron. Oh. Farrakhan is a moron. He said Muslim. Moron. At what, what point? What part did he understand? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What ignorant, time, racist, anti-Semite? At what point? I have to agree. Why is anti-Semite coming out of your mouth? You know what you did. <laughs> Yeah. You so just yeah. yeah. right away. He starts with the guns. It's right. so difficult. <laughs> All right, look. Folks, watch these commercials. We're going to stay here for our 100th anniversary show. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, just in case. Just in case you ever think we ever get grown up as comedians, what do you think of this? Hey, fella, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Oh. I don't care. Oh. I don't care. Oh. That was like a money shot with Richard Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right to the oldies. <laughs> Critics of the best selling video game, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, claim that the directions to kill all the Haitians is racist and dangerous. <laughs> Take a look. I hate these Haitians! Take my boys over there, and then we'll take these Haitians down! This stinking nest of Haitians, we're gonna kill them all! <laughs> no. Keith, what do you want to do? The thing is, is <laughs> that's 
just funny it's, if it's racist, but it's still funny. Yeah. Kill the Asians, all the Asians, and then they give you the directions. Kill the Asians at the bottom, <laughs> <laughs> just in case you didn't know. For- <laughs> all right, let's talk about the General Motors is taking orders now for bulletproof Cadillac DeVille. I wonder who that's for. That will- <laughs> Same with well, the- obviously, yeah, I don't think they're worried. <laughs> Either way, I don't think they're worried about the NRA deer hunting accidents when they built one of those. <laughs> what do you guys think about this? Same, this- same reason they came up with a club, right, Patrice? <laughs> Oh, All right. Again, listen to the sentence. <laughs> the bottom line is this. They read right through Patrice, you. Patrice, what do you think about this? Coupe de Ville. Would you buy one? You already got that. Yeah. By the way, oh, the best thing of all time. He's awful. He's awful caddy. He's parked outside. Did you give it to the parking lot? Yeah. He parked it in the yellow zone. You're going to get a fat ticket. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Shut uh-huh. your mouth. Because I come in so much, they give me a little special spot so I can just take he off right after the he, show. He You're sleeping with that guy? With 200,000 miles on it. <laughs> What's that? He, had, he brought his Cadillac with 200,000 miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the second worst deal of all time. Let's bring out that is Voss still here? Oh my God, Voss got the nurses' oh, bitch. Come, Come here, boss. Oh, boss, you got that? You son of a bitch. He worked out all week. You know he did for this thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Voss. Deb, Voss, tell us Come about here. your awful Mercedes. What about? It? I got a new Mercedes. Oh, when please, you do please. network, you can get a new Mercedes. Mm. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta hurry up too because I got a bachelor party to get to. <laughs> This is my time of the year. This is money, yeah, baby. You don't want to die in a pair of Daisy Dukes on national TV. I know. I know. Is now, you didn't, how did you say that without racism? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Nothing, boss. You get out of here. Wait, no. You got like a voice. You have to be in the segment. No. What's the Come segment? On, it's visual Come good. On. He's gonna spread Jesus. something. He's not gonna look at him. He's got a six pack. Yeah, he's true. He doesn't have a six pack. Come on. Oh, For a guy who does look, crack. Boys. <laughs> Voss, you're built like an ant. <laughs> you're, talking about, you're talking about somebody who's built. <laughs> I know, there's somebody give me a magnifying glass. I think I'm talking about somebody who's built. First of all, a grown man. Wait, hold on. First of all, first of all. This is, hey, look, this look is look what Voss jumped out of at the yeah. beginning of the show. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> you stupid. This is like a gay auctioneer. This boss is going to be in cabaret. He's <laughs> taking over John Stamos in cabaret. <laughs> <laughs> You're not here with your this, hungry Somalian child. Listen, this buffet molester is giving me hell. That might beat it, stupid. Listen. <laughs> I got nothing now. <laughs> you brought me out no, to boy. attack me. Last Get back listen, in your cake. Listen. We don't want you. <laughs> last sissy <laughs> well, standing. I'm, 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 I'm surprised oh. your hat doesn't say FUBU. <laughs> what? Hunter <laughs> Show! Woo! Hunter Show! Well, we don't have time for this. We we're going to talk about Rosie O'Donnell, but me and Judy oh, know, she's me and Judy terrific, know she's not a bitch. First of all, anybody gives $10 million on the slide to 9-11. She never even talked about it. Oh, That's not bitch. She gives money all the time. I about gave women. money. Shut up. You gave money to what? You chisel up. Yeah, what you do you don't give even money that to? Parking <laughs> that Listen, he gives tell us, but he's got some good theories on women in power. Judy, you're going to like this. He built the yeah. Bring okay, back go good graces. Women in power, right. look, women in show business you, is really easy. To get a woman in show business, because she's everybody. Like I can get Oprah. I know I can oh get Oprah. Oh my! I'm Oprah telling you, would do me before she. No, she will. Oh. Because she's. Let me tell you why. She's used to everybody going. Yes, Oprah. But really, deep down, she's. And what a are woman. you gonna do? And she want, She needs somebody not to care about her millions, and I'm the one. Oh yeah, yeah I can right. tell. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> You know, what kind of music you listen to says everything about who you are. So I'm going to try and guess what people are listening to based on my keen powers of profiling. If you watch the show, you realize I'm really wrong. So let's look at this first one. What am I listening to? Uh, the new band, The Conditioners. <laughs> let's hear his answer. Caius, because they sing good songs about getting stoned. Oh. Oh, who's your dentist? Voice, all right, next clip. What am I listening to? Oh, Noam Chomsky and like East Village Squatters doing a Billy Bragg, Woody Guthrie tribute. Uh, what do you say? The 
Revolution CD, a series of MP3s that could start a revolution under the right circumstances. A peaceful revolution, that is. By the way, his hat is part rainforest, part astroturf at Sun Devil Stadium. All right, next clip. What am I listening to? Uh, let me guess, an Afro-Cuban world house French Ibizan Techno metal uh, band featuring Timbaland and the Wiggles. What's the answer? Electronic music. I feel it in my soul, yeah. Fat. Oh, next clip. <laughs> when am I listening to? Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna guess it's not the seven habits of highly successful people. All right, let's hear his answer. School of Rock. Rock and movie, rock and soundtrack. See? Rock, School of Rock. If you ever find Jack Black cut up in a suitcase in the East Bronx, you'll know who did it. <laughs> Imagine going to see School of Rock. You're a little kid with your friends, and this maniac sitting next to you dropping like heroin bags and like grabbing your, using those long knitting needle fingers to get your popcorn. Hey, kids. All right, who's next? What am I listening to? Oh. Oh. See that? You learn something new every day. You didn't know Munchkin Land had Dominican neighborhood. All right. What is he listening to? I am listening to hip hop because I'm a singer rapper. I will turn with 97.1. I'm my fuck master flex. See? Now, if our show, if we have any brains whatsoever, we boot all these nobodies and bring this guy in as the star of the show. That's it, folks. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Boys! Boys! Come on over for Act 4, boys. Okay, we're going to do Act 4. Many celebrities have had... By the way, this is a 100th show. Isn't this amazing? That's just unbelievable. The only one that's not here is the one guy that got a development deal, Geraldo. All right, guys, good luck. It's 100 shows. You think the public hasn't, think yeah. the industry hasn't seen you? Now look. You gotta tell everybody Boss? how old he is, man. He looks what, good. 59? Yeah, he's almost 46. 60 years old. 46, your waist size. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, you know, many celebrities have had signature cars. Snoop Dogg had the Snoop DeVille, Batman at the Batmobile. Even the little rascals had that 12-wheeler they could punch past the bars with the boxing glove. If you could design a signature car, what would it be? Uh, Keith. Since I'm, a de- uh, since I'm a defensive driver, the first thing <laughs> I would have installed is an anti-Asian bad driver repellent. <laughs> oh, with one squirt, the eyes will automatically open wider. <laughs> Allowing them to see me high beaming them from behind so they can move the hell out of the passing lane. To show I'm not prejudiced towards Asians, I would have an 18-year-old Asian girl installed so after every long, hard, grueling road trip, I can have a happy ending. (laughs) Last but not least, for my safety, I would have my good friend Patrice installed as a driver's side airbag. (laughs) (laughs) Judy, Judy. I don't know how I'm going to follow that, Keith. That's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. Since I'm not a special needs criminal slash drug dealer slash pimp, <laughs> I really don't think I would have the use for an arrogant, entitled, self-important, grandiose vehicle. Of course, I wouldn't mind a little extra leg and headroom, a driver's seat with a massage feature, a self-cleaning function, and probably a horn that says, you're a big, fat, ass, stupid piece of <laughs> anti-Semite. All things considered. <laughs> If I had that kind of money, I'd save it just in case I choose to have an abortion. You know, just for fun. Uh, all right, Patrice. I'm, uh, well, my auto would be able to hold boring conversations with bad dates. Uh, it has a special Are You a Virgin lie detector with an ejection seat in it. Uh, <laughs> a license plate a license plate that gets really blurry when cops are following me. Uh, a blow-up white woman doll that flirts with the policeman. And... Uh, <laughs> It also has a special feature that maces and duct tapes meet a maze when they write your tickets. And, and, and it also has anti-like brakes. <laughs> All right, Nick. Mine would be called the Ford Areola. <laughs> it would be a cross between a Humvee and a mammography mobile. It would have the off, off-road capabilities of an all-terrain vehicle combined with the high-tech equipment necessary to do breast exams. I'd crisscross the country from Louisville to Las Vegas and like a four-star chef tasting gravy, I too would be looking for lumps. Oh, 
lumps that lumps that could not only ruin a man's dining experience, but but could kill women as well. Of course, it would have to be bulletproof because once they found out I wasn't a real doctor, you know. <laughs> 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 well, Mark, that's a Damn, really good that's one. That's all the way cross country from Louisville to <laughs> Vegas. So <laughs> 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 I criticize oh, the gay shorts. See, the, the, the prison. Hump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let the prison bitch speak. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, boy. I can't believe what you let you Baby New Year get you like that. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta turn this off before it becomes a male rape. That's our show. <laughs> See? Finally, we got the Middle East back on the show. Sitting next to his lifelong mortal enemy. The Jew. The Jew. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> not that Judy's not Jewish, but Natterman is. Judy doesn't represent incarnate. Jew. She doesn't, she's, he's the Jewish representative. He too. really is. What do you mean I don't represent Jew? Well, Jill? look well, at Adam, he's the epitome. Well, that face is Jew face. Well, that doesn't, really the, doesn't lesbianism take, you know, supersede Judaism? No. Oh, uh, not on this not show, really. but you're right, in society. In the Bible it does. In the Bible it does. It does not. I don't know, I just made that up. All right. <laughs> They're already scared of us, Patrice. How great is that? Well, who wouldn't be scared with you two? I'm All just right. watching them. <laughs> So what about the Supreme Court thing with Guantanamo Bay? You guys think this is good or bad? Horrendous. The prisoners can sue. You think it's horrendous? Horrendous. Why, you feel like it's white people not to care of their business again? <laughs> look, I'm not, I don't, you know, this whole, I'm, I'm in the, I'm using, look, duality. What? <laughs> <laughs> duality, it's duality. I, I, look, I'm, I, I saw this Michael Moore film. How's that sentence class coming along? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that Michael Moore film is like made me kind of have a small bit of sympathy for this, the Arab situation or the Iraqi situation. But at the same time, look, you cannot do this war and have rules. Either we got to stop and just let them fend for themselves. Don't even help them with their goofy government. Let, it, let them just do what they're going to do and get out of there. Or we got to start doing Here's the problem. horrible stuff. And I will try to speak in complete sentences. Here's the thing. The thing is, we have this Abu Ghraib thing going on. We Abu have, Ghraib, asshole, if you want to be all petty, you <laughs> He's right, She's but being, go ahead. Yeah, right? being, yeah, 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 exactly. Being petty with our sentences. Now, keep going. Yeah. He's right. It's not Abu Garib. Abu Garib, you. Abu Garib. Shut up, Patrice. Anyway, <laughs> it's not a great comeback line. I wrote it. Anyway, no. Here's the thing about it. You know, because of all the crap and the lying, we don't really. We've got to now kiss people's asses a little bit and let them have some rights. What, because... What's he saying going on trial? Is he, is he out on parole or something? What's that? What's he saying? Hello, he's newspaper. Saying, newspaper. Thinking... newspaper. They're gonna turn. They're gonna turn him over to the Iraqis tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. What's he been doing? All this? <laughs> what's, that, what's he been doing all this time? He's, He's been, been sitting in jail, not giving uh, us any info. I guess. He's gonna give up something. See, uh, these, Hood, that's as an our resident, question, Dan. Can I please that's... talk to somebody from our next attack, Iran? Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is that, what, it, amongst is that what the pipeline is going through? Oh, right baby, oh. That's right. Oh, 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 yeah. Now, Hood, you're a man who knows all sides of this issue, from the Islamic to the Baha'i. He's not, he's, he's, not, he's not Muslim or Arab. And he's not, he's not shut Islamic, your mouth. Islamic. He's not that Islamic. Everybody what shut up. I? I? I was clarifying my... He's slightly Muslimly. He's no. <laughs> he's married... He's in. I didn't want. I wanted to be delicate. He had premarital he's, sex, though. I'm gonna He's call him married out. to a Muslim. I'm calling this Muslim out. Let the guy talk. I'm let, not gonna let no goddamn terrorist speak anytime they want. This is our problem. We giving him rights. He has no rights here. Shh. Well, let me finish. I had it perfectly laid out, and everybody jumped in like they knew what that was going on. Oh, I was going to say he's married to a Muslim, yet he's from a religion that he knows the Islamics come and try to cut the heads off what, his people. What's your religion? I'm a Baha'i. Let me get to the finish. So Hood can speak from all sides of this issue. Hood, what do you think ultimately? Which is Wait, the lesser? Well, with, the, with the Guantanamo Bay, uh, Bay detainees, I, I, I personally am, would rather that they just let them all go. If, yeah, I know that sounds a little See radical. what happens you when you give them a chance. Black man, here's why. Because I personally, and this is a personal thing, have a lot of unused friends and family minutes. And, um, <laughs> and they don't roll over. <laughs> All right, now listen, Hood. Good. Tell Thank me something. You, Thank, Hood. You. Thank you, Hood. Thank you. Thank you. Hood, wait. Damn it. Damn it. Wait, I think... He started applause. No, but I think that... 20 Hood... hours, folks. <laughs> for starting applause when I'm trying to do a show. No, 20... here's Wouldn't the that... thing, Colin. Sure, let me finish. Hood wins a prize 
for being the first person to get a joke out when Patrice is on the show. Oh, don't <laughs> applaud that either. I don't have time for applause okay. with comedians, laughs or silence. I'm sorry. Hood, let me ask you this. And this is a tough question, but I want you to answer me honestly right now. When it comes down to it, somebody's going to have to take the weight on the world situation right now. If you had to make the decision, and you know it's going to be somebody, will it be the West, the Middle East, or the Jews? Say your answer. The Jews, we're gonna, they're going to end up falling because when we start to try to weasel out of this, we're gonna have to give them a sacrificial lamb, and we're gonna t we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave. We're gonna leave Israel to fend for themselves. They've and been fending for themselves. Shut up! No, they haven't. Yes, they Judy, have. Judy. Judy. Yes. We agree with part of it, but we do give them all billions of dollars in weapons yeah, every year. Don't pretend it's they've fended by themselves completely. They've done a great job. I love the Jews, but let's be honest. Okay. Let, they've let's had American talk about backers. the Jews. Exactly. Hold okay. on for a second. You pushy Jew. Go ahead. What were you saying? No. <laughs> Madam, what do you think? <laughs> Are we going to give them... Well, that's all they want from us. The Jews. Mm -hmm. Are we going to give them up or not? No, we're not going to give them up. Why? Because you got too many people lobbying? <laughs> well, it's not, it's, all uh, these Hollywood lefty Jews have turned on No, it's on more you. the evangelical Christians as much as anybody else. Hold on. I don't even think that the, the Arabs and want the Jews. What they, they want, want them dead! What they want is justice in their land. That's what <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know right, what that means. <laughs> in the ocean. They have been offered 99% of what they've... <laughs> Go ahead. No. Um... You Arab fight. You Arab fight. <laughs> no, no, no. Israel has really tried to negotiate. They have offered them everything that they have wanted, and they still say no. If there were no Jews there, the Arabs would kill each other. So that's just oh, not true. Oh. The Arabs hate the Jews. They do. They hate us oh, over this there. Isn't, this isn't a Jew-Arab thing about killing each other, because there aren't Jews or Arabs here in the States, and we kill each other. Um, <laughs> Why are you this allowing is, us? Why the hell know. are you allowing this goddamn... Allowing what? This, what do you want to talk about? This peace fest. The, is this, that a peace fest? <laughs> This is, this, these, we, it's not a peace it is, are you going to tell me? Why didn't you pay a 20? Because you're Jewish. I told you to put 20. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. I, I don't, I, Look, I didn't even like, know I was supposed to put 20 in there. The brothers like nothing better than inter-white fighting. Right. <laughs> and chicken. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be right back. Mike Tyson hopes to resurrect his career with his, when he fights next month in Kentucky. Tyson says for the past few years he's been living like a bum, spending nights in homeless shelters. He said, I'm not the same person I was when I bit that guy's ear off. I lost all my pride and dignity. Uh, that's what life's about, forgiveness. When I had money, I was an animal. I was belligerent. I was cantankerous. So persistently disregardless. Now, what do you guys think? Well, first of all, what is it with the brothers that can't hold on to their money? And I see Patrice going down the same road. I see that big... Oh. He does have a lot of bling I bling. See, so I see the watch. I mean, I don't know what his apartment is like, but I think he spends all his money on the Yeah, he lives in Haitian Mill. <laughs> 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 why, why is there no pressure for white people to ever look good? That, that, that's what really bugs me. <laughs> Buy something that says, hey, you're a success in some kind of way. So I got a diamond watch. No, baby. we don't hey. need to we, prove Stop trying to be a landlord. Like, look, no. the, the, the sign of success that what? they have is that they're white. What did nah. you just say? Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Repeat what he just said. I, I and repeat forget. it with confidence, I asshole. Forget. Exactly. Is that a sign? <laughs> well, the bottom line By is... By the way, Hood, just at the break, admitted that he agreed with me about the whole Israel thing. Go no, ahead. he didn't. Yes, he did. Oh, thanks. He just doomed me to death by my fellow country. Right. Look at the pressure. Here's what, here's what... I don't know. Look, here's what people don't understand what the kind of pressure it is to be black and dress. I had to... Look, I had to get a hat that had a red thing here. <laughs> Right. So that it matches because I had a red thing here. It's because and I had red stripes here, those but are then deep I had thoughts. black things here. Yeah. It's no pressure. He's what? wearing dress socks and suede sneaker shoes, and, and he thinks he's looking nice, and he just looks like he's. Uh, look at him. What's it say? It's just Judy's reason. in her, you know, traditional lesbian. Uh, <laughs>
Uniform. It's her, her burka for Dyke. My dykes. uniform. Dyke <laughs> burka. You know, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Tyson's <laughs> broke because it's the same, same depression. Yeah, if you're black no, but and you make money, you got to spend Tyson's it. Tyson's broke and Don King stole from him. Look. And secondly, Tyson's uh, bling bling now, is 50 houses and he got a I lot of people now, around Tyson him. That's what it is. Money. Just like MC Hammer. All these people. You have yeah, people. Right. Okay. Money. Well, got well, white people got payroll too, but you know, that money lasts for 10 generations. Steinfeld's great, great grandchildren will not have to work. And that's what the difference is where I do give white people credit they do think about the, the future when they're dead the future my kids are gonna be starving when i'm dead i can give yeah. a, i can care less about my kids when i'm dead be honest. that's what white people they're starving right now, now be honest how many of your kids are starving now how many of your kids are half white food. Ah. i don't have any Judy. <laughs> i don't have a rule when it comes to i didn't say like rape that girl i don't I never feel sorry for anyone who's lost four hundred million dollars. Yeah. You just don't feel sorry for them. I agree. Unless, unless they used it or lost it training rebels in Afghanistan. Why did I know he was going to say that? Unless I they... can't believe Hood said Why that. Why do you keep allowing him to sneak his jokes in behind this this cloud of of calmness? I'm gonna smash him upside his dumb head. Make him, give, make him give him some money, Carl. Can I please get a point in on this Go one? Go ahead, Hood. You said that. Try to act like it was a joke, but secretly you were sending a secret message out to all your compadres. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Boing. All right, let's move on. Barbara Streisand hosted an event that raised over $5 million for John Kerry. At the concert, she sang a new version of a song, People, which was like this corny people who believe GOP people, Bush sees a lot of Condoleezza, <clears throat> some nonsense. And you can just see all these Hollywood people lining up dumb, and they're giving all their opinions. I saw stupid Michael Moore on TV today, and he's going, we should never go to war unless the last possible minute. You're not in the army, stupid. You don't know when we should go to war, when we shouldn't, too. Okay, why is it okay? It's okay for, for George Bush at the press. Remember that big press dinner he had? It's okay for him to make fun. Like, oh, I can't find the weapons. Oh, well, they're not here. Where's the weapons of mass destruction? That's okay. He can make jokes. They can make nasty comments. They can go. Nasty they comments? Can... What nasty comments besides that one example? Oh, uh, that people are oh, dying. Oh, oh, and oh, he's oh, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no. How about people that? are dying over this lie that he told, and he's making a joke about people the People are lie. dying because, no, no. People are <laughs> dying. People are dying because this country puts one foot in instead of in the balls to go in and wipe out anybody that even looks at his cross eyed, and then there'll be no soldiers dying whoa, whoa. on our side. Ugh. Let him clap. That's over Let him clap. But that's yeah. not the point. Shut up, stupid. It's not you saw that. So hold on, hold on. I was going to make a good it's it's all our, it's all all oil. Now. I thought it was a Jew. The deployments right now is one oh, foot in. Is that what that is? Yeah, because we so, go in with surgical strikes. So you can only kill one person one. and leave eight buildings and 11 people standing. And we're like, wait a minute, let's not get these looters. If we had so shot all those looters like we should have done when we first got in there, the people of Iraq would love us, but all the okay, people back here would have been like, oh, they're murdering the Nazis. Question. I have one question. Where we're the making hell? guys fight with one hand behind it. Where's back? Osama bin Laden? He's the one that made the attack oh, on right. no the Where the hell is he? We go, Ask him. Instead, we go over there. Yeah. Where yes. is he? Just give us the longitude, latitude, and longitude. We'll figure out the rest. I cur Queens. 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 Oh. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. I heard hide in plain sight. Oh, man. Oh, you gotta stop hiding. You gotta stop hiding from this Michael Moore movie, man. Who's you hiding from him so from Michael Moore? I asked him to send me a copy. I saw it hey. six times, more six lies. different days. More lies. <laughs> the real truth on Michael Moore. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. We'll be right back. Oh my God. Smoking among high school students has declined 40% since 1997. So let's say you're a tobacco advertising executive. Come up with a campaign to get high school students smoking again. Patrice. That's easy. Uh, my campaign is called The Whole Truth, a series of facts that will uncover the lies of these dirty anti-smoking <laughs> activists. Uh, one, gays don't smoke. You want to be gay? <laughs> <laughs> The phrase, the phrase hazardous to your health. What, what part of your health is it hazardous to? Huh? <laughs> More vague propaganda. Uh, right. Osama bin Laden doesn't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> What's that make you, huh? A terrorist? And look, number four, uh, you can look your sexy best at chemotherapy because cigarettes only have three grams of carbs. All right. <laughs> All right. 
Hood! Hood! Kids are smart, so I just try to be honest. Hi, kids. No adult anywhere ever smokes because it's cool. They smoke because it feels and tastes really, really good. <laughs> are cigarettes addictive? Of course, but did you ever hear of anyone getting addicted to something that they didn't really enjoy? <laughs> S smoking. It's not like it's heroin. All right, <laughs> Judy! Now, my ad, you know, you need to kind of envision in your head. It would have some music in the background, and it would show the images of Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, Timothy McVeigh, the ozone layer, O.J. Simpson, and George Bush. Then, the voiceover. Like you're gonna live long enough to die of cancer. <laughs> Okay, Dan Natterman. Okay, this is a print ad, and I'd show pictures of good-looking celebrities from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s smoking, then a big picture of some current celebrity smoking. The caption, very simply, still cool. That's the show, everybody. <laughs> good night. <laughs>they didn't say that they implied it god damn <laughs> now terror threat levels were raised sunday when tom ridge announced al-qaeda's plan to attack the financial institutions in new york new jersey and dc what do you think i think they're gaslighting us I what do you mean you belong. think it's all fake yes i think it's right before the republican convention i think they're trying to scare us so that bush can look good thank you very much <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? They keep, telling us, they, keep, they keep telling us two different things. They're telling us, you know, don't discriminate against Arabs, but make sure you keep your eye on those dirty bastards. You know what I mean? It's true. It's like, you know, they, they give us this high alert, and it's like, the last one, forget that one. That wasn't that high. Right. This one was serious. It's like, but, yeah. what the hell are they is, talking about? The thing about it, okay, like, okay, black folks, we've been on high alert forever. We've always been on high alert. That's the first thing. And so it's like, this is not even for us. We know what to do. We've always watched people. We watch any damn body. That's our thing. High alert. God, can you absorb what he's saying instead of with that stupid look like you're getting ready to expose? It just, it's really what he's saying. Talk is to that, him, brother. Talk to is him. Is that we have a street wisdom that we can see things coming that white people don't have. I especially, understand. Especially white women and their husbands. Uh, he went, you they're know dying he's to bring up that stupid case. Here's what you do, the Lori um, hacking. Another uh, white man killing our exactly. husband. That's not hacking. What Tell is me. wrong with y'all? But you're dying, oh, wait, God. you're dying to bring it up because you can show the two white crimes of the past year. I go, like, why did you do a crime too? Shut really? your mouth, you criminal bastards. Then <laughs> 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 Watch Yo, your criminal mind. Put white alert. <laughs> put white women. <laughs> we are on high alert. On orange alert. We've been on orange alert since 1965. <laughs> damn it. That's <laughs> your cut. So, and another thing. You ooh. invented the club, car alarms, everything. I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> Something's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. But you know what? There's nothing any of us are going to be able to do about it. And like, I'm not Steven Seagal. I don't know kung fu and how to, you know, undetonate a bomb on the subway. Right. I mean, I, if something happens, I'm going to scream like a bitch with blood on my face, run out of the subway, and that's going to so be what I'm going to do. Why, I agree with you. Why don't we stay on high alert? Why is it this back and forth stuff? Because they're trying to scare us. That's all they're trying to weaken us so that they can control who's us. Who's like so, who's, who's everybody? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. My, my spider sense scared. has never I failed. Do, I'm not scared. Spice you ever get that yeah, feeling? Always. Here's the feeling, here's the feeling white people scared. never get. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't go over there. Black people get that feeling and we act on it. We're not going to, if we, look at, we didn't even have to know about Newark. We're going to go, wait a minute, this don't fit. Newark don't feel right today. I'm going back home, which is what white people don't do. It's true. You guys are well known for having to be ca very careful because of the danger committed against you by whites as opposed to the other way around. Uh, yes! Uh, of course we do! It's not 1955! <laughs> I'm scared. I can't take them wide at this country. Like. Listen, uh, listen, I'm, I'm scared to marry a white man because... <laughs> oh, my. Exactly. That's all you got, silly. That's Why can't you admit that? Your people have been on a semi-rampage for 35 years. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. No, no. no. Why? He stopped. No. How do we go from Arabs to black right. guys? That's not, <laughs> let me tell you why. Let me Listen, tell you why. Because they're so black. No, no, no. no, 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 no that's no, just, you that's Mr. I wrote a bunch of Arab jokes and he wants to get them out. Shut <laughs> up. <I'm laughs> stupid. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I got nothing. All I'm saying is, is that.
Yeah, you guys are gonna turn. The, if it was a, let uh, me uh, watch this. You answer the question. Let me answer it for you, stupid. Go ahead, stupid. No, because we know eventually it's gonna Stop come around to black, black folks. Did I say it? It's gonna come around to black folks eventually, either way. It's true, true, you guys. It have, starts out with Arabs and it ends on black people. It's true, you guys. Are, it's true, you guys. Are always it. victimized. It's yes. amazing. Yes. 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 yes, we want white people to be scared of 9 You guys are always victimized. We want y'all to be nervous. Stop acting like it's 1950. We want y'all to have. Wow. You know, we want, we want y'all to have blood pressure problems like us. That's, That's what we right. want. Stop drinking grape juice. Exactly. We should admit that. You won't be satisfied until white people hate themselves as much as you hate yourself, thanks to us. Yes, thank you. He's trying to blame us. That's all I want to say. blood pressure on us. No, Shut no, up, I said something no, profound. Drinks, grapes, so what was your time. profound statement? I'm not going to say it again. It's not going to be profound. <laughs> I, I didn't even get that. Whatever the yeah, hell he said. It was a good one. He got it. Sure. Sure. Doesn't even know so what? what, what? <laughs> say something. I was saying, he's, he's saying that we, it's our fault that they have high blood pressure. <laughs> I didn't say he's that. He's the stupid. one that drinks grape juice and Fritos and everything all the time. I never heard grape soda the first time, stupid. Grape soda was funny the first time. Tell him what happened. The black guy's side now. Forget it. <laughs> Sue, tell him what would happen if he crossed Dorchester Avenue. In fact, you tell him he what would happen. He would get his ass kicked. I don't want to say <laughs> his black would. people aren't as nervous as y'all. Stop yeah. trying to. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not nervous. You shouldn't Patrice, be nervous. There's nothing off, you can do. I can care less. If a bomb went off, Patrice could just climb up a building, so he doesn't have to worry. He could protect himself. Oh. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah, not like being a tough guy with my nice beer. <laughs> the Vatican on Sunday, Saturday denounced feminism for trying to blur the difference between <laughs> men and women and threatening the institution of the family. They never stop. The what? Pope has a point. These bitches are getting out of hand. I'm telling you. He has one line. That's all he says all the time. We're not I getting out of hand. The Pope saying this. I mean. You know, someone no, walk up to him and go, hey, we want to put the broads back in the kitchen. Is that okay? Okay. It was the yeah. Pope's yeah. friend. Yeah. He it was the like, Pope's friend. He looks like crap. The Pope, no, it's all related to the church. He knows that the family is going bad. That's what he's thinking about, the family. That's right. And, of course, women have decided to go on their own and do stuff on their own and forget all about the man. So the Pope is putting them in their place. Well, That's right. We, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I yeah. hear one yeah. male yeah. boo out of our men, you pussies, this is First of all, he forgot, funda the, they left out the one thing, fundamentally, <laughs> men well, don't mean, like women. Mean. We want them to shut up, we want to go to Brazil, we want to have fun, <laughs> and this pussy crowd, every time I hear the crowd go, oh. if I hear a man's yeah. voice go, Maloney. 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 Yeah. Yeah. shut up. Women step out Wait, listen, to, listen to this, listen right. to women, just listen Before, to them. No, all right, first of all, it's not just that the women are becoming men. Men are becoming women, too. Patrice could get mistaken for Aretha Franklin any day nowadays, all right? All right? Get on the other side. That's all, that's really, <laughs> that's you see what I'm saying? That's all she really wanted to do. Yeah, now, now it's over. All right, shut up. So in your voice, you could be mistaken for Colin any day, too. <laughs> Nothing you Why suck. did you do that? You just, you just, you just <laughs> went hold up for that yeah. and just hold all the Pope is saying is that men went through the struggle of making the, uh, creating the oven, the <laughs> forks, <laughs> the knives, the <laughs> plates, and you bitches don't cook no more. That's what he's saying. <laughs> it's really... Yeah, is that women get to women no. get to go out and try to get a career, try to be all independent, and and then if it doesn't work out, they can always marry an old rich white guy and be you know the the house. No. No, I can't do that. At yes, 45, I'm oh, not no. going to marry you some rich lady. I'm going to be in my mother's basement living off her. <laughs> no, and what I happens blame. is when Let the woman says, one yes, uh, when the woman steps outside all of a sudden and doesn't hey. boost the guy's ego up like every up, single woman. day. Then they get needy and insecure. It's a reflection no. of your insecurity. All we're trying to say, and, and all the Pope is trying to us. say is, I blame feminists. I blame feminists for every damn thing. From the breakup to, of the Beatles to Ricky Williams retiring, it's all their fault. Now, look, all right, look, this is our, we should have a whole series of shows on this issue. Yeah. It's like, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. Well, you don't. Asking Come on. Bob. Right. <laughs> I think that, I think that Beanie Man, a Jamaican uh, reggae song who sings about killing queers in his lyrics is currently on a concert tour in the U.S. He's already had to cancel a concert in London because of protests. That's Irish accent. What? What? Think about your dialogue. What? He shouldn't have. You know what it is, Colin? What? He shouldn't have outright. He shouldn't have came outright and said we should kill all gays. He should have said we should kill <laughs> employees. That way he could have hit it. <laughs> Sweater yeah, yeah, but you know what? It's reggae music. How the? 
it's reggae music. How the hell do you know what the hell he's saying anyway? That's what I'm saying. No, it's kind I mean, of he might, a, that he might not even be it. saying that. It's a it's a bonics man. A reggae. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's right more. But I'm saying it, it. That's what I'm saying. You got to when white people are trying to interpret uh, uh, reggae music. That's what's going on. Some goofy English people trying to. Uh, some goofy. First of all, some goofy English gay people are trying to say what Beanie Man is. First of all, queer means um, beef patty. Uh, <laughs> uh, f it means uh, mango. It's all it's it's mango. all different kind of oh, shit going really? on with what he's saying, and really? you can't. I'm telling you, and and front you hear Chi Chi. I don't know what Chi Chi means. That's what he said. Chi Chi is gay, and I'm supposed to listen to whatever. He says that you should chase gay DJs out of their butt. Well, true. you should. You should. Why, why you should. shouldn't you chase you should. gay you should. DJs? <laughs> he said kill gay DJs. He didn't say kill uh, the the guys from uh, Queer as Folk. Or he said gay DJs. But why? Why does he want to kill gay DJs? Oh, who knows? Why don't they? Hey, why don't the they just thing? say kill Whitey and everybody will be happy? Right, you guys would be happy. Yeah. You would be kill happy. Whitey's fine. Right. You guys are yeah, just say kill Whitey. I don't like the That's fine. I don't like kill it. That's a good point. Nice. Listen, just I don't like the fact that Patrice says, Ooh. Patrice says I don't listen to this kind of music when he listens to the Haitian will. He listens to it all day long and probably dances along to beat is Haitian, but that, look. <laughs> look, roommate's a Haitian. Look, man. Hey. <laughs> your roommate's a damn Haitian. What I'm saying is, mind your goddamn business, Wait, white people. That's the way I'm saying. What? Mind your, so you mind your gay you white business, and yeah. let him, let him attack gay DJ. What? We'll be right back. Shut up. Well, again, we're gonna look at some stereotypes that have existed and discuss why they exist. The first one we're gonna talk about is all men cheat. That's a stereotype, Sue. Do you believe that's true? Yes, I do. I hey. think all men cheat. I really? Think they all lie, and I think they cheat. It depends, it depends on what you think cheating is, though. I mean, if you... <laughs> cheating, cheating to you and cheating to us is different. Well, if, I get a, if I get a job in a closet, that's not cheating. If I get a job and then hold her hand on the way out of the closet, that's cheating. But why in the closet? Why is that not cheating? Because that's where you get it in a comedy club. Because he's a man and he's gay, that's he, why. Yeah, what is that? I mean, that's <laughs> kind of weird. That's a a a different There's emotional and cheating and physical cheating. Well, well, if I emotionally cheat closet. on you, that's cheating if you're my girlfriend. But if I just physically get a hand job somewhere, that's not cheating. Do you even know that's what like emotionally, me myself. emotionally cheating means? But we're, not as, uh, we're not as attached emotionally. That's yeah. why we cheat. Yeah, we are out there cheating. on the outside of your body. Exactly. Shut up. Why don't you stop being so selfish? Just let us sleep around a little bit. So, who cares? All I said is yes, guys. Lie and they cheat. Yes, yes we do. So do. what's your point? I didn't but say do you think it's bad or do you think it's just genetic? I don't think people should be together for their whole life. Is it like genetic? That. I don't think. Genetic? That we cheat? No, I think if a guy has a feeling he wants to f someone, that's what no, I no. think. No, no. But don't you feel there's a certain amount of genetic predisposition? Yeah. <laughs> yes. The guys always pull around because we, we do no, it. No, socialized. We do not it at genetic. our own. I think it's, it's not socialized. socialized. Come on. We do it at our own, even with our own damage. We do it. We'll still yeah. do it. Yeah. Even yeah, if it destroys self things that's that not self-loathing. That's not self-loathing. It's not yes, self-loathing. Ah, see, that's that vaginal. You're insane. Oh. Just take it. Nobody. That's that. That's the vagina. That's the vagina driving you insane. Listen. One day you'll learn how to not be take your vagina put it over here and take your take who you are that and put it over there okay, instead of wait instead of forcing okay. us to like all of you when you okay. could be a loser and okay. i just want to sleep with you but i don't okay. want the other part that don't make no sense all right i'm sorry patrice yeah, you're brother. right your brother's know. speaking shut your tongue look at me talking about me and you see her face like bah, bah, bah. but joking. she knows it's true well, it could, no but so you need to know, I thought I didn't, he could be the next Dr. Phil with that kind of compassion. Yeah, that <laughs> but here's the point. We were upstairs just now with Liz and Amanda and Beth, the, you know, producers, women. So I'm up there, and we're about to bust Beth's balls on something good. We got her on something good. I'm, I start to slam. Liz and Amanda were there for the beginning of the slam. I lose them because they're looking at a shoe and talking about the shoe. <laughs> now, ladies, that's not fun to that's us. That's how we you like guys to get to cheat balls. on us. We're too busy looking at our shoes. That's what happens. What we're just trying to say... <laughs> Is it really? Do you have to take it so personally? Yeah. I cheating. Didn't say that I Why are you cheating? I'm not cheating on you because I don't love you, Sue. I'm cheating on you because she has I bigger like boobs. I like sex with men, and I don't mind. And I, I like you. I want to go with bigger, bigger boobs. Why don't y'all stop forcing us to like you? Who's forcing you to like you me? I have done nothing you on the show to force you like me. And you make us like you, or you're gonna, you're gonna. Threaten to take it away. You have, that, we're so terrorizing you, you with our vaginas. So you make us listen to you. <laughs> you're in name number 
That's the end of golf. That's what I'm talking about. Huh? Keep Why doing that. Every... high alert. No. You got to ignore that. That is the whitest. Once you learn to ignore that, you'll be on your way to freedom. Are you letting him say that? That's the whitest it's couple I've ever seen in my life. The whitest couple, and you say it like it's a criticism. We were proud to be white. That's right. If, if, what are I'm you white, too. Shut if up, you're not white, you're Mexican. If you're like everything. Bit. If Go me ahead. and Colin had a baby, Shoot. it would explode from the light in the And in that's room, good, right? right? Shoot, don't, don't say the N-word. Come on. They're Fine. still friends. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Get to that. Listen, you Chechen see, idiot. Men, <laughs> shut up. Men, shut up, see, you. women don't give us sex to prove that we like you. The longer we wait, that means, oh, he really likes me. Men, you, we want sex from you because that proves to us that you like us. So if you... If you me in the first date, I'm not going to think you a whore, a whore. I'm going to love you. I'm going to take it's you out. I'm going to treat you better than you ever wanted. But if you make me wait, the more you frustrate me. Yes. And then you kill me. Good. Wait, the bottom line is this. What happened was the sexual revolution blew it for women. Before that, have sex, you'd have to get married. Right. And what happened was somehow somebody got them to think, oh, have sex. Who got that thing? Feminist. Go right hey. back to that. That's what it is. The black people. The black people. Right the they took it out. That's what you were Okay. <laughs> Folks, Kirstie Alley not only accepts her weight, she hopes to parlay it into big ratings with a new show called Fat Actress. Pitch. No, really, that's what it's called. Pitch a show that focuses on a bad trait of yourself and tell us what it would be called. Keith Robinson. Well, I will pitch two shows. The first will be called Little Bitty Man Titties. <laughs> Boy, I should stop right there. <laughs> the second would be my big, fat, black, obnoxious nose. I should have stopped right there. God damn it. The show will be about my struggle to raise enough money to get my nose like Michael Jackson. Uh, oh, you really? That, was, that just showed exactly what. You want to be white like Michael. And me. You know? Bobby Kelly. One of my awful traits is that I watch these crappy reality shows and I hate myself for it. My show's called Death of Reality Shows. This, Please this, don't applaud or I'm gonna make him pay 20. <laughs> this is a show where we hire eight Navy SEALs are hired, all right? And these guys are hired to kill anybody involved on a reality show. The first, the first episode, don't applaud, I don't get 20 bucks on me. The first show takes place in the set of the fat actress. The Navy SEALs break into the kitchen where all these depressed, fat, failed actresses are crying over a bowl of baked ziti. The SEAL team force feeds them cookie dough ice cream anally. The camera, the camera zooms in and out on their stretch marks and their double chins. The whole time they're humming the theme song to Cheers. <laughs> okay, next, Sue Costello. My show will be called The Gullible Slut. Twenty guys and I would live in a house together. The guys who have to think of the best lies to get me into bed. Then the one who gets me the most wins a lifetime pass. To cheat on me whenever he wants, will I clean the house, remain supportive, and keep my mouth shut? All right. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Patrice O'Neal. Oh, boy. My show is going to focus on the day-to-day -day struggles of a black man living in America who has a flat ass and, and can't freestyle rap. <laughs> I got a flat ass. Uh, it, 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 it will start at the lowest flat butt point of my life when a white guy, Nick DePaulo, said I had the ass of a woman cop. <laughs> and it also follows the difficulty of wearing like saggy hip hop everything by mistake. I don't even suits. I don't want everything to hang off my ass, but sometimes I have no choice. And the fact that I can't get a discount at these stores by pretending to be a rapper because I can't rap. The show is called, you know, Thanks, Ma. Oh. And <laughs> the season finale has me ask Sue Costello where she's going to have her flat ass surgery. <laughs> Sue has a lovely Irish round ass. We'll be right back. That's the, the end of the show. <laughs> Did you like my characterizations? <laughs> the Red Cross delivered Saddam Hussein's prison letters to his family. In it, he says his spirits and morale are high. He ends by saying, say hello to everyone. Everyone that haven't <laughs> chopped off their heads, probably, but... <laughs> what do you guys think about that? And the Red Cross, of course, now they're saying human rights is violated. No, but you know, in the, in the letter, he thanks his God a lot. Ah, ah the merciful God. <laughs> yeah. The beneficent. Yeah, he needs another God. 
Yeah, you know what I mean? If that's the best he can come up with for him, he's got to fight a whole nother god. Is that the same god that Bush was praying to when he was looking for Saddam? <laughs> I think they share a cubicle. <laughs> they actually left out lines in the in the letter, right? They yeah. crossed them up. Oh, yeah, they crossed yeah. them up. I think one of them when he was actually shameful because when he was caught in the hole, he looked like Nick Nolte. And so he was really pissed <laughs> off about that. Why are we not say something? Dumb? Well, say something. I'm just listening to all of this. Oh, we bore come... you, Mr. Black Man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, even like right wingers, I'm on. I'm on with a couple of real hardcore races, and a, this whole show is white guys from Boston, and you're talking about. <laughs> And this was saying you're talking about like uh, it's being treated unfairly. And it, the, why are we not kill him? Yes, we'll get, we, I agree. We're gonna why get are that. we not doing foul? Why are we not well, doing because do you think that like we cut it the head yeah. of his letter off? We should have cut. He's dead. Yeah, the head of his. He's Wait right. A minute. Yeah, he's right. right. <laughs> if we're gonna if we're gonna be the standard that other people are judged, you have to take we're the not high the road. Standard. We we're kill not people. The, we kill people. That, we pro, we're professional murderers, and we we what do you are, mean? We, we you talking about America? You talking about America? America no. Well, I'm here. I'm not no. going back to Africa, so I'm I'm here. <laughs> we, oh, thank you very much. Brilliant. Wait a second. All I'm audience. saying is we're professionals at killing a lot of people at once. We're uh, not good at <laughs> like taking making statements, but we are good at creating stuff that kills a lot of people, and we're not doing that right now. Right. We're not. We're being nice. Wait, sort wait, of right right when was the last time <clears throat> someone in your family was in Africa? Never. <laughs> so we're not African. You're American, just like us. You're That's, what That's what I said. That's what I said. That's what I said. I'm not going anywhere, but I'm saying, as a black person, it's it's a, as a black person that, oh. that look, oh, shut oh, up. Black. Let me get as a black person, <laughs> I'm going to let me right after this, as a black person, to see how crackers have treated black people and to watch. <laughs> Leave them alone! Uh, no, he's right. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Crack is all right. I, when I say crack, I don't mean white people. Crack is another story. You know what I'm saying? Oh, crack is a different. Oh, listen, listen to me. Wait, yes. listen. listen to me. Shut up. All I'm saying is that... When I say nigga, listen, I don't mean folks. black people. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? All I'm saying is, I respect that. black people got treated in this country. We're very, very disappointed. I understand. In your behavior. I understand. With these this, Arabs. This is your way, though, of saying. We, we love this country and we deal with no, it. No, he wasn't saying he's, he's making sense. He's saying that. Jesus Christ. You guys used you to be don't. hardcore. He goes, now you used to be hardcore. Now suddenly you're going to get soft. I said that. Now it's an excuse. Wait a second. I understand. Now it's an excuse. We expect, are we expecting the letter to read something like, Oh, having a wonderful time. Wish you were here. Today, a nice woman put her panties on my head. Yeah. Gotta go. Time for yeah. the naked pyramid. <laughs> but that's basic. <laughs> it sounds like, it sounds like a letter from camp. You right? know, the, the counselors are kind of mean. But that's uh, the whole point. Hey, how about those five we're guys still, who we're I use as lookalikes? How are they doing? How about right, the you know, fact, mother of f***ing Christ? How about the fact... Hey, now, wait a minute. Oh, oh we can you believe gotta, it. You used to say that about the Virgin Mary, you son of a gun? Now, go ahead. <laughs> Mother of How about the fact that we crossed the lines out in his letter? Here we are implementing democracy in Iraq, and we're crushing his freedom of speech. What? Coming out of you, nobody what? wants to hear that. Did you say hell The whole audience is like, the whole audience is like this. Everybody was like, is that Nick DiPaolo or Chloe? It's like something yeah. dropped, but it didn't I'm hit the ground. You're like, yeah. what? That, yeah. huh? that was the pure You're definition. Like love sponge. That was the pure definition of stunned silence. Yeah. <laughs> you know what your problem is? You're a liberal. Yeah, <laughs> a dirty right liberal disguised as a liberal. Go right to Hollywood with Barbara Streisand. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're, e we're either the keepers of the torch of, of freedom and liberalism in this country, no. or we're like not. You, you can't cross our lines in there's, the letter. Hey, there's got to be a limit to everything. Sometimes people, you have to kill. Sadly enough. And it sounds retarded. You have to kill people sometimes. Yes, but if it's an accident and they're running by, you can't have them in a cell and just walk yes, by and kill can. them. Yes, you can. Wait a I hope we hand them over to the Iraqis. They're going to find the most creative way to. <clears throat> he's going to die for 20 days. They're going to like his head twice. <laughs> yeah. They're going to burn him. Twice. Oh, give it to the Iraqis. <laughs> oh, give it to the Kurds. Well, oh, then, then, then let anybody except us. You're going to let them do that. We don't have to do that. Why not? 
Because we're not better than them, Tony. That's what I'm saying. Listen, yeah, I am. Can I just say I this? Am. Can I just I say this? All right, that. Tony, I you're am. a little left to center. You're always yes. the one saying that all cultures are equal, right? Yes. You're always saying that. Now you're saying that our culture is above theirs. We have killed the whole No, no, no. No, no you misinterpret. Good point. We're like, oh, no. Oh, no. It doesn't count if you have to beg for an applause. Yes, sure it does. No. All applause in comedy. No. All applause in comedy is wrong, except for laughter. No, and no. applause that I get. Right. Go right. 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 I thought you made a good point. No. It wasn't good. But we should treat the way people the way we w would want to be treated. That is the liberal. That yes, absolutely. No. I think but Tony is an Arab. It, 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 <laughs> There's no way you should be saying we we I, we're not the standard. About? We have never been the standard of how people should be treated in the world. We take you in, go on. Oh, and wait a minute. Here we go. This is people. now. This is where you hate. You, uh, we, no, no, no. Yeah. we've never yeah, been the standard. You hate the white establishment that runs this country. <laughs> this is your veil way of saying it, please. Yes, but that's not the press. Not what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I we, think this, country, this country. This oh. <laughs> country. This country takes. We never. This country. There's nothing good about the country. It was created by white criminals. Uh, it, yeah, it, taken over minute. by black ones. <laughs> taken over by black. Ones. It's a country of criminals. It's a country of death. It's a country of war. Compared when to, did we become? What other countries like, better, Drees? None. Thank but you. But that's not my point. What my, is your point? My point is, I live in this horrible goddamn country, and I'm watching everybody messed up about naked Arabs and, and his getting his his his, his, his his stupid thing crossed out. It bugs me. Is this Let about, me run this. this. Let me run oh, it. No, about you, no. No. This is about no. you still. No. White no. guilt stinks. It bores me. It Handle boring. your business, white people. <laughs> or don't. That's a good point. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. That was not a setup, and yes, I did do it. I got about eight balls in that damn thing, no, so I don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, talking no about nobody set it up. It was an accidental freak, brilliant shot. <laughs> I know I stink. You don't have to point it out. What do you think? People at home think, oh, Kyle just got there. Uh, everybody knows it was a setup from somebody in the crew. Don't bother pool. the panda. He's eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> President Bush plans to unveil a new mental health initiative that recommends screening for every citizen. And promotes the use of antidepressant, antipsychotic oh, drugs. Jesus, <laughs> Any, anybody who's against this hasn't been on the subway after midnight. <laughs> uh, you know, I read the article. They're actually going to start with kids. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you're going to do it with kids, you got to make it fun. You know what I'm saying? Take take Zolaf, Prozac, and Wellbutrin. I don't know why those names just fall off my tongue like that. <laughs> and um, you know, make little shapes out of them and, and make it a cereal. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a good idea. <laughs> like, like, like unlucky charms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're, they're magic, all right. Yeah, they're magic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tell you this: if you know, the, the whole point of the article was that half the country's insane. Right. But so then you're not insane. You know what I mean? It's a good point. Everybody's insane. Right. Because if everybody's insane, then that's the norm. In the so land we're not of the blind, the one I make money off that thing. How do you make money off that thing? <laughs> this is the irony. Everybody's insane. This is, right. How do you make this money? is the irony. Yeah. And it, the government spends millions of dollars telling kids not to do drugs. Right. Say no to drugs. Right. Unless, of course, they're manufactured by Merck. By people who <laughs> contribute to the that's GOP. True. Yeah. But, Tony, look, the flip side is that these drugs might keep some, you know, woman from drowning her five kids in a bathtub, a kid from going to high school and shooting up his friends. Uh, That's true. Courtney Love from touring. You know, all good stuff. <laughs> We're moving ahead. Yeah, I, mean, I just want to say, I don't want to, I don't want to make this again into um, a, a racial issue. Racial issue. Issue. You have to. Yes, you do. You're obsessed with it. Yeah, you do. I'm yeah, saying, you know, it seems to me like another tip by Whitey. <laughs> no, Whitey. <laughs> but put them together so it's a double. To control your mind. That's right. Is something Yo, else out there? No, no, the CIA is selling like crack yeah, itself. Everybody, I'm going to be judged crazy. Yo, the CIA is trying to sell it, crack it, itself. It, yes, they are. Well, we tried. Crack and those little you juices that you have to punch a hole in the top. That's a CIA plan yeah, to right. sterilize the I black man. I'm telling you. The crack didn't work on you. The crack didn't work on you people. You think Zoloft's going to work? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The public oh. Senate nominee, Jack Ryan. Says he won't drop out of the race despite allegations made by his ex-wife, 
hot actress Jerry Ryan. Holy shit. But he tried to make him perform in sex clubs. Yeah. Going out with you that dickhead. The fact, the fact that he tried to convince her to do yeah. it, he shouldn't drop out for that reason. He should drop out because he couldn't convince her. you got to be persuasive <laughs> as a politician. But he did. Good point. Right? He yeah. did uh -oh, convince this, this, this lady. Segment, so. But he got yeah, in the club and he didn't get it outside. Uh -oh. All right. well, look, here's what it is. When he, he turned her out, she went, because she went to the sex club. Great lingo. She went to the sex club. <laughs> But what happens is she's very mad. Now she's coming out trying to ruin his career right, right. because once you turn a woman out, once you make her dirty and do stuff like this, and she's not normal anymore, she, when you leave her, you take the deviance with you because she can't do it no more. She can't have regular sex no more ever. Let me say now she's mad. Thank she's you, mad. Thank you, Doctor Phil. I'm <laughs> telling you. He took the evil. She what? can't even. She has to go to sex clubs to get off now. She's what? insulted because he asked her to go to sex clubs. That's not any more insulting than being a star on a Star Nick. Trek Voyager. Voyager. Yeah, exactly. Three. You know something? That she went to three different three clubs. sex clubs. So you know, who, who keeps going? Oh. I'm, okay, you go. I'm going to three. And now I'm going. <laughs> Don't make me go to the second one and the third one. She went and she got into That's it. Right. And he left. Let and now she's this. just a regular yeah. broad. He's trying, now. To get the, he's trying to get the Democrats. What vote. sad times we live in when a woman will not be degraded for her husband. When I was a kid, my mother would do the entire neighborhood, come home, cook supper, knit a sweater, put us to bed. Now that was a yeah, woman. Wearing those it shoes. Let me you know what? I don't think I don't think we need to give the Star Trek. I don't think we need very nice shoes, by the way. They're red yeah, shoes. They look nice. like Colin's feet when he doesn't put on sunblock at the beach. <laughs> It's an outfit. It's I wore Jer an outfit. It's what Jerry Ryan used to wear. That's all she wore. I like his conviction. He's, the, he's up there defiant. I am staying in the race no matter what. If one of you want to go on me while I stay in the race, that even I think he's going to get more popular from this. Yeah. He's going to oh, yeah. he become he a Democrat. He's, oh, no. he's training to be a senator. That's he's what you're doing. Manipulation, man. He's training to be a president. Manipulation. The senator is the second club. They did that. When you take your evil, you put she can't. He's still evil. I'm just saying. He's still men, like, sex is evil. Men, yeah. men if you introduce yourself, all... that girl's not going to uh, listen she's to the story. Gonna, yeah, no, don't scare well, her away. This. She's about eight. She, leave me alone. I, if, if, <laughs> if, if it is, it's just, it's just not because she'll end up trying to ruin my political career when, <laughs> <laughs> when I introduce sex clubs. That, what I'm saying is this this lady is she's she is angry because she can't do that. You know, the anybody, he brought out the hole. And once you bring that out in a in a woman back. with can't dignity, back. she can't introduce yeah. that to the next guy. Hey, this used to be a movie theater, but now it's a sex club. Let's just let's go uh, look. We'll be right back with Don Magic Wand. <laughs> <laughs> I do it daily, baby. That's how I do it. I just hope you guys can follow my... What, First what of all... What happened? The chairs you came back. Happened, oh, I'm just saying. Because <laughs> you don't realize how many of these goddamn white comedians complain, oh, but Jesus, we, we, we can't talk, so this is my punishment for talking too much. So I'm alone. No, I, don't, Scott, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need talking. a white comic next to me. I'll be all by myself. It's, it's huh? not your punishment. It's a weight distribution. It's a fat joke, It's a Okay, Liz, that's right. Okay. You're, you're, you'll regret it. Critics are accusing video game creators of featuring only young blacks and Hispanics in the new games like GTA 3 and Def Jam and charging stereotyping and racism, a charge I haven't heard in four minutes. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Uh, it's, it's, it's stupid to complain about it. Who cares? They, they do racial stereotype, but anything that will be accurate in a game that's exciting. I mean, they're going to put like a bunch of Jews as bankers. No one's going to buy that as a game. <laughs> it, it's, whatever's going to sell and, be, and, and have action in it, that's what they're going to do. So if it's a racial stereotype, so what? This is telling you. I mean, look, again, I hate to be redundant. Again, if you make white, if you can't make fun of It's not interesting. You have to put a Puerto Rican, a black, anything other than white people to do something. Please help me make fun of white people. Help me so we can do something. So what you're saying, okay. it, go ahead. The, the race, I don't care about the stereotype problem is that. Well, let's ban for the, the discussion. Urban go ahead. Why do blacks and Latinos urban? I don't understand how we got labeled with urban. Urban means living in the city. So a white person living in the city is urban as well. But you know the pattern since 1960. You guys have been chasing us up the Hudson River like what? the Hessians and rebels. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's being good though. And making a comeback. White people are making a comeback. We all making a comeback. Thank yes, God. Yeah. But they use the same tomorrow when I light up Kev and Thursday when oh, I bust you out. Shut up. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Go ahead. Here's my point. So you're basically saying 
the black people, it's not stereotyping those video games because you guys are out there blowing people away, so it's good. Okay? Well, we do. Listen. Who said that? Wait, wait, wait. That's basically black what people, it, wait, that, I, I, look, yeah, it's okay. Don't be trying to divide and conquer. Don't be trying to take a listen. white expression like that. That's kind of sardonic. Yeah, okay. That first, sounds first of all, here's, here's what I'm saying. White people, I'm not saying that black we, we, we do shoot each other, but unless... That's all I want to say. But I'm just saying, unless they have a video game where you choke your wife to death, or... That's right. The Miami Herald pulled a story on Olympic doping because it showed an athlete with a dark complexion under the words, how they cheat. The newspaper said the image was pulled because it could be perceived as racially insensitive. But the thing is this, it's not racially insensitive. They would have had a, a, a white guy with, with, you know, why do they cheat? But no one would believe it. <laughs> Except when it comes to drug shooting, I would think, uh, you know, for steroids. But, but no, it's like when I think of cheating athletes, I don't think of black people at all. I think of the Soviets. No one thinks of black people with Soviet, cheating in the Olympics. Soviet. It's the Russians no, who think no. it's true. This is the new way of people to say, okay, this is why black people are so much better than you in athletics, because we do drugs. No, you're, I, you're, you're, no, one's, no one's thinking of that. No one's thinking that. No one's thinking that? How do you know no one's thinking that? I don't agree with that. I'm a man of the people, and I speak for Mike. When this kid... Man of the people spoke Let Mike get to me. Let Mike get to me. I don't agree with in this case. I think people being too sensitive. First of all, they pulled it before it actually came out. Mm -hmm. If it would have came out, and then you'd have had a problem with it, so they must have saw there was something wrong with it, because they didn't put it out. So I think right. people be too just, sensitive. It was just... Now, if it would have said, how will they cheat, and then under it it said, Republicans, election 2004, then I would have been a lot more sense. That's just... <laughs> yeah, a good one. one. He said, you are giving me my star. <laughs> Let him get his nice star. laugh. That was, <laughs> that was a good one. But I'll say this. The $65 international fee that the University of Massachusetts is charging its foreign students has been judged discriminatory by the American Arbitration uh. Association. Critics yeah. have called this charge a surveillance fee. What do you think? Well, it's the Syrian students. I mean, why have them waste their money on a, on a surveillance fee when they need it for C4? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny. At first, at first when I read it, I was like, I was like, nah, this is wrong. You can't. It's per semester, too. It's not like just per year. It's per semester they yeah. got to pay this fee. But then I was like, you know what? This is the best country in the world, and you want to come over here and go to school? Pay the fee and shut up then. <laughs> Pay the fee and shut up. Just, this is a different country now. You know, we used to yeah. be a turnstile nation. Now we need to be a fortress. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I agree with him. We used to be an easy pass nation. Now we have to be a one lane. No, go ahead. <laughs> and they got to put, you know, different goofy word in to make it sound like it's not racist. This is the thing. It'd be wonderful. You see can how I... you've spooked our country, your people? That, that's what no I'm saying. Point Let, can I? I listen, I is, is, this so, <laughs> is this so wrong? For black people to run all the, the national security, is it so wrong for us to do that? We don't. I don't have white guilt. I'm going to treat these Street. people poorly and tell them that I'm going to treat them poorly. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend that in, in this world truth. I'm going to say we got to watch you. Adam, that's why. Enjoy your class. That's why the, Todd, the people that never get by security at, at the airport is those sisters with the giant nails sitting there barred. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. They're like, you better wait. Take on your back. You know, they don't play games. Like, everyone listens to them. You're right. I think black people should be in charge of security. In charge, man, because we don't have uh, guilt. We just don't promise have guilt. you won't, uh, you know, get a little light fingered while you're there. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice, simple request. You'll be making a nice buck and we'll make it union. I don't like that? the fact that you're implying that black people would be good at security because they would steal all the guns going through the metal detectors. <laughs> and, and that's what you were saying, and it's racist, whoa, and I didn't whoa, like it. Whoa, stop this good cop, bad cop. Jesus, what do you good. think, these are white tricks we don't know? Good cop, bad cop, you little raggedy, mushroom-faced asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's the guy who's with it, with it, with it catch that? Whoa, that went over our head. Ah, Norton, shove it up your ass. Mushroom, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>See it? Well, I, the assignment was for the comedians to see it. Did you guys see it? We got, I, no, I was busy. Oh. But you do know what happened <laughs> is that the side story on the exorcist is that um, Mel Gibson was supposed to direct it. <laughs> but, <laughs> he quit when the studio wouldn't let him give the devil a Jewish last name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the good one. All right, let's when move I to this. the title, I thought it was a Bush documentary. Oh. Whoa! 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 Hey, hey, you know his birthday is 6646? Really? That's his birthday. No. Three sixes at his birthday. He's the devil. Say something, 
sucker boy. What? Yeah, yeah move on to the next one. You no, ain't enough for that. You're right. I don't want to say anything because that's such a scientific way of looking at it, you damn crazy island Haitians. You better stop. <laughs> <laughs> you get to be a Haitian. Yeah. You better Mike, stop disrespecting our seventh and eighth cents, man. White people dip. Stop. Seventh and eighth cents. What are you, rolling like, bones? Stop with like evidence all the time. Why you slice a chicken and figure out if he's a devil? That doesn't matter. Wow. <laughs> Stop wanting evidence all the time, man. You gotta understand, we sniff these things that mean something, man. Oh, your man. intuition stinks. It's the best. <laughs> How do you think this show started Size Me Up? Not, what do you think? Well, white people? Black people size people up quickly. No, and, no. Uh, white people started sizing up, if you remember, when black people were brought over. <laughs> they were stopping. <laughs> 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 Jet Greens Without a Paddle was the weekend's number two movie. Oh, Take a look. Oh, For three childhood friends. Let's take the trip. The answers to their problems are out there. Hey, look a deer. I'm in over my head. Don't tell me that. Our only chance is to huddle together for one. I, for one, choose death. This never leaves the cave. Without a paddle. Ugh. I was gonna stop by. I was gonna ask who goes to see this, but uh, yeah, a couple of <laughs> chuckles. <laughs> and anybody chuckled at the promo and not at the absurdity of it, please has to leave now. Oh God! I give this, I give this oh. film two thumbs in the eyes. Whoever directed this. <laughs> and allowed and this to go me, down. Seth, you got this Seth Green. The only reason he's a star is because the legend turned down Austin Powers. <laughs> I heard about. What did he turn down? His role. You heard about it from me. What do you think? You're reading the trades? I'm saying, I heard about it. I told you the story five times. Well, why don't you tell you America? You phony bastards. Tell America the story. I didn't pay attention. I you turned down. Patrice turned wanted down one of the countries to know what you turned down. Yeah. And what role? Well, Mike Myers called me up years ago. He goes, look, I want you to play the son. Because chronologically, the son would have been closer to my age when you think it was 1960 he was born. That, and he begged me to play it. I was Wait like, now nah, I'm busy whoa. with my own screen. Stop part. rationalizing the character now, stupid. You turned it down. This, just explain. He was like, it would have been my age. Right. Now, you didn't care when he was offering. Just, just explain what a anyway, dummy that went underneath. Anyway, I was underneath. a pompous ass, and I go, Mike, I'm writing my own screenplay, which, of course, no one's ever heard of. <laughs> and he goes, no, this is going to be big. I go, yeah, no, I know. We both got to do our own thing. So he did his own thing, and now you got Seth Green with a stupid paddle movie. That could be me sitting there with those two dummies. Wait, paddling, so making jokes. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Was, that, was, that, was, that, um, was that Celtic Pride the, that you decided not to do it? No, no, no. That was Night at the Roxbury. Not, oh, that's right. Night, okay, Night at the Roxbury. You know, Tyler wrote Night at the Roxbury. Okay, all right, cool. That was better than that. was better than that. Yeah, why can't you have Austin Powers? Powers. <laughs> when you, once you have Crocodile Dundee 2, you don't need any other films. <laughs> Coming in third was Princess Diaries 2, The Royal Engagement. Here's a look at some of the magic. Lisa Markowitz has everything a girl could ever want, except the one thing she's always dreamed of. Princess Mia is not married in 30 days. What? She forfeits this throne. Now, a girl who's never been lucky in love Whoa. will lose her family's claim to the throne. <laughs> unless she can do the impossible. Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. Any movie that has a promo where the tray hits a crown off and that's the funny part, I guess it must be a great movie. <laughs> this whole movie's about she has to have an arranged marriage. Or else she can't lose a fortune, like easy money. Every marriage is arranged marriage. Uh-oh. You Mike. gotta arrange a way to pay for that ring, to pay for that home, to pay for that honeymoon. You gotta arrange a way to get rid of her body later. <laughs> a lot of things you gotta arrange all throughout this pick. Sounds like you're ready to write a screenplay. <laughs> what do you guys think? Could you at least... One, I want one of you to one one week. Just one of you see a promo. I would have seen it, but the dude in my neighborhood with the bootlegs ain't have that. <laughs> There's no bootlegs. There's no bootlegs. We'll be right back. There's no bootlegs. Jim has given us a little present to do this segment with. Every once in a while, we like to respond to the feedback. <laughs> you heartless scamps leave for us on the top ground message boards. Jim, let's start with you. This guy has a question. Norton's head is so friggin' big. Is that him in those stupid Six Flags commercials? Dressed as that old man dancing around? Ah, uh, this one really hurt. <laughs> Because the two things I hate most in life are dancing and old people. <laughs> and 
And uh, please don't ever write another post ending with an exclamation point. It makes you sound like an overanxious civilian idiot. And the only thing worse than an exclamation point in written humor is to write the word wink in parentheses. <laughs> Your post was a lame attempt at being cutting, and I hope you die in a hotel fire. All right. <laughs> this one is for... This one is for Patrice. So don't be mad at Patrice, everyone. It's not his fault. He constantly knocks on Whitey. If he couldn't do that, he wouldn't have any material. Patrice. <laughs> Yeah, do you really think I want to spend all my time talking about Whitey? Well, I don't. But you give me no choice. Whitey's a funny. Especially when Whitey is trying to be serious. <laughs> if, you, if you think you're talking bad about... You think I'm talking bad about how Whitey's dance? Well, then stop dancing, Whitey, because you're funny when you do it. <clears throat> Whitey does talk in a hack of Whitey voice. Well, I... <laughs> you do. I don't I mean. Am I lying? It's funny. Um, especially when you're serious. And I'll stop joking about Whitey when Whitey has an intervention with Whitey to admit to Whitey how ridiculously funny Whitey really is. You're really hilarious. And I don't mention sports because you're going to see how funny Whitey really is when I beat Colin's stupid head in basketball on Thursday. Watch closely. Okay. Then you won't be proud Here, of it. Here's one for me. I think your show is really funny, but every night you spew on about how George W. has proved his leadership. The man is a complete idiot, and you obviously want to lick his ball sack, you big... <laughs> You big douche. <laughs> Free the world by freeing the weed. Legalize it now. <laughs> you know, you're right about that, buddy, because everyone knows the best way to get ahead in show business today is to say positive things about George Bush. You figured out my plan. I kiss up to him, and the Hollywood powers want to work with me because they're all notoriously Republican. <laughs> I don't like the fact that you ha accuse me of Machiavellian uh, schemery because I disagree with you, you ass, you little fascist Michael moron. Don't you ever, ever talk to me. I am a lot of things, but no one can accuse me of thinking before I speak. <laughs> Jim, this guy made an interest. <clears throat> Was that another one? What? No, this, this guy made an interest. <laughs> this guy made an interesting observation. Yeah. Oh, he's... <laughs> He crushed us at the beginning of the segment. You didn't smell it? Oh, I, I was, that's why I had blueberries stuck in my nose. Oh, it smells okay. like seafood. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> or is that his skin? <laughs> Please tell me. I don't care if you have an IQ of 180 and you're 90 years old. Nothing's funny than somebody farting on TV. Oh. That was funny. <laughs> oh, and this, guy says, this guy says this about Norton. Norton needs reality check. He has the nerve to talk about fat chicks on a constant basis when he's a dead ringer for the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> He'd be lucky to get any chick. I need a reality check. Oh, let's tone down the insults a bit. <laughs> uh, what else do I need? To uh, take a chill pill and get a life? <laughs> And uh, just a little minor correction, uh, not only do I constantly talk about fat chicks, but sometimes I'll take one to dinner and slip a <laughs> into a fourth bowl of ice cream. <laughs> and I'm certainly, uh, I'm most certainly not a dead ringer for the Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, if you poke me in the belly, instead of giggling, I'm going to look you right in the eye and <laughs> all over your hand. Yeah. This last one's to me. Colin's a black dude with white skin. His black impressions are a little too accurate. And he knows way too much about black folk. What gives? Sorry, I do know a lot about black people and Latins, Asians, Arabs, and, and of course the white people. I'm a people person. But black people, as you know, being one yourself, sir, have a certain je ne sais quoi that I uh, savor. From their accusatory glares out of the idling escalade <laughs> to their conspiratorial eyebrow raises to each other when they perceive white slight, they are under constant <laughs> scrutiny from the total package. And therefore, my friend, be ever vigilant in my presence or you will rue the day. And if you don't believe me, ask this typical product of the underclass, this, <laughs> this epitome of disgruntled black manhood that is sitting next to me daydreaming of burning down Massa's house, raping his wife, and raiding his refrigerator. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Remember when you were little, you dreamed of being discovered? Well, here we are. <laughs> Thanks to TV commercials. <laughs> What'd that idiot say? You said dreamt, stupid. stupid. Not dreamed. <laughs> uh, Thanks to TV commercials starring a cartoon bunny named Miffy. Tourism in New York City is way up. 
Create your own New York mascot and tell us what warnings we would have for visitors to the Big Apple. Patrice O'Neill. My mascot's name is James the Rat Whisperer. He talks to different <laughs> He talks to different pests all around the city mm -hmm. and asks for favors on the behalf of the city. You'll see him a lot during a uh, Republican convention. He, he already whispered to all the midtown mice and rats to move uptown and the city will never bother him again. He also, because they're all sitting in Harlem and they're doing nothing about it, just let, let you know that. He also mm. made a plea to all the restaurant roaches <laughs> to crawl around on the dishes only after closing. He was, whatever. He, <laughs> he was sent to whisper to the Arabs, but uh, no one has heard from him for a week. <laughs> Working conceptual, are we? Mike Brent. Shut up, asshole. That's what I get. All right, my mascot would be a smiling pair of binoculars called Naki. <laughs> Naki would have an assault rifle with fatigues on and a tattoo of each World Trade Center tower on his arm. And the slogan would be, come to the Big Apple, but if you try to bite it, you will get f***ed up. <laughs> I like it. Jim Norton. Uh, I think my mascot would be a pit bull, and uh, the ads would feature him attacking Miffy and tearing his throat out. <laughs> And I'd state in the end that if you thought Miffy was adorable and represents New York City, then you should stay home because chances are you're a fat Midwestern idiot who's going to come here to see the Lion King, eat at TGI Fridays, and then tell everyone you really enjoyed your gritty New York experience. <laughs> so uh, do us and yourself a favor. Take any cash you to spend here and mail it into us. It will save you the humiliation of being beaten up and mugged and save us the irritation of looking at your wide-eyed, semi-retarded faces. <laughs> we'll be right back. What the hell's going on now? Oh, that was something. See the, what? All right, look. Let's talk about this and then that. 800,000 pro-choice pro -choice demonstrators yesterday rallied in Washington. Largest march on Washington ever. Here's a look at it. What do we want? Free choice! What do we want? It? No. Keep your laws off my body. We will not be silenced. And we will go. This whole government's got to go and go now. This is what life was like before choice. Oh, such a nice day. I think I'll go have an abortion. <laughs> well, I wonder what Morgan Freeman would say about that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we do I mean, all the movies uh, together. Look right, it, go ahead. Ab abortion, is, <laughs> abortion, abortion aside, are women boring? <laughs> But wow. I didn't like Whoopi going to the we cross. We want it! Oh. They got nothing else to do. They got nothing else to do. All wow. of a sudden, we're worried about a fetus. What the hell is a fetus? I got trouble working on a path, for crying out loud. What is a fetus? First of all, what if they go to work and shut up? Next thing they're going to say, we don't want tattoos. We don't want tattoos. We don't want this. Hey, that's what they're going to get. No, no, you don't have a fetus tattoo. Leah, Leanne, as a woman, what do you think about this? Well, you know what? I, I am pro-choice, but I have a problem with them actually saying, if you, if you listen to the rest of the tape, they actually want the government to pay for it. Uh, and I have a problem with that. You know, if you get in trouble, you should scrounge the money from your friends, you know, like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the cost of doing business. I mean, listen, marriage is legal, too. You know, Congress didn't pay for my wedding. You know, come right. on. Right. You're right. When did we want it? Oh. They, Frankie, what about you? Oh, you, you well, I was looking at the photo and I could have swore I saw Monica Lewinsky's hat in there somewhere. Well, it was in D.C. She might have been floating around in there somewhere. I'm, I know it's about love, man. Don't you, you know, don't you love the kid? I guess the kid's gonna be born. You gotta think of the kid, right? You know. What? When did a fetus become a kid? The minute they got in there, the minute they got in there, the fetus kid. is a person. It's Your ass is a person. <laughs> Why? That's better than the fetus. Yeah. I don't like the person. fetus. I'm sick of the fetus. So Stop eating the fetus. I'm sick of the damn fetus. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Stop eating the fetus. Stop eating the fetus. Stop eating the fetus. Frankie, Frankie, Look at this. Can you Frankie, imagine that? That's a fetus right there. That's a Frankie looks like it. That's what I was going to say. Frankie looks like a fetus. Well, listen to me. No. All right. All right, listen to me. Is that what you want? We're going to move on. We're going to move on to this. All right. Spellman. Well, I mean, hey, let's face no, it. Man. You got to go with the instincts. When I see people cut it off. Spellman, a black woman's college, is treated with more house a black men's college over the image of black women in rap videos. Here's a look at one of Mystical's works. Hey. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Rewind it! <laughs> uh, rewind. 
Patrice. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, disrespect them women. <laughs> hey, Subjugate <laughs> those hoes. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a great fetus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. So, so what do you think about this? He <laughs> don't think about nothing, Scotty. <laughs> All he has to do is dance. Now, listen to me. I never got licked like that. <laughs> I don't understand it. What Where am I coming from? <laughs> These girls are gorgeous. They gotta make a living. All of a sudden, some pain in the ass comes out. They go, we shouldn't do that. I want more of that. <laughs> That's right. Damn right. I want more licking. You got plenty of credit cards too. <laughs> why? Why do all women try to have Careful dignity? Now. What about? Careful. What about women who ain't or useless? And that's all they got: titties and ass. What they gonna do? There's nothing left but right. be hoes. Right. Don't take that away from them. It's always the ugly one. They go on fear factor. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually you know the humanitarian point of view. Leon, you know, what do you think? It's actually not. It's actually not all women, honey. I actually agree with the guys at Morehouse. These women are grown. They're doing what they want. Leave the hoes alone. Let them make a living. That's right. 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 Cause you know what? You know what? I will tell you right now. These women make me feel safe, okay? Because they're there. Nobody's gonna kidnap me, make me dance in a rap video. So I'm very happy. <laughs> Uh, Louisiana is considering a new bill that would punish anyone caught wearing low riding pants with a fine of $500 or six months in jail. <laughs> now, here it is. Crackdown. Crack Pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you guys think about this? Is there I think that, first of all, <laughs> first of all, this guy thinks a lot, you gotta you? have your private parts gotta breathe. That's why they're all walking like this here. <laughs> because the damn thing is you know, driven by your fazools here. Why don't they let your body breathe? What do you need off the zipper here? They're trying to get everything in. It's over. <laughs> We saw your Patooza, now lay down and die. <laughs> so now you, move on, Colin. Let's so go. We coming down. down, you son of a bitch. Thank you, man. We're done. Thank you, good night. So you show your Patooza, move on and die. But let me ask you this. Oh. So you don't think it matters that everybody's running around here? Why did they, we go to war worried about somebody's ass. Who cares? This is the Pat Cooper it's show. It's over, <laughs> crying out loud. Let's go on to the next thing. Let's talk about trans I, I actually think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yeah. think the problem. The problem is people wearing those kind of pants who don't have the body for it. I mean, it's starting to look kind of hideous, you know, like mm -hmm. spandex that revisited. Sense. You give it yeah. some thought before you put that on like or squeeze spandex, into right. it. At least 40 right. and that under. That makes sense. Don't that go over sense. 40 with those. What's that? Don't, don't go over 40 with those. Yeah, 40 up. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a Pat killer. I don't even know what low rider pants are. I well, know what they are. Stop busting my balls. Pat just think those are pants without a belt. Pat, Pat. Frankly, you think you're plumber. He knows what they are. Frankly, that's a rotunda fetus. <laughs> that guy was lunch. We'll be, we'll be right back. Yeah, please. <laughs> Kevin's a cartoonist. On April 29th, the 12th anniversary of the Rodney King verdict, the activist LaFonda Jones. Sorry. <laughs> Sounds the like father a, Jones oh. is launching the Operation Hood Freedom <laughs> campaign to stop the music industry from producing music that glorifies crime. Let's take a look at how much jail time you'd do if you did everything in each chorus of 50 Cent songs. This is what she's going to do in the song Bloodhound. Okay, first, I love to pump crack. All right. <laughs> Love to stay strapped. I guess that's possession of a weapon. Love to squeeze gats. Love to hit the block. Love my two glocks. Love to bust shots. But you don't hear me now. Now, this is surprising because you don't hear me, though. What's he talking about? First 45, 45 years altogether. First of all, what do you mean you don't hear me? If anything, I think he's conveyed the message 50 Cent has that he's certainly uh, these the kind of things he enjoys. You know, if it was somebody like Will Smith saying you don't hear me, I would understand. Look, but go ahead. If you play it backwards, he says something positive in it. <laughs> <laughs> the only people that like that music are deaf people. 
Trust what I tell you. DEA. There's nothing, there's nothing value about Def, that whole Def thing. Jam there's people? nothing value about this show. I'm going home. <laughs> The hell is all this crap? 20 years, 30 years. Let yeah. people die in peace. Today, if you sing with your finger in your nose, you're a star. If you sound like Perry Como, you're out of the business. Bad. So what are you talking about? That's not Let's true. Go to Perry Como is very Let's go back to the cartoons. Perry Como is still very big. Oh, no. Very big in the hip-hop community, Perry Como. Yeah. Peak. They call him Pico. Pico? Yeah. What is all? Who gives these questions? Kill that son of a bitch. <laughs> They're topics, not questions. Lee questions Lee for me, they're questions. Frankie, I'm Italian. These I, are questions. <laughs> Thank you, Lee Anthony. You know, I don't, I mean, people pick on rap, but it, it's not, it, it's a microcosm of what goes on in America. Everything is violent. All of our entertainment is violent. Would people have gone to go see The Passion of the Christ if it was about the happy-go-lucky Jesus? No, they went to go see the Romans beat his ass. There's nothing new here. She's the only one making sense. What is she saying? <laughs> She's saying, like... <laughs> She said with the hip hop say, yo, they could make Schwarzenegger governor. He's shooting people in this movie. <laughs> but there's a phone line. <laughs> yo, why are they going to do that? Listen, the I, mean, I can't think of a white song. White people always driving each other to kill themselves. I just can't think. I can't think right now what violent white song there is, but it's, it's plenty. It's white. Leave right, rap right, alone, man. Right. Just, oh. If, if they're going to do this, they better do something about country music. Oh, now. Come on. Listen hey, to me. When you was watching silent <laughs> movies, wasn't there like, <laughs> wasn't the soundtrack violent, all the piano playing? <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> and wait a minute. You're not allowed to play the Black Keys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, yeah, sir. Love it. But you say that, but isn't the difference is that movies you don't see what you're saying. Well, there's a lot of violent things like the Passion of Christ, but you don't see the guy that stars Jim Cavizio, whatever the hell his name is, and Mel Gibson going out after the movie and reenacting it. Neither do we. Name would see you making up. Name it, Colin. See murder. What are you saying? See murder. Listen to a song and then he's a murderer. But he's a murderer. But what does that mean? You're just yelling because I'm about to lock in my point. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're telling me that between Tupac, Biggie, Jam, SJC, there's a million people that are in the entertainment business that seem to have a hard time delineating the line between reality and art, and they end up committing a lot of crimes. That's not true. That's you're making that true. up, man. That's, that, it's, that's, I'm making you're it up. You're making it up. I'm sorry. Rap is a, it's a form of... Um... <laughs> Come on to the next subject. That's tap. The most boring <laughs> I've ever heard. Great stuff, man. Right. right. <laughs> the show. You know, Pat. It's... <laughs> All right, folks. We'll be right back into this mess. Oh, wait a minute. Where's my anger? Every so often, we like to respond to the message boards. You like to dish it out out there, don't you? Well, now it's our turn to give it back. Voss, this first one is at you. Voss is pretty funny at writing material, but on semi-improv stuff, he's definitely not the best. He's like the anti-Quinn, you know? <laughs> See, uh, you know what? Already this shows how much they love me. This is like fan mail. He says, I'm funny at writing material. My only problem is semi-improv, which means he likes my improv, okay? So actually, he likes two out of the three things I do. Any, any baseball player that hit two out of three in their life would be in the Hall of Fame. I'm a Hall of Fame comic on this show, okay? So here's, listen, first of all, to the, if this guy's gonna write hate mail, write something like, hey, he slobbers, he's got big teeth, all right, he's stupid, something like that, idiot. That's not hate mail, that's fan mail. He slobbers, he got big teeth, and he can't improv. Okay. Patrice, all right. you're next. Oh, yeah. Did you see the petrified look in his eye? No petrified. It's still scared. Calm down, it's over. I'm not It's over. I'm, this is me. That's this why we do this show, because we're finished. We're going nowhere. This is me. This oh, is I hate well, Patrice well. on Tough Crowd. This is a message board. But I watched his stand-up Friday night because I was sick, and he was really, really funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't like when I come out. Y'all don't understand. A lot of time to introduce. I just can't look at the crowd because it's full of... It's full of you message board people trying to hide out. And <clears throat> now it took, this is what made me mad. It took some, and it had to be a girl. That's a girl kind of thing. Yeah. It took you to be on your deathbed to realize I'm a comedy genius. Look, 
Many of you hate me because some of your favorite comics come on the show and they can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Trust me, they ain't got nothing to say. Uh, they, look, Pat Cooper's talking. Nobody stopped Pat Cooper from talking. I, I, hey, I tried. He wanted to talk and he talked. So those of you who don't like me on the show, please keep getting sick <laughs> so you can enjoy me much, much better. Oh, oh. no. Oh. <laughs> this last one, this last one's for... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you know what? what? I'm not going to do my message. I'm not going to do my message board. It's I want to talk about why these two kind of stunk. <laughs> first of all. Right? Can I please give my opinion first? Go ahead. I felt they stunk because I feel like you guys don't necessarily take comedy as seriously. Like, I have the humility to know I'm old, I'm finished, so I better write and rewrite to be funny. You bastards think you're 23, you're not. First of all, um, I'm 34, okay. he's 50, right, and you're 53. Don't, okay, don't you talk to him. All you right, you two losers. First of all, I look like I'm 24, okay? First of all, you're a walking mess, okay? All right? I'm a no, little... Okay. See, listen, message listen, board listen. claps. Woo, no, he's fat! No, listen. No, hey, don't... Hey, let, like, the, let the Brazilian porn star talk. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> First of all, you're a walking mess. All right. You're a Brazilian porn star. All right. Uh, mine was not hate mail. I'm sorry, but the person liked me. So what am I supposed to do? Say, hey, you know what? He likes my no, material. I'm it right. was yes, hate mail. You no, are dumb. It no, was listen, hate mail. No, listen. They were so, saying you suck and he suck at the same time. Yeah, it was okay. for me. It no, was, that was at the end. Okay. First of all, the fact. All right. Now we have to break it out. The fact that whoever wrote that letter said that Voss is a great writer and that I'm not a good writer shows okay. how stupid you really are. It was sarcasm. This poor misbegotten bastard okay. wrote some funny stuff in 88. Okay. I write every day of my miserable, awful life. It's the right. one thing I have going for me. And you're great at improv. I've seen you work I, the crowd. I, I, I am great. You're very good, Baba Listen, first of all, with your cowhide shirt that you got from his brother's back, okay? <laughs> all right? Let me tell you something. All first right. of all, wait, 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 wait a second. he used that all right. as a Never. Never. So yesterday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so you're saying his whole life, he can't listen. even improve his emotions. Listen, first of all, he steals. He steals. In other words, you're saying he wore the shirt two days in a row. Wrong. Second of all, anytime somebody said, "Take it, take it like a man," okay, you got slammed twice. Sit back, think of food, and we'll move on. Okay. <laughs> It's not a big deal. Go ahead. Hey, you got that two You made that up. <laughs> <laughs> he said that three days ago. <laughs> All right, folks, you keep doing what you do. We'll be right back. I'm on time. Right, that's it. <laughs> Oh, that, folks, that, that the latest that. cause of divorce in Britain is men who take too much Viagra. What was the cause of the biggest breakup you ever had? Pat Cooper. I need Julie Roberts. I don't need Viagra. That's who I need. <laughs> My biggest breakup was, you know, before I got married, I was single. Everything was going good. I was canoodling. I was carrying and I'd go do whatever I wanted. Then I got married. That was the breakup when I got married. <laughs> and I'll right, never say that again. Leanne. Leanne. <clears throat> I, um, actually the cause of my biggest breakup was when he asked me to wear low rise jeans and dance in his rap video. <laughs> <laughs> actually, honestly, my biggest breakup was my fault. I mean, I'm one of those silly women who has standards. <laughs> I mean, I like smart, sane, and above all, good hygiene. I mean, if a man's body odor is strong enough to reach out and smack me in the face, I think that should be considered domestic violence, don't y'all? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good point, Frankie! Well, for me, it was all about height differentials. I mean, when I was younger and I was in my super horny mood, I once went out with a six foot four stewardess. You know, she was beautiful. I mean, we made love and uh, we have to put little runway lights on her thighs. That's how good it was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you, when you get romantic like that, she's always saying crazy things like, you know, when you're coming in for a landing, keep your flaps up. And even though the sex was great, we had a breakup because, well, being, I could never see eye to eye with her, she soon realized I was falling in love with her hooters. So. All right, Patrice O'Neill. <clears throat> Shouldn't you be somewhere yelling at Laka? Laka? <laughs> <laughs> Danny DeVito. I'm f her. Um, <clears throat> Look, I've never had a worse breakup. They're all th the same thing. <laughs> Women try to force themselves on me, and I get very frightened. <laughs> 
forcing me to call, forcing me to listen when they call, forcing me to watch the dub shit they want to watch on television, forcing me to take them out, forcing me to wear what they think I look cute in, forcing me to play Xbox with them when they're not even interested in the game. They get pissed at why? Forcing me to, forcing me to cuddle afterwards, even in the summer. It's hot, bitch. I still love you. Look at. <laughs> <laughs> Look at man, ladies, if you want to <laughs> know how to make your man happy, just think about what makes you happy and do exactly the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show, everybody. Come on. Oh. Oh, nothing. Hey. Hey, hey. good to see on? you, fella. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, guy. What's Let's going say, on? Hey. What's going on today? Oh, well, today, I'm glad you asked, Guy, because <laughs> today President Bush went on two Arab TV networks. Oh, that was yesterday. To denounce the abuse of Iraqi prisoners right. by U.S. soldiers. Here's a look. Ready? We're a great country because we're a free country, and we do not tolerate these kind of abuses. The people in the Middle East must be assured that, uh, that we will investigate fully, that we will find out the truth. He goes to that free well a lot, doesn't he? But what do you guys think? Quinn, the man's out of touch. We have a seven... He's cutting taxes. We have a... Would you shut up? Where is it? He's just so eager. I'm eager. Yeah. I'm a... Dove, you're trying to score. We don't like it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not trying to score. Shut up and go ahead. I can't wait to your exciting wait, speech. Listen to me. Go ahead, it's speech. not a speech. I'm saying he's cutting taxes. We have a $7 trillion national debt. I don't even think he believes it's a real number. Is it a real number? Trillion? No, I think somebody must have said something. Somebody said, Mr. President, you know we have a seven trillion dollar debt. He was like, seven trillion, billion, bazillion. Get out of my office, boy. You know what, though? Look. No left. He didn't even say he, sorry, though. He didn't actually apologize. Why did should he? he? He shouldn't. You know what? They drag, they oh, drag our bodies through the street like dead rugs, and we say nothing, and nothing happens on the news. We take a couple sexy photos, and everybody's pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> it's true. I mean, people are making... I think the Arabs are laughing at us, going, boy, they really are soft. All they want to know is how they're going to get their, you know, Kazanich out of the scene. They don't care if we do this to a couple of dregs. They don't give a damn about those Kazanich. idiots. I don't like the way they're blaming the soldiers, though, man. That uh, You could tell. If you watch the pictures, they're not, they're, they're not like, having a good time. When you're doing foul stuff to a person and having a good time and it's, you and it's off the cuff, face. it's like, hey, yeah, yeah. Get, get, but it, it's very, like, you get on top of him. You get on top of him. <laughs> you get. It's You know it yeah. came down from somebody. Man. Really, that, that, I, you can't blame those kids for I wanna, that. I really do want to meet that girl, though. She's pretty. That she girl, like that little, she's, a she's, a little, she's a little dominatrix. She had the little. She was looking she had at him the on the leash today. Yeah, him on the leash. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm sure that'll go off a big. She's she a hot number. She's gonna. She's gonna be like 250 thing. American to get that done. <laughs> but let me ask you this. What? First of all, somebody explain <laughs> to me. It's like 300. Send oh, it hell with it. I just didn't hear. Let's move on. What's next? Jesus, Colin, what's wrong? I just had a mood swing. Disney is. Disney has refused to release Michael Moore's new documentary, Fahrenheit 9-11, that links President Bush with bin Laden's family and criticizes the war in Iraq. Here's more on why he thinks Disney did it, and followed by Michael Eisner. Disney was afraid of offending uh, Jeb Bush uh, because they were up for millions of dollars of tax abatements and tax incentives in the state of Florida. Any company has the right to distribute or not to distribute. We, have, we uh, informed both the agency that represented the film and all of our companies that we just didn't want to be in the middle of a politically oriented film doing election year. Now, I hate to defend this uh, guy that I hate, Michael Moore, but are you trying to tell me, you just said, we don't want to do a f politically oriented film in an election year. Yeah, you don't want anything with any kind of content. That's a bad idea. You know, Goofy just keep making the usual him. stupid, awful stuff you make. <laughs> Eisner and the rest of these dumb Hollywood idiots. It's all part of the right-wing Jewish uh, conspiracy. Holy Jesus. Oh, holy Jesus. mother. <laughs> You really are an independent film <laughs> Yeah, he really is. He really is trying to make a stand. What the, the hell? The I'm Jewish writer. And cut. And we'll do that again. Right Stop it. And you think... <laughs> Doug, Doug, right. Doug <laughs> you think you're kidding, but guess what? All the people on the left would go, yeah, there is a right-wing Jewish, uh, right-wing conspiracy, no, and they'll say, say Rumsfeld the and Paul... Jewish What's that? They would Pearl. say that there's a left-wing Jewish conspiracy, No, but a, right a lot of people say it's a right-wing one, too. Wolfowitz, Remember. Pearl, Ron, Wolfowitz, Pearl, and uh, what's the other? Right. What's the Jews do run a lot of shit. Could you stop eating and pay attention? What are you, homeless? <laughs> Listen, answer the question. <laughs> the Listen. bottom line is, do you agree with Michael Moore as much as it disgusts me to agree with him? I do agree Why? with him. Why? I, I agree with him, too. Yeah. I hate him. Why? 
Why do I hate him? The guy, the guy. No, good, man. please. He's, he's an honest well, dude. It's, it's great. You gotta, it's, it's good for he's him. Honest, he's an honest subjective. guy, man. He's really honest. It's that, great for because his book got banned. It went to number one. So maybe right. This, it is know. good for him. It's all hype. That's all he's doing is hyping it up so that people will be like, oh my god, he's we have not to see hyping this movie. it up. Disney's hyping it up. But he's, about? he's getting into it because it, 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 the only negative publicity is going to help him. He How could care. anybody argue with what Morris saying? And yes, I am hungry. How, How could anybody argue with what Morris saying about what? About not about what Morris saying? Is there's obviously some sort of tax issue in Florida, which sure. why else wouldn't they want to put it out? You want to lose $35 million? Of course. Well, they lost care. $75 million on Alamo. He, th it serves them. <laughs> it serves Disney. They want to get slick. They want to do business with Mia Max. You want Mike, to be independent. Right. Talk. Mike, but let me tell you this about Michael Moore. Honest. Michael Moore, as you call him. He was so honest that I'll never forget in his play. And this is one of the reasons I hate him. Well, when he well, said, what play a Colin stop so making 1946 references that nobody knows. <laughs> stop always trying to prove you're smarter than everybody. We never heard of Michael Moore's play. We saw that dumb goddamn documentary he did, and we're going to see this one. So let's, let's, stay, let's stay with everybody else. You know, when Michael Moore first started, <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. He is right. We, this dude, <laughs> he from, is right. from what the average guy knows, Michael the, Moore is honest. We don't want to go back the to play, the CIA films the play, there, Colin. That, that play last year, by the way, it ran for about nine months in London wait, and stop, New York. Wait a minute. Sorry. Did anybody hear this play, please? The plays are fake anyway, right? Nobody, <laughs> Colin. Not, not one person. Stop trying to be above us all. <laughs> Liz, did you hear about this play? Folks, he really should go with a pipe. He, the little wrist oh, of Michael Moore. Moore. I really apologize that I was trying to be above you by having heard of a play. Hey, I'm in a play. It's very respectable. Go yeah, on. Yeah, it's time. called the Why Marijuana I Slept Laws. With Can I get Brady. My... <laughs> <laughs> Is that a snap? Collins, you're dealing with illiterates. You're dealing with illiterates. I mean, it's not if like I said. If they had a play together, if they were starting a play, it was called the illiterate dumb. monologues. I can't take this kind of right. ignorance. Oh. You understand what I said? A play, <laughs> and you went on a rampage, and dummy, of course. Look who's on Why your side. Why am I dumb? Why am I dumb? Leave him alone. Why are you calling you pee? You're, you're, you're picking on himself. the dumbest person. <laughs> he that shows you're not smart. <laughs> that he proves is, he's not smart. He is the people, Pick on this smart looking. He represents us. Most of us didn't know Michael Moore did a play. We know that dumb movie he did with the uh, cartoon in it. That's all we know of this goofy why pedophile you, face. All, <laughs> all they have to do we is, don't care. We know him from the from the Oscars. All, but, all, they, have, all they have to do is animate this thing and they can say whatever the hell they want. <laughs> did, you uh -huh. know, all right, does anybody all right. have any weed? <laughs> we'll be right back after this City officials in Miami are hoping to recruit more black police uh -huh. officers by dropping the swimming requirement for Africans. <laughs> what do you have to say to that, cuz? Well, here's the big problem. You know, people can't swim, admit We can swim. You stink. Oh. If you could swim, you wouldn't be in this we predicament. Do here. <laughs> we, oh, we, oh, you, we do swim. We swim. Oh, we know you can swim. We do swim. I'm going to get ready. Hey, hey, look. Let I'm going to tell you. I'm going to get ready to be scientific oh, about let it. Let when we, when we grow up, black people, it, swimming is not a competitive thing. We don't do any sport where I can't say your mother afterwards, your mother ain't, you know, talk about your mama or, right. or say, hey, you ain't, you suck. It, swimming is a very lonely, very, we, we're very So is chain snatching, but somebody's pretty good at that. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Hey, we're, think... we're really, we're community type of people, man, so that's why we do it. We're very good at team sports. We don't play golf. We don't swim. We barely play tennis now. We really don't. It's just, it's not enough Colin. Talk. Blacks, Look at Colin. Colin. Blacks don't <coughs> swim. White people don't dance We do. Fire we do swim. Here's it's the just not the issue. We're not proficient at, we're not competitive at it, but if we was to get competitive, you, know you keep opening your White mouth, we're gonna start swimming, and then you're gonna be oh. talking about oh, they take over swimming you're too. Right. You're right. You're right. Oh, that was a black guy doing a black voice. This is Haitians. <laughs> That is saying that, am I right? I yeah, mean, oh, isn't that. that how they got here? They should be... They should put a badge on them when they get here. The whole hey. police department should be Haitian. The problem is, listen to me. Would you listen to me, please? Well, I'll wait, solve Dove it right now. wants to say now. something. He's got a solution. Dove is. Yes. Dove, go yes. ahead. Yes. Listen to me. Don't swing. Just go yes. to the toilet. The black man makes a bad swimmer. However... The black man. However... Yes. We can swim. Shut up. However... We, we all can know that. swim, though. Shut up. However, <laughs> Let him we all know they have the upper hand in the 100-yard dash. Now, 
Listen to me. <laughs> don't move. Just tell him. That's exactly what no, Get it out there uh, now. That was it, Colin. Now no, no. he's sitting it. No, no. Now it wasn't it. it. Now he's going to try to add me. Anybody has ever been mugged in the hundred Has anybody ever been mugged here and then had the guy make his escape via waterway? There. Now shut up. You idiot. Wow, you saved that. You're really good. You want to play games with me? God, as I'm much rolling. as I love Wait. you, you saved your ass with that one. Because I'll right. tell you, I wasn't even going to not put you on again. I was going to boot you off this episode. <laughs> Colin, why can't Tony Camille ever say anything? I Tony, said a good one earlier. I know. Are you fine with that, Tony? Yeah, I just don't that's want good you. Enough. It's not that I give a damn about you. I don't want you bad mouthing me to other comedians. I want you to say that Kyle's a great guy. You they know already me, know. They know you I, can't I, talk I, right. But I don't know you. <laughs> I saw you at the comedy awards. Did you say I can't talk right? Yeah. What does that mean, Tony? You have a problem with enunciation. No, Tony, I don't. I yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. God. Tony, let me explain something to you, Tony. We don't know each other I mean, that well at all. We don't know each other, okay? We don't know each other. You've heard... One of the reasons I have a problem with enunciation is because every day I have spontaneous new things to say. Unlike your friends that think they're so alternative, <laughs> and yet they're doing the same old stuff every day, right. I like to work off the cuff for real. So once in a while I get a little upset and nervous, and I spittle, and I stutter. But, Tony... I find it endearing. I know, Tony, but I'm just trying to explain when you bring that message back to your friends. Is it that last stutter, one was pretty good, though, the punch you know, I'm line, sorry, right? you mumbled. What? You don't have what? Oh, oh Doug, Jesus! <laughs> Doug's still pissed. He actually turned on me. Doug. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No, no. Go sit. All right, Colin, so. he's saying that you mumble. I... I no, he's saying no. that the, the word... Go ahead. What are we going to say? Anybody? I happen to love... Listen, you know What's what? The this sucks because now... Because you have to swim. If you're a police officer almost surrounded by water, you should have to swim. And because you're black and you didn't have your own Why pool you when you swim? were a kid... It, that shouldn't matter. But I mean, to last what, are gonna, what are we going to make? Basketball requirement Bobby. now? Shh. Bobby, you wait. throw one more thing. When one the last time you're, you're surrounded by Stop water it. doesn't mean you're going to be chasing. Let me say something. First of all, when's the Bob says your own pool like you grew up some rich white neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. This son of a bitch was in juvie for yeah. 11 years. <laughs> I'm you not kidding. Kidding. I was in a, juvie. For what? First Shut time I saw a pool, he was naked <laughs> and babysitting. And he acts like he had a nice pool and a happy childhood. Your childhood was awful. I was in juvie. Shut Dove your mouth. acts what? like he was in juvie. What do you mean I act Dove, like I was in juvie? You're getting a little out of control today, Dove, Dove. likes to box. Watch out. Dove's I got some like fast hands. Juvie. I'm just saying what that. that. I let people I, butter up my say, ass. Let me just <laughs> say something. Let me just say something. Okay. This is, this is really crap. Right. I'm serious. It this is. is crap. If you, it's swimming. You can't. You can learn to swim in five minutes. Well, and these guys don't want to go in and learn actually, how to I swim. I was not a good swimmer. I used to swim like that all the time because they say in New York, swimming style. Bobby, you swim, look at your towels. So nobody steals your stuff. People can the whole time. swim. This is. I just get sick of y'all qualifying what we can do. We admit that you said you couldn't do it. He just said I'm sick of y'all qualifying what we can do. You know what? We don't know. We. I didn't say we don't swim well. We don't swim as a. As a thing, but we can swim. Nobody's asking you for the cops I'll tell you exactly why. Metal in the breaststroke. I'll you're tell you exactly what it is. You're gonna swim 150 feet, and these guys are complaining. Whoever snatched the chain and dove into the ocean? <laughs> God, you said that was that last. You already time. said it, stupid. I know, but you nobody laughed at the to same joke twice. Shh. You stay they like it. Listen. Shut up and let them laugh. There's two points that both have you. to be addressed. Point one: Yes, we know if you decided to swim, you might be. Like every other sport, excel past us in no time. But be honest. The bottom line is this. The reason you don't swim, community room, no pool. Rikers, no pool. That's where you're great at ping pong. Because any sport right. that can be played... In a prison. Any sport that can be played in the day room, you master. The Chinese are good at ping pong, too. Nothing for that one, folks. <laughs> the day room, and I got nothing. You know, see, the fact that you know so much about black people is really a curse to you and your white friends. What? They, they, I'm going to tell you why. Colin has a real knowledge of, like black people for some reason so when he says these black things he thinks that all white people know about community day rooms and you don't <laughs> so he's a man in purgatory black, <laughs> black people don't like him and white people don't understand him he don't know where he's going
I heard you two were fighting in the in the back room, Nick and Patrice. You know, fellas, you got to save something for the show sometimes. You go back there with an ugly attitude, and then we come out here, and there's nothing left to say. So just a word of warning. Well, Hi, Mike. You've never uh, been on. How's things over at Conan? You're still making a million dollars, you son of a bitch? It's up. Tom, how's your sitcom? Any word on it yet if it's getting picked up? Yeah, my sitcom no, will be on uh, tomorrow at 8.30 on NBC. Tom... <laughs> Stop trying to ironically act like, yeah, you're just promoing it to be deconstructionist. You're nervous, it's going to get an awful rating, and you'll be finished. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tomorrow at 8.30 after Friends on NBC. Will you guys please watch it? It's really well, going to help your rating. I'll be on the plane at 8.30 going to Giggles in Seattle. <laughs> Him in a place called Giggles. What a combination. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to go, hey, Giggles. <laughs> What's he yelling at us for? <laughs> so let me ask you guys this. First, let me explain. You saw the show yesterday, I hope. Terrific. The, well, you know the bench last week. If anybody does any hack thing, or if I just arbitrarily decide Bobby Kelly's going to come in and fill in for a while. Well, thank, thank you for explaining that, because they thought I had, like, handicapped seating up here. <laughs> Sitting here oh, like an ass. Attitude's not going to help you. That's right, there, now, <laughs> now listen to me. First of all, you saw this yesterday. I'm paying for the. Right now, we're going to do charity stuff. This is the Haitian Dominican flood victims. So far, it's 120 out of my own poor pocket. So if you let me do any of these things to you, or if you want to do them to me, and you'll pay. These. That's the list. You've seen it before. Pinch tits. There was a flood in Haiti. There was a big flood in Haiti and Dominican Republic. They come over here on tires, anyways. What's the difference? <laughs> 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 That's why he's Nick D. Uh, all right, so the accuser in the Kobe Bryant case cannot be referred to as the victim. You heard about this? Because of the, uh, during the trial, they just said no because it makes it guilty. Mike, you were actually in the legal profession. What do you think about this? Um, they're going to allow her to call herself the white woman, so it's still bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your legal expertise. Yes, you're welcome. I can say white woman in Latin to make it sound more official. And they said the judge is going to be allowed to use the N-word the whole trial. So. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. What do you think? Let me guess. But we look at him sitting there trying to think of the racial angle. Yeah, he's yeah, sitting there like, how are white people yeah. responsible? He's still thinking about polarities. Look, Can we be innocent once in a while? Get, look, you guys just look. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Keep me out of this. I'm just saying. I, this is serious business, this whole well, COVID. What is serious business? Well, at least it's good news that she's not the victim anymore. And if they get to bring in those that... Listen, They're not calling him the rapist. Are they? The, They're not. The accused. The accused. Well, he rapist. is accused, dummy. And once you're accused... <laughs> he's going in for a layup and he's got her blood on his shirt. I think he's, it might be some guilty. <laughs> Oh, this whoa, is whoa, that was edgy. <laughs> What's that now? That's why I'm leaving it alone. I don't like you leaving alone a racial subject. It's insincere and it's pissing me off. Tom, how's the sitcom? <laughs> the sitcom's going great. I'm on TV. Shut up! <laughs> It's they deal with rape on the This pilot. is the first it's time. Really was, he a, was he a lawyer? <laughs> Look, Mike yeah, was yeah, almost yeah, a lawyer. Talk. I was disbarred. What is this new lawyer comedy? What, Drew was like another 79. idiot like that. What is this? What is, what is this? This is old lawyer comedy. It all can be helpful for you. <laughs> but, have a lawyer around. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I'll make a call to hilarities for you. <laughs> I'm just reeling from that. What, now, listen. Well, look, why does it take this millionaire to get this whole... Uh, not a victim thing turned around. Why is why is this brand new? Why is it? Has There's this a lot before? of evidence against yeah, it's brand new here. Here. What, it's I don't know why. It's, it, but why is you know that she's Nobody not? Nobody ever brought I'm it up. Still before. stuck on hilarities. That's the what problem. do you mean? No one's brought it up. No one's. Is this is a pr new precedent, there, uh, Mr. Lawyer. Is this a precedent? You better no, have some legal information, you idiot. Well, you're sitting here writing those stupid Conan O'Brien farting hot dog things. He <laughs> wants some information, son of a bitch. You know what? Beat it for a minute. That's a nice one. That's a 95 reference. He referenced something from 19. No, I'm beat it. Totally no, not. he's right. What? I'm sorry. Don't drink my water. Yeah, 95 is right. I'm sorry I don't watch Conan nightly and religiously, stupid. Put table up that bench. <laughs> I gotta sit next to these. <laughs> you can burn me with a match if you want. Go ahead. It's good to have the Puerto Rican Howie you. Mandel on the show. You son of Look a it. bitch. Could you do me a favor? Can you just talk to the to the successful side of the show today right here? <laughs> the, the sitcom stars. <laughs> the jury. Oh, oh that's right. He's got a series, The Jury. His own out. show, Brett Butler, 19, what, circa 1989? I don't know. I, I can't help it, man. Reparations don't apply to me in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sorry, Mr. Nick. Does it apply to you? <laughs> it's Joe New. <laughs> Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, What's up? Uh, what? What about uh, this case? Anything? Yeah, you know about what, anything. You know about rape? Come on. What? <laughs> I've never raped anybody, first of all. Wait a minute. I, wait a minute, what? You did 11 years in juvie. And you How do you do 11 years in juvie? That makes me 22. <laughs> you ass. Do the math. All right. Well, 11 hours. Uh, Mike, come on back. I don't want this convicted villain. <laughs> I mean, eight years. Uh, I don't know. Where's the cutoff? Uh, what's know. the most time you can do what in juvie? Miss? You're a lawyer. What's the most time what? you can do in juvie? I, I, I was a lawyer for... Two years ago, two years, a long time ago. What are you so all... nervous about? So, okay, what do you want to know? Because he took bribes. <laughs> Jesus, what is I'm embarrassed. Did you get it's an embarrassing the job. It's Did like, you get thrown out of the legal profession? Huh? Yeah, you're one of those Irish Fordham law. I know exactly what happened. You went down there to the Bronx. Oh, you figured out I was Irish from the name Sweeney. You are clever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Right before the show we gave, these guys and myself had to take this quiz to see what your potential to kill somebody is. There were 25 questions like, do you think everybody's out to get you? Do you ever been violent at work? Do you ever have bigoted or angry views? Blah, 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 all these different questions. So here's what happened. We're all in the watch out category. As you can see, for some reason, I have been pushed to the limit of the watch out, but we're all in the same category, watch out. See how progressively white it got? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. It went from, it, wait a minute, it went from black to, to, to eggplant, <laughs> to, to, to the Moors, to, you know, half Moors. Italian, because it is Papa, but he's like trying to be really white guy. Uh, Sweeney and Quinn, and to the, the two white guys are the biggest. But the violence always starts with the blacks. Shannon. Because we, let, whoa, you know why? I'm going to tell you why. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But that's because black people know how to get their violence out. Get their violence. So, so, I thought you said get their violence No, on. so it doesn't build up. It doesn't build up to murder. Yeah. yeah it's true you guys never commit murders. No, not often. <laughs> Listen, attempted. We listen, don't listen. This is Jason all, Williams. This is something look, good. <laughs> y'all do. See, it's y'all. Y'all keep it inside. Nah, so you're wrong. <laughs> you keep it inside. I'm telling you. But that's why he's least, because he's a white guy who rah, lets it out. Sweeney, <laughs> he's gonna press. kill his wife, so I'm no doubt. <laughs> Bobby gets his anger out. This is for a serial killer, right? Yes, a serial I killer. So, yeah. oh, I don't have. I would do it once. Is it serial killer, or just like a guy that goes up on the roof of a mall? No, that's I think it's serial killer. killer. Serial, like wow, spy. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. Now that takes a lot of work. That's a white guy's. Crime. You have to start getting serious. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have pie charts and you gotta stock paper. Pie charts. <laughs> you do have to do a that's lot right. of like handyman stuff to yeah. set up the shack yeah. with the restraints. That's how that sniper got I mean, caught. That sniper got so caught in DC sleeping in his car. That's right. That's true. He did. <laughs> Can you send him over there for using some of his act? That was from his act. And there's nothing topical in my no, act. It was. Good. <laughs> it was from Goodfellas. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. You know it is, right? What I'm saying. Slipping a. What just happened? <laughs> You know what just happened? I tried to add something that was kind of clever and uh, funny into uh -huh. this Mad Mix, right, and right. I shut the place down <laughs> like it was a damn orange alert. <laughs> hey, Bob. Why? I'll sit for a minute. I deserve this. <laughs> oh, no. Look at your skin. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hi, Janet Jackson. This, I'm going to read the teleprompter. I'm not even going to stutter through it. Ready? Good luck. Janet Jackson finally spoke out about the whole Super Bowl incident. Oh, woo -hoo. I used... Am I reading this right here? There we go. I just wanted to pretend like I was calling. Let me actually do calling. Uh, um, uh, it was used truly to uh, just take out the uh, attention what was really going to... I don't mean you. I don't care. I'll do the show by myself. What do you think? What do you think, uh, yeah, I'll tell what you she's think. saying? Yeah, what do you think? She's saying it was used to take attention away from wh what was going on in the world. Yeah. And what, that was being what, the Patriots putting a dynasty together? Is that what you guys are <laughs> We used a black nipple to ruin the uh, Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> oh, this sucks. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so what you have? Uh, so go. Colin has some power. Right, we go back to the bench. Go back to the bench. Get back over there. Oh. <laughs> Holy Jesus. You guys all turned on me. This is like... <laughs> it's not like, so easy. Remember, I was there for easy. you. Give a big hand to the commission. <laughs> <laughs> This is like a Nickelodeon show. There's like guys running in and <laughs> green slime sitting on the bench. Down. You're right. Some idiot was taping the. Uh, bench I don't like the way he tried to plug oh, a show me. he used to executive produce. What Nickelodeon? Yeah, he used you to did? do the slime I'm, show. That's exactly. Right. Work. I'm sorry, it doesn't have that careful intellect that Conan has. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> I've not had it. No need to get angry. There's no need. <laughs> You're on the edge there. <laughs> He's He's nice, no problem. Let's do it out. I look Let's like he just grabbed me. Oh, yes. Jesus. Yeah, Mike, you look like Richard Speck. Remember that guy that killed him? Yeah. Is, this so, right. is this so we don't like have to take a piss game. break? <laughs> <laughs> you know, these, these college kids, they don't even know who Richard Speck is. It, you well, know, they get older yes, they do. We all know Richard. But he was, well, black, he was in that video a, a few years ago. Killer. You were supposed to give me that tape of that video. Whatever happened, stupid. Richard, I did you oh. a favor, <laughs> yeah. and you promised me the that video. That wasn't me. That was, was that girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever happened. They, I want to take, the there's tape a tape of Richard Speck in jail. He has breast implants, been in for 25 years. He's got that, you know, he's in Going drugs. Illinois, and he's right. got the big brother like, yo, and they're like making him blow him, and they got coke. It's like an exciting video. It sounds a little, <laughs> it sounds a little harsh at you first. You see that? Do you they're see that excited. white girl right there in the middle with the red? She has no clue. What any? What's going on? Wait. <laughs> why, All she wants to do is, is lift up her skirt for Snoop Dogg. And <laughs> she doesn't know who Richard Speck is. You gotta explain to these people who he is, well, or use an updated serial killer one. in your jokes. But he looks more like Richard Speck. <laughs> he does, yes. he looks just like Richard Speck. But who is Richard Speck to a 19-year-old tenderloin to... like that? She don't know. <laughs> Let me say one. Time, Think of me as Snoop Dogg. First of all, there's a, there's a TV audience we're trying to read. Second of all, <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Size Me Up is where we bring out two audience members. Our comics have to guess where they're from, what they do, and then an interesting fact about them. And from what I hear, it's all the rage on the message boards. <laughs> so you guys are doing a heck of a job. Let's bring out our first person, Clarence. This is Clarence. You have 20 seconds to size him up. Clarence. Ready? We got to hang here for 20 seconds. You know, the music. Right. Okay. What a fun show. This could be the theme show for Tough Crowd. It's a yeah. tough crowd. Da -na 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 hey, it's a tough crowd. How you doing, there? Oh. Okay, let's see what you got. Starting with Nick from Detroit. <laughs> Works for a Midas muffler. <laughs> He's working on a uh, barbecue flavored uh, bikini wax. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice. He's from the sun. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a struggling actor, which means he's a waiter, and he speaks 75 languages fluently. All right, Mike Sweeney. Uh, I know he's not from Great Neck. He's not an eyeglass salesman. <laughs> and then I just had not. I didn't know. <laughs> All right, tell me. Um, he's really from Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> His job is a stockbroker. <laughs> and the interesting fact is he used to be Flavor Flav. All right. <laughs> Clarence. All right. Clarence, what's, what's the real answer? Well, actually, I'm from Spanish Harlem. I'm unemployed, and I Get do... Get the hell out of here. <laughs> well, I don't. And I do very interesting splits. Can you do one? I don't want you to hurt yourself. What do you do? Just split? Well, I do them naked. Oh! Good for you. Well, I mean... Well, well, Take off your clothes and do uh, one. I don't care. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Clarence. Yep, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Alvin. Okay. Alvin, let's try this again. 20 seconds. It's a tough crowd. It's a tough crowd now. I'll tell you. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, no. ba, na, na, na. Okay, we're going to start this time with Tom Popper from the other end. Oh, okay. Tommy, what do you got? Um, okay, he lives in a hollow tree. <laughs> 
He, um... <laughs> he, <laughs> he makes cookies. <laughs> and his chest hair is made of cookie dough. Oh, uh, Mike, sweetie! Um, <clears throat> he is from Great Neck. <laughs> he sells eyeglasses, and he went to uh, summer camp with Ariel Sharon. Ah. Okay, Patricio. He's from Israel. He's, um, his job is that he's, uh, he fiddles on roofs. <laughs> <laughs> and he survived 75, uh, pogroms. <laughs> All right, Nick. Uh, I can't read this. He's from the Gaza Strip. <laughs> He sells ecstasy, and uh, he, inve he invented adult diapers. All right. Alvin, what's the truth? I'm from Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn? I'm retired. Retired. And unusual thing, I once tried to pick up my wife because I didn't recognize her. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Clarence. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you, Clarence. Cheers. New York hosts everything from the Republican convention to The Apprentice. Now the city wants to host the 2012 Olympics. <laughs> what, what new events would give the games a more New York feel? And remember, fellas, try to hit it out of the park. I heard somebody from the Steinberg Management Company might be in the crowd. All right, who's up first? Tom. <laughs> All right. One of the best events of the Olympics is the long jump. So for a New York twist, we will conduct the long jump on 42nd Street. Hmm. And rather than run all the way and try and jump like an idiot, we'll measure what most people do on 42nd Street, public urination. <laughs> all right, Patrice. Bunch of different uh, events. The roach toss. <laughs> the bum smack. <laughs> spot the fake Rolex and Fendi purse competition. <laughs> Escape from a burning building while carrying grandma down the stairs dash. <laughs> the cop bribe, guess the hooker's disease, the, the subway push, the rat lassoing. <laughs> Who's the transvestite? The, the draft dodge and the Arab frisk. Ah, all right, Mike. You know, those are great, but who cares what the events are going to be? No, the, the important thing is, by pushing to get the 2012 Olympics, New York City is proving it will do whatever it takes to stay America's number one terrorism target. <laughs> it, it's the perfect follow-up. It's the perfect follow-up to volunteering to host this summer's Republican convention in a city without a single registered Republican. <laughs> But there's still so much more New York can do, like getting the Super Bowl, running an oil pipeline under this, the Empire State Building, and opening a military base in Times Square for the Israeli army. <laughs> Let's work together so we can remain scared Okay, well, well, and if you have a pause, if you pause in the middle again and get a pause, I, I had I'll no idea. Right. I've never been on the pause, show. You son of a bitch. I'm sorry. Nick, I'm sorry. Nick, I have three events. Uh, first, subway luge. That's when we strap two guys on the top of the A train on their backs. First one to lift their head loses. <laughs> Second, the 5,000 meter women's bikini race through Central Park. It starts at midnight. <laughs> Contestants are allowed one can of mace. The girl who makes it to the finish line without being sexually assaulted wins. <laughs> and the last one's the fetus find. <laughs> Teams run through the city looking for dead fetuses. <laughs> Team who comes back with the most wins, extra points for umbilical cords. All right, that's the show, everybody. It's got to be a mixed blessing, don't you think, to be the Hamas new leader? He's like, congratulations, run. <laughs> hey, uh, how would you like to be the new Hamas leader? I couldn't, thank you, no. There's other people that have been around. What about Hamid? No, oh, you are too generous, my friend. Uh, you are the gangster, Emilio Wangster. They, you know. <laughs> what else happened? They bombed a Sheridan yesterday in Baghdad, and they have a picture of this suspect that bombed that Sheridan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Paris Hilton joke with no sex. No, I'm, I'm the Mac. Now listen to me. Iraq is a dangerous place to stay at a hotel. I was over there. First of all, the Motel 6 motto is, we'll leave the light out for you. 
Then the, it's the only place I make you get a credit card for incidentals of your arms and legs. I didn't appreciate that one. I valeted my car, then I see it on the six o'clock news speeding into an army barricade. You know, I'd like to be a valet at that hotel. Every time they, somebody, you have to start somebody's car, they hit the deck. The valets have gray hair at 17, for crying out loud. I had my wake-up call, came out of a loudspeaker on top of a mosque. I'm serious. Nothing? All right. The mint. Oh, believe me, I'm not done. The mint on my pillow is ticking. All right. Look. Oh, then everybody steals the towels because they need something to wear to jihad that night. I'm telling you. Okay, before last week's NCAA tournament, sports columnist Bob Ryan, who's white, announced on ESPN that Vanderbilt would lose because they had too many white guys on the team. Ryan said Vanderbilt won't win because they have too many white guys. The code, ethics, and culture of basketball, in case the game is new to anybody, is a black man's game and a white man is privileged to be allowed to step on the court. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, huh? What? I love Bob Ryan. You know I'm from Boston. I love old school races. Bob, Bob Ryan. <laughs> He tells the truth. Look at, that, look at that goofy white boy. He shouldn't have lied. Look at it. First of all, let's be quite honest. It's white people are still allowed to play, but foreign white people, regular good American white people, y'all are finishing every single sport I can think of. So adopt foreigners as your saviors and a white skin what about or whatever. Hockey? Doesn't hockey have a lot of white people? Well, yeah, but it's true. The brothers are moving in on that. God knows how they have The leading scorer was like... He's right beating each other with fish. And all the NBA white guys are all Serbians and stuff, you know? Right. But, you know, Bob Ryan, it's like... Uh, the guy's a uh, Boston guy. He's Irish. You know what I mean? He's probably prone to have a few drinks, as you people might have. <laughs> as your ilk, my guy just like yapping away, and he's telling the truth. That's what I think. It's racist. It's not racist. It's not racist. Ah, it's 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 not not racist. The problem is that... Rush Limbaugh said basically the same thing as about Donovan McNabb, and he had to get booted and apologize. Right. It is a racist thing to say. It's like looking at all the because you, because you know, black people, <laughs> black people are never the ones that cause the controversy behind these, sto these statements. We don't care because we know it's true. It's, Hold it's, on a second. No, wait. It's, it's, like, it's a racist thing to say. It's like saying that Hollywood is run only by Jews and and gay people. It's a truthful thing to say. <laughs> Let me tell you <laughs> something. Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Jewish or gay? Oh, Spike Lee, who said Larry Bird was overrated the other day? Yeah, yeah, first of all, let me say one thing about Spike Lee. Don't out me. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm saying this about Spike Lee. So you're telling me, Spike, that you, there's actually a case of somebody because of their race that was overrated their whole career? You're right. <laughs> Girl Six was the only bad thing he did. Everything else was good. Why would you cut out my brilliant? Wait a minute. Go ahead. You got to look at who said this. It's Bob Ryan. He made this big statement, and then it turns out he made the wrong prediction. I mean, you know, this is Vanderbilt. Team, yeah, Vanderbilt turned around and won. Nobody's listening to him because he can't even get the game right. Let me tell you something. Black guys are shit. Anybody, when it goes two seconds up in that game, the only time you want a white guy touching that ball if he's on the foul line. <laughs> <laughs> or his feet are set behind a three-point arc. That's it. <laughs> or the ref. Or the ref. First of all, what's more never when an Italian guy goes, so let me tell you something. <laughs> well, all right, I'm no let's fan. talk about this black high school student in Arizona who was arrested for wearing his baseball cap that's sideways. He refused to turn it to the front. Is that him? Oh, no, that's not that. That's the picture. That's the picture that my liberal state picks. So he looks like the most sympathetic. Look, am I really imagining it, everybody? Staff. I'm talking to the staff. Am I imagining it? What is that supposed to be? An Arizona high school? So go ahead. You have a problem with this? <laughs> Who does it? Look, first of all, it's disrespectful. Here's how sad. Here's how sad white people. I really, <laughs> I hate to continuously bring up this white subject matter. Then why do you? Why? How can you it's not? Because white sense. people are continu They're constantly silly. White people are not. White people are not. They gave up. They gave up trying to arrest black people. Now they're trying to arrest black culture. They are trying to arrest kids for being niggery, not not being niggers. They're trying to arrest the country because it's infecting white kids. Now let me ask you something. But it's too late, isn't it? White children. Let me ask you something. Of course it is. But let me ask you something. If your culture has 
Baseball hats? That's part of your culture? What is that? What about opera, you stupid? You said it was! You said it was! You said it was! Don't say why is that our culture! You just said it was! First of all, did you see how better that kid looked than Colin looked? This this is why... I'm an old man! Don't compare me with a seven-year-old kid! I'm finished! What? Look at me, you're gonna believe me. That is a generation thing, now you're gonna attack me for being an old, miserable That's Irishman. Right. I gotta go, go Why ahead. on earth is turning your cat sideways disrespectful when there are girls in high schools walking around with advertising on their asses? That is No, a but here's the problem. They made the white kids, that they let keep their hats on sideways. I should have, they sure should have made do. them take their sure. big pointy white hats off. It was, was like, look at white kids, yeah. look what so, we're gonna do with you and uh, and we're gonna take them that away. Is that what it was? How can you say to stop your kids from being black. Let me say, black. Let me say something. Late, though. If that's true. How can what you say white people true, are silly if when you true, make... If that's true, why is it that all the real serious black schools run by black principals and black teachers, the first thing to do is make the kids take their hats off? I show respect. What, do they want the kids to be what, but white culture? No, because they I know, know it's I've never heard that. Prove it, show it. You, I didn't it's get that in the memo. It's too stupid. I, it, it's, I'm not saying. Wait, are you, you saying black people invented the hat? I'm not saying you are. This is what goes on. I'll tell you what it is. Hip hop is hip hop is the blob. Hip hop is out of control, and you're trying to stop it now. It's too effing late. It's too late. <laughs> It's too late. He's a big silly brown man saying white people are silly. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. He doesn't mean silly. He means corny. I'm, 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 I'm an expert in white people. I hate to say I'm, I'm no white people. You're not I, I'm an expert no white in white people. I grew up in Boston. I know. That's why I know Bob Ryan. You grew up in Boston. I went to a black school. I'm not an expert in black people. What's your point? <laughs> what you just said? Why is not? <laughs> What? Did you do a bit on this show? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. no I no, was in that. Oh, no. no. I was just going to say I have a thing about how rappers stole everything from Italians, so I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, set? No, go. No, go. Uh, we'll be right back. Now there's statistical proof that women talk twice as much as men. <laughs> a new study shows that women introduce seven general conversation themes while men discuss only three, sports, money, and sex. That's true. Lynn? I don't think it's true that men only talk about sports, money, and sex. I think men talk about other things. I just think that they don't talk at length about other things. And don't say anything yet, you big dummy. I think what happens is that men... You know, if a man, a guy asks a guy, did you have sex with that girl? Like, yeah, I had sex, let's go get pizza. It's over. With girls, did you have sex with that guy? Yes, we went out She's to dinner. She's talking too much now. Shut That's up. what I'm saying. <laughs> we all have, all the men are already trying to listen to that. that. <laughs> if you're if we didn't stop, you know, you would have stopped talking about your shoes and your earrings. Just shut <laughs> up. We know that. Yeah. Patrice, you've been walking around this whole place with a bag of shoes. One <laughs> pair of shoes, Goofy. Here's the thing. Men talk about money, sports, and sex. Then we listen to the stuff that we think is going to get some <laughs> That's what we do. All right. Now, you two guys are married. I want to hear your opinions. Uh, you know what? I think men just keep quiet because... Women remember everything. So the less we say, the better we are. You have nothing to good say. Point. That's why you're quiet. Rich, a good friend of mine told me that uh, women say 25,000 words a day and men say 14,000 words a day. And the reason is because men know those other 11,000 words we're going to say back are going to get us in big trouble. <laughs> so basically, there's only so many ways you can say you're sorry, really. Look at this. These two married cowards. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? You're going to die lonely. Yeah, you're yeah. I don't care, but I'm going to die with a peaceful soul. I love you. You will never have a peaceful soul. You see, his wife got dressed like, dress like a magician. <laughs> you know what? I can't believe this. I can't believe this. We're moving on. We're moving he's on. He's not a magician. He's Look. got a beard. <laughs> he's an Amish magician. Come on. on. Him, hey. On Monday, we asked you to vote for the singular wireless viewer's choice campaign issue. Hey. <laughs> Get all the commercials for the titty bars. <laughs> and you wanted to hear discussed on today's show. You guys chose the gay marriage theme. So in a new twist over the battle of gay marriages today, Oregon, one county in Oregon said that they ban all marriages, gay or straight, until the state straightens it out. That's think where this Patrice is, is going to go with his girlfriend. <laughs> so they didn't, she says, I want to get married. We can't. <laughs> I mean, what could you say besides good? 
I mean, tell the yeah. truth. I yeah, mean, you got to ban all men. Why not go someplace where you, they just they can, you can tell your girl, oh, I can't, as opposed to you two. I just said You're that, big man. She did. See how we don't listen to you? So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> laugh at this is impossible. <laughs> Let's keep talking to me. So what? But you know what? I think it's a big homosexual conspiracy because I think gay people are probably like, great, the big breeder wheel has stopped. Like, then they can't get married anyway, so they would like it that the, the right. whole thing is banned. So what do you think? It's just some liberal Oregon County, like crazy ass county with, you know, I do. I think it's stupid. Well, great. No one can have pottery shops and lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, not lesbians. <laughs> Definitely not lesbians because nobody has a problem with lesbians. It's only gay men that people have a problem with. But on the other hand, I, go ahead. The, the problem is that religious leaders do not want them getting married because they don't want homosexual sex. Let them get married. They will never have sex again. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Plus, you could just. Rich has done homework to be here. He's like ready. Yeah. I'm Look, the bottom line is this: <laughs> is the uh, I think only the lesbians want to get married. Most gay guys I know, they're like, nah, we don't get married. It's for the lesbians. Because lesbians you gotta have women. somebody take care of you when you get sick. Oh, what? Okay. You gotta punish somebody after you get oh, fat. They gotta like you. That's the way it is. Oh, come on, women. Women Women want to get Wait married for that ultimate Wait. security, so y'all can ch yes. be married to you. Yes. It's security. <laughs> because you're insecure. It's like, oh, it's like women are insecure. I just give up. Oh my God. I just give up. Women are insecure. We you want to go from booty? You want to go from booty? It's all labels. You want to go from booty call to girlfriend? You want to go from booty call to girlfriend? You know what? Because every time I see his miserable face when he strikes out every time here, I know at least I'm going to go home and get an excuse why I can't get it. <laughs> but I'm going to get very close. Have you ever seen such a sad, big Italian hitman? <laughs> you should get divorced right now, Rich. Stop this, man. Oh, yeah. Marriage did that to this scary man. Mandrinos, no. What about your marriage? Is it good? I think he's, I think he's marriage is a beautiful thing when you have someone you could just come home to and share all these wonderful things and, and then I get to talk, so it's a good day. <laughs> You're scared of Leanne, aren't oh, you? Oh, she'll beat my ass. <laughs> Well, he is. He is. Shaking he is. like a leaf. He is. But, but have you seen the whip? That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, nice yeah, wife, yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah. I mean, he should She's be. She's also yeah. smart and funny. Who you cares? <laughs> I don't care. I'm trying to broaden your we'll eyes, right you big dummy. <laughs> so what is everybody gonna know? Let's go down the list. Jim. I think there was a little sexual liaison over the Friday later happening. Okay. Rich. I say he's been secretly giving Patrice O'Neill bags and bags of food for free. <laughs> she. A he. And oh. she's going to rat him out. Lynn. I don't know. I think maybe she he's wearing like girls underwear and she's had an affair with him or something. Okay. Patrice. I he's. I don't know. He's. I, I, I get it. He's. Her father. He is. He is her father, and is not paying okay. child support her baby for daddy? her. That is. It, she's either her right. He's either her baby's daddy. <laughs> baby daddy. Or, it's baby daddy. Or baby daddy. He's either her baby daddy. Or he is. Man. He is her father, who's not taking. And he fires her all the time, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> That's a sitcom. You All right, ready? I know that was like a soap opera. Ready? Okay. <laughs> Let's see what happened. Everybody gonna know. You the one who been traded fast for Okay, you are dismissed. That's right. This man been traded fast for You know it, and I know it. You may leave. I said I ain't leaving. This shit ain't over. You been traded fries for And it ain't right. It ain't right. Thank you. I guess I was right. That is I funny. guess you guys are kind of right. But yeah. who is gonna f somebody for five? <laughs> Other than Patrice. <laughs> I thought that was right. But you know, we do have a panel that's we, we're all capable of polishing off a good meal on this panel. Let's quit kidding ourselves. <laughs> what do you think about that? That was in North Carolina. Fries for. I mean. <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to ask her. That is a wonderful exchange rate. 
That's, how, how, that's a great exchange rate. It yeah. really is. <laughs> but I wonder what it means. Bags of fresh frozen fries. It is kind of a uh, conundrum. No, that's cooked. Those I just are cooked say fries. One thing. No one's gonna give. For frozen fries. French fries. Yeah. Well, a big couple of bags, I'm thinking. No, I, I think it, it's hot fries for hot. <laughs> that's the way it well, works. Well, you know, they make. I don't know. French fries. Uh, that would be bad. Like, you get some old fries, yeah. some old greasy fries. Oh, I never thought about that. I don't that. know how we're going to air this. Yeah, you said it was. You said it was. You Philosophers throughout the ages have pondered how many white people is too many white people. Besides basketball, where else is it a disadvantage to be to have too many whites? Lynn. Uh, Philosophers? Where? Um, it is a disadvantage to have too many white people in church. Have you been to white people church? Well, I have, and it's just boring. Black people church is much better. Face it, without black people church, there would be no American Idol. And why stop there? <laughs> Why stop there? I mean, all dark people have cooler churches, like those wacky Buddhists, you know, rubbing Buddha's belly, and that's fun. Now, you don't get anything like that at my church. No Fantasia singing, no Buddha rubbing, just to wait for some wine and go home. Basically, a lot of kneeling with no happy ending. Uh, obviously, you're not a Catholic. Jim, it's a disadvantage to have a lot of white people in the U.S. Senate. Strom Thurmond and Senator Stennis clogged up the Senate floor until they were in their 80s and 90s because white people live too damn long. <laughs> With no fear of death, there's no incentive to get anything done. Now, minorities don't live as long. You put 45 African Americans, 53 Hispanics, and one Filipino guy in the Senate, and they get stuff done in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, I say it's a disadvantage to have too many white people at airport security. <laughs> because of the fear of being labeled racist, we will have to let everybody go. <laughs> See that guy with the ticking turban? Sorry, I don't want to be insensitive to his culture. <laughs> Isn't that Allen Iverson's crew? 200 years of oppression. <laughs> it would be very damaging to their psyche to search them for weapons. <laughs> what about the guy with the mullet? I'd be discriminating against his right to worship Bon Jovi. <laughs> But don't worry, you can always get us back on the other end when you sue us for job neglect, because either way, we can't win. Ah, Patrice! <laughs> the problem is, white people don't take pride in how boring they are. If, <laughs> if they did, they wouldn't ask black people and Serbians to make everything they do watchable. Learn to recapture your love of being mediocre and your marginal physical ability. Some advice! <laughs> Some advice for you, crackers. The only thing you seem to really excel at is driving. Y'all drive everything: race cars, eighteen wheelers, speedboats, motorcycles. And if those things start to become tired, fight that urge to integrate. Unless you want to see a in a monster truck. <laughs> That's a good visual. That's the show. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Very wild show, huh? Tim? Oh boy! Could you explain uh, the Lynn Patrice magic? I just thought they should be the new honeymooners, those two. They'd be a great couple. They really have a connection. <laughs> Do you guys need a little more time to make sure it's brutal? No. no. You know okay. what? I, I just like the fact that you're actually wearing those socks to give your legs some color. <laughs> <laughs> Is he wearing socks? <laughs> I've seen you before compared to the other outfits. This looks good. <laughs> What's in the bag, Quinn? <laughs> Officer, I'm clean. The, uh, you know what they, in these bags in Ireland, what people don't realize, they put AA meeting books in these. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Having already grossed 265 million, The Passion of the Christ. You heard me, Christ. The Passion of the Christ is on track to become the highest grossing film in history, surpassing Star Wars and Titanic. What do you think of this? I think it's amazing, considering Jesus wouldn't do any press. <laughs> I think it's amazing that the Mel Gibson and the Jews in Hollywood have figured out to kill, you know, how to kill Jesus over and over and over again on a day-to-day -day basis in thousands of movie theaters throughout the country for money. <laughs> for me, it's even more fantastic that a Gentile was able to do a picture about a Jew and make more money about this, from this Gentile picture than any Jew ever made in Hollywood from all the pictures put together. Which goes to show if you want to make money about a story about a Gentile, he has to be Jewish first. <laughs> I, can, I, can, 
Because without Jewish involvement, you can't make a living, let's be honest. I think that they should, they should lay off the, you know what, here's what I was thinking about. The Jews, you know, first of all, I, clearly we had something to do with it. I understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I think that the, the, the Christians are looking at it the wrong way. I mean, you should really thank us for killing Jesus. I mean, really, see, hey, hey, if, hey, if he didn't die, let's you do don't it. have much of a story, do you? <laughs> what if Jesus had lived longer? What if he had gotten old enough to get bitter? All right, picture like there's, there's a third testament to the Bible, all right? At this point, uh, Jesus Mark, is in his 50s. Up. Wait, he's in his 50s. He's got one apostle oh. left. And the book opens with him knee-deep in water saying, I used to be able to do this. Look, man. <laughs> Let me have you the rock back, so give me a break. All right. Uh -huh. I, I don't really have nothing to say. But yes. <laughs> I just like the fact that that's you're erupting people I'm, for no I, reason. That's true. I'm trying to just, I'm I just, just like tired of, I'm, 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 shut up. After that smart rant, he called him fat. I'm so. tired of, this is why I'm, I don't even care about the movie. Because I'm tired of Jesus looking like Kurt Cobain. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus was not a, a session drummer. He was an Arab. As bad as it sounds, he looked like an Arab. That's why I'm, when did, when did all white people move from Iraq? into Oregon, and then that's where all the, the Arabs came in after that. That's why this movie stinks, and I, it, look, wow. shut up. Right? <laughs> I'm not getting involved in the whole situation. I just came here to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to show you, though. You think I'm going to start an argument when I got a guy this size sitting next to me? <laughs> Whatever you, whatever you say, it's up to you. He might let you talk. I, I, I want to let him talk, because I want to know what it was like when you used to hang out with Jesus, Jackie. <laughs> I, Jesus wasn't my time. I was a few years older than him. <laughs> All right. What about this one? Two Georgia State University students had attended a straight out of Compton party in blackface and have been charged with discriminatory harassment and may be expelled. Is that you? The, um... <laughs> well, the point is, you know, so do you think that's face? offensive for tree? They wait, were wait, blackface. Wait, wait. Like let me get this straight. Th this kid painted himself in blackface. But the party was for Straight Outta Compton, which is an album celebrating, uh, I believe, gunplay, murder, rape, <laughs> drug dealing. So it was, it was interpreted as But if, this was offensive. So the, it, wait, wait, wait. Since when are all these things offensive? I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jack. You if, remember if, Al Jolson? Go ahead. If, if, if rape, murder, and mayhem is so offensive, how come this picture is making more money than any picture of all time? Obviously, rape, murder, and mayhem is a hit. Right. Is but a hit. Saying... And I want to say another thing. Now, what happened? So, what if they depicted a black face with reference to way of murder and destruction? Right, a black face Jesus. Let's be honest. Even care. <laughs> That's what, if, what you were saying before. That's what I'm saying. A black not, face, he look, that if, makes him look like how Shut up and let Jesus. one of the two what legends if, on the show on the panel talk. What if a black guy did it in white face? Would anybody get resented? I don't think so. Ah, if a black guy dressed what, like you. what if I did it in a green face? Would the Irish get it? That's, that's exactly. right. It's just, that's the just So you don't care about that? No. What, Mel Gibson? No, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Georgia State. If a, black guy, if a black guy dressed up in white face, it wouldn't be offensive. People would be happy that he was trying to You're better himself. You're dressed up in white face? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't, you, why don't you show us your real skin color? <laughs> but it's not really but it's not really the same thing, is it? I mean it's not yeah, I mean uh, white face and, and green face is not really the same thing as black face, right? Mark, right. shut the you know No, what? you shut up. Ooh. Just you, you explain I'm, it. Wait, you know explain we it don't to need me. a comedian here, we need a referee. What, what do you want they, to do? What if, <laughs> good point, We Jackie. need somebody to settle the fights here. There's no exact if I were you, I'd pick on him, it's a lot safer. No, this is this is <laughs> This is fun. You're not you know offended by it. You know the deal. You're just going to say something against it. You know, the, you know that there's no history of somebody else painting itself in another color and it being offensive. Black people, you and blackface is offensive, period. All right? But don't you think it's funny? I'm not arguing with that. But don't you think it's funny that straight out of Compton is not offensive? Not the the black face was offensive years ago because years ago being black means you were being persecuted, rejected, right. you were suffering, you were in pain and anguish and misery. It was a country. It's still the same thing, now, Jackie. Now if you're black, you're a hit. As soon as you show up, take a look. <laughs> That's right. Good boy, Jackie. Yeah. Jackie. Bring me right back. <laughs> <laughs> sanitation, baby. New York yeah. sanitation. Yeah. Not to mention all of our great, uh, well, just our great personalities. Uh, remote control. <laughs> what, bitch? I'm not saying we, we're the best in the world at handling drink. Come on. Hello. <laughs> you know, it makes me realize the Irish people really are the greatest people. Oh.
Irish power. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. You can dismiss it all you want, but we really are the greatest thing that ever happened in this country. We did all the dirty work, all the jobs that nobody else wanted to do. We took our little salaries, our meager salaries. We were very humble about the whole thing, so right. shit your trap. Good. <laughs> a recent survey shows a sizable increase in extramarital affairs based because of technology like cell phones, text messaging, chat rooms, and is making che cheating a lot easier to pull off. What do you guys think? Have, you know. All technology, uh, I really believe all technology has been made cheating easier uh, since the beginning of time. I mean, the light bulb contributed a lot because it was the first time a guy could look at his wife and then realize he hates her. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, you got I, don't see, I don't see what technology has anything to do with screwing. What does one thing have to do with the other? You need a cell phone in order to find out where the girl is. All you need is her to show up. She, all she needs is your address. She needs your phone number. It worked just as well before as it does now. <laughs> but well, if, if she shows up, you need to have a cell phone first before you say, take your clothes off. What is what? <laughs> but Jackie, <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe look, man, what the I hell? don't think that Jesus in blackface <laughs> meant anything. But if he had a cell phone, he'd get laid look, more. Look, man, look. At, uh, cell phones make it much harder to cheat. Um, because they can track you down. It, 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 I'm telling you. And, you know, they leave messages like, you didn't answer the phone, I called you. If, if it answers, I know all the skills with that. If it picks oh, yeah. up, I was if in the it tunnel. picks up, if it picks yeah, up yeah. on the first ring, that means you turned it off and you're not trying to answer the phone because you're with some other girl. If she leave, if you don't answer when it rings, you get a missed call. I'm telling you, so when she couldn't track so you down, battle. it was better. It could, you could cheat no, much no, easier no, when no, you didn't the, have a cell phone. But on the other side, with a cell phone, though, you can, you can lie more effectively from anywhere. Uh, and also, with the Internet, you know, you, you can... It, see, technology optimizes your productivity, so it'll enable you to cheat with more people than you used to be able to. <laughs> Well, maybe you shouldn't go out with such smart girls. Look at <laughs> I'm sorry, wait a second. Jackie, Colin, Colin, no, 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 Colin, I wanted to reiterate Colin, a point. Colin, just All right. tell, give that to Jackie and tell him what it is. Jackie, <laughs> this is a cell phone. It's Patrice, down here. Mr. Malcolm, he calls his stage name, yeah. you know. Boy, the boy, thing boy. Though, boy. So now, I keep, now I see why you can't find the girl, because I see what <laughs> <laughs> I see the condition of the people you go around with. <laughs> but Jackie, we know that, but let's face it, you've been known as kind of a player all your life, you know? Player, but not with girls. With girls? No, this is not my field. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something, honestly, Colin, uh -huh. I, I'm not sure what you meant by that, but it's okay. Let me ask you something. Wait a minute. Is the, is the, the, mo the Moyo business is not big? Like, you don't get a lot of girls? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I love the word moil today. It was hilarious when I heard it. What does it mean? You better explain it, it to them. I don't the moil means the guy who chops it off while you're hanging around and don't know what he's doing. <laughs> It's uh, big in the Jewish community. Moyle is like, if it weren't for technology, I would still be unhappily married today. I, I had, this is when, when I had a pager, though. When I had a pager, you know, the girl that I was, you know, having the affair with, we had a secret code on the pager. Right. And, and, I, and I knew where she was and what, you know, what she wanted me to call her and everything else. It saved my life. Now, so I'm just saying. I know a lot of cops, that, if they're fooling around with somebody, their wife pages into the girl. The, like 187, like any kind of kill signal. Right. So you can even use it for that. Colin, did you get caught cheating before technology, man? Did I get caught? Uh, maybe when I was a kid, yeah, probably. You can't get caught unless you, she found, oh, whose number it is? This is a piece yeah. of paper and a sock, or right. this is a whatever. But now, no, it's, people can it's, find condoms you, on you. You can pull up your phone records and see the numbers, man, that you caught. My you phone bill is this. Can I just say one thing? You can't, no, you couldn't always get it. If only this could have been Crown Heights. You need, to, you need to be a better liar. You're not maybe, a good enough maybe liar. I shouldn't say that one thing. It said bombed. Say it, Colin. Go ahead. <laughs> Shut up. Go ahead. I was trying to make maybe it they didn't you make it in here. You yeah, say it one more time. I'm sure they'll love it. Go screw yourself. Say it, you're terrific. Say it, say it one more time, Samaya. Better uh, stomach. You got the worst <laughs> shape I've ever seen. You, you got a double chin. I wanted to say Samaya, but talking about somebody in bed shape. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay.
that son of a bitch called me Somalian belly, and I really didn't like it. Because <laughs> I happen to have a distended stomach, and I didn't like the fact that Norton was cackling off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, tonight we're going to uh, help some audience members out who each have something they need to share with someone in their lives, but for whatever reason can't bring themselves to say. So we're going to have the comedian say it for them. Our first audience member is Matthew from Ohio. Matthew, what did you want to say? I have a special, special message for a friend back home. Matthew, Mark Marin is going to help you out. Okay, Mark. Yes. Could you help Matthew with this? Sure, I think I can. Hey, uh, Matthew just wants to say, uh, I love you, and I'm sorry I'm so mean. But you're sort of a baby, you know what I mean? You're kind of whining, like, you're so mean, you're so mean. So why don't you shut up? And, uh, you know, maybe he'll uh, ease up on you a little bit. All right? Hope I helped you out. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. That was what they call the old <laughs> block. <laughs> next is, next is, you can go, Matthew. Go back and, uh, next is Tyler from Virginia. Tyler, what's hating you? I want to say something to the uh, Yorktown High School yearbook class. Okay, Patrice O'Neill will do it for you. Patrice. <laughs> uh, yeah, stop. Hey, leave me alone. It, it don't... Look, I'm, I know I'm a little loser, but... <laughs> I'm a loser now. Wait till later when I decide that I'm going to stop having dignity and, and, and go make that money like everybody in this world should, and, and you guys are going to... Leave me alone about the fact that I don't shave my underarms or that I'm... <laughs> I watch all the Star Wars films and know all the words from that horse crap, and you're going to know my name. And what is your name? Tyler. Tyler's going to... I'm going to win, because I'm Tyler. Yeah! Oh. All right. You feel better, sweetie? All right. Oh. Yes. I just go. That's no, here's Nancy coming. from California. Nancy, what's your uh, problem? I have a message for my ex-husband. You are very lucky. Jackie Mason is going to take care of business for you. Great. Jackie! You I'm supposed to read the problem, right? You're supposed to tell what She's to say to problem. her husband. And I'm going to say this to her husband in your name. Right. Because you obviously are not intelligent enough to say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice to say. That's hey. a, no, no, that's the way the show works. Yet. No, don't take it personally. <laughs> Give me the money, you Jew bastard. No. <laughs> you, you owe it to me for our divorce. And, uh, and what else? That's about it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> and, uh, and if he hears me say it, this guy's going to get so nervous that he'll give it right back in a second because uh, the son of a bitch. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jackie. All right. This is Scott, also from Ohio. Who do you have a message for? I have a message for my roommate. Okay. Jim Norton's going to say it for you. Jim. <laughs> Uh, you know, before when I was laughing, I was laughing with you, not at you. <laughs> uh, this is the message to, uh, to your roommate. Uh, we know what you did in the hotel bathroom. <laughs> I'd like to know what he did in the hotel bathroom. I don't think you really want that. I do. We do want to Was it with a girl Tell or us. after a taco? It was by himself. <laughs> by, himself? by himself? He's with himself. What yeah. did he do? <laughs> He uh, pleasured himself. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. So what? You never whacked off? What? You're, <laughs> you're <laughs> walking. There you have it, folks. A little community service the hard way. We'll be right back. <laughs> folks, on this St. Patrick's Day, let us not forget one of our most important religious figures, Mel Gibson. The Passion could be the highest grossing film ever. So give us your pitch for the sequel. Jackie. I, uh, my pitch for the sequel is I'd like to do the same picture again, but this time with a different ending. Play it in reverse, and he winds up Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jim. <laughs> well, Carl, I, uh, 
My main criticism of The Passion was that it was a bit preachy, predictable, and not enough big laughs. So I, uh, I think the sequel should be like a light-hearted cop buddy movie. We could have Jesus as like the laid-back veteran cop and Pontius Pilate as the ball-busting, tough-as-nail sergeant. And Jesus is reluctantly paired up with a younger, rowdier partner named Mohammed. Now, Mohammed, <laughs> Mohammed is due to go before the Civilian Review Board because although he's only been on the force for two years, he's managed to rack up almost 45,000 complaints for excessive use of force. <laughs> He does things like chop off people's arms for speeding and goes on domestic violence calls and arrests the husband for not beating the wife properly. <laughs> the film ends with Jesus and Muhammad having a grudging respect for each other after making the world a better, safer place and arresting all the Jews. All right. <laughs> Patrice O'Neill. In, in, in P2, <laughs> <laughs> our hero roams the desert saving souls with his new badass disciple, Dennis Glovis. <laughs> he makes extra money. He, he makes extra money entertaining strangers by popping his shoulder in and out of his socket. <laughs> and he enters underground fighting tournaments run by an evil queen, anime bullet. Anime, anime. All right, just in case people there. But she falls in love with him because he can read her mind and knows what she really wants. Then, <laughs> then Dennis quits because he's getting too old for this. All right. Mark. Wow, is there time? All right, John. <laughs> <laughs> the year is 2011. The CIA joins forces with the Mossad and creates a nuclear-powered cybernetic super Jesus. <laughs> In an effort to defeat Islam, they stage the second coming and shoot him out of a cruise missile silo over the Valley of Armageddon. He does barrel rolls and tailspins and in his rocket cross while shooting lasers out of his stigmata. <laughs> It's quite a show. Then the real Jesus comes back. The two fight a Jesus on Jesus battle to the death. It's called Robo Christ. The final resurrection. That's the show, folks. Good night. Well, it was certainly nice to have Jackie Mason on the show. It really was. He's one of the one of the master comedians of all time. Now, there seemed to be an interesting chemistry between him and Patrice. Can you explain that? Uh, I tried to make a Crown Heights joke about it, and it bombed, so I'm not going to explain it any further than that. <laughs> but Patrice does have respect for the, you know, guys that he admires in comedy, like myself and Jackie. <laughs> The hot outfit. Oh, that's too funny. They're doing a Am terrible job. Am I going to look job. fat on E? No. No, you honey, you look good. Oh, you're right up my ass, dude. So as we know, last night was a big night for Kerry. John Edwards pulled out South Carolina. Graham, what do you think about this? Well, listen, I, I, the thing is, I know America, greatest democracy in the world, but... You've got too much now. Enough with the voting. Why? It's, it's, it's too complicated. Just have two guys, you know, two guys, one man, one vote, and whoever gets least votes becomes president. I think that's, hey. that's, that's how that works. Why don't we also do our court system with wigs on, too, huh? Yeah! <laughs> no, it's good! That's my problem with John, oh, 14th John Kerry. 14th century city. I don't like John Kerry's stupid bring it on. Slogan. How can you vote for any guy who becomes galvanized by a phrase that was popular in a 1983 Molly Ringwald film? <laughs> Childish and it's stupid. And he's going to be President Kerry. It sounds like expensive butter. Not good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about any of these people. I just like that guy Howard Dean because he's shouting a lot. And people who shout, if they're out of context, they sound mad. But in context, they're flipping lunatics! <laughs> I love them! <laughs> I'm gonna just shout! When I've got nothing to say, I'm gonna be Howard Dean. You know what? Is Donald that okay? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. We're gonna take him in and oh, hit the coda! folks! <laughs> I don't disagree with Donald Pleasant. My problem is. <laughs> <laughs> Howard Dean <laughs> took about me or you. blew a lead. This guy is the Chicago Cubs of the Democratic Party. He stinks. He really stinks. Nothing on that one. Thank really... you. All right, I'll accept. Thank it. you, people. He was sitting up there holding on to that one. He threw it out and can got. You, can you not cross your legs like that, sissy? It's <laughs> 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 a good start. I'm really enjoying this. Good. <laughs> Quit putting on that English accent. Now listen, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll go back to my real voice. The minute he said it, <laughs> then you started talking like it. And I what could not believe when you took off that Darth Vader helmet, I did not expect you to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you... <laughs> I'm here to take shots. Go ahead, please. I hate to talk about... 
<laughs> do, you, <clears throat> do you think Gary Edwards' ticket would have a shot against Bush either way? Yes. I think people are tired of, I mean, look, I like Bush, but I think people are tired of the war. And, uh, you know, look, I don't like John Kerry at all, but, you know, a lot of people do. I like Bush. <laughs> I think you Bush, know, actually, look, you know, let me tell you that. <laughs> because Bush, he said something uh, that spoke to our people a lot. He said, this is, when the war happened, he said, this is not a war against Islam or the, or the country of Islamia. And I felt this is a... Uh, <laughs> You white people. <laughs> I felt reassured. <laughs> Which accent would you like now? <laughs> you, want, you want to talk about liberal bias in the media? Uh, this is what makes me sick. I was I was on my way home yesterday. You know, I'm sitting in first class reading the Times, and there was an article. <laughs> uh, there was an article on uh, John Kerry and what type of a speaker he is. And they were talking about these little uh, verbal tics that he has, how he confuses the words figuratively and literally. And it's just, anyone that says there's not liberal bias in the media, Bush uh, says a nuclear, which granted is not a word, uh, and they call him borderline retarded. <laughs> but, but he says right. two words, he confuses two words consistently that are polar opposites, yeah. and it's a little and verbal tick. How tip. can anybody in their right mind vote against Bush? Why even bother? He's either going to steal it, or he's going to, he's going <laughs> to, they got Osama Bin Laden in the closet, he's already caught. <laughs> they got nuclear bombs in the closet somewhere, they you just Osama. say nuclear bombs. Well, then, I got a tick. Shut your stupid <laughs> voice. <laughs> you're you're shut your mouth. You're dumb. They already got <laughs> Osama bin Laden. He's already caught. He's already caught. I so think why you think even bother? Why I bother voting? I think you're vote? thinking of Saddam Hussein was caught. No, no, no. They already got. They got. First of all, stop trying to know about all Arabs because you are one. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving us all the the Jahira Zala network. What is that? Just, <laughs> <Jahira>. <laughs> That's all they're saying. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> they got him. Why? Do you have faith in this system to even care about which one of these these old Puritan dudes? Are say it hey, right. I, I'm trying the to change my you tone. Say right I, is because you wanted me to agree with you. <laughs> That's true. Aren't you getting tired of the fact that some old white man's gonna run this country? And my pockets have never changed since I've been a grown man and been concerned about money. Whether the, the dial's up or dial's down, my pockets stay the same. I don't know about this stuff is useless, especially since the last time your favorite boy won the presidency. But Bush stole it, so what do you care? He didn't wait, steal. Shut wait. Up. Yes, he, he did didn't steal, steal it. it. Will you let me? You want Al Gore after 9 11? Let me make him feel at home given that kind of conspiracy. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You tell him, brother. I'll tell you what. You yeah. <laughs> be in a yeah. pool hole and my pockets Louisiana. have never changed. Stop trying to sell like an everyman, stupid. I am an everyman. Yeah, you're not an everyman. Shut up, all of you. Go ahead, say something English and smart. All right. <laughs> well, no, I suppose the, what confuses me is, given that this man, Kerry, is obviously going to win, what are the others doing? Why are there apartments being remodeled? Can't they go home? Why would you want to be in a bus traveling around because... Mexico? Why? <laughs> Well, Dean is still in shock. He thought he was going to win. Everybody, we all thought he was going to win, and now suddenly he's out of it. He can't just leave right away. You know what I mean? I thought like... I was going to win. Oh. <laughs> no, but it is like if you, if you ever like a girl, you ever like a girl, you think you're going to sleep with her, and then she's at the last minute she just boots you out with a speech. You stand in front of her house for like 30 seconds like this. Mm. Uh... I could have sworn I was going to be. I acted that out and got nothing. And you didn't help. <laughs> I'll smash you with a pool cue. It's never happened. To me. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Kobe Bryant's defense team is trying to get a secretly recorded tape of Kobe talking to detectives thrown out. Patrice? What about it? Oh. <laughs> you know. Look, man, here's what... The first, people don't understand about Kobe, man. The dude is originally from Italy. He's not like... He hasn't been trained with the proper black paranoia that you don't... <laughs> You don't, you don't have general sex discussions with any white boy who says, hey, how was it? It was a setup. He was sitting there bragging. If you didn't hear the tape or know about the tape, he was bragging about how big his Jimmy was and how the white girl was screaming, how she probably bruised. He was, he was talking in frank, general conversation about the rape tapes, but he didn't rape her. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what he felt. He was talking to cops. The cops tape. Because they, they didn't tell him he's cops. They said, hey, man, how big what is you, What are you talking hey, to she... cops? What do you think? They're gonna, you know, yeah, I raped him, but keep that under. He, they, but they didn't come out. They didn't arrest them. They just said, "Hey, Kobe." I they knew they were cops. First of all, they probably said, the "They probably said, Kobe, can you sign this for yes. my daughter?" <laughs> and then they asked them what happened. And he was like, "Well, we came in and blah blah blah." blah well, he should have shown. Wait a minute. He went 
up to strangers in a car park and told them how big his c*** was. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> how mad is that? I've told many what people that don't know for? me how big my Johnson is. And I, I wasn't proud of it. Now, in your country, <laughs> rape was legal, or is it, like, uh, mandatory? <laughs> um, you're mistaking... <laughs> No, some girl gets raped and they uh, death penalty. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Roofies are still legal in England. No, I, I think I'm talking a... about Iran. Stupid, please. <laughs> He's Don't English. Shut your mouth. No, the crowd got it. You missed it. Shut up. Go ahead. <laughs> shut up. They weren't applauding because I said rape was legal in England. You dumb. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. I didn't. You thought it was from Iran for real? Yeah. All right, my I fault. Am. I take it back. I'm stupid. All right. <laughs> All the message boards are true. Go ahead, on me. Well, as a celebrity terrorist, I'm I'm happy to <laughs> answer answer that that, that no ra rape is definitely so can I not. Stop for one sec? That's a bit weird, Colin. That what you're doing right there. I've seen a video very like it, and I'm not liking it. It's yeah. because you're Irish. In America, Sorry. nobody's uptight about sex like you oh, Irish okay. perverts. Okay. All right, now listen, I don't like Irish people with that kind of a tan either. It's suspicious. Anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> so you put suspicious. Suspicious. First of all, he didn't. He didn't read them as right, so they can't. They can't admit it. If they do, they have to admit the fact that she had like four or five pairs of dirty drawers or one pair of dirty drawers and four or five pairs of sperm in it. And if they if they let if they let that come in, they gotta let, you know, but my whole argument still holds. I still haven't heard none of his teammates do anything but defend Be the cops. And if you got twelve black dudes defending the cops, this they're guy not must defending be the cops. They like yes they are no they're not they're defending He said he went on Colin, TV Colin Colin you He's can't shit. you can't you Shaq said you can't TV. defend the they're defending their pockets. You cannot you cannot say anything until it's over. Because if they go, if they go, hey, Kobe's my boy. I don't think he did it. And then he's getting, he, he's a, then he's a rapist. Then right. they're gonna lose their McDonald's. Well, that's, that, that, so they're gonna say, they're gonna true. say, oh, I we stand don't. I stand corrected. No black people would ever say anything before the actual verdict of a trial. They would just say, not yeah, I'll rich, wait and see not what happens. Rich, they they don't like Kobe. They don't like Kobe, and they, believe they hate Kobe because he's up to something. He's kind of something it. nice. Also, to if see stands him. around talking about the size of his all the time. He'd be annoying. Yeah, Graham, please. We're Irish. <laughs> Let's not even bring up that subject. All right. Fallout from Janet and Justin's little dance number continues. The FCC could find CBS up to $6 million. And they also announced they're going to have a delay, uh, like a video and audio delay on Janet and Justin at the stupid Grammys or whatever it is. Um, the, you know, let me eat. Well, it's nice to get a word in edgeways. Um, I think uh, I, I think it's a, it's a very important uh, problem because it's, it's, it seems to Spike Lee was talking about there's no artistry these days, not enough just to be a singer. You need to do a big stunt, like Madonna kissing Britney, right. and Janet's obviously trying to sell an album. And, and the, the worry is, what will you? How far will you go to sell things? You'll probably turn the television on and see a woman naked with two fingers inside her, saying, "I couldn't get an orgasm through penetration." But the good news is. I've just saved a whole bunch of money by changing my <laughs> car insurance. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> That's the concern, and that's a, I think that's a legitimate concern. I personally. really, truly love the dignified way he presented that hack joke. <laughs> that was a very that amusing really little anecdote. Me. That I'm really glad you enjoyed I enjoyed that. it. Thank you. Don't, 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 <laughs> I don't say very much, He's, but I have surgical strikes. Look, <laughs> contractually, Jim can't say anything. Now, look. <laughs> how do you think Janet will be received at the Grammy? Standing O? Or? Standing O with a nothing. With a pull it out again. Won't and no, no one cares. Oh, I'm getting tired of hearing about children and how children were watching this. I think, uh, people say, well, the kids were watching the Super right. Bowl. I'm sure they're much more affected when their father throws a beer bottle at the TV and calls his wife the C word because the Patriots didn't cover the spread. <laughs> it's, it's really... We'll be right back. <laughs> You know what? When it comes to publicity, we can all learn a thing or two from Janet Jackson's breast. Not now she's pulled that stunt. What's a stunt you could pull to get some publicity? Graham. Uh, well, uh, I've actually thought about this quite a bit. So, for my publicity stunt, right, <laughs> through clever use of makeup and bitch implants, uh, I'd transform myself into aging starlet Demi Moore. <laughs> and uh, then I would track down Ashton Kutcher and... <laughs> 
punk him like he's never been punked before. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd give him the punking of his life. I'd punk him so good. I'd punk him all night. Oh, yeah, baby, Ashy. Oh, Ashy likes being punked. You like the punk kick. Damn. Sorry, I was miles away for a second. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Patrice, I like to pull uh, Britney's titty out in a stadium full of Texas crackers with 84 million people <laughs> watching on TV. But... That ain't the stunt part. The stunt part would be to convince the U.S. Marshal and his hanging posse that it was all her idea. <laughs> and <clears throat> then when a Supreme... <laughs> sucked. Then when a Supreme Court decision to be able to do it to Christina at the Indianapolis 500. Oh, me. Oh, me. <laughs> I'd break through the tight security that is prevalent at the last few hundred yards of the New York Marathon. Then it would suddenly appear in first place running naked in one black sock with the symbols of all the world religions shaved into my excessively hairy back. As a plea to world leaders for racial harmony, religious tolerance, and world unity. Because I truly believe that a message of peace can only be communicated in this world through a short, fat, hairy, sweaty man with surprisingly smooth buttocks. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, you goddamn traitors. Jim! I don't know if I'd uh, go as far as Janet, but I may do something a little quirky like uh, buying the bones of the elephant man or befriending a chimp or taking my baby, which is a completely different race than I am, and dangling it off a balcony. Or Maybe I'll do something really subtle like uh, molesting a kid in an amusement park in my backyard then tap dancing on the roof of my car while I hold an umbrella to keep the sun off my wafer-thin nose. Well, that's all, folks. Good night. Patrice, uh, does he drive you crazy in a good way or a bad way? In a, exactly in a good way. Mm. And uh, the more people that get aggravated by him, the happier I get. <laughs> I guess he's a, you know, he's a, uh, I live vicariously through his awful obnoxiousness. <laughs> Come on, big fella. Get into the Manchester sound. Oh, all right, look. Hi, guys. Hey, girls. <laughs> I don't like that new magical beginning. I, I like the, the music, music, stupid. Oh. I know, you don't want to change nothing, but guess what? The show's changed. We're growing. Right. Come with us. I get up behind. We're rolling. Mm. <laughs> President Bush's. But you know what's great about the beginning? It still stayed the same when me and you had a little interplay that bombed. So at least all you right, got whatever. that. <laughs> whatever. is clever. Listen, Trevor. Call Trevor. Trevor. Did you? <laughs> but, no, I was just going to say, you, the, new, the new set's nice. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm just saying he sort of has to sit on that, doesn't he? What, the throwback jersey? Starting early, huh? I know. I don't know why. I know. I know. I've always wanted to, to take a shot at him. I don't know why. How depressed have you been? you got so much new jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. All right. Uh, <laughs> President Bush's <laughs> new immigration policy would give illegal immigrants uh, temporary work visas in the United States, and they could apply for green cards. In defense of his plan, Bush said, this plan is not amnesty. I oppose amnesty because it encourages the violation of laws and perpetuates illegal immigration. First of all, it is amnesty. Let's face it. What do you think, we're stupid? You pack a wood? <laughs> That's fine, but don't say it's not when it is. When it, you dumb hick. Should you be able to move freely, though, from country to country to live and work? Is that a solution to the immigration problem, Mark? Well, look, let's think about it. Like, I mean... Outside of American companies, you know, building stuff in Mexico, Mexico's biggest export is Mexicans. <laughs> and picture, picture in America without Mexican immigrant workers. I mean, you hear a lot of this. Hey, what, what do I got to do to get more water? You hear a lot of that. You hear, you hear a lot of this. Hey, where's, who, who's supposed to put the drywall up? You hear that. You, you'd hear like, you know, gardens would grow into jungles, right? The wealthy, the wealthy would have to raise their own children. Uh, my, my buddy, this not, my, buddy, my buddy, this is racist, man. No, no, no. My buddy Phil would still be calling me saying, I thought you were going to help me paint my place, but now he calls me and says, dude, I got a Mexican to do it. Wait a minute, so what are you, you, know, what are you really trying right. to say? Here's what I'm really trying to say. Are you trying to say that Mexicans do all the, the small labor? Well, here's what I'm trying to say. I'm saying, trying to say, saying American industry, all right, has, has, has given up on trying to get, you know, they can't find the American industry has given up on trying to get, you know, they can't find poor people here. Or, or teenagers to work with for low money and no health care. So true. they figure as opposed to giving them health care or more money, why not bring in, you know, a deeper desperation from abroad? Yes, so let's say, what's I'm next? Saying. What's next? Oh, did I get that out? Yes, well, well, quick, that was well put. You know, yes. Because that's the point. They keep saying, whoa, there's jobs nobody wants to do, yet our unemployment rate is so high. <laughs> so that means jobs no one wants to do because, you know, nobody wants to work. I'll just give it down for it. But if they you know just what? If, if you let them in, what's next? Blacks and women making as much money as we do? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think Jewish is white. No, it's not. Uh, you guys always say that when it's convenient for you. I got, 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 I got
I gotta be honest with you. You know, we're not just talking about you know you know manual laborers. I can go to the on LA in the parking lot. And I can get a dentist. You know, I, I, yeah, I can get a surgeon. I can, First of all, I was just joking with her. I look. I agree too. Who's gonna work if we get rid of Mexicans, man? Who's gonna make your yeah. beds? Who's gonna pass out chicken samples at the mall? Let the Mexicans but, in. Maybe, but maybe, but maybe, yeah. maybe the people in America need to get humbled. Maybe some of the. Uh, People on probation or in halfway hey, houses. We need uh, one way stayed out of this. Well, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, everybody rather sit home and collect a check without doing anything and doesn't build up any self respect. That's you know, the I'm bottom really line. Okay. You're preaching and you don't know what the hell you're talking okay, about. Wait, you wait, just, wait, you wait, just wait, said wait. another clap preach, but it had nothing to do with it. Who was collecting not, anything? Not only all, that, but first of all, you're the only one that goes. Good. You're the you only one that can't get a pause break with a pause break. Come on. <laughs> wait, 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 I think we need to hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Look, I'm going to give them a cue to every time you want to clap. I'm just going to go like this. All right. Now, wait a minute. Shut up. Hey, Coach, how about we do maybe a, 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 an immigrant exchange program? No, right, no we no. don't work. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something about, about America. Are you going to tell us? No something? one comes here to do anything. Well, now to blow us up. But they, before it was, <laughs> it used to be that people come here to work. And that's it. We go other places to have sex and, 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 right. to, and, to, and to have vacations. But you, why would you stop letting people come here to do what they sneak in here to do, which is work? Leave them alone. Yeah, no, Let the Mexicans like, come in here and do all the stuff we're not going to do. You're, uh, you're wrong. Do you think every one of them that are coming over here are getting jobs? What are Mexicans I mean, no, doing illegal? You're wrong. The most of, most are getting 30% jobs. of illegal uh, 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 Mexicans are where did, First of all, where did you get your numbers? I believe he knows what he's saying, but just the stuttering and the low self esteem went funny at the whole audience all over. You got your shot, stupid. Everyone took you seriously and you couldn't handle it because you got most of the things. All right, all right. Okay, so the other thing is, frankly, if you're an illegal alien and you're here and someone says you can be here for three years, if I were an illegal alien, I'd be like, I'm not telling anyone that I'm an illegal alien because those people can stay here for 30 years and not report. They're going to have to leave after three. I'm not sure if you li love Mexicans or hate them after that. It's not a question of loving or hating. I just don't know if the policy... Don't talk to me. Talk to this question It's here. not a question of loving or hating. It's a question, is this good for... How much do you need, the how much do you need the to watch dishes? you got to pay me about $17 an hour to watch dishes. I've been watching dishes for $7. Because you're gonna have I gotta make a living washing dishes right, and doing gonna, Mexican stuff. That's because so you're gonna have, have, so <laughs> have so many, so many dishes after you eat. That took a lot of time. That took a long time. Here's the deal. I got it. I got it. You say, it. You I say it. the Mexicans you say they will, don't work for half price, but do the prices come down anywhere? Yeah. No. The prices stay the same. 30% of all. Yeah. This is We'll be right back. I'm going to tell you people something. First of all, Time Magazine reports this month that a growing number of Americans are experimenting with S&M. Now, they act like it's so erotic. If you see the people that are into S&M, it's not even sexy. It's not Tyrese and Jenna Jameson. It's the Wichita Walmart manager and his hysterectomy scarred wife. <laughs> they a rent and whip. It's depressing. Afterwards, you're getting dressed in a locker room at the sex club. She's pulling on the Jimmy Buffett property of Margaritaville t-shirt over her mullet. You're looking up her husband's fat ass while he frantically searches for the lucky coin Dale Earnhardt gave him at the Talladega meet and greet in 79. So the question is this, folks. If mainstream America is adopting this S&M lifestyle, what will be taboo next, Karen? I don't know, like the next episode of... Uh, Lord of the Rings. I have no idea. <laughs> Taboo, really? Yeah, but I'm looking for someone for S and M. I think if I were into it, I'd be looking for a submissive who can clean my apartment and pay my bills. <laughs> well, that's what, <laughs> but that's what they usually have them doing in the in the porn house, you know? Yeah. Like, you mean the next taboo that should be broken? I don't know. I think that maybe I, I, think I don't know what the next taboo would be like. Uh, how would just like you know sex in public? Wouldn't it be great <laughs> if that became mainstream, where you could just be walking down the street, great, and see three people just screwing at a bus stop, you know? <laughs> you just say, hey, good job, yeah. Mind if I step in? Yeah, wouldn't yeah. that be good? Of course it would. You see that guy right there? Who? 
Oh and my! Sir, that look, guy's probably a lawyer. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. First of all, I, this is—I mean, this may be a running thing. <laughs> but only, only white guys. <laughs> and here we go. Only white guys are into the, this guilty thing where they need to be punished for what they've done. <laughs> I'm not into. I don't even like my nipples pushed too hard. <laughs> I don't know you're, anyone. You're scared milk will shoot out. <laughs> you said you're scared. You said because you're scared milk will shoot out. Uh, All right, ready? Right. Oh, this is the new segment where we point out things that going on in the culture that will help put an expiration date on our society. It's like Armageddon. This That's, is my magazine. Today's, shut up. Today's Armageddon is a new magazine that just came out called Fish and Grits. Oh. It celebrates the natural blend of porno and hip hop. Oh. Now, I read it. I read it yesterday, and one of the articles, oh. Little John, one of the guys from the Little John and the East Side Boys, it wasn't Little John, thank God, said he had sex with a girl with a broken leg and made her walk home. That's criminally, that's criminally insane. So, uh, what do you think about this, Patrice? This magazine. You gotta understand how great this magazine is, man. It's rap. It's black people. It's vaginas. It's, it's everything interesting in America wrapped up into fish and grits of everything food that we love. This is look at he sounds like he's in the I Have a Dream. This is. that make it look real. It's, it, you can see stretch oh, marks. Say it, you can see it's just, it's horrendous. Say but it. that's what people like. No, we are Yes. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> Karen. Yeah. Karen. It's like Goodfellas. Karen. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, you have to do Lorraine Barker. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Oh, he's going to use this magazine. Oh, Karen, look at that magazine. It's yeah. psychotic, right? Now, why don't you be honest? I don't know. Nobody is going to say anything because it's black. If that was a white magazine, they'd be protesting in the street. Yeah, who was? Well, it? I have to say, I like I can you say, even once, though it's black, I don't. I, it just doesn't. It's not that it's a protest thing. It's just it doesn't appeal to me. Because women don't like anything. See, women don't understand that. What is it? You don't even know women. The girls. Wait, first of all. Women gotta understand that men love for y'all to be degraded. We like to degrade y'all. That's just the truth. We don't. We like for them to cover you up with a hat while we got our clothes on. That's sexy to men. So why don't you just do Louis Jewish lady illustrated and just like just be there with the curls on the side like this and nobody wants to buy it. This is for this is for people who don't have a significant partner in their life. That's a lot. Welcome here. No, but that's not. Give me six of these. He's got a good point though. Let's be honest. Guys like women, you know, to be like, uh, you know, in that kind of objectified, degraded place. Sometimes it's kind of exciting. No? Is that not true, fellas? Is that not true? I think yeah, some men. Unless, unless it's your wife, then you, you know, it's a whole other, another ball game. Well, that's you why. Like they, they, but, you know, but that's why they have safe words and stuff like that. You want them to be that for a little while, but you just you want to still be able to go. You okay, honey? You want with your the strap? Right. Yeah, I think you're phonies. You're phonies. You're I know you. You better not lie. Don't you better stop? That's right. That's a good. Shut up, boys. I, think I was in the car that day. I think if you're, in, I think if you're, in, for one thing, in that back to that um, back to the S and M thing, a lot of right. those people who are being objectified from that Time magazine article right. are the men. So right. I think certain people with certain psychologies yeah. want to degrade people and yeah. make them feel bad. And certain people with certain psychologies don't. Yeah, I, just, I don't think you could say this is about so men, this is about women, this is about black people, this is about white can, people. But no, there's some people are sexual, but they do what it, some people do what it degrade. Yeah. He likes to degrade women, white people. Probably. Women don't generally yeah. like to degrade. Don't white white because y'all hate us. You know, it well, wait, 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 wait. But when he degrades a woman, let me just ask you, like, if you get a woman, if <laughs> you with a woman, you like. Why do you pull your girlfriend's hair when you when you have sex from a hot? I hold it. Shut up, you boy. I want to talk. Context of degrading. Up, what I'm saying is that if you degrade your girlfriend, you're still going to take her out for dinner, right? Yeah, well, All right. Okay. It's a context. Yeah, you, know, you don't take a girl. Up, fellas. You don't take a girl. 
Yeah. You don't think any female feels degraded after she wakes up in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 I think that. Oh. We'll be right back, folks. Like we were saying, magazine publishers are now combining topics like hip-hop and porn for today's busy bathroom readers. So combine two of your favorite things into a publication. Mark Marin. All right, my magazine would be called Jerkin' Scoop. <laughs> to celebrate two of my favorite things, masturbating and ice cream. <laughs> but it, it would embrace the craft of masturbation, you know, and appeal to the autoerotic hobbyists of all levels. There would be in-depth interviews with professional masturbators from Sweden and Denmark. <laughs> There would be informative articles, and the last page would profile a different flavor of ice cream every issue because when you're done masturbating, you might want to have a little party. All right. Patrice O'Neill, your magazine. Uh, mine is a, a lifestyle magazine called Protein and Carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates? <laughs> a blend of sex, meats, music, and starches. Uh, features of the month, it will be a monthly cinephobe. Uh, it will be happy, fat, naked women we call not-so-mad cows. <laughs> and, <laughs> and middle-aged naked Irish women that we call the, this month's boiled potato. <laughs> and a, and a, and a, feature, a feature section called Clogged Ottery. Uh, that's untalented comedians and actors who should quit, quit the business. Our first issue comes out as soon as Mark Maron agrees to be interviewed. <laughs> You did yours first. <laughs> All right, Karen Bergreen. My magazine would be called U.S. Jews and World Report Retort. <laughs> the first half features celebrities who seem Christian but are really Jewish, and I don't mean people like Madonna who keep a copy of the Kabbalah next to their box set of Deepak Chopra. Every issue has a layout of Jennifer Connelly. The World Retort part is devoted to countries, basically everybody that loathed the United States. Guest editors include Jacques Chirac, Johnny Depp, the partnership of Susan Sarandon and Tim Robbins, and the Prime Minister of Canada. All right. <laughs> Rich, your boss. Uh, two of my favorite things would be playing golf and watching minorities getting arrested. <laughs> so... So my, so my magazine, so my magazine would be called Where's My Caddy. Uh, <laughs> the magazine would have tips on what's a good deal when you purchase stolen clubs, how to concentrate on putting when you know your caddy is rifling through your golf bag. <laughs> Also, the magazine would help you deal with the detectives that are waiting on the ninth hole, ready to lock you and your caddy up because the stolen clubs you bought have been connected to a murder. Oh. Okay, folks, and let me just point out one more thing. When Stupid <laughs> sent that one in today, we always point out divorce mistakes. Minorities, Y apostrophe S. <laughs> That's the show. Good night. <laughs> You surprised to get a little physical out there tonight? Yeah, I did. Uh, these two teams don't like each other, the blacks and Jews, and uh, <laughs> it almost got physical. And uh, as you know, Rich Voice just sat there like he was watching TV. It didn't help me at all. <laughs> Boss uh, appeared almost a sympathetic character. All right. Well, welcome, fellas. What's going well, on, big fell? What's the matter, Norton? Missing your tea? <laughs> no, I got it right here. I hid your tea. Why'd you hide my tea? Because I thought it'd be funny, a prank on you, when you come out here, look at your tea scrambling around. You have hair. <coughs> like a rat. What about my hair? What? You really do have an awful haircut. <laughs> <laughs> you look like the hate miser, stupid. <laughs> well, Mr. Saturday Night. You do look like the heat miser. But it, don't try to make that joke. Listen, we don't like that. Why don't you make that joke, Bob? It was silence. They don't know. They're sick and tired of corny, corny jokes. Show. When, he was doing hack. when he was doing his monologue. They don't like hack heat miser jokes. When y'all doing it, when he was doing his monologue, was y'all not going, what the hell is wrong with Colin's hat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen. Everybody on three, uh, what, <laughs> what's wrong with your <laughs> hair? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, hang time. What's wrong with your head? Hey, uh, Ricky Lake, try not to get the audience. That's Mr. Saturday Night, awful head. I don't like the fact that we look like two father-son teams. <laughs> That's all right. 
<laughs> At least over here, I don't know how to tie it. At least I don't know how to tie it. Is. You were adopted. <laughs> At least now we know where to start the show when we make the cuts on that line. <laughs> All right, let's start the show. How about this? Bill Crosby defended his previous comments. <laughs> Bill Crosby defended his comments about blacks not parenting their kids at a conference with Jesse Jackson's Rainbow Coalition, where he was accused of airing dairy, uh, airing dirty laundry. Here's Cos's response. Your dirty laundry is out of school. We're doing dirty every day. It's Carson calling each other a nigger. They think they're hip, they can't read, they can't write, they're laughing and giggling, they're going nowhere. Now. Well, apparently Cosby forgot that he did Ghost Dad. I think that's the most important thing here. He did what? Ghost Dad. Ghost Dad. The movie Ghost Dad. Ghost Dad. Yeah, oh. he's still judging people. Cosby, Cosby called my movie Coonery and Buffoonery. Now, it was probably well deserved. Well, that, was that, that was the only true statement he <laughs> made, you <laughs> asshole. Yeah. yeah. That's... Soul Plane was the worst movie ever. I, you know what? You know I what? went to see the movie with him, and the NAACP called me. Because I want to see it with her. <laughs> I don't like uh, Tiger Look at Lenny, Chen's you've never movie. heard of Soul Plane. Jesus, Lenny, why don't you see a black movie once in your life? I saw Southie. I'm still trying to get up. I'm, hey, I, don't turn on me. <laughs> the natural advancement for Institute of Colored People, right? You can't say colored people, people flip out. <laughs> then you're a racist. Change the name of the organization. National Association for Colored People, go the other way. I don't it's know. So, he sells jello. What do I give a sh? I mean, I'm going to agree with him just because it... Yeah. But it's almost like he's, he's... It's like he's not even, like, trying to help black people no more. No, he's no. Old... Why don't you admit, secretly, 99% of black people agree with Bill Cosby, including both of you, no. but he phrased it a little indelicately, and you hate to give white people a moment of joy. No. And that's why you can't say you agree with that. No. Cos that's what it is. No, it's not. Shut your mouth. You don't think co thug culture's adversely affecting most kids? that don't have the skills of a rapper or a comedian or national yeah, talent? Do, I mean, wh who can we blame for terrible white kids? Where the, how come bad black kids they always... Heavy metal all the time? Blame. They don't blame heavy metal, they do 1982. So. But they, 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 they do blame heavy metal. When was the last time somebody blamed heavy metal? Shut up, 1982 is yeah, right. No one blames Shut your mouth, heavy They metal. do blame uh, music and films for, for bad acts. They blame, uh, they blame Beavis and Butthead for people setting things on... 1990! They blame Jackass. No, they blame Jackass. I swear, Jim, if you make one more rip, I'm getting closer. If you get <laughs> you're really going to beat your face And the in. problem with Cosby is not that he said incorrect things. But hey, they, how about Rush? I heard they're really causing some problems for the kids, you <laughs> stupid old man. No, the problem with Cosby is I don't, don't like Cosby. Don't point at Cosby because you're pointing at me. You're right. I'm pointing one great comedian to another. I, I don't like the fact <laughs> that he doesn't speak through his act. If he talked like this on stage, I wouldn't mind him as much. But he's kind of annoying because he's all mom and pop and cute on stage. And then he gives his real views off stage. That's but that's his real view. It's, I mean, he's making a statement by saying yeah, that off stage. I know, stupid. But what I'm saying is he should I be speaking know through his if, act. Uh, Lenny Bruce here. What you give? You give your real opinions on stage? Partially, like, yeah. But I don't do. I don't do something that's the polar Jesus opposite. Jesus, you said partially. You, you gave it to somebody. You know you know don't tell him partially. I talk about up in his grill and tell him I talk about. I talk about being lonely and liking hookers. That's my whole life. Yes, I do talk about that. That's not the polar opposite, though. No, he's not doing the polar opposite on stage. He's talking about. He's talking about how to raise kids and his family. He's not going opposite. The word nigga is the opposite of what he's saying. He's not doing anything consistent with what he's saying. They're baiting us. They're baiting us. I know. They're baiting us. No, this, this is honestly how I feel. Oh, no. Fight uh, time. Uh, I'm out of the business. Wait, yeah, go ahead. No, this, this is... This, oh, I'll this, do that N-word. I'll throw it out there, baby. Listen. This is, Watch me. This is honestly how... Uh, when somebody tell Lenny to calm down, he looks like a lobster. Oh. He just keeps getting red. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Cosby. I know. Cosby. Yeah, when somebody let Fat Joe's girl speak. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Whoa, what? Yes. Whoa. What is that? Right? They don't even know. Lean back. They don't know. Lean back. Honestly, this is this Lean is what back. <laughs> anybody, Fat Joe! That, yeah. I don't want to say that anymore. Fat Joe, you don't want nobody letting you in. Shut the hell up. Yeah. And, and we have capacity. We have capacity. Do you notice what he's doing? Let him do his joke. Let's go ahead, Beal. Go ahead, Beal. Just talk. But listen, first. Of all, <laughs> Jesus, how angry was that? I honestly feel like this. I think Cosby is at a point now, man, where he's bitter because of things that has happened to him in his life. And he's trying to judge other people and other people's kids and the way that they're raising their kids by what he's went through, and I think it's wrong. I think Cosby should keep his mouth shut and continue to live his life and let other people live theirs. He you really have been in California because you just said nothing in 35 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Get Cosby that was ball. the most surface. That was a nuts. good point. Yep. It wasn't even a point. You're right. Right. Was, that was that, that a point? Dumbass. That was a good no. point. It didn't even make sense. No. They you didn't it. say anything. Oh
Uh, he said nothing. She, he said she, vague. Thank you, baby. <laughs> it meant nothing. He said vague, cliche. It wasn't even a. Yeah. Go to LA with the yeah. rest of the phonies. Yeah. I think that he. Hey, shut up. You're 14 drinking coffee. You. <laughs> shut up. Oh. They, did, they didn't fall for oh, you, right. dumb boy. Shut up. Uh, that's it. We'll be right back. Yeah, we talk about coffee. the norm. I don't know why Norm McDonald, why don't you come on this show, Norm? Come on, stop it now. Nonsense. All right, let's talk about both the National Enquirer and the Star have been reporting well-documented claims that Mary-Kate Olsen is in rehab for cocaine addiction, while People in Us magazine is sticking on her family story about the uh, eating disorder. So, the big question is not which is she in for. Nobody gives a damn. But the point is, why do some people cover up certain things if Baby Doll is in for that, you know? Well, you know what? Why? This, this is what I don't understand. Well, Whitney Houston had her problems. Nobody oh, said no! It, nobody said it was an eating disorder. We went straight to the nose candy with Whitney. We should go through the same thing with her. It's the nose candy. You can say what you Get want. Up. Nobody said it about Whitney. Nobody said it about Whitney Houston. So why should we be saying it about her? She's on a nose candy. I'm the first to say it. If Whitney was, so was she. I love you, Whitney, if you're watching. <laughs> Get up! Are you, are you Why do you give him some good old-fashioned Boston whitey attack? Well, I tell you what. I, I couldn't do you because I'd kill you. <laughs> Both of you. But you got to start eating. Biscuits, gravy, birthday cake, Forget. anything you nitwit. Do you hear what they're saying about you? They're saying you're Whitney Houston. You can't even say it. You son of a bitch. You respond. sons of bitches! Whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't you respond. respond! Respond I am to what gonna he respond. Just said. respond to him. I'm going to respond by saying, guess what? You can't just correlate everything like it's a like it's some big conspiracy against you paranoid bastards. Why can't we? In 1965. Why, why can't we? We're sick of it. Why? why? We're sick of it. You go. Of course, why white people are sick of it. Sick of it. What? Of course, it's directed towards you. Why? Why would you not be sick of it? Exactly. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Whitney, <laughs> why, ask this question. You didn't answer. Why, why well, you act like you don't talk about white people doing cocaine? Of course, if there's a white celebrity, well, if there's a white people, a, a don't celebrity even caught up in the system on this. She was doing coke on Full House. Thank you. When she was, when she was a baby. Listen. And do you think they wouldn't talk about that? No. That's not my point. I think they would. That's not my point. Why are you trying to reason with these sons of bitches? Because they do family, they do family stuff, man. She can't be So what? The papers don't care about that. Well, what? The papers didn't care when it was Whitney. When it was Whitney, it went straight to the addiction. Well, maybe they showed pictures of Whitney arm all uh, scaly. No, Look at that really... woman's calf. It looks just like oh, her get arm. Get a close up of that get nasty a close calf. Up of her calf. She shoots heroin in a calf. She's a so this junkie. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. Look at his legs. <laughs> <laughs> he actually has legs. Is like she a junkie? junkie is all he has legs like, like junkie, the... though, right? Huh? Who knows? But I'll who say can? one thing. Who knows? Who can? You pussy. Let me tell you something. This dude said Kobe Bryant was a junkie. No one said that. He just made it up. I didn't make it up. We I heard it. You didn't make it up. He heard I heard Kobe a, was I a crackhead. Crack crack That's what he heard. I heard Kobe's a crackhead. I heard. What about who? No, no, no. Who? 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 She's who? Robert Downey. Jo he's a drug addict. We all know he's a drug addict. Miss, can you give me any white people we don't care about more than Robert Downey Jr.? Yo, but if that was if that was Ted Diggs, he'd be doing 20 years as a political prisoner. What about Val Kilmer? Saying, You're a phony. That was a dumb point. point. No, it wasn't. Callum was. had my point, and he never answered. You know that he's done. Because it's ludicrous. You know? He didn't even answer it. He's laid on the floor like the chunk that he is. Wait, people would love to think that she's a well, chunk. Nobody she's calls sweet. me a word from my generation when they're that young. <laughs> <laughs> chunk. She's in. Can I just say something too? Uh, this, he was a little angry also because a life-size doll of her is bigger than him. <laughs> You're right, he changed in Hollywood. We thought you were on coke a few months ago. You're acting like a crackhead. Uh, thank yes. God. Remember? He's to Mary Kate. Kevin is changing. You've changed a lot. He hasn't changed except that one boring my life. But listen to this. 
The protest of war in Iraq, Toronto's Blue Jay Carlos Delgado has refused to come out on the field when God Bless America is playing during the seventh inning stretch. Uh, Last night he was booed at Yankee Stadium and did not return for the rest of the game. Uh, Nobody cares? Uh, no. No I, one cares. Not that I don't care about the topic, I, I, but who cares I, that he doesn't want to stand? Let him not stand. I, so what? I, well, I'll tell what you why he the didn't ACLU, stand. No, but that's his, that is his right. That's not endangering anybody. That's not endangering anybody. Let him down his right. Are you going to stand for the Iraqi national anthem? You going to sit down and have him cross your He's not Iraqi. But he's not American, so so He's told me. Iraqi and what's more American than somebody didn't call us Delgado? Nothing. Who cares? I'm so sick of athletes. Lenny, go ahead. I'm trying to sick of athletes trying to make political views. They should do what they do, which is swing your little He's stick. He's having a sucky year. Let him. He's having a sucky year. The poor guy swam here from Cuba. <laughs> he ended up in Toronto. <laughs> He's pissed. He wanted to play in a major league. Hey, you know what? I feel like, hey, it's, it's an organization. If you're playing for that team, if the whole team gets up, you're part of the team. You get up, too. And if I'm on that team, I would take my bat and give him a good bopping in his head. Thank if you. Didn't you. Get up. You get up with the team. That's exactly right. Let him make his little point. That, that's his idea of making a little statement and let him do it. He's allowed to do it. Even though I don't like what he's doing, he's allowed to do it. It's not a problem. Who cares? I still feel that if it's your team, I still feel that it's your team, you don't do for yourself, you do for Here, your team. Here's why, and if it's here's team why you feel it, that way. He shouldn't do it. Here's why you feel that way. Because when you stand up and sit down, you're the same height. That's why you feel that way. <laughs> Me and Jeff. Me and Jeff. Come on, listen. I'm going to tell you something about that. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, Webster. <laughs> the same height. He's just a little chubby. We're not the same height. Stay next to the poster. Stand next to Lenny so I can remember different strokes. Okay, folks, Medicare no longer sees obesity as a personal failure, but a medical problem. What personal failure of yours should be redefined as a medical problem, and what would you call your disease? <clears throat> Patrice O'Neal. Uh, oh. <laughs> I said, oh. Oh, so is that why I can't stay faithful? I'm not an asshole. I'm just sick. <laughs> Nothing. So I don't... <laughs> it's a cheating thing. So I don't need to lie to women ever again because I have... I have petitis. <laughs> <laughs> now lies, <laughs> now lies like baby, baby. I wasn't messing around. We were just watching television. It could be replaced now with the truth. Honey, help! I need more medicine. My petitis is acting up. I just <laughs> put it in your sister. <laughs> Please go walk and get my pills on the locker in the bus station. Please hurry before I put again. <laughs> Lenny. My personal failure is the ability, the inability to maintain an erection for four days. I see the commercials and I feel inadequate. Just once, I'd like to call my doctor and ask, why am I cursed with a two-day tragedy? <laughs> Jim. Well, not unlike Patrice, I'd like to uh, say something uh, to my ex-girlfriends uh, that I've had that I've cheated on and mistreated, which is uh, all of them. And it wasn't my fault that I had sex with those fat waitresses on the road. I have creepitis. It causes me to do irrational things like forget your birthday, hit on your friends, and think of anyone but you while we're having sex. And uh, if I was healthy, I never would have told you that I was sick on Valentine's Day just so I could take that money that I was saving for your bracelet and buy myself a prostitute. But uh, please don't be mad. It's not my fault. Kevin. Well, uh, the one personal problem that I would like to see redefined as a medical problem is sometimes when I see women that I like, I get really excited and aroused. Well, it's not just any woman, it's white women. And because I'm hung like a horse, it's easy for them to see my bulge. But I'm not trying, but I'm tired of them saying, ooh, he's a nasty little man, he's a pervert. No, I want people to accept my disease for what it is, and that's BPE, black penis erectosis. It's uncontrollable. It's uncontrollable. There's nothing I can do about it, damn it. Okay, folks, folks, wait. Usually I say that's a show and applaud, and tonight I'd like to say, you guys proud of yourselves? Good writing. <laughs> What? That was what you asked us to write on. Shut your mouth. I didn't like it. They asked your medical thing. Four great, now, hilarious people. Four great, hilarious people. Four d joke, corny ass so I So what? That's as fast as you can write it in that one day you give us Shut that up. dumb question. You know, I don't bring up those ones. You, uh, a couple questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, over here. You, uh, you seem generally uh, uh, displeased with your comedians right now. No, these guys are all brilliant, but, you know, the Act 4 is all kind of corny. Um, 
Potitis was bad? You know what? You're in the It ass. wasn't bad, but the way you set it up, nobody even knew what you were saying until it was too late and you just, you know. What, the, whose fault is that? Mine, genius, or, or them? They don't know what the f they're well, doing. Well, either way. Prosecutors in the Kobe Bryant case dropped the charges yesterday because the victim refuses to testify. Here's what Kobe said. Although I truly believe this encounter between us was consensual, I recognize now that she did not and does not view this incident the same way I did. I now understand how she feels that she did not consent to this encounter. Okay. Would you like to talk about this political prisoner, Martyr, please? First of all, people don't even understand, man. This is serious business. This dude was told to say that as a condition of her dropping the charge. So it's not like people think, oh, he just admitted to raping her. And it's just, please, he got, she got black man screw. I, how can I say this? How can I, I say, like wait, you're worried about offending people? No, wait, I'm just saying, how can I say this nicely? How can I say, black man screw? Look, look, white women are just not used to getting pummeled the way. <laughs> OK. No, no hair pulling, the way, no rumor, no found, ass slapping. See, ass Lori. Look, look, he's found look, a very non-offensive way to say it. Yes, it, oh, yeah. ass yeah. Lance. She's never had, we, we teach her all the time. Lance one of the few pretty woman comics that hang around and, and stay. We, we always tease her about how no one gets her and pulled and, and says, shut your stupid <laughs> fat mouth. And that's what Kobe did. And, and that could be confused with rape, but it's not. So see, he, he, he cobatized. <laughs> he, he, he smashed he it. it. And that's what that meant. It Wait, meant, hey, please. I've been raped. Shut up. I, I, I can't wait. Go ahead. First night in prison, bitch. I can't wait. <laughs> I think in, in a really retarded way, Patrice has a point. Because what? I... No, no, no. Go ahead, I, go ahead, go ahead. One, I don't, I don't think he raped her. I think it was probably, I, but, but I think it was because they, they know that she has some history and she had other semen on her. It wasn't like, just history. Who does like it? Who? Afterwards, six hours exactly. later. Exactly. So maybe, I don't know, maybe she just wasn't used he to being asked. He came out and though. He came out and said he real <laughs> Now you see, now you see how America... Shut does. up, stupid. Because Let's remember, it's time. Time. Okay, okay. You he got a 20-minute model on right. front. Your son Go ahead, Tom. Uh, she, he went on in his apology, which cracked me up, uh, to say that he couldn't, Compensate. He couldn't understand the pain that she felt, and you know, if he shoved a pumpkin up his nostril, he might feel that. I think that's a that's a compliment I think to that your might voice. Be what happened though, because if you've never done it in the butt, then when you do, you might feel like, oh, I did something really dirty. I'm so glad you feel that way. It's, it's, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Enough of this nonsense and your nonsense too. It's not her. Shut body. up and let me. Can I say my opinion? Because you're afraid to let me right. talk. Because you no, know because I know the real I, deal. This is, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Women's guilt. That's women's guilt when she's like, I, th I think that Look, she might I not have died. Shut up. Shut up. Let me say that. two. Why don't you just say you don't believe her? And have I some passion about her. She doesn't her. believe her. She said she didn't but get raped. But you see that tip tip that But Cole just what? came out and said that he acknowledged it. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. Let me he explain. So when she was saying, no, no, please stop, she didn't mean no, it. Wait, Let me explain. Was, you see, you, uh, yeah. Can I please? It's your show, Colin. Sorry. Go ahead. Is it? Tom, yes. thank you. Yes. Can I please say something without being interrupted? All right. The bottom line is this. A, I, there will be no feminist outcry. Nobody's been told about this case because the guy's not white, so it doesn't fit into the profile that you need to attack in America. Shut your trap. I don't care. Point two. Point two. Uh, it was a culture clash where you brothers think, oh, well, you know, if I got this far, she'll easily take it up the butt. Not everybody's into that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me just finish. Sarah, yeah, let me finish. It's a culture class. Look at what I'm surrounded with. with. There's nobody even looked at to help me. They, they call him. There's no way that I happened. I was going to finish. Here's exactly what happened. He got up to her. She's freaking all oh, fooling around the black dude. I'm in Colorado. I'll never get this chance again. <laughs> She's thinking, I'm in Colorado. Well, can I please tell you what happened? Go ahead. Then halfway through, instead of being satisfied, like a white guy with a little oral sex and vaginal sex, you sons of bitches always want to take it up a notch and say, yeah, let me try and jam me in. And she's like, wait, 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 ah! And she started crying. And that was, so I don't know if you call it rape or I'm not. I'm sure that's how it went down. That's probably how it went down. Tell me that's not how it went down, fella. That's not how it went down. Well, listen, how it went down, she'll agree with this. When women think about having sex with somebody, <laughs> right, they, they fantasize. First of all, shut up. Wow. They fantasize first on how he's going to be in bed. Yes, and, and they then, like it violent sometimes. Right, we well, don't no, no, that no, stupid. no, no, no. That he comes off like he's going to make love, and he just went we buck wild wow on that Colorado white coochie. She's a Colorado white girl. She's a New York white girl in them ass sex. 
bitch with a black man. What's a Colorado white you, girl gonna do? First of all, stupid, you didn't invent spanking and pull a head, dumb dumb. Well, we made it. We, you, we all made you it got, like everything else. All you've got is your one natural gift. Leave it at that. You're not great in bed, but you do got the jammies. We'll give you that. All right. <laughs> the only thing about this I don't like is you're twisting a bunch of white guys like missionary style sex. Yes, we invented that promotion. That's not true. Some white guys are We like to mix it up, too. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Listen, it's very simple. I'll admit she didn't get raped if you'll admit that white guys are amazing in bed. Say it. Come on. Come on. Bring it. Come on. I knew you wouldn't, you hateful son of a bitch. Some white guys. I knew. I just meant me. A new. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Funny, folks. Now, listen. Damn it. A new safety program in Vero Beach, Florida is underway to put video cameras, GPS units, that's global positioning systems. <laughs> and <laughs> fingerprint reading centers on school buses to keep track of students. Does anyone not like this idea? If you guys saying you're very liberal, you probably hate this idea. Uh, I think it's really great that we're fingerprinting infants now. Yeah, I think it's a riot. Well, I mean, those infants are walking around blowing people's brains out, let's be honest. In Florida? What are you talking about? Florida is the biggest gun capital in the world. Tell me why in Harlem, tell me why strippers. in parts of Brooklyn you've got to have a bake sale to buy textbooks post-Eisenhower era, but they can have CSI on a freaking school bus in Florida now. Because post-Eisenhower era is when all those horrible textbooks came out. Before that, those were good books. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> I don't know, do so you guys, do so you think, obviously, you just feel like it's bad? What's the it point? Sucks. Parents put kids on a bus to get away from them for a few but hours. But they are really giving some kids a nice beatdown lately on those videos they catch. That's hot. And they're not, like they're not infants. They're, I mean, I, I think, it, I think if it's, if it's their safety, like, then what's the problem? I think it keeps them safe. Grow it, it Why doesn't. I'll tell you what, the kids, here's Grow the it, what does that mean? I mean, like grow it, like the guys have to fight their way on the bus. Thank you. Tell them what are you going to tell attorney. some horrible stuff I'll tell you that you got. Why are we going to put barcodes on their, you know, tattoo them on their forehead, shove the GPS up their ass? Kids need, to, you know, they got to learn on their own, you know? Why you are they fingerprinting kids together on a school bus? Yeah. What is, where's the safety part coming well, only because they're saying there's a lot of, I don't know, I didn't read the article. It's to make yeah. sure that they're... Oh, the priest. <laughs> exactly, but exactly, I read no, the about. article, there's no reason Yo, for it. No, why can't the brother speak? Well, Shut yeah. up. He never wrote Talk a school bus. What's that? You're only mocking your uh, people's outrage over nothing? Yeah, that's yeah, hey. exactly... Uh, our outrage <laughs> is different than white people's outrage. It's like, because white people feel like their kids are safe from each from each other's kids. Which exactly. Wait a minute, minute. but I'm saying no. What I'm saying is black children, except for this one, when something out of the ordinary happens to a white kid, like he gets beat up in the back of a bus. Out of the ordinary. So, well, that's, that's out of the ordinary. Brooklyn, that's stupid. out of the ordinary for uh, for an mouth. average white kid. Really? To get beat up on the back of a school kid bus. As soon as some little white, white person do 18. As soon as some white kid gets beat up, then we then we talk about GPS. I used to get beat up every day. I know people got stabbed every other day. So did I. Where was the goddamn GPS? Stop trying to relate to me. I'm talking about the other white people, Colin. Not the. Not that Colin that's from Brooklyn and you try to relate to both people. I'm talking about like John, he's a, he's a white guy. I'm very and, white. And, yeah. and Tom is a white guy. No, no, no. You're not, you're, you're, relating, I'm white. you're relating to each other in color. You're not relating to, in, to each other in, 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 in relation to how you grow up. Tom's a white dude. He's a white dude. So I'm GPS so white. seems Albinos like call me it's hunky. outrageous. The only time, the only time white people get really scared for their children is, is the Amber Alert thing, the kidnapping and all that stuff. They're not afraid of other white kids doing things to their that children. That was a long That's way new. of saying absolutely nothing, and I enjoyed I'm it. I'm go. telling you, <laughs> if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have cameras on a bus, I got no problem with that. You don't want your kid getting smacked in the head with a baseball bat. God bless you. But the fingerprinting people, it's a little bit creepy. They're fingerprinting children going on buses now. Why, why, is that, why is that for creepy? Your safety. Why is that more creepy than Cameron? What are they doing? They're smuggling kids to school? What the hell is the conflict? Kids are getting abducted. That's it. But if you get on the wrong getting bus, getting abducted off. So fingerprinting is going to keep some kid from getting abducted. Yeah. When I was a kid, you'd get frisked getting on, and the guy would give you piggy front rides right after that. It was ugly. And then he had his own special <laughs> fingerprinting. <laughs> and they got from the same pastor, actually. If they had fingerprinted some of those police, I wouldn't be standing here today. Oh. But Nothing? <laughs> oh, damn it. it. Folks, you know what it is? I set the bar too high. They want to make a <laughs> joke. The crowd's like, nah, Carl, you're better than that. No, no, Thanks, no. folks. <laughs> well, listen, we let's talk about Krispy Kremes. Oh. That's what it is, John. I set the bar safety. high. Childhood safety. Childhood safety. Right Whoa, right there, Krispy Kremes in Palm Beach County <laughs> Again, are offering far. free donuts for every kid that gets an A on their report cards. So, of course, people are outraged. Because America Because needs. they're fat. People are going to be fat in this country. First of all, what are you supposed to do? Pretend to be 
poor like every other country that's an insult to their real star base. No, I think it's great we're producing more fat nerds. I think it's great. But when this is like Krispy Kreme, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts are cocaine, okay? Krispy Kremes are crack. And They're this really is how are. you get the kids hooked early. You give them a taste right away. This whole audience is pissed at you, I because I'm a delicious Krispy Kreme. They're like, that son of a bitch. Krispy Kreme, I mean, you want to punch me for having this Krispy Kreme? Krispy killed Elvis. I mean, like, you got to keep on <laughs> new, new addicts all the time. <laughs> but don't you think we live in a country where and nobody ever says, what's the big deal? Like this Krispy Kreme thing, let it ride. Who gives a damn? But they have to have a protest. They do all the time. Everything Black stinks. people do all the time. I don't care if they do it. It's we all for my all personal time. amusement, Everybody. I think. A bunch of fat little eight students running around Florida is a laugh riot, as far as I'm concerned. But then they don't have to have the GPS on them anymore. Exactly Just, right. You can see the face. Follow the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> but who are they to commend A students when they can't even spell Krispy Kreme? There's no K. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Lynn, what do you think? That was a good one, Tom. Thank you very much. Lynn, let me ask you this. And Lynn, you used to be heavy, and don't bring up that I know what it feels like, because I used to be... What? You used to be... I cannot believe you said that. Lynn was a fat one. She used to be a fat one. Lynn, used to, Lynn used to clock in at about 2.40. But listen. Lynn was a... But you look gorgeous. <laughs> But you look gorgeous. Look what? at you with the Krispy Kreme juice all over your I mouth. I know I was a fat that bastard. Me. You said it to me. But you I should not be happy. Well, that's like why that. I'm, so, I'm so surprised that she never been with a black guy. She used to be a big, fat, white woman, man. And that's still, and that's and still has never, ever... It is amazing. It's never been with a black dude. The girls are f***ing eating a donut. They don't care. All these black dudes now, the young ones, they don't even like the big girls anymore. They like the skinny, jaded, pinker types. Mexicans, they're the only ones that really do appreciate me. You guys have changed. There was a yeah, whole we change it. Yeah. We change it. We change it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing well that you couldn't accept my answer? God, Think about that. Yeah, Folks, two real romantics who met in Walmart loved the store so much they decided to do their <laughs> wedding there. If you had to get married in a place that means a lot to you, where would it be? And describe the ceremony. Patrice O'Neill. I get married at uh, one of those ultimate fighting cages at, during a match. I'll have Frank Shanrock as my best man, and every time I get ready to say I do, Frank would choke me unconscious for, be <laughs> for being stupid enough to get married. And if, and if my fiance tries to wake me up, his brother Ken will come flying knee kicker right inside of the temple, and we'll both spend our honeymoon in a coma. All right. Tom Cutter. Well, I already had my perfect wedding. It was the one my wife plan for us. <laughs> okay, enough of that crap. My ultimate wedding would be a Rastafarian service held in Fenway Park. My bride would be a dwarf mutant infomaniac gymnast with a trust fund. And all my groomsmen would have Down syndrome so that I look particularly fetching on my special day. <laughs> okay. John Fugelsang. First off, I love the Walmart story. It's the first time they've ever allowed a union in a Walmart. But I would love <laughs> to get good. married right here in New York City tonight at the Republican National Convention. Because these wonderful people that go to the convention seem to enjoy watching grown men make promises they don't intend <laughs> to ever keep. You know, the bride party can knock back some 40s with my girl Jenna. Laura can give my mom some extra Xanax. And it'll be a great reception until the cops find out that our Michael Moore pinata is actually Michael Moore. <laughs> okay. Lynn Coplitz. Well, I would get married at an ex-boyfriend's house. We'd consummate the ceremony on his bed. Huh. And then we would leave him to sleep in our wet spot. And then I would walk out the next morning screaming, Who's crazy now, mother <laughs> the show, folks. Good night. It's good, you're Bruce. Let me ask you this. First of all, before we start, how happy are we that lonely Keith is going to watch this on TV and be sad that he wasn't on the one of the other guys? He shouldn't be on the 200th. You may have noticed we have a live band playing tonight because it happens to be our 200th show. Oh, I don't 
don't know how we can have such like a raucous fun party with such positive people. It's very original. It's like Reagan's wake. <laughs> I'm a Republican. Uh, f you. <laughs> it's true. Reagan is dead. He's right. Uh, on the bench, we have Rich Voss. Hi, Rich. How's it going? Rich. How's it going? Hi, Good. guys. Richard? Let the crowd respond the way they did. No. Nothing. Nothing. Right. Listen to me. Okay, let me say this. First of all, the band, you guys. Live band tonight. Hey, if you get it. You guys. Live band. Stop getting applause. You mother you know I hate applause. <laughs> <laughs> he does it deliberately just to bother me. I know he does. I mean, but, I mean, you gotta give a big hand for these nervous idiots in their I first. <laughs> they're not nervous. <laughs> hey, you one, guys. A two, a one, two, three. <laughs> they're, 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 hey. Four jackasses. They're not nervous. If you guys I'm really do a great big job. Shot, you remember the red man? <laughs> they really hit it off. Do you mind if I made that white minute. joke for a second about say, the Wembrand? Did, silly... did you say our show, asshole, with two pitches on the 2000? <laughs> I don't design the set if that's what they want. I mean, this was an our show? Is this, is this, this, this come on, What did I say during the warm up party? It, what did I say? It wasn't even, it, it wasn't even show? a big yeah, picture. Of, show. It wasn't even a big picture of Colin with I a say? little picture of us on the side. Us? You, no, I'm you know it. I'm helping you. No, 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 no. You know, I, first of all, I, what did I say? I don't say anything. Jackasses, that's right. Shut hey, up. I don't Let's like do your subject. attitude. I happen to be just happy to be on the show with Colin. Don't applaud. He's lying. He's lying. I'm honored to be here. It's not about me. The son doesn't have a humble bone in his body. I certainly do, and there's no iron In fact, he doesn't have a bone in his body. All right, ready? So you need to use Katie Couric. Denzel Washington referred to himself as the next slave in response to a question about the current political situation. Take a look. And how do you feel about the current political situation? I live in America. I, I, I grew up here. I'm, I'm, I'm an ex-slave. I'm a result of what this country can do. So it's nothing new to me. But and I say wait, wait, wait. But this applause thing has got to stop. You turn to a real hack. And you're ruining the show. I just thought Denzel said something fantastic. I understand, but can't you just say, hey, guys, I agree with Denzel. You can all go to hell, you white bastards, rather than starting to pour it. That's true. The closest that guys come to being a slave is picking the cotton out of an uh, aspirin bottle. <laughs> That was kind of funny. Just Denzel thing. The Denzel thing, here's what I was thinking. At first, I was like, oh my God, he's saying he was a slave. Yeah. You know, playing patience, must have like Olympic film swimming pool. Yeah, then, but then I realized. No, you didn't realize. Really, can I? Go ahead, Carl, finish. He was crazy. I want to hear it. What I'm saying is that <laughs> what he was really saying was that because he's a slave, and look what he's accomplished. Like he was trying to say his ancestors. And I'll tell you why, but you wouldn't let me finish. I already got it. You're wrong. Afterwards, he said, uh, I know what this country can do. And he was talking about the war. He wasn't saying that. Yes. And he said, no, no. But did you, hear him, did you hear him say, how come nobody's showing love to the soldiers coming back? Did he not say that? Wait, did we, we, say that did we see this? Is this stuff we just... We 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 show love to the soldiers coming back. Come on, don't go kicking the balloon. Someone's going to get hurt. Let's get to this. Let's get to this. Before we get to the real fact is that Denzel was saying that he made it despite this awful country. Yes. No, he was. Oh, I think that's what he was country is that's it? That's what Denzel was saying. This country stinks. Yeah, you look like you're starving to death. I'm not out of A dentist in Atlanta is accused of injecting semen, his semen, into the mouth of six female patients with a syringe. <laughs> but here's the bad part. His license was suspended, then they reinstated. Now the Atlanta Dental Board is going to schedule a public hearing on whether he violated the profession's standard of care. Yeah, they better... <laughs> every... Every... Every guy knows... What's, what's going on here? There's pictures that get laughs. Go on. Oh. Well, every guy knows if you're going to inject semen into a woman's mouth, you don't use a syringe, you use your penis. <laughs>